Section Zero of the Sailor's Word Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sailor's Word Book, an alphabetical digest of nautical terms, including some more especially military and scientific but useful to seamen, as well as archaisms of early voyagers, etc. Volume A to C by the late Admiral W. H. Smythe, KSF, DCL, and so on. Preface Revised for the Press by Vice Admiral Sir E. Belcher, KCB, etc., etc. Published by Blackie and Son, London, and Glasgow, and Edinburgh. 1867. Transcriber's Note. Dialect, variant, and obsolete spellings remain as printed. Minor typographical errors have been corrected without note, whilst significant changes have been listed at the end of the text. The Editor's Preface. The recent loss of Admiral William Henry Smythe, noticed as it was by the leading periodicals, will have recalled to many not only the social character and amiable qualities of the compiler of this work, but also his distinguished professional career and high reputation as an officer, a navigator, and a seaman, which will be a guarantee for the details of this posthumous publication. When in 1858 the Admiral reached the allotted term of threescore years and ten, yet in perfect health, he executed his resolution of resigning to younger men, the posts he held in the active scientific world, and concentrated his attention at his quiet and literary retreat of St. John's Lodge, near Aylesbury, on reducing for the press the vast amount of professional as well as general information which he had amassed during a long, active, and earnest life, the material for this digest outstanding as the last, largest, and most important part of it, had he survived but a few months more, a preface in his own terse and peculiar style, containing his last ideas, would have rendered these remarks unnecessary, but he was cut off on the 8th of September, 1865, leaving his favorite manuscript to the affectionate care of his family and friends. By them it has been most carefully revised, and is now presented to the public, especially to his honored profession, for the benefit of which he thought and worked during the long period which elapsed between his leaving the quarter-deck and his death. As his charts, constructed from his numerous surveys, his twenty years' essays in the United Service Journal, his efforts to render his astronomical researches accessible to seamen, all testify. Admiral Smythe was what has been called a commonplacer. He had the habit of methodically storing up through a long series of years, all that could profit the seaman, whether scientific or practical, a collector of coins, and in various ways an antiquary, he knew well not merely that many mickles make a muckle, but that it will sometimes chance that the turning up of one little thing makes another little thing into a great one, and he culled from the intelligent friends with whom he associated many points of critical definition which cannot be found elsewhere. Thus, in addition to naval terms, he has introduced others relating to fortification, to ancient and modern arms and armor, to objects of natural history occurring at sea, in travel, etc. The whole, forming such an assemblage of interesting and instructive matter, as will prove valuable to both seamen and landsmen. This digest may engage the attention of the naval officer, not merely for the information it conveys, but for the doubts it may raise in matters deserving further research. Independently of the variety of subjects treated, the author's characteristic manner of handling them will make it to his former brother officers a reminiscence of one of the true tars of the old school. The rising generation will find here old terms, often misunderstood by younger writers, interpreted by one who was never content with the definition until he had confirmed it satisfactorily by the aid of the most accomplished of his contemporaries. The landsman will discover the meaning or derivation of words either obsolete or which are not elsewhere to be traced, though occurring in general literature. 
To all, it is the legacy of an officer highly appreciated by men of science, who on shore as well as afloat fought his way to eminence in every department, and always deemed it his pride that no aim was dearer to him than the advancement of his noble profession. London, May, 1867 End of section zero. Read by Sandra Stevenson, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section one of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Introduction. What's in a word? is a question which it is held clever to quote and wise to think unanswerable and yet there is a very good answer and it is a meaning if you know it but there is another question and it is what's a word in there is never a poor fellow in this world but must ask it now and then with a blank face when a ground for want of a meaning and the answer is a dictionary if you have it unfortunately there may be a dictionary and one may have it and yet the word may not be there it may be an old dictionary and the word a new one or a new dictionary and the word an old one a grave dictionary and the word a slang one a slang dictionary and the word a grave one and so on through a double line of battle of antitheses such is assuredly matter for serious cogitation and voluntarily to encounter those anomalous perplexities requires no small amount of endurance for the task is equally crabbed and onerous without a ray of hope to the pioneer beyond that of making himself humbly useful this brings me to my story many years ago i harboured thoughts of compiling a kind of detailed nautical vade mecum but a lot of other irons already in the fire marred the project still the scheme was backing and filling when the late major shadwell clerk opened the year eighteen thirty six in the united service journal fired off the following to me unexpected announcement quote, a nautical dictionary or cyclopedia of naval science and nomenclature is still a desideratum that of falconer is imperfect and out of date we have heard that the design of such a work has been entertained and materials for its execution collected by captain w h smythe whom we earnestly recommend to prosecute an undertaking of such promise to the service of which he is so experienced and distinguished a member it could not be in more competent hands End quote. this broad hint must have been signalled by the gallant major in the way of a stimulating philip and accordingly it aroused considerable attention among those who were excited by the notification was my friend captain basil hall who wrote to me from paris a few days afterwards thirteenth of january eighteen thirty six in these words quote, i read a day or two ago in the united service journal that you had some thoughts of preparing a nautical dictionary for publication and from your connection with that journal or at least your acquaintance with our friend the editor i am led to fear that the report may be true you will understand the use of the word fear when i tell you that for nearly three years my own thoughts have turned in the same direction and i have been busily preparing for a task to which i meant to buckle to with a will and to which i meant to devote some four or five years of exclusive diligence what i am now anxious to know as soon as may be is the fact of your having undertaken a similar work or not for i assure you i am not so foolish nor so insensible either to my own peace of mind or my own reputation nor am i so careless of your good opinion and regard as to enter the lists with you i repeat neither my feelings nor my judgment would permit me in any way to cross your hawse if indeed as i too much fear you have got before me there is one other man in the service besides yourself and only one with whom no consideration would induce me to enter into competition and that is beaufort but his hands i presume are full enough and i had somehow imagined yours were too so much so that you were one of the first men i meant to consult on my return to england and to beg assistance from i should not have minded the competition of any one else but i am not so vain as to suppose that i could do the thing as well as either of you and therefore even if i were not restrained by motives of personal friendship i would never dream of risking my reputation for professional scientific or literary attainments by a struggle in which i should certainly be worsted End quote. 
to this hearty and laudatory interpolation an immediate reply was returned stating that i had long held the subject in view but that other weighty avocations occasioned its hanging fire and had compelled me to suspend it sine die still i considered such a work necessary to the current wants as well as those of seafarers as of the landsmen who evinced a taste for nautical matters and that from his profession and literary prowess i knew of no one better fitted for the task than himself adding that under the emergency my papers were at his service and i would occasionally give him such personal aid as might lie in my power this was acknowledged in a long explicatory letter of which the following are extracts Quote, i trust i know the value of a compliment as well as any man and i can say with perfect truth that in the whole of my career such as it has been professional scientific or literary no compliment i may say no circumstance has occurred which has given me so much honest gratification as your letter of the third i know you are a man not to say what you do not truly think nor to express yourself strongly where you have not observed carefully i shall therefore not disclaim your compliment but rather seek in a kindred spirit to work up to the mark which you assign me and which i know but too well how far i am short of i do hope indeed that as you say we may row in the same boat without catching crabs but of this i am quite resolved not to cross your cause or to interfere with your project which you have alluded to as having already commenced that is to say i shall not interfere unless i can be of use to it and to you and with your full concurrence and as i hope your companionship ellipsis what i should propose would be that you should furnish the professional technicalities in all the different branches and that i should endeavour to popularise them here and there as in the matter of navigation i also might intrude with some few technicalities but generally speaking it would be you who should provide the real solid stuff and i who should attempt to dress it up so as to be intelligible beyond the limits of the sea service and also to be intelligible to those young persons whom it is very important to instruct in general and even popular views but for whom it would be needless to write a new elementary treatise ellipsis this is a sketch of my plan what do you think of it i must add one thing however that you must be the senior officer on the occasion i shall act in all this matter and in the most perfect good faith as your subordinate End quote. in responding to this full and frank overture i entered into a few more particulars respecting my progress and purpose in the projected work and invited him on his return from france to come at once to bedford and ransack my papers accordingly in the autumn of eighteen thirty six captain basil hall and his family the whole of the schloss Handfeld party arrived at my house where he was located in a quiet library with all my materials for the naval dictionary before him here he remained in close examination of them during two days when he promised to send me his ultimatum in writing after due deliberation he required time for this seeing i had fairly warned him that my onerous undertakings would necessarily throw the heavier share of our performance upon his shoulders on the twenty seventh of november i received a letter from edinburgh in which he made this statement quote, with respect to the marine dictionary i think we have come to a clear understanding namely that for the present it is standing fast i certainly had a notion that i was an interloper and as soon as i saw the vast deal you had done in the way of preparation that it became me as a man of fair dealing to back out this does not however appear to have been your wish but on the contrary that we may still make a joint work of it by and by when we have leisure both of us to engage in it heartily tooth and nail i shall therefore keep it in my thoughts and endeavour to shape my future plans so as to meet this view and should i see occasion i can write to you about it my present notion is that if ever we do set about it i must come to bedford for a season and give myself entirely up to the work under your direction the work to be worth a straw or at all what would be expected from you and me would require no small labour on our parts for a considerable length of time we consequently lay upon our oars for some time but occasionally pulling a stroke or two to keep to the station and be ready for headway when required while thus prepared in eighteen forty two my excellent and highly accomplished friend was most unexpectedly assailed by an afflicting malady which at once reduced a brilliant mind to a distressing fatuity which after two lingering years closed his valuable life and clued up our arrangements 
Meantime, our plan had oozed out, and too great an expectation was evoked in certain quarters. The inquiries from whence were frequent reminders. At length, in 1865, most of my undertakings having been completed and out of the way, I made an overhaul of the bulky ribs and trucks of the scheme in question. Both my judgment and feelings united in showing that it is now too late in the day for me to think of setting about such a work as was contemplated thirty years ago. Yet, finding myself still capable of application and fully knowing all the bearings of the case, I feel assured that a comprehensive and useful word-book may be made from the shakings. On the whole, therefore, the foregoing particulars seem to be a necessary prelude to this introduction. Doubtless, a well-digested marine dictionary would be equally beneficial to the country and to the service, for the utility of such a work in assisting those who are engaged in carrying on practical sea duties is so generally admitted that it is allowable here to dilate upon its importance, especially when it is considered how much information a youth has to acquire on his first going afloat, in order to qualify him for a position so totally different from what he had hitherto been familiar with. In this case such a volume might justly be deemed one of the most useful of his companions, as it would at all times answer his questions, and aid that ardour of inquiry which some of his shipmates might not find it easy to satisfy. It would quicken the slow progress of experience, and aid those who take a pleasure in the knowledge and discharge of their duties. But a work of this description must necessarily require constant additions and revised explanations to enable it to keep pace with the wondrous alterations and innovations which are now taking place in every department of the naval service. The future of all this is utterly inscrutable, nor has this province been neglected, as the efforts of Captain John Smith of mine own clan, Mainwaring, Bottler, Blankley, Falconer, Young, and many others testify, and however they may fall short of what naval science demands, they are full of initiative training. Indeed, they may all be advantageously consulted, for honey is not the less sweet because it is gathered from many flowers, and I have freely availed myself of their various works as far as they go, though I have adopted no term without holding myself responsible for its actuality. Such a vaunt may be considered to savour of the parturiant montes apothem, but the reader may confidently rest assured that whatever shortcomings he may detect they are not the result of negligence. It has been pronounced that such lexicography may be too diffuse, that to describe the track of every particular rope through its different channels, however requisite for seamen, would be useless and unintelligible to a landsman. But surely nothing can be considered useless which tends directly to information nor can that be unintelligible which is clearly defined. Moreover, such a work may be so carried out as not only to be instructive in professional minutiae, but also to be a vehicle for making us acquainted with the rules which guided the seamen of former times, thereby affording an insight into those which are likely to direct them in their own. From the causes already stated, my project of a full sailor's dictionary fell to the ground, Yet in course of time, and at the age of seventy-seven, finding leisure at last on hand, I thought it feasible to work my materials into a sort of maritime glossary. The objects of such a digest are to afford a ready reference to young or old, professional or non-professional persons, who by consulting it may obtain an instant answer to a given question. Now, although many of the explanations may be superfluous to some seamen, still they may lead others to a right understanding of various brackish expressions and phrases, without having to put crude queries, many of which those inquired of might be unable to solve. Nor is it only those afloat who are thus to be considered. All the empire is more or less connected with its navy and its commerce, and nautical phraseology is thereby daily becoming more habitual with all classes of the lieges than averst. Even our parliamentary orators, with a proper national bias, talk of swamping a measure, danger ahead, taking the wind out of an antagonist's sails, drifting into war, steering a bill through the shoals of opposition, or throwing it overboard, following in the wake of a leader, trimming to the breeze, tiding a question over the session, opinions above or below the gangway, and the like, 
so rife of late in st stephen's even when a member rats on seeing that the pumps cannot keep his party from falling to leeward he is but imitating the vermin that quit a sinking ship his predilection for sea idiom is assuredly proper in a maritime people especially as many of the phrases are at once graphic terse and perspicuous how could the whereabouts of an aching tooth be better pointed out to an operative dentist than jack's tis the aftermost grinder aloft on the starboard quarter the ship expressions preserve many british and anglo-saxon words with their quaint old preterites and telling colloquialisms and such may require explanation as well for the youthful aspirant as for the coconut-headed prelector in nautic lore it is indeed remarkable how largely that foundation of the english language has been preserved by means of our sailors this phraseology has necessarily been added to from time to time and consequently bears the stamp of our successive ages of sea life in the ancient and fish-like terms that brave raleigh derived from his predecessors many epithets must have resulted from ardent recollections of home and those at home for in a ship we find a peak apron a stay bonnet braces bridle cap catherpins catheads cat's paw cot cradle crib crowfoot crow's nest crown diamond dog driver earrings eyes fox garnet gooseneck goose wing horse hose hound jewel lacings martingale mouse nettle pins puddings rabbit ribboned saddle sheaves sheets sheep's shank shoe sister stays stirrup tiller truck truss watch whip yard most of the real sea terms are pregnant with meaning but those who undertake to expound them ought to be tolerably versed in the topic thus perhaps there is no great harm in dr johnson's being utterly ignorant of maritime language but it was temerariously vain in that sturdy lexicographer to assert that belay is a sea phrase for splicing a rope main sheet for the largest sail in a ship and bite for the circumference of a coil of rope and we long had him on the hip respecting the purser a personage whom he misled by bursar at once pronounced to be the paymaster of a ship as the then purser was in fact more familiar with slops tobacco pork dips biscuit and the like than with cash payments for excepting short allowance dues he had very little meddling with money matters but the admiralty have recently swamped the well-known and distinctive nautical title despite of its time-honoured claims to repute and introduced the army appellative paymaster in its stead the pithy conciseness of the brackish tongue renders it eminently useful on duty in some of their sea phrases the french our great rivals use a heap of words more than we are wont to do an instance is given supposing a ship of the former met with one of ours and they should desire to salute each other the english commander would sing out man ship but the french captain would have to exclaim ranger du monde sur les vergues pour donner des cris de salut by the way there is a ben trovato respecting the difficulty of doing our naval tidings into french a translator of note made quite a mull of a ship being brought up by her anchors and of another which was stranded from borrowing too much while a man of war riding easily in the road at spithead was rendered un homme de guerre se promenait à cheval à son aise sur le chemin de spithead some of the french terms however are recommended by the parisian stamp as in calling iron bilbos bas de soie the waist netting saint aubinet the quarter gallery a jardin d'amour but similar elegance was not manifested in dubbing the open-hearted thoroughbred tar a loup de mer in the work before us the nautical import of the terms is duly considered and the orthography as far as feasible is ruled by authority and custom with an occasional slight glance at the probable etymology of the words slight because derivation is a seductive and frequently illusory pilot our language is said to have been arraigned by foreigners for its hissing enunciation but regardless of the rebuke our pundits have of late unnecessarily increased the whistling by substituting the sibilant s for the vocal z in all sorts of cases 
happily the same s not being yet acclimatized to the galley jack will continue to give tongue to an enterprising cruise after portuguese merchandise and their anent the plan of our work may be said to comprise the treating de omnibus rebus noticis for many branches of knowledge are demanded of the intelligent seaman thus in naval architecture the terms used in the construction of ships the plans and sections and the mechanical means of the builders are undoubted requirements of a sea word book so also in astronomy for that portion of nautical science constituting observations which are necessary to the determinations of the navigator in mathematics especially the branch distinguished as practical the doctrine which teaches whatever is capable of being numbered or measured requires verbal elucidation not so much for the educated youth as for him who labours under difficulties who is quote, in canvassed birth profoundly deep in thought his busy mind with signs and tangents fraught end quote. many of the words in our columns are not de facto sea terms but as they are in rife and familiar use on shipboard they obtained a lodgment whence it becomes rather a difficult matter to mark a boundary for nautic language various expressions are also retained which though unused or all but obsolete occur so frequently in professional treatises and antiquated journals that their exposition may often be welcomed by a general reader they are here introduced not as worthy of revival yet as necessary to be understood when fallen in with and it should be remembered that especially during our last conflict with france so many combined enterprises occurred that the most general naval and military phrases pertained in a manner to both arms of the service what may be termed mere galley slang also demands explanation since even officers are sometimes ashore i was going to say at sea respecting its purport and i recollect at a court-martial holden on a seaman for insolence to his superior the lingo used by the shrewd culprit was liable to be thought respectful or otherwise according to the manner of utterance and he was admitted to the benefit of the doubtful meaning still it must be admitted that all vulgarisms as far as practicable should be indignantly spurned from our noble english language a language unequalled for excellence in fluency capacity and strength a stern critic may also and in truth aver that terms are included on our roll the which are not altogether of maritime usage this we have admitted but the allegation will be greatly weakened on scrutiny for they are here given in the sense entertained of them in nautic parlance such are generally illustrative of some of the lingual or local peculiarities of sea life or borne on its literature and therefore are necessarily admitted as having a footing in maritime philology some of our misused words and archaic phrases are by influence of the newspaper magnates brought across the atlantic and reappear among us under the style and title of americanisms after which fashion in the lapse of time and the mutation of dialect vocables once differing in origin and meaning may become identical in sense and sound as for example the word alarm alarum a bell from the german leum but the military alarm on a drum is the italian al arm finally natural history a taste for which is a substantial blessing to the sailor is too vast a department for our professional pages however a few requisite definitions of the familiar products of the earth air and water are introduced numbers of marine birds and many fishes so often misnamed are entered upon the muster and especially those which the blue jackets vote to be very good eating yet as a reverend author has well observed we should in such cases recur to the probable state of their appetites at the time of experiment the most general nautic dishes and refections are likewise cited to the making of which most of our sea cooks are competent there being no purée entremets or fricandeau to trouble them but though they are at times libelled as being sent from the infernal regions they are pretty fair in their way and though no great shakes in domestic chemistry they can enter the lists against any white-aproned artiste at pea soup beef-steak lobscous pillow curried shark twice laid 
or savoury sea pie still a more luxurious tendency in this department is casting its shadow before and there are sybarites invading the ocean to whom the taste of junk is all but unknown w h smythe end of section one read by sandra stevenson parsborough nova scotia twenty twenty three Section 2 of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases, A to A D. A. The highest class of the excellence of merchant ships on Lloyd's books, subdivided into A1 and A2, after which they descend by the vowels a one being the very best of the first class formerly a river-built thames ship took the first rate for twelve years a bristol one for eleven and those of the northern ports ten some of the outport built ships keep their rating six to eight years and inferior ones only four but improvements in shipbuilding and the large introduction of iron are now claiming longer life ah is an Anglo-Saxonism for in or on, as aboard, a-going, etc. A. B. The rating of able seamen on the ship's books. These two letters are often used as an epithet for the person so rated. He must be equal to all the duties required of a seaman in a ship, not only as regards the saying to hand, reef, and steer, but also to strop a block, splice, knot, turn in rigging raise a mouse on the mainstay and be an example to the ordinary seaman and landsman a bob a turkish sailor who plies in coasting craft a back the situation of a ship's sails when the wind bears against their front surfaces they are laid aback when this is purposely effected to deaden her way by rounding in the weather braces and taken aback when brought to by an unexpected change of wind or by inattention in the helmsman all aback forward the notice given from the forecastle when the head sails are pressed aback by a sudden change in the wind see work aback taken aback a colloquialism for being suddenly surprised or found out abacus a board with balls sliding on small rods used in china russia etc for calculating bills etc abaft this word generally speaking means behind inferred relatively beginning from the stem and continuing towards the stern that is the hinder part of the ship abaft the beam implies any direction between a supposed transverse line amidships and the stern whether in or out of the ship it is the relative situation of an object with the ship when the object is placed in the arc of the horizon contained between a line at right angles with the keel and the point of the compass which is directly opposite the ship's course an object as a man overboard is described by the lookout man at the masthead as a beam before or abaft the beam by so many points of the compass as a vessel seen may be three points before the beam etc abaca a fine vegetable fibre with which the white manila rope so much used on the indian station is made this rope floats in water and is not subject to rot nor does it require tarring a frigate on the china station in eighteen o five had nearly the whole of her running rigging of this cordage abandonment of a vessel deserting and abandoning her by reason of unseaworthiness or danger of remaining in her also when grounded and cannot be saved this never occurs but in imminent cases therefore before the insured can demand recompense from the underwriter they must cede or abandon to him the right of all property which may be recovered from shipwreck capture or any other peril stated in the policy other parties entering and bringing the vessel into port obtain salvage vide derelict to abase an old word signifying to lower a flag or sail 
abbesse is in use in the French marine, and both may be derived from the still older abbé. Abase literally means to cast down, to humble, to abate. An old Anglo-Norman word from abattre, to beat down or destroy, as to abate a castle or fort, is to beat it down, and a gale is said to abate when it decreases. The term is still used in law. Abatement, a plea by which a reduction of freight is demanded, when unforeseen causes have delayed or hindered the performance of a stipulated charter party. Abatis, an obstruction used in temporary fortification, composed of fell trees, deprived of their smaller branches, and secured to the ground side by side with their tops towards the enemy, applicable to the front of posts, works, or positions, and occasionally to the bars of rivers. Abbey lubber. This is an old term of reproach for idleness, and is here quoted only as bearing upon the nautical lubber. In the burning of Paul's church, 1563, it is thus explained, quote, An abbey lubber that was idle, well fed, a long, lewd, neither loiterer that might work and would not, unquote. A blast, crossbow, hence, a blaster, crossbowman. A brocken, the old term for beginning or broaching a barrel, cask, or any vessel of drink. A beam, in a line at right angles to the vessel's length, opposite the center of a ship's side. A beam arm, for this curved timber see fork beams. Aber, an ancient British word for the mouth of a river, as Aberbrotic, Aberavon, Aberuswith and Aber Conway, etc. It also means the confluence of two or more streams. Aberration, an apparent change of place or alteration of their mean position in the fixed stars caused by the Earth's orbital movement. Aberration of a planet signifies its progressive geocentric motion, or the space through which it appears to move as seen from the Earth during the time which light occupies in passing from the planet to us. Crown of aberration is a spurious circle surrounding the proper disk of the sun. Constant of aberration, or amount of displacement in the sun's longitude arising from the progressive motion of light, is established at twenty minutes forty-five. To abet, to excite or encourage, a common word greatly in use at boat racings and other competitive acts. Abate it a provincial term for mildewed. Abjuration, the oath taken till lately by all officers on receiving their commission, by which they abjured any claim of the Stuarts to the throne, the power of the Pope, and the Romish religion. Able, a term not simply expressive of strong faculties, but as acquainted with and equal to perform the expected duty. Able seaman, a thorough or regular bred sailor. C. A. B able-bodied, sound, healthy, and fit for the royal service. able whackets, a popular sea-game with cards, wherein the loser is beaten over the palms of the hands with a handkerchief tightly twisted like a rope, very popular with horny-fisted salts. Aboard, inside or upon a ship, the act of residing afloat, to hug the land in approaching the shore, to fall aboard of, is for one vessel to run afoul of another. To haul the tacks aboard is to bring their weather clues down to the chest tree, or literally, to set the courses. To lay an enemy aboard, to run into or alongside. Abode, waited for, as ship ran to the appointed place of rendezvous and abode there for her consort. Abert, an Anglo-Saxon term meaning across, from shore to shore, of a port or river. About. Circularly, the situation of a ship after she's gone round and trimmed sails on the opposite tack, ready about and about ship, are orders to the ship's company to prepare for tacking by being at their stations. Above board, over the deck, a term used for open fair dealing without artifice or trick. A box, a word used in veering for a back alluding to the situation of the headyards in paying off, 
see brace a back, lay the head yards a box. In former times, and even at present, many good seamen prefer to lay the head yards square or a box to heave to. It brings the vessel more under command for sudden evolution, wearing or staying. Abraham men, a cant term for vagabonds who formerly begged about under pretense of having been discharged destitute from ships and hospitals, whence an idle malingerer wanting to enter the doctor's list is said to sham Abraham. From a ward in Bedlam, which was appropriated for the reception of idiots, which was named Abraham, it is a very old term, and was cited by Burton in The Anatomy of Melancholy, so far back as 1621. To a braise, to dub or smooth planks. Abrasion, the rubbing off or wearing away of the parts of a rock or of the soil by the impinging and friction of other bodies. Abreast, side by side, parallel or opposite to, generally used in opposition to a baft or a fore. Line abreast means a fleet advancing or retreating uniformly on a line parallel with the beam. Abreast of a place is directly off it, a direction at right angles with the keel or ship's length. In the army the term was formerly used for any number of men in front, but at present they are determined by files. Abreast, within board, signifies on a parallel with the beam. Abrid, a pintle plate. A brooch, on tap, in use, spoken of barrels of beer or other liquors. Abroad, synonymous with foreign or being on a foreign station, also an old word for spread, as all sail abroad. Abrupt, a word applied to steep, broken or craggy cliffs and headlands, especially such as are bold too and precipitous. Absis a part either of the diameter or the transverse axis of a conic section, intercepted between the vertex or any other fixed point, and a semi-ordinate, abscission of a planet, its being outstripped by another, which joins a third one before it. Absence A permission occasionally obtained on urgent affairs by officers to quit their duties. Absolute Anything free from conditions Absolute equations, the sum of the optic and eccentric equation, or the anomalies arising from a planet's not being equally distant from the Earth at all times, and its motion not being uniform. Absolute gravity is the whole force with which a body tends downwards. Absorption, a term formerly used for the sinking of islands and tracts of land instead of subsidence. Absquatulate, see squatter. Abstract, a brief register of the warrant officer's stores, by which the supplies, expenses, and remains are duly balanced. An abstract log contains the most important subjects of a ship's log. Abstract mathematics, or pure, the branch which investigates and demonstrates the properties of magnitude, figure, or quantity, absolutely and generally considered, without restriction to any species in particular, such as arithmetic and geometry. A burton, the situation of casks when they are stowed in the hold athwart ship or in a line with the beam. A butt, when two timbers or planks are united endways, they are said to butt or abut against each other. See but. Abim, places supposed to be the site of constant whirlpools such as Charybdis, the Maelstrom, and others. It means generally an abyss. Abyss, a deep mass of waters. In hydrography, it was synonymous with gulf. Academite, an old term for an officer brought up at the Royal Navy Academy at Portsmouth, afterwards named the Royal Naval College. Aker, fuil, compounded of the British aker, or anchor, and fuil, a pill or harbour, and means a safe anchorage. A calfe, a class of marine animals of low organisation, having a translucent, jelly-like structure, and frequently possessing the property of stinging, whence their name, a calfe, a nettle. The common jellyfish, medusa, and the Portuguese man-of-war, fisalia, are the best-known examples. A cast, 
the old word for lost or cast away. In weighing anchor, the headyards are generally braced a cast to cause the vessel to cast in the direction. Does she take a cast? Is frequently the question of the officer abaft, a cater, an old word for purveyor of victuals, whence caterer or superintendent and provider of a mess. Thus in Ben Johnson's The Devil is an Ass, quote, He is my wardrobe man, my a cater, cook, butler, and steward. End quote. A cater's victuals, provisions purchased, delicious food, dainties. Acatium, a word used in Roman naval affairs for a small boat, and also the main mast of a ship. Acceleration, the increase of velocity in a moving body by the force of gravity. A planet is said to be accelerated when its actual diurnal motion exceeds its mean. In fixed stars, the acceleration is the mean time by which they anticipate the sun's diurnal revolution, which is three minutes fifty-six seconds nearly. Acceleration of the moon is the increase of her mean motion, caused by a slow change in the eccentricity of the terrestrial orbit, and which has sensibly diminished the length of the moon's revolution since the time of the earliest observations. Access, means of entry on board. Accessible, a place which can be approached by land or sea. Acclivity, the upward slope of an inclined cliff. A coil, to coil together by folding around, see coil. Accolade, ad and column, Latin. The ceremony of dubbing a knight and the consequent embrace formerly customary on the occasion. Accommodations, cabins fitted for passengers. Accommodation ladder, a convenient flight of steps fixed at the gangway by which officers and visitors enter the ship. Accommodation, the physical application of one thing to another by analogy. A company, to sail together, to sail in convoy. To accost, to pass within the hail of a ship, to sail coastwise, to approach, to draw near, or come side by side. Account, going upon account, a phrase for buccaneering. Accountant General of the Navy. Superintendent of Pay and General Accounts of the Navy. Accounts. The several books and registers of stores, provisions, slops, and contingents of a ship or fleet. And they are strictly enjoined to be correct, real, and precise, both in receipt and expenditure. Account sales. A form of bookkeeping in commerce. Accoutrement. An old term for an habiliment or part of the trappings and furniture of a soldier or knight, now generally used for the belts, pouches, and equipments of soldiers or marines. A cool, a word used by old voyagers for the end of a deep bay. It is corrupted from cul-de-sac. Achator, the old word for caterer of a mess. Achernar, a star of the first magnitude in the constellation Eridanus, called by navigators the spring of the river. It is invisible in our latitude, Alpha Eridani. Properly should be utter nar. Achievement. A signal exploit, escutcheon. Armorial bearings granted for achievement. Achromatic. An optical term applied to those telescopes in which aberration of the rays of light and the colors dependent thereon are partially corrected. See aplanatic. A chronicle, an ancient term, signifying the rising of the heavenly bodies at sunset or setting at sunrise. Acker, see eager or aigre, also an eddying ripple on the surface of flooded waters, a tide swelling above another tide as in the Severn. See boar. Ackmen, or ack pirates, freshwater thieves, those who steal on navigable rivers. A cockbill, see cockbill. The anchor hangs by its ring at the cathead, in a position for dropping. Acolyte, a term sometimes used to distinguish the smaller component of a double star, a subordinate officer in the ancient church. Acon, a flat-bottomed Mediterranean boat or lump, for carrying cargoes over shoals. Acquittance, a commercial term more generally called quittance which see. 
acre or acre fight an old duel fought by warriors between the frontiers of england and scotland with sword and lance this duelling was also called camp fight across the tide a ship riding across tide with the wind in the direction of the tide would tend to leeward of her anchor but with a weather tide or that running against the wind if the tide be strong would tend to windward a ship under sail should prefer the tack that stems the tide with the wind across the stream when the anchor is let go a crostolium a buckler helmet or other symbolical ornament on the prow of ancient ships the origin of the modern figurehead act and intention must be united in admiralty law act a peninsula the term was particularly applied by the ancients to the sea coast around mount athos act of court the decision of the court or judge on the verdict or the overruling of the court on a point of law act of god this comprehends all sudden accidents arising from physical causes as distinguished from human agency such as from lightning earthquakes hurricanes plagues and epidemic contagion amongst the crew for none of these are ship owners responsible act of grace an act of parliament for a general and free pardon for deserters from the service and others acting commission when a commissioned officer is invalided his vacancy is filled up pending the pleasure of the admiralty by an acting order but when an officer dies on a station where the admiralty delegates the power to the admiral commanding in chief the vacancy is filled by an acting commission thus also rear admirals now act on acting commissions as vice admirals during command on their station but return to their proper position on the navy list when it ceases action synonymous with battle also a term in mechanics for the effort which one body exerts against another or the effects resulting therefrom action and reaction the mutual successive contrary impulses of two bodies active service duty against an enemy operations in his presence or in the present day it denotes serving on full pay on the active list in contradistinction to those who are virtually retired and placed on separate lists activity the virtue of acting the sphere of activity is the surrounding space to which the efficacy of a body extends as the attraction of the magnet acto or acton a kind of defensive tunic made of quilted leather or other strong material formerly worn under the outer dress and even under a coat of mail actuariae long light vessels of the ancients especially contrived for swiftness propelled both by sails and oars of the latter never less than twenty acumba oakum the anglo-saxon term for the hards or the coarse part of flax or unplucked wool acute terminating in a point and opposed to obtuse an acute angle is less than a right one or within ninety degrees acute angled triangle that which has all its angles acute End of section two. Read by Sandra in Nova Scotia. Section three of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A digest of sea terms and phrases. A D to A F. Adamant the lodestone the magnet the sense in which it was held by early voyagers but others considered it as a precious stone or gem adamas the moon in nautic horoscopes adapter a brass tube to fit the eye end of a telescope into which all the eye pieces will screw adaris a word which howell explains as the flower of sea water Adel or Adel, an old term for the putrid water in casks. Addis, an adz, also the addled eggs of gulls and other sea fowl. Adlings, accumulated pay or wages. Adelantado, a lieutenant of the king of Spain, 
but used by old English writers for admiral. Adhesion. Consent to a proposal, union, or temporary cohesion, as two vessels forced into adhesion by the pressure of the tide on their beam. Adit. A space in ancient ships in the upper and broadest part at which people entered. The adit of a military mine is the aperture by which it is dug and charged. The name is also applied to an air hole or drift. Adjacent, lying close to another object, a word applied to the relative situations of capes or bays from the ship. Adjacent angle is one immediately contiguous to another, so that they have one common side. Adjourn, to put off until another day. Adjournments can be made in courts martial from day to day, Sundays accepted until sentence is passed. Adjudication the act of adjudging prizes by legal decree. Captors are compelled to submit the adjudication of their captures to a competent tribunal. To adjust, to arrange an instrument for use and observation, as to adjust a sextant or the escapement of a chronometer, to set the frame of a ship. Adjustment. In marine insurance, the ascertaining and finally settling the amount of indemnity, whether of average or of salvage, which the insured, after all proper deductions have been made, is entitled to receive under the policy when the ship is lost. Adjustment of the compass, swinging a ship to every point of bearing to note the variation or error of the needle upon each rum due to the local attraction of the iron or the mass on each separate compass bearing thus in latitude seventy six degrees north it was found to be plus twenty two degrees thirty minutes with the head west southwest and minus fifty six degrees thirty minutes on the opposite bearing or east northeast adjutant from latin adjuvo to help a military assistant to field officers. The term has been applied to an assistant captain of a fleet. It is indeed the duty performed by first lieutenants. Ad measurement. The calculation of proportions according to assumed rules, often ignorantly practiced in estimating the tonnage of a ship. Admiral. The derivation of this noble title from the Greek almiros, from the Latin admirabilis, from the Saxon en meriel and from the french omer appear all fanciful it is extensively received that the sicilians first adopted it from emir the sea of their saracen masters but it presents a kind of unusual etymological inversion the term is most frequent in old romance but the style and title was not used by us until twelve eighty six and in twelve ninety four william de Leybourne was designated Amiral de la Mer du Roi d'Angleterre, six years afterwards, Viscount Narbonne was constituted Admiral of France, which dates nearly fixed the commencement of the two states as maritime powers. The Admiral is the chief commander of a fleet, but of this rank there are three degrees, distinguished by a flag at the fore, main or mizzenmast, according to the title of Admiral, Vice Admiral, or Rear Admiral. These were again subdivided according to their colour of red, white, or blue, which had to be likewise borne by the squadrons they respectively commanded. See flag. In 1865 the colours were omitted, and the only flag now hoisted by ships of war is the white St. George's Ansang. For admirals, the white St. George's Cross at the main, for or mizzen. The admiral of the fleet is the highest officer under the Admiralty of Great Britain. It is rather an honorary distinction and usually attained by seniority and service. When this officer serves afloat, he hoists the proud distinction of the Union flag at the main. The Lord High Admiral was one of the principal officers of the state, who formally decided all cases relating to the sea. He wore a gold call and chain, similar in form to that which has descended to the boatswain and his mate. This dignity has been extinct for many years, and the duty merged into that of the Lord's Commissioners and Admiralty Court, 
in eighteen twenty seven it was revived for a short time in the person of his royal highness the duke of clarence the epithet of admiral was also formerly applied to any large or leading ship without reference to flag and is still used for the principal vessel in the cod and whale fisheries that which arrives first in any port of newfoundland retains this title during the season with certain rights of beach in flakes the master of the second ship becomes the vice-admiral and the master of the third the rear admiral admiral a beautiful and rare shell of the genus conus the varieties are designated the grand admiral the vice admiral the orange admiral and the extra admiral admiralty an office for the administration of naval affairs presided over by a lord high admiral whether the duty be discharged by one person or by commissioners under the royal patent who are styled lords and during our former wars generally consisted of seven the present constitution of the board of admiralty comprises the first lord the minister and civilian as to office four naval lords one civil lord attending to accounts etc one chief secretary one second secretary two lords and one secretary form a legal board of admiralty wherever they may be assembled under the authority of the board or its chief admiralty black book see black book admiralty court the constitution of this court relatively to the legislative power of the king in council is analogous to that of the courts of common law relatively to the parliament of the kingdom high court of admiralty a supreme court of law in which the authority of the lord high admiral is ostensibly exercised in his judicial capacity for the trial of maritime causes of a civil nature although termed the high court of admiralty more properly this is the court of vice-admiralty and relates solely to civil and military matters of the sea and sea boundaries prizes collisions vessels or goods cast on the shore where the vice-admirals have civil jurisdiction but no naval power as the lord lieutenants of counties are named in their patents vice-admirals of the same in like manner all governors of colonies all cases in connection are tried by the admiralty court in london or by our courts of vice-admiralty and prize jurisdictions abroad admirable as some of the decisions of this expensive tribunal have been it has all the powers of the inquisition in its practice and has thereby been an instrument of persecution to some innocent navigators while it has befriended notorious villains besides this we have the admiralty court of oyer and termine for the trial of all murders piracies or criminal acts which occur within the limits of the country on the coastlines at sea or wherever the admiralty jurisdiction extends the deck of a british ship included admiralty midshipman formerly one who having served the appointed time and passed his examination for lieutenant was appointed to a ship by the admiralty and thus named in contradistinction to those who used to be rated by the captain he generally had precedence for promotion to acting orders adonis an anguilliform fish about six inches long it is of a golden colour with a greenish tint and has a white line from its very small gills to the tail adornings the carved work on the quarter and stern galleries of men-of-war adown the ball of privateersmen for the crew of a captured vessel to go below saxon adown adreamt dozing that sensation so often combated with towards the end of a first or middle watch it being the state as an old author has it between sleeping and waking adreamt or adreamt an old term for drowned adrift floating at random the state of a boat or vessel broken from her moorings and driven to and fro without control by the winds and waves cast loose cut adrift adscripts sometimes used for the tangents of arcs ad valorum duties levied on commercial goods according to their value to advance an old word meaning to raise to honour advanced post a spot of ground seized by a party to secure their front a piquet or outpost advanced squadron 
one on the lookout advance or vanguard that division of a force which is next the enemy or which marches before a body advance fuss a ditch of water round the esplanade or glacis of a fortification advance the order to marines and small arm men to move forward advance list the register by which two months wages to the crew are paid on first commission and a quarter's to officers advancement promotion to higher rank advance money in men of war and most merchant ships the advance of two months wages is given to the crew previous to going to sea the clearing off of which is called working up the dead horse advance note a document issued by owners of a ship or their agents promising to pay a seaman or to his order a sum of money and part of his wages within a certain number of days after he has sailed in the ship advance notes are quite negotiable before a seaman has taken his departure advantage or vantage ground that which gives superiority of attack on or defence against an enemy affording means of annoyance or resistance adventure an enterprise in which something is left to hazard a bill of adventure is one signed by the merchant by which he takes the chances of the voyage adversary generally applied to an enemy but strictly an opponent in single combat adverse the opposite of favourable as an adverse wind advice boat a small fast sailing vessel in advance of a fleet employed to carry intelligence with all possible dispatch they were first used in sixteen ninety two to gain tidings of what was transacting in brest previous to the battle of la hogue advocate general an officer of the high court of admiralty whose duty it is to appear for the lord high admiral in that court the court of delegates or any other wherein his rights are concerned judge advocate of the navy a law officer appointed to watch over and direct proceedings connected with courts martial deputy judge advocate an appointment made by the sudden selection of some secretary or captain's clerk to perform the duty at a court martial where no legal person is empowered utterly ignorant of the law or the customs of the naval service adds or adis a cutting tool of the axe kind for dubbing flat and circular work much used by shipwrights especially by the parsee builders in india with whom it serves for axe plane and chisel it is a curious fact that from the polar regions to the equator and southerly throughout polynesia this instrument and its peculiar adaptations whether made of iron basalt nephrite etc all preserve the same idea or identity of conception i note senators of miletus who held their deliberations on board ship erate ancient ships fitted with brazen prows aerolites one of the many names given to those solid masses or stones which occasionally fall from the atmosphere to the surface of the earth the assumption of their periodicity cannot as yet be considered as confirmed aerology the rational doctrine or science of the air and its phenomena aeromancy formerly the art of divining by the air but now used for foretelling the changes in the weather either by experience or by instruments aerometry the science of measuring the air its powers pressure and properties estival belonging to summer the solstitial point whereby the sun's ascent above the equator is determined estuary see estuary ewol an anglo-saxon term for a twig basket for catching fish afeard this is a very common expression for afraid and though thought low is a true archaism of our language as seen in chaucer shakespeare and ben jonson major moore terms it an old and good word Affer, the southwest wind of the latins and used by some of the early voyagers affair an indecisive engagement a duel affected an algebraic term for an equation in which the unknown quantity rises to two or more several powers affectionate friends 
an official inconsistent subscription even to letters of reproof and impressed used by the former board of commissioners of the navy to such officers as were not of noble families or bore titles the only british board that ever made so mean a distinction equally kind with the regrets of the clergy on burning a heretic or those of walton in cutting a live fish tenderly it was probably adopted from james duke of york who when lord high admiral always so subscribed his official letters it is said that this practice was discontinued in consequence of a distinguished naval captain a knight adding your affectionate friend he was thereupon desired to discontinue such an expression when he replied i am gentlemen no longer your affectionate friend j Fillimore. affidavit a declaration upon oath weakened in importance by its too frequent administration at custom houses lazarettos etc declarations are now substituted in the case of naval officers affirmative the positive sign or quantity in algebra also signal flag or pendant by which a request or order is answered affluent a stream flowing directly into another stream a more specific term than tributary afforciament an old term for a fortress or stronghold affreightment a contract for the letting the vessel or a part of her for freight see contract of affreightment afloat borne up and supported by the water buoyed clear of the ground also used for being on board ship afore a saxon word opposed to abaft and signifying that part of the ship which lies forward or near the stem it also means farther forward as the galley is afore the bits afore the same as before the mast afore the beam all the field of view from a midship in a right angle to the ship's keel to the horizon forward afore the mast see before the mast a foundret an archaism of sunk or foundered afraid one of the most reproachful sea epithets as not only conveying the meaning being struck with fear but also implies rank cowardice see afeard aft a saxon word contradistinctive of four and an abbreviation of abaft the hinder part of the ship or that nearest the stern right aft is in a direct line with the keel from the stern to haul aft a sheet is to pull on the rope which brings the clue or corner of the sails more in the direction of the stern the mast rakes aft when it inclines towards the stern aft castle an elevation on the after part of our ships of war opposed to forecastle for the purpose of fighting after a comparative adjective applied to any object in the hind part of a ship or boat as the after cabin the after hatchway etc after sails yards and braces those attached to the main and mizzen masts opposed to fore after body the part of the ship's hull which is abaft the midships or dead flat as seen from astern the term is however more particularly used in expressing the figure or shape of that part of the ship see dead flat after clap whatever disagreeable occurrence takes place after the consequences of the cause were thought at an end a principal application being when a ship supposed to have struck opens her fire again this is a very old english word alluding to unexpected events happening after the seeming end of an affair thus spencer in mother hubbard's tale quote, and bad next day that all should ready be but they more subtle meaning had than he for the next morrow's meet they closely meant for fear of afterclaps for to prevent end quote. after end the stern of a ship or anything in her which has that end towards the stern after face see back of the post after guard the men who are stationed on the quarter deck and poop to work the after sails it was generally composed of ordinary seamen and landsmen constituting with wasters the largest part of the crew on whom the principal drudgery of the ship devolved at present the crews of ships of war are composed chiefly of able and ordinary seamen landsmen are omitted after ladder leads to captains and officers quarters and only used by officers aftermost 
the last objects in a ship reckoned from forwards as the aftermost mast aftermost guns etc afternoon watch the men on deck duty from noon till four p m after orders those which are given out after the regular issue of the daily orders after part the locality towards the stern from dead flat as in the after part of the forehold after peak the contracted part of a vessel's hold which lies in the run or aftermost portion of the hold in contradistinction to fore peak both are the sharp ends of the ship after rake that part of the hull which overhangs the after end of keel after sails all those on the aftermasts as well as on the stays between the main and mizzen masts their effect is to balance the head sails in the manner that a weathercock or vane is moved of which the mainmast must be considered the pivot or center the reverse of head sails square the after yards refers to the yards on the main and mizzen masts after timbers all those timbers abaft the midship section or bearing part of a vessel aftmost the same as aftermost aftward in the direction of the stern end of section three read by sandra in nova scotia section four of the sailor's word book this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the sailor's word book by w h smythe a g to a m aga a superior turkish officer against the sun coiling a rope in the direction from the right hand towards the left the contrary of with the sun this term applies to a position north of the sun south of the sun it would be reversed agal agal one of the sifuki forming a commercial article from the malay isles to china where it is made into a strong cement the best is the gracilaria spinosa agal agal derives its name from tanjong agal on the north coast of borneo where it was originally collected it is now found in great abundance throughout the polynesian islands mauritius etc it is soluble and forms a clear jelly used by consumptive patients it fetches a high price in china it is supposed that the sea swallow derives his materials for the edible birds nests at borneo from this fucus agate the cap for the pivots of the compass cards formed of hard siliceous stone a chalcedony or carnelian etc agave the american aloe from which cordage is made similar to the piña of manila the fruit also when expressed affords the refreshing drink pulque age in chronology a period of a hundred years ship's age one of the stipulations of contracts at lloyd's age of the moon is the interval of time or number of days elapsed since the previous conjunction or new moon agency payment pro opera et labore fixed by the prize act at five per cent as a fair average but it gives nothing where the property is restored in such cases it is usual for the agent to charge a gross sum agency naval a useful class of persons who transact the monetary affairs of officers and frequently help them to the top branches of the profession they are paid for their services by a percentage of two and a half agent in physics expresses that by which a thing is done or effected navy agent is a deputy employed to pass accounts transact business and receive pay or other monies in behoof of the officers and crew and to apply the proceeds as directed by them agent victuallers officers appointed to the charge of provisions at our foreign ports and stations to contract for buy and regulate under the authority of the commissioners of the navy see negligence prize agent one appointed for the sale of prizes and nominated in equal numbers by the commander the officers and the ship's company agents to lloyd's see lloyd's agents aggression the first act of injury in provoking warfare 
agil an italian word applied to denote the profit arising from discounting bills also the difference between the value of bank stock and currency adjustment an embankment against the sea or rivers or one thrown up to fence out a stream agon a chinese kind of metal symbol see gong it is singular that gower circa thirteen ninety five using this old word for gone thus metallicizes quote, of brass of silver and of gold the world is past and a gone End quote. agonist a champion prize-fighter agreement except vessels of less than eighty tons register the master of a ship must enter into an agreement with every seaman whom he carries from any port in great britain as one of his crew and that agreement must be in the form sanctioned by the Board of Trade. See Running Agreement. Aground. The situation of a ship or other vessel whose bottom touches or rests upon the ground. It also signifies stranded, and is used figuratively for being disabled or hindered. Agua Ardiente. Spanish. Corrupted into Aguardiente. The adulterated brandy of Spain supplied to ships. Aguara, the Spanish and Portuguese term for watering place. Agoglia, a common name for sharp pointed rocks, from the Italian for needle, written agula in Spanish and Portuguese charts. Ahead, a term especially referable to any object farther onward, or immediately before the ship, or in the course steered, and therefore opposed to a stern ahead of the reckoning is sailing beyond the estimated position of the ship ahead is also used for progress as cannot get ahead and is generally applied to forward in advance a hold a term of our early navigators for bringing a ship close to the wind so as to hold or keep to it a who or all a who as our saxon forefathers had it a wry, a slant, lopsided, see askew. Ahoy, see ho. A hull, a ship under bare poles and her helm a lee, driving from wind and sea, stern foremost, also a ship deserted and exposed to the tempestuous winds. To aid, to succor, to supply with provisions or stores. Aide de camp a military staff officer who carries and circulates the general's orders and another class selected as expert at carving and dancing in a ship flag lieutenant to an admiral or in action the quarter-deck midshipman to a captain eger the sudden flowing of the sea called in the fens of lincolnshire acker sea boar aguade french aguada spanish water as provision for ships aguades watering places on french coasts aiguille aimanti magnetic needle de carène outrigger d'inclinaison dipping needle de trait or aralingue a bolt rope needle aiguille the peculiar small fishing boats in the garonne and other rivers of guyenne Aiguillettes, French aiguillette, tagged points or cords worn across the breast in some uniforms of generals, staff officers, and special mounted corps. Aiguillettes, small plates of steel placed on the shoulders in medieval armor. Aim, the direction of a musket, cannon, or any other firearm or missile weapon towards its object. To take aim, directing the piece to the object. Air, the elastic, compressible, and dilatable fluid encompassing the terraqueous globe. It penetrates and pervades other bodies, and thus animates and excites all nature. Air means also a gentle breath of wind gliding over the surface of the water, to air, to dry, or ventilate. Air bladder, a vesicle containing gas, situated immediately beneath the spinal column in most fish, and often communicating by a tube with the gullet. It is the homologue of the lungs of air-breathing vertebrates. Air-braving, defying the winds. Air-cone, 
in the marine engine is to receive the gases which enter the hot well from the air pump where after ascending they escape through a pipe at the top air a name in our northern islands for a bank of sand air funnel a cavity formed by omission of a timber in the upper works of a vessel to admit fresh air into the hold of a ship and convey the fowl out of it air gun a silent weapon which propels bullets by the expansive force of air only airing stage a wooden platform on which gunpowder is aired and dried air jacket a leathern garment furnished with inflated bladders to buoy the wearer up in the water see air air pipes funnels for clearing ships holds of foul air on the principle of the rarefying power of heat air ports large scuttles in ships bows for the admission of air when the other ports are down the americans also call their side ports by that name air pump an apparatus to remove the water and gases accumulating in the condenser while the engine is at work air scuttles the same as air ports air shafts vertical holes made in mining to supply the adits with fresh air wooden shafts are sometimes adopted on board ship for a similar purpose ert or art a north country word for a bearing point of the compass or quarter of the heavens thus the song quote, of all the earths a wind can blow i dearly love the west End quote. airy breezy ache down a form of the term acton as a defensive dress alablaster an arbalist or crossbowman also the corruption of alabaster alamac the name given in nautical astronomy to that beautiful double star anak al art of the arabians or gamma andromedae alamati the protellaria pelagica or storm finch mother carries chicken or stormy petrel a land a term formerly used for to the shore on shore or to land alarm alarum from the italian allarmi an apprehension from sudden noise or report the drum or signal by which men are summoned to stand on their guard in time of danger false alarm is sometimes occasioned by a timid or negligent sentry and at others designedly by an officer to ascertain the promptness of his men sometimes false alarms are given by the enemy to harass the adversary old rider defines alarm as a watchword showing the nearness of the enemies alarm post a place appointed for troops to assemble in case of a sudden alarm albacore a fish of the family scombridae found in shoals in the ocean it is about five or six feet long with an average weight of nearly one hundred pounds when fine albany beef a name for the sturgeon of the hudson river where it is taken in quantity for commerce albatross a large voracious long-winged seabird belonging to the genus diomedea very abundant in the southern ocean and the northern pacific though said to be rarely met with within the tropics albion an early name of england from the whiteness of the eastern coast cliffs alburnum the sapwood of timber commonly termed the slab cuts alcade a governor or officer of justice amongst the moors spaniards and portuguese alcatraz the pelican alcatraz island is situated in the mouth of the river san francisco in california so named from its being covered with these birds also alcatraz on the coast of africa from pelicana sula booby columbus mentions the alcatraz when nearing america and drayton says quote, most like to that sharp-sighted alcatraz that beats the air above the liquid glass End quote. aldebaran the lucida of taurus the well-known nautical star popularly called bull's eye a lee the contrary of a weather the position of the helm when its tiller is borne over to the lee side of the ship in order to go about or put her head to windward 
hard a lee or luff a lee is said to the steersman to put the helm down helms a lee the word of command given on putting the helm down and causing the headsails to shake in the wind alamein the early name for germany alert on the lookout and ready for any sudden duty nearly synonymous with alarm alerto called frequently by spanish sentinels alewife the clupea alosa a fish of the herring kind which appears in the philosophical transactions for sixteen seventy eight as the aloof the corruption therefore was a ready one alexiacus the appellation under which neptune was implored to protect the nets of the tunny fisheries from the swordfish alfera or alferez alfier french alferez spanish standard bearer ensign cornet the old english term for ensign it was in use in our forces till the civil wars of charles i alfonditza the custom house at lisbon alga a species of millipora algae seaweeds and the floating scum-like substances on fresh water they deserve to be more studied for some as dulse laver batter locks etc are eatable and others are useful for manure algebra a general method of resolving mathematical problems by means of equations or rather computing abstract quantities by symbols or signs a literal arithmetic algenib a principal star gamma in pegasus algier a spear used by fishermen in olden times algier duty an imposition laid on merchant's goods by the long parliament for the redemption of captives in the mediterranean algol a wonderful variable star in perseus which goes through its changes in about two days and twenty-one hours algology scientific researches into the nature of sea plants algorab a star taking rank as the alpha of corvus but its brightness of late is rivalled by beta corvi al hidad an arabic name for the index or fiducial of an astronomical or geometrical instrument carrying sight or telescope used by early navigators a rule on the back of a common astrolabe to measure heights etc alien generally speaking one born in a foreign country out of the king's allegiance but if the parents be of the king's obedience the child is no alien an alien enemy or a person under the allegiance of the state at war with us is not generally disabled from being a witness in admiralty courts nor are debts due to him forfeited but only suspended aliens duty the impost laid on all goods imported into england in foreign bottoms over and above the regular customs alignment an imaginary line drawn to regulate the order of a squadron aliquot part that which will exactly divide a number leaving no remainder all the total quantity quite wholly all aback when all the sails are taken aback by the winds all a who or all a oak confused hanging over crooked all a tonto a ship fully rigged with masts in and yards crossed all hands the whole ship's company all hands ahoy the boatswain's summons for the whole crew to repair on deck in distinction from the watch all hands make sail the cheering order when about to chase a strange vessel all hands to quarters the call in armed merchantmen answering to the beat to quarters in a man-of-war all in the wind when a vessel's head is too close to the wind so that all her sails are shivering all over resemblance to a particular object as a ship in bad kelter quote, she's a privateer all over all overish the state of feeling when a man is neither ill nor well restless in bed and indifferent to meals in the tropics this is considered as the premonitory symptom of disease and a warning which should be looked to all ready the answer from the tops when the sails are cast loose and ready to be dropped all standing fully equipped or with clothes on to be brought up all standing 
is to be suddenly checked or stopped without any preparation paid off all standing without unrigging or waiting to return stores perhaps recommissioned the next day or hour all's well the sentries call at each bell struck or half hour between the periods of broad daylight or from eight p m to four a m all to pieces a phrase used for out and out extremely or excessively as we beat her in sailing all to pieces all weathers any time or season continually allen a word from the saxon still used in the north to denote a piece of land nearly surrounded by a stream allege a french ballast boat allegiance the legal obedience of a subject to his sovereign in return for the protection afforded a debt which in a natural born subject cannot be cancelled by any change of time or place or circumstance without the united consent of the legislature aller float or aller trout a species of fine trout frequenting the shady holes under the roots of the aller or alder tree on the banks of rivers and brooks alliance a league or confederacy between sovereigns or states for mutual safety and defence subjects of allies cannot trade with the common enemy on pain of the property being confiscated as prize to the captors alliciency the attractive power of the magnet alligator from the spanish lagarto the crocodile of america the head of this voracious animal is flat and imbricate several of the under teeth enter into and pass through the upper jaw the nape is naked on the tail are two rough lateral lines alligator water the brackish water inside the mouths of tropical rivers with white and muddy surface running into the sea Allision, synonymous in maritime law with collision though the jurists of holland introduce it to mark a distinction between one vessel running against another and two vessels striking each other allocution the harangue anciently made by the roman generals to exhort their forces allotment a part of the pay apportioned monthly to the wives children mothers or destitute fathers of the warrant and petty officers seamen and marines of ships of war on foreign stations in the merchant service all such stipulations for allotting any portion of a seaman's wages during his absence must be inserted in the agreement allotment list a document containing the requisite details attested by the four signing officers to be transmitted to the navy office allotting persons agreeing to buy a ship's cargo appoint a disinterested person to allot a share to each by affixing their respective names to allow to concede a destined portion of stores etc allowance the ration or allotted quantum of provisions which each individual receives and it is either double full two-thirds half or short according to incidents alluvion an accretion formed along seashores and the banks of rivers by the deposition of various substances held in solution or washed by the waters sea alluvions differ from those of rivers in that they form a slope towards the land ally a friend or confederated state almacantars circles parallel to the horizon and supposed to pass through every degree of the meridian an arabic term synonymous with parallels of latitude almacantars staff an instrument formerly used at sea for observing the sun's amplitude formed of an arc of about fifteen degrees almadia a small african canoe made of bark of trees some of the larger square-sterned negro boats are also thus designated almafadas large dunnage cut on the coast of portugal almagest the celebrated work of ptolemy on geometry and astronomy Ricciolus adopted the term in 1651 for his body of mathematical science. It became general, whence Chaucer, quote, his Almagista in books, great and small, unquote. Almanac, a record of the days, feasts, and celestial phenomena of the year. Though confounded with calendar, it is essentially different. 
the latter relating to time in general and the almanac to that of a year, but the term calendar can be properly used for a particular year. See Ephemeris. Almath, Hamal. The star in Aries, whence the first mansion of the moon takes its name. The Frank Elaine in Chaucer says, quote, and by his eight spears in his working, he knew full well how far Alnath was shoved for the head of Thilka Fix Ares above, that in the ninth sphere considered is. End quote. Almirante, a great sea officer or high admiral in Spain. Almirantesa, the wife of an admiral. Almuri, the upright part of an astrolabe. Alnus Caver transport ships of the early English, so called from the wood of which they were constructed. Aloft, Anglo-Saxon, aloft, on high, above, overhead, on high, synonymous with up above the tops, at the masthead, or anywhere about the higher yards, masts, and rigging of ships. Aloft there, the hailing of people in the tops, away aloft, the command to the people in the rigging to climb to their stations. Also, heaven, Poor Tom is gone aloft. Aland, an old English word for ashore, on land. Along, Saxon, lengthwise, alongside, by the side of a ship, side by side, lying along, when the wind, being on the beam, presses the ship over to leeward with the press of sail, or lying along the land. Along shore, a common nautical phrase signifying along the coast or a course which is in sight of the shore and nearly parallel to it. See Longshore. Alongst, in the middle of a stream, moored, head and stern. Aloof, the old word for keep your luff in the act of sailing to the wind. See luff, keep aloof at a distance. Aloofa, see alewife. Alo, Synonymous with below, as alow and aloft, though more properly low and aloft, carrying all sail alow and aloft is when the reefs are shaken out and all the studding sails set. Alphabetical List This is a list which accompanies the ship's books. It contains the names and number of every person in the paybook. Altair, the bright nautical star, Alpha Aquilae, binary. Alter a platform in the upper part of a dock. Altimetry, the old term for trigonometry among navigators. Alternate, reciprocal. Alternate angles are the internal angles formed by a line cutting two parallels and lying on the opposite side of the cutting line, the one below the first parallel and the other above. Alternate ratio is that of which the antecedents and consequents bear respectively to each other in any proportion which has the quantities of the same kind. Alternating winds. Peculiar winds blowing at stated times one way and then from a sudden alteration in the temperature of the elements setting in the contrary direction. A remarkable instance is that of the Gulf of Arta in the Ionian Sea, where the effect is promoted by local causes. All land and sea breezes are strictly alternating winds. These, however, are mostly intertropical the solar heat causing the sea breeze to blow on the land by day, and condensation and greater heat of the sea causing a reaction when the land has cooled to a lower temperature. Alternation or permutation of quantities is the varying or changing their order and is easily found by a continual multiplication of all numbers. Altimetry, trigonometry, the art of measuring heights or depressions of land, whether accessible or not. Altitude, the elevation of any of the heavenly bodies above the plane of the horizon, or its angular distance from the horizon, measured in the direction of a great circle passing through the zenith. Also the third dimension of a body, considered with regard to its elevation above the ground. Apparent altitude is that which appears by sensible observations made on the surface of the globe, altitude of the pole. The arc of the meridian between the pole of the heavens and the horizon of any place, and therefore equal to its geographical latitude. Altitude of the cone of the earth's and moon's shadow is the height of the one or the other during an eclipse, and is measured from the center of the body. 
altitude of a shot or shell, the perpendicular height of the vertex of the curve in which it moves above the horizon, meridian altitude, the arc of the meridian, or greater or less altitude, measured from the horizon of a celestial object in its passage over the meridian, above or below the pole, of the place of the observer. In polar regions, two such transits of the sun, and in England similarly, circumpolar stars afford double observations for the determination of time or latitude. The general term is understood by seamen to denote midday, when the passage and meridian altitude of the sun affords the latitude. True altitude is that produced by correcting the apparent one for parallax and refraction. alt Miklek, a silver Turkish coin of sixty paras, or two shillings, nine and a half pence sterling. A luff, or a loof, nearer to the wind. This is a very old form of luff, being noticed by Matthew Paris and other writers as a sea term. See luff. A lure, an old term for the gutter or drain along a battlement or parapet wall. Alveus, a very small ancient boat made from the single trunk of a tree, a monoxylon or canoe. End of section 4. Read by Sandra in Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 5 of the Sailor's Word Book A to C by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases A M to A N. A M. The unseals for anti meridian, or in the forenoon. C meridian. A main. Saxon, ah, and main. Force, strength. This was the old word to an enemy for yield, and was written amain and almain. Its literal signification is with force or vigor, all at once, suddenly, and it is generally used to anything which is moved by a tackle fall, as lower amain, let run at once. When we used to demand the salute in the narrow seas, the lowering of the topsail was called striking amain, sea strike and it was demanded by the wave amain, sea waving, or brandishing a bright sword to and fro. Amalfitan Code The oldest code of modern sea laws, compiled during the First Crusade by the people of Amalfi in Italy, who then possessed considerable commerce and maritime power. Amai, sea marks on the French coast. Ambassador a practical joke performed on board ship in warm climates, in which the dupes are unmercifully ducked in the wash-deck tub. Quote, and he was washed who ne'er was washed before. End quote. Amber, a hard, resinous substance of vegetable origin, generally of a bright yellow color and translucent. It is chiefly obtained from the southern shores of the Baltic and those of Sicily, where it is thrown up by the sea but it also occurs in beds of lignite. Ambergris, a fragrant drug found floating on sea coasts, the origin and production of which was long a matter of dispute, though now known to be a morbid product developed in the intestines of the spermaceti whale, Physeter macrocephalus. It is of a grayish color, very light, easily fusible, and is used both as a perfume and a cordial in various extracts, essences, and tinctures. Ambient, from ambio, Latin, to go round. Surrounding or investing, hence the atmosphere is designated ambient because it encompasses the earth. Ambiginal, one of the triple hyperboles of the second order. Ambit, of a geometrical figure is the perimeter or the line, or sum of all the lines by which it is bounded. Ambition is usually denominated a virtue or a vice according to its direction, but assuredly more of the former, as it is a grand stimulus to officers to avoid reproach and aspire to eminence and honor. Amplegon, obtuse, angular. Ambry, see Ombry. 
ambuscade, Spanish emboscada, a body of men lying in wait to surprise an enemy or cut off his supplies, also the site where they lurk. This, as well as ambush, obviously arose from woods having afforded hiding places. Ambush signifies an attempt to lie in concealment for the purpose of surprising the enemy without his perceiving the intention until he's attacked. Amelioration, an allowance made to the neutral purchaser on reclaiming a ship irregularly condemned for repairs she has undergone in his service. Amicable numbers are such as are mutually equal to the sum of each other's aliquot parts. Amidships, the middle of the ship, whether in regard to her length between stem and stern, or in breadth between the two sides, to put the helm amidships is to place it in a line with the keel. The term, however, has a more general bearing to the axis of the ship, as guns or stores or place amidships has reference to that line fore and aft. Externally, the term amidships as to striking, boarding, etc., would be about the main mast or half the length of the ship. See midships. Amidward, towards the midship or middle section of the vessel. Amloch, a manx or Gaelic term denoting to manure with seaweed. Amli, a manx or Gaelic term for seaweed. Ammunition. This word had an infinite variety of meanings. It includes every description of warlike stores, comprehending not only the ordnance but the powder, balls, bullets, cartridges, and equipments. Ammunition bread, that which is for the supply of armies or garrisons. Ammunition chest, a box placed abaft near the stern or in the tops of men of war to contain ammunition, for the arms therein placed in readiness for immediate action. Ammunition shoes those made for soldiers and sailors, and particularly for use by those frequenting the magazine, being soft and free from metal. Ammunition wagon, a close cart for conveying military effects. Ammunition wife, a name applied to women of doubtful character. Amnesty, an act of oblivion, by which, in a professional view, pardon is granted to those who have rebelled or deserted their colors, also to deserters who return to their ships. A mock, a term signifying slaughter, but denoting the practice of the malays when infuriated to madness with bang, a preparation from a species of hemp, of sallying into the streets or decks to murder any whom they may chance to meet, until they are either slain or fall from exhaustion, to run amuck, to run madly and attack all we meet, Pope and Dryden, as in the case of mad dogs, certain death awaited them, for if not killed in being taken, torture and impalement followed. Amorel, an archaism of admiral. Amorce, French, a word sometimes used to signify priming powder. Amperes, an ancient vessel in which the rowers used an oar on each side at once. Amphibia, a class of animals which, from a peculiar arrangement of breathing organs, can live either in water or on land, Greek amphibios, having a double manner of life, hence amphibious. Amphiprore, ancient vessels, both ends of which were prow-shaped, so that in narrow channels they need not turn. Amphisci, the inhabitants of the torrid zone, are thus denominated from their shadow being turned one part of the year to the north, and the other to the south. Amphoteroplon, see heteroplon. Amplitude, as a general term, implies extent. In astronomy it is an arc of the horizon intercepted between the true east or west points thereof, and the center of the sun, star, or planet at its rising or setting. In other words, it is the horizontal angular distance of a star from the east or west points, it is eastern or ortive when the heavenly object rises, and western or occiduous when it sets, and is moreover northern or southern according to its quarter of the horizon. Amplitude in gunnery is the range or whole distance of a projectile, or the right horizontal line subtending the curvilineal path in which it moved. Amplitude in magnetism is the difference between the rising and setting of the sun from the east and west points, as indicated by the mariner's or magnetic compass, 
which subtracted from the true amplitude constitutes the error of the compass which is the combined effect of variation and local deviation ampotis the recess or ebb of the tide amrel an archaic orthography for admiral amulet a small relic or sacred sentence preservative against disaster and disease appended to the neck by superstitious people few italian or spanish seamen are without them amusette a kind of gun on a stock like that of a musket but mounted as a swivel carrying a ball from half a pound to two pounds weight ami a foreigner serving on board subject to some prince in friendship with us anaclastics or anaclatics the ancient doctrine of refracted light or dioptrics anaclastic curves the apparent curves formed at the bottom of a vessel full of water or anything at great depths overboard to an eye placed in the air also the heavenly vault as seen through the atmosphere anadromous a term applied to migratory fishes which have their stated times of ascending rivers from the sea and returning again as the salmon and others analum a mathematical instrument for finding the course and elevation of the sun analemma a projection of the sphere on the plane of the meridian taken in a lateral point of view so that the colors become circles whilst those whose planes pass through the eye become right lines and the oblique circles ellipses on globes it is represented by a narrow double looped formed figure the length of which is equal to the breadth of the torrid zone and is divided into months and days to show approximately the solar declination and the equation of time analogy resemblance relation or equality a similitude of ratios or proportions analysis the resolution of anything into its constituent parts mathematically it is the method of resolving problems by reducing them to equations analysis of curves is that which shows their properties points of inflection station variation etc analysis of finite quantities is termed specious arithmetic or algebra analysis of infinites is a modern introduction and used for fluxions or the differential calculus analysis of powers is the evolution or resolving them into their roots analysis of metals fluids solids earths manures etc analytic that which partakes of the property of analysis and is reducible thereby anan a word going out of use uttered when an order was not understood equal to what do you say sir it is also used by corruption for anon immediately ananas bromelia pineapple anaphora a term sometimes applied to the oblique ascensions of the stars anus a genus of water birds of the order natatoris now restricted to the typical ducks anastrus si dodecatemoria anomachium the crime against the ancients of refusing to serve in the fleet the punishment affixed to which was infamy ancyromachus a kind of vessel of the middle ages used for transporting anchors and naval stores anchor a large and heavy instrument in use from the earliest times for holding and retaining ships which it executes with admirable force with few exceptions it consists of a long iron shank having at one end a ring to which the cable is attached and the other branching out into two arms with flukes or palms at their bill or extremity a stalk of timber or iron is fixed at right angles to the arms and serves to guide the flukes perpendicularly to the surface of the ground according to their various form and size anchors obtain the epithets of the sheet best bower small bower spare stream kedge and grappling which see under their respective heads anchor floating see floating anchor at anchor the situation of a ship which rides by its anchor to anchor to cast or to let go the anchor so that it falls into the ground for the ship to ride thereby to anchor with a spring on the cable see spring 
Anchor is also used figuratively for anything which confers security or stability. Anchorable, fit for anchorage. Anchorage, ground which is suitable and neither too deep, shallow, or exposed for ships to ride in safety upon. Also the set of anchors belonging to a ship. Also a royal duty levied from vessels coming to a port or roadstead for the use of its advantages. It is generally marked on the charts by an anchor and described according to its attributes of good, snug, open, or exposed. Anchor ball, a pyrotechnical combustible attached to a grapnel for adhering to and setting fire to ships. Anchor chocks, pieces indented into a wooden anchor stock where it has become worn or defective in the way of the shank, also pieces of wood or iron on which an anchor rests when it is stowed. Anchor davit, see davit. Anchored, held by the anchor, also the act of having cast anchor. Anchor hold, the fastness of the flukes on the ground, also the act of having cast anchor and taken the ground. See, home. Anchor hoops, strong iron hoops binding the stock to the end of the shank and over the nuts of the anchor. Anchor ice, the ice which is formed on and incrustates the beds of lakes and rivers, the ground grew of the eastern counties of England. See ice anchor. Anchoring, the act of casting anchor. Anchoring ground is that where anchors will find bottom, fix themselves, and hold ships securely, free from rocks, wrecks, or other matters which would break or foul the anchor or injure the cable. In legal points it is not admitted as either port, creek, road, or roadstead unless it be statio tutissima notis, a vessel dropping anchor in known foul ground or where any danger is incurred by inability to recover the anchor or by being there detained until driven off by stress of weather is not legally anchored. Anchor lining, the short pieces of plank fastened to the sides of the ship under the four channels to prevent the bill of the anchor from tearing the ship's side when fishing or drawing it up. See also billboards. Anchor ring, formerly the great ring welded into the hole for it. Recent anchors have Jews harp shackles, easily replaced and not so liable to be destroyed by chain cables. Anchor seat, an old term for the prow of a ship, still in use with Eastern nations, Chinese, Japanese, etc. Anchor shackle, an open link of iron which connects the chain with the anchor, a Jews harp shackle. Anchor smith, a forger of anchors. Anchor stock, a bar at the upper end of the shank, crossing the direction of the flukes transversely to steady their proper direction. In small anchors it is made of iron, but in large ones it is composed of two long cheeks or beams of oak, strongly bolted and tree-nailed together, secured with four iron hoops. It is now generally superseded by the iron stock. Anchor stock fashion. The method of placing the butt of one whale plank nearly over the middle of the other and the planks being broadest in the middle and tapered to the ends. They resemble an anchor stock with which it is more in keeping than is the method called top and butt, also pursued in fishing spars, making false rudder heads, etc. Anchor stocking is a mode of securing and working planks in general with tapered butts. Anchor stock tackle. A small tackle, attached to the upper part of the anchor stock when stowing the anchor, its object being to bring it perpendicular and closer to the ship. Anchor watch. A subdivision of the watch kept constantly on deck during the time the ship lies at single anchor, to be in readiness to hoist jib or stay sails, to keep the ship clear of her anchor, or in readiness to veer more cable or let go another anchor in case the ship should drive or part her anchor. This watch is also in readiness to avoid collision in close rivers by veering cable, setting sail, using the helm, etc., which formerly involved the essence of seamanship. Anchovy, the Engrolis ingrassicolis, a small fish of the family Clupede, about four inches in length, used much in sauces and seasoning when cured. It is migratory, but principally taken in the Mediterranean, where those of Gorgona are most esteemed in commerce ancient, a term formerly used for the colours and their bearer, as ensign is now. 
Shakespeare's Nim was only a corporal, but Pistol was an ancient. Ancon, a corner of angle of a knee timber. Ancon, Spanish, harbor, bay, or anchorage. Ancor string, a very old designation of a cable. Ansicle, a kind of dart thrown with a leathern thong. Andrea Ferrara, C. Ferrara. Andrew, or Andrew Miller, a cant name for a man of war, and also for government and government authorities. Andromeda, a hemispherical medusa found in the Indian and Red Seas. The body is transparent and brownish, with a black cross in the middle, and has foliaceous white arms on the upper part. Andromedae, Alpha Alpharats. A star of the first magnitude in the constellation of Andromeda. Annalise, the early name for a dirk or dagger usually worn at the girdle. Anemomachia, a whirlwind or hurricane in old writers. Anemometer, or wind gauge, an instrument wherewith to measure the direction and velocity of wind under its varying forces, a desideratum at sea. Anemone, see animal flowers. Anemoscope, a vane, index with pointers to tell the changes of the wind without referring to the weathercock. An end, the position of any spar when erected perpendicularly to the deck. The top masts are said to be an end when swayed up to their usual stations and fitted. To strike a spar or plank an end is to drive it in the direction of its length. See every rope an end. Anent, or anenst, opposite to over against. Aneroid, a portable barometer or instrument for showing variations of the weather by the pressure of the atmosphere upon a metallic box hermetically sealed. Anerist, a coast word of the western counties for nigh or almost. Anew, enough as relating to number. Angelfish, the Squatina angelus of the shark family, it inhabits the northern seas, is six or eight feet long, with a cinereous rough back and white smooth belly. The mouth is beneath the anterior part of the head, and the pectoral fins are very large. Also, coetodon. Angel head. The hook or barb of an arrow, probably angle head. Angel shot. A ball cut in two, and the halves joined by a chain. Angle. An old term for a fishing hook from the Anglo-Saxon ongle for the same. It also means a red worm used for a bait in angling or fishing. Angle, the space or aperture intersected by the natural inclination of two lines or planes meeting each other, the place of intersection being called the vertex or angular point and the lines legs. Angles are distinguished by the number of degrees they subtend to 360 degrees or the whole circumference of a circle. Angles are acute, obtuse, right, curvilinear, rectilinear, etc., all of which see. Angle dog, or angle twitch, a large earthworm sought for bait. Angle irons, certain strips of iron having their edges turned up at an angle to each other. They are of various sizes and used for the ribs and knees of the framing of iron vessels. Angle of commutation the difference between the heliocentric longitudes of the Earth and a planet or comet, the latter being reduced to the ecliptic. Angle of eccentricity, an astronomical term denoting the angle whose sign is equal to the eccentricity of an orbit. Angle of elevation, see elevation. Angle of incidence, see incidence. Angle of leeway, the difference between the apparent compass course and the true one, arising from lateral pressure and the effect of sea when close hauled, it is not applicable to courses when the wind and sea are fair. Angle of position, a term usually confined to double stars, to distinguish the line of bearing between them when they are apparently very near to each other. Angle of reflection, sea reflection. Angle of situation, this was formerly called the angle of position and is also termed the parallactic angle which see. Angle of the center, 
In fortification, the angle formed at the centre of the polygon by lines drawn from thence to the points of two adjacent bastions. Angle of the shoulder, C, Epole. Angle of the vertical, the difference between the geographical and geocentric latitudes of a place upon the Earth's surface. Angler, a fisherman, or one who angles for recreation rather than profit. Also a species of lophius, or toadfish from its ugliness and habits also called the sea devil it throws out feelers by which small fry are enticed within its power angles of timbers see beveling angling the practice of catching fish by means of a rod line hook and bait which by its mixture of idleness and chance forms recreation but however simple the art appears it requires much nicety angon a javelin, formerly used by the French, the point of which resembled a fleur de lys. It is also generally applied to the half-pike or javelin. Angossiad, an astronomical falsehood, a term originating from the pretended observations of Dangos at Malta. Angra, Spanish, bay or inlet. Angra Grande, Pequena, etc., on the coasts of Spanish and Portuguese settlements. Anguilliform applied to fishes having the shape, softness, and appearance of eels. Angular crab, an ugly, long-armed crustacean, the gonoplax angulata, with eyes on remarkably long stalks. Angular distance. This term, when applied to celestial bodies, implies that the sun and moon, or moon and stars, are within measuring distance for lunars. Angular motion is that which describes an angle or moves circularly round a point as planets revolving about the sun. Angular velocity. This is a term used in the orbits of double stars and implies the motion in a certain time of one star around the other. Anila. A commercial term for indigo, derived from the plant whence it is prepared. Spanish anil, indigo, indigofera, alnil, Arab. Animal flowers, actiniae, or sea anemones, and similar animals which project a circle of tentacula resembling flowers. Formerly, they were all classed under zoophytes. Animate. The giving power or encouragement. To animate a battery. To place guns in its embrasures. To animate a needle. To magnetize it. To animate the crew in various ways for any special duty. Anchor. An anchor of brandy contains ten gallons. The kegs in which Holland's is mostly exported are anchors and half anchors. Anchor fish, a name of a kind of cuttlefish. Ankle bone, an old seaman's term for the crawfish. Annelids, a class of worm like animals of which the body is composed of a series of rings. Annet, a seagull, well known in Northumberland and on the northern coasts. Anniversary winds, those which blow constantly at certain seasons of the year as monsoon, trade, and Etesian winds. Anona, an ancient tax for the yearly supply of corn or provisions for the army and capital, still in use in Italy. Anotine, the ancient Roman victuallers or provision vessels. Anotto, Bixa orellana the plant from the dried pulp of the seed vessels, of which a delicate red dye is obtained, used to give a rich colour to milk, butter, and cheese. Annual, those astronomical motions which return or terminate every year. Annual accounts, the ship's books and papers for the year. Annual equation, an inequality in the moon's march, arising from the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit, whereby the diurnal motion is sometimes quicker and at other times slower than her mean motion. Annual parallax, see parallax. Annual returns. In addition to the general accounts of the year, there are three returns to be transmitted to the admiral or senior officer for the admiralty. They are a report of the sailing and other qualities of the ship, state of the ship as to men, and progress of the young gentleman in navigation. Annual variation, the change produced in the right ascension or declination of a star by the precession of the equinoxes and proper motion of the star taken together, also the annual variation of the compass. Annul, to nullify a signal. 
annular, resembling an annulus or ring. An annular eclipse takes place when the apparent diameter of the moon is less than that of the sun, and a zone of light surrounds the moon while central. Annular scupper, a contrivance for fitting scuppers so that the hole can be enlarged by a movable concentric ring, in order that a surcharge of water can be freely delivered, invented by Captain Downs, R.N. Annulus, a geometrical figure, C. Ring. Annulus astronomicus, a ring of brass used formerly in navigation. In 1575, Martin Frobisher, when fitting out on his first voyage for the discovery of a northwest passage, was supplied with one which cost thirty shillings. Anomalistic month, see anomalistic period. Anomalistic period, the time of revolution of a primary or secondary planet in reference to its line of apsides, that is, from one perigee or apogee to another. Anomalistic year, space of time in which the earth passes through her orbit, distinct from and longer than the tropical year, owing to the precession of the equinoxes. Anomaly, deviation from the common rule, an irregularity in the motion of a planet by which it deviates from the aphelion or apogee. Mean anomaly formerly signified the distance of a planet's mean place from the apogee. It is the angular distance of a planet or comet from perihelion, supposing it to have moved with its mean velocity. True anomaly, the true angular distance of a planet or comet from perihelion. See eccentric and equated. Anon, quickly, directly, immediately. Anonymous partnerships those not carried on under a special name, and the particulars known only to the parties themselves. This is much practiced in France, and often occasions trouble in prize courts. And say, the dolphins or handles of brass ordnance, also the projections or arms of the ring on each side of Saturn's globe, in certain situations relative to the earth. And Ceres, birds of the goose tribe. Answer, to reply, to succeed, as the frigate has answered the signal, this boat will not answer. Answers her helm, when a ship obeys the rudder, or steers. Antarctic, opposite to the Arctic, abbreviated from anti-Arctic. Antarctic circle, one of the lesser circles of the sphere, on the south parallel of the equator, and twenty-three and a half degrees from the south pole. Antarctic ocean that which surrounds the South Pole within the imaginary circle so-called Antarctic Pole, the south end of the Earth's axis. Antares, a star of the first magnitude, popularly known as the Scorpion's Heart, Alpha Scorpio, it is one of those called nautical stars used for determining the latitude and longitude at night. Antecedental Method, a branch of general geometrical proportion, or universal comparison of ratios. Antecedentia, a planet's apparent motion to the westward, contrary to the order of the signs. Antecedent of a ratio, the first of the two terms. Antetians, those inhabitants of the earth who live under the same meridian, but in opposite hemispheres. See Antiski. Antilucan, before daylight. Antimeridian, before noon. Anti-mural, see outworks. Anthelion, a mock or spurious sun, a luminous meteor, resembling but usually larger than the solar disk. Anthracite, Greek anthrax and lithos, a stone coal demanding great draught to burn, affording great heat, little smoke, and peculiarly adapted for steamers. Antichthones, the inhabitants of countries diametrically opposite to each other. Anti-Galicians, a pair of extra back stays, sometimes used by merchantmen to support the masts when running before the trades. Anti-Guggler, a straw or crooked tube introduced into a spirit cask or neck of a bottle to suck out the contents, commonly used in 1800 to rob the captain's stewards hanging safe in hot climes. It is to be found in old dictionaries. Antilogarithm, the complement of the logarithm of a sine, tangent, or secant. Antiparallels, 
those lines which make equal angles with two other lines but contrary ways antipathies a kind of coral having a black horny stem antipodes such inhabitants of the earth as are diametrically opposite to each other from the people the term has passed to the places themselves which are situated at the two extremities of any diameter of the earth antiski the people who dwell in opposite hemispheres of the earth and whose shadows at noon fall in contrary directions ant islands generally found on spanish charts as hormigas anvil the massive block of iron on which armourers hammer forge work it is also an archaism for the handle or hilt of a sword thus coriolanus quote, here i clip the anvil of my sword End quote. It is, moreover, a little narrow flag at the end of a lance. Anyhow, do the duty by all means and at any rate or risk, as Nelson, impatient for getting to Copenhagen in 1801, exclaimed, quote, Let it be by the sound, by the belt, or anyhow, only lose not an hour. End quote. Any port in a storm signifies contentment with whatever may be tied. End of section 5. Read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 6 of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A P to A R apagogy a mathematical progress from one proposition to another ape or sea ape the long-tailed shark also an active american seal a peak a ship drawn directly over the anchor is a peak when the forestay and cable form a line it is short stay a peak when in a line with the mainstay long stay a peak the anchor is a peak when the cable has been sufficiently hove in to bring the ship over it. Yards a peak when they are topped up by contrary lifts. See peak. Aperte, ancient deep-waisted ships with high-decked forecastle and poop. Aperture, in astronomy, the opening of a telescope tube next the object glass, through which the rays of light and image of the object are conveyed to the eye. It is usually estimated by the clear diameter of the object glass. Apex, the summit or vertex of anything, as the upper point of a triangle. Aphelion, the point in the orbit of a planet or comet which is most remote from the sun, and at which the angular motion is slowest, being the end of the greater elliptic axis, the opposite of perihelion. Aphelon, the name of the double star Alpha Geminorum, Geminorum, better known as Castor. Aphracti, ancient vessels with open waists, resembling the present Torbay boats. Aplanatic, that refraction which entirely corrects the aberration and colour of the rays of light. Applets, nets for the herring fishery. A pluster. A word applied in ancient vessels both to the ornament on the prow and to the streamer or ensign on the stern. Here, as in the rudder head of Dutch vessels frequently, the dog vane was carried to denote the direction of the wind. Apobathre, ancient gangboards from the ship to the quays. Apocatastasis, the time in which a planet returns to the same point of the zodiac whence it departed. Apogee, that point of the moon's orbit which is furthest from the earth, the opposite of perigee. The apogee of the sun is synonymous with the aphelion of the earth. The word is also used as a general term to express the greatest distance of any heavenly body from the earth. Apoise, said of a vessel properly trimmed. Apostles, the nightheads or bollard timbers, where hawsers or heavy ropes are belayed. Apotomy the difference of two incommensurable mathematical quantities apalto the commercial term for a monopoly in mediterranean ports apparatus 
ammunition and equipage for war apparel in marine insurance means the furniture or appurtenances of a ship as masts yards sails ground gear guns and etc more comprehensive than apparatus apparelled fully equipped for service apparent in appearance as visible to the eye or evident to the mind which in the case of astronomical motions distances altitudes and magnitudes will be found to differ materially from their real state and require correcting to find the true place apparent equinox the position of the equinox as affected by nutation apparent horizon see horizon apparent motion the motion of celestial bodies as viewed from the earth apparent noon the instant that the sun centers on the meridian of a place apparent obliquity the obliquity of the ecliptic affected with nutation apparent place of a star this is the position for any day which it seems to occupy in the heavens as affected with aberration and nutation apparent time the time resulting from an observation of the sun an expression per contractionum for apparent solar time apparition a star or planet becoming visible after occultation perpetual apparition of the lesser northern circles wherein the stars being above the horizon never set appearance the first making of a landfall formerly astronomically used for phenomenon and phase the day of an officer's first joining a ship after his being appointed apple pie order a strange but not uncommon term for a ship in excellent condition and well looked to neat and orderly absurdly said to be a corruption of du pol au pied applicant the ordinate or right line drawn across a curve so as to be bisected by its diameter application a word of extensive use for the principles of adjusting augmenting and perfecting the relations between sciences appointed commissioned named for a special duty appointment the equipment ordnance furniture and necessaries of a ship also an officer's commission in the army appointments usually imply military accoutrements such as belts sashes gorgets etc a porter a bringer into the realm appraisement a law instrument taken out by the captors of a vessel who are primarily answerable for the expense apprentice one who is covenanted to serve another on condition of being instructed in an art and ship's apprentices are to the same effect boys under eighteen years of age bound to masters of merchant ships were exempted from impressment for three years from the date of their indentures which documents were in duplicate and exempt from stamp duty approaches the trenches zigzags saps and other works by which a besieger makes good his way up to a fortified place see trenches approval the senior officer's signature to a demand or application approximation a continual approach to a quantity sought where there is no possibility of arriving at it exactly a pulse a near approach of one heavenly body to another so as to form an apparent contact the term is principally used with reference to stars or planets when the moon passes close to them without causing occultation apron or stomach piece a strengthening compass timber fade abaft the lower part of the stern and above the foremost end of the keel that is from the head down to the fore deadwood knee to which it is scarfed it is sided to receive the fastenings of the fore hoods or planking of the bow apron of a gun a square piece of sheet lead laid over the touch hole for protecting the vent from damp also over the gun lock apron of a dock the platform rising where the gates are closed and on which the sill is fastened down Absides, line of the imaginary line joining the aphelion and perihelion points in the orbit of a planet apsis either of the two points in planetary orbits where they are at the greatest and the least distance from the sun and are termed higher or lower accordingly the two are joined by a diameter called the line of the apsides 
aquage, the old law term denoting the toll paid for water carriage. Aquarius, the eleventh sign in the zodiac, Alpha Aquarius Sadel Melik. Aquatic, inhabiting or relating to the water. Aquatile, an archaism for aquatic. Thus, Howell's lexicon describes the crocodile as partly aquatil, partly terrestrial. Aquatites, the law term for everything living in the water. Aqua, wall-sided, flat-floored boats which navigate the Rhine. Aqueduct, conduits or canals built for the conveyance of water. Aquila, the constellation Aquila, in which Alpha Aquilae is an important star of the first magnitude, used by seamen in determining the latitude and longitude, also in lunar distances. See Altair. Aquilon, the northeast wind, formerly much dreaded by mariners. Aramek, the Arabic name for the star Arcturus. Arbalist, from Arcus and Ballista, an engine to throw stones, or the crossbow used for bullets, darts, arrows, etc., formerly arbalisters formed part of a naval force. Arbiter, the judge, to whom two persons refer their differences, not always judicial, but the arbiter in his own person, of the fate of empires and peoples. Arbitrage, the referring commercial disputes to the arbitration of two or more indifferent persons. Arbitration, the settlement of disputes out of court. Arbor. In chronometry, a shaft, spindle, or axis. Arby. A northern name for the thrift or sea lavender. Arc, or arch. The segment of a circle or any curved line by which all angles are measured. Arc diurnal. See diurnal arc. Arc nocturnal. See nocturnal arc. Arc of direction or progression. The arc which a planet appears to describe when its motion is direct or progressive in the order of the signs. Arc of vision. The sun's depth below the horizon when the planets and stars begin to appear. Arch board. The part of the stern over the counter immediately under the knuckles of the stern timbers. Arch of the cove. An elliptical moulding sprung over the cove of a ship at the lower part of the taffrail. Arched squall, a violent gust of wind, usually distinguished by the arched form of the clouds near the horizon, whence they rise rapidly towards the zenith, leaving the sky visible through it. Arkel, Arkil, Orkil, Rochella tinctorum fucus, a lichen found on the rocks of the Canary and Cape de Verde groups. It yields a rich purple, Litmus, largely used in chemistry, is derived from it. Arcus, a common term among seamen for the archipelago. See also galley arches. Archi Gubernus, the commander of the imperial ship in ancient times. Archimedes Screw, an ingenious spiral pump for draining docks or raising water to any proposed height, the invention of that wonderful man. It is also used to remove grain in breweries from a lower to a higher level. The name has been recently applied to the very important introduction in steam navigation, the propelling screw. See screw propeller. Arching. When a vessel is not strongly built, there is always a tendency in the greater section to lift and the lower sections to fall, whence the fore and after ends droop, producing arching or hogging which see archipelago a corruption of aegiopelagos now applied to clusters of islands in general originally the aegean sea an archipelago has a great number of islands of various sizes disposed without order but often contains several subordinate groups such are the aegean the korean the caribbean indian polynesian and others architecture see naval architecture arctic northern or lying under arctos the bear an epithet given to the north polar regions comprised within the arctic circle a lesser circle of the sphere very nearly twenty three degrees twenty eight minutes distant from the north pole arctic ocean so called from surrounding the pole within the imaginary circle of that name arctic pole the north pole of the globe 
Arcturus, Alpha Bootis, a star of the first magnitude, close to the knee of Arctophylax, or Bootis, one of the nautical stars. Ard, or Aird, a British or Gaelic term for a rocky eminence, or rocks on a wash, hence the word hard in present use. It is also an enunciation. Ardent, said of a vessel when she gripes or comes to the wind quickly. Ar, the archaism for or, which see, a measure of land in France containing 100 square meters. Area, the plane or surface contained between any boundary lines, the superficial contents of any figure or work as the area of any square or triangle. Arenaceous, sandy, partaking of the qualities of sand, brittle, as arenaceous limestone, quartz, etc. Areno, in meteorology, a cloud of dust, often so thick as to prevent seeing a stone's throw off. It is common in South America, being raised by the wind from adjoining shores. Also off the coast of Africa, the termination of the desert of Sahara. Arenation the burying of scorbutic patients up to the neck in holes in a sandy beach for cure, also spreading hot sand over a diseased person. Areometer, an instrument for measuring the specific gravity of fluids. Argon, an old word for embankment. Argo, a name famous from Jason's romantic expedition, but absurdly quoted as the first ship for the fleets of Danaus and Minos are mentioned long before, and the Argo herself was chased by a squadron under Aetis. Argo Navis, the southern constellation of the ship, containing nine clusters, three nebulae, thirteen double and five hundred and forty single stars, of which about sixty-four are easily visible. As most of these were invisible to the Greeks, the name was probably given by the Egyptians. Argol the tartaric acid or lees adhering to the sides of wine casks, particularly of port wine, an article of commerce. Super tartrate of potas. Argolet, a light horseman of the Middle Ages. Argonauta, the paper nautilus, the sail which it was supposed to spread to catch the wind, is merely a modified arm which invests the outer surface of the shell. Argonauts. A company of forty-four heroes who sailed in the Argo to obtain the Golden Fleece, an expedition which fixes one of the most memorable epochs in history, also a geographical society instituted at Venice, to whom we owe the publication of all the charts, maps, and directories of Coronelli. Argosy, a merchant ship or carrack of burden, principally of the Levant, the name is by some derived from Ragusa, but by others with more probability from the Argo. Shakespeare mentions Argosies with portly sail. Those of the Frescobaldi were the richest and most adventurous of those times. Argosin or Argnesin, the person whose office it was to attend to the shackles of the galley slaves over whom he had a special charge. Argument an astronomical quantity upon which an equation depends, or any known number by which an unknown one proportional to the first may be found. Argument of latitude, the distance of a celestial body from one of the nodes of its orbit upon which the latitude depends. Aries, the most important point of departure in astronomy, a northern constellation forming the first of the twelve signs of the zodiac, into which the sun enters about the 20th of March. With Musca, Aries contains 22 nebulae, 8 double and 148 single stars, but not above 50 are visible to the unassisted eye. The commencement of this sign, called the first point of Aries, is the origin from which the right ascensions of the heavenly bodies are reckoned upon the equator, and their longitudes upon the ecliptic. Aris, sharp corner of stones in piers and docks. Aris pieces, those parts of a made mast which are under the hoops. Arithmetic, the art of computation by numbers, or that branch which considers their powers and properties. 
ark, the sacred and capacious vessel built by Noah for preservation against the flood. It was three hundred cubits in length, fifty in breadth, and thirty in height, and of whatever materials it was constructed, it was pitched over or paid with bitumen. Ark is also the name of a mare's tail cloud, or cirrus, when it forms a streak across the sky. Arloop, an archaism for the deck, now called orlop, which see. Arm, a deep and comparatively narrow inlet of the sea, that part of an anchor on which the palm is shut. The extremity of the bibs, which support the trestle trees. Each extremity or end of a yard, beam, or bracket. To arm, to fit, furnish, and provide for war. To cap and set a lodestone. To apply putty or tallow to the lower end of the lead previous to sounding, in order to draw up a specimen of the bottom. To arm a shot is to roll rope yarns about a crossbar shot, in order to facilitate ramming it home, and also to prevent the ends catching any accidental inequalities in the bore. Armada, a Spanish term signifying a royal fleet. It comes from the same root as army. The word armado is used by Shakespeare. Armadilla, a squadron of Garda Costas, which formerly cruised on the coasts of South America to prevent smuggling. Armador, a Spanish privateer. Armament, a naval or military force equipped for an expedition. The arming of a vessel or place. Armamenta, the rigging and tackling of an ancient ship. It included shipmen and all the necessary furniture of war. Armate, ancient ships fitted with sails and oars, but which fought under the latter only. Armchest, a portable locker on the upper deck or tops for holding arms and affording a ready supply of cutlasses, pistols, muskets, or other weapons. Armed, completely equipped for war, armed at all points, covered with armor, Armed en flute, see flute. Armed mast, made of more than one tree. Armed ship, a vessel fitted out by merchants to annoy the enemy and furnished with letters of mark and bearing a commission from the admiralty to carry on warlike proceedings. Armed stem, see beak. Armillary sphere, an instrument composed of various circles to assist the student in gaining a knowledge of the arrangement and motions of the heavenly bodies. A brass armilla Ptolemoi was one of the instruments supplied to Martin Frobisher in 1576, price four pounds six shillings eight pence. Arming, a piece of tallow placed in the cavity and over the bottom of a sounding lead, to which any objects at the bottom of the sea become attached and are brought with the lead to the surface. Armings, red dress cloths, which were formerly hung fore and aft outside the upper works on the holidays, still used by foreigners, see top armings. It was also the name of a kind of boarding net. Armipotent, powerful in war. Armistice, a cessation of arms for a given time, a short truce for the suspension of hostilities. Armlet. A narrow inlet of the sea, a smaller branch than the arm, also the name of a piece of armor for the arm, to protect it from the jar of the bowstring. Armagon, an old term for good opportunity or season for navigation, which, if neglected, was liable to costs of demurrage. It is a Mediterranean word for fine weather. Armoric, the language of Brittany, Cornwall, and Wales. The word in its original signification meant maritime. Armor, a defensive habit to protect the wearer from his enemy, also defensive arms. In old statutes this is frequently called harness. Armor-clad, a ship of war fitted with iron plates on the outside to render her shot-proof. Armorer, in a man of war, is a person appointed by warrant to keep the small arms in complete condition for service. As he is also the ship's blacksmith, a mate is allowed to assist at the forge. Armory, a place appropriated for the keeping of small arms. Arm rack, a frame or fitting for the stowage of arms, usually vertical, out of harm's way but in readiness for immediate use. 
in the conveyance of troops by sea arm racks form a part of the proper accommodation arms the munitions of war all kinds of weapons whether for offence or defence those in a ship are cannons carronades mortars howitzers muskets pistols tomahawks cutlasses bayonets and boarding pikes arms of a great gun the trunnions armstrong gun invented by sir william armstrong in its most familiar form a rifled breech-loading gun of wrought iron constructed principally of spirally coiled bars and occasionally having an inner tube or a core of steel ranging in size from the smallest field piece up to the hundred pounder rifled with numerous shallow grooves which are taken by the expansion of the leaden coating of its projectile late experiments however connected with iron-plated ships are developing muzzle-loading armstrong guns constructed on somewhat similar principles but with simpler rifling ranging in size up to the six hundred pounder weighing twenty-three tons army a large body of disciplined men with appropriate subdivisions commanded by a general a fleet is sometimes called a naval army flying army a small body sent to harass a country intercept convoys and alarm the enemy army an early term for a naval armament arnot a northern name for the shrimp arondel a light and swift tartan probably a corruption of hirondelle swallow arpent a french measure of land equal to one hundred square rods or a purchase each of eighteen feet it is about one-seventh less than the english acre arquebus a word sometimes used for carbine but formerly meant a garrison piece carrying a ball of three and a half ounces it was generally placed in loopholes see hag butt arrack an indian term for all ardent liquors but that which we designate thus is obtained by the fermentation of toddy a juice procured from palm trees of rice and of sugar in turkey arak is extracted from vine stalks taken out of wine presses arayer the officer who formerly had the care of the men's armour and whose business it was to see them duly accoutred array the order of battle to array to equip dress or arm for battle arrears the difference between the full pay of a commissioned officer and what he is empowered to draw for till his accounts are passed arrest the suspension of an officer's duty and restraint of his person previous to trying him by court-martial seamen in her majesty's service cannot be arrested for debts under twenty pounds and that contracted before they entered the navy yet it is held in law that this affords no exemption from arrests either in civil or criminal suits arriba spanish pronounced arriva aloft quickly agir contre son gré montar arriba to mount aloft which has passed into seamen's lingo as arrivo up aloft quickly mount arrivo or go on deck to arabar to land to attain the bank to arrive to arrive in the most nautical sense it is to come to any place by water to reach the shore aroba a portuguese commercial weight of thirty-two pounds also a spanish general wine measure of four and a quarter english gallons the lesser aroba used for oil is only three and one-third english gallons a spanish weight of twenty-five pounds avoir du bois one-fourth of a quintal also a rough country cart in southern russia arrow a missive weapon of offence and whether ancient or modern in the rudest form among savages or refined by art is always a slender stick armed at one end and occasionally feathered at the other the natives of tropical africa feather the metal barb arrow in fortification a work placed at the salient angles of the glacis communicating with the covert way broad arrow the royal mark for stores of every kind see broad arrow arsenal a repository of the munitions of war some combine both magazines of naval and military stores and docks for the construction and repair of ships arshin a russian measure of two feet four inches 
equals 2.333, also Chinese, four of which make three yards English. Art, a spelling of art, which see. Also, practice as distinguished from theory. Artamon, the mainsail of ancient ships. Arthur, a well-known sea game alluded to by Gross, Smollett, and other writers. Articles, the express stipulations to which seamen bind themselves by signature on joining a merchant ship. Articles of war, a code of rules and orders based on the Act of Parliament for the regulation and government of Her Majesty's ships, vessels, and forces by sea, and as they are frequently read to all hands, no individual can plead ignorance of them. It is now termed the New Naval Code. The Articles of War for the land forces have a similar foundation and relation to their service. The Act, in this case, however, is passed annually, the Army itself having in law no more than one year's permanence unless so periodically renewed by Act of Parliament. Artificer, one who works by hand in wood or metal, generally termed an idler on board, from his not keeping night watch and only appearing on deck duty when the hands are turned up. Artificial eye, an eye worked in the end of rope, which is neater but not so strong as a spliced eye. Artificial horizon, an artificial means of catching the altitude of a celestial body when the sea horizon is obscured by fog, darkness, or the intervention of land. A simple one is still the greatest desideratum of navigators. Also a trough filled with pure mercury used on land wherein the double altitude of a celestial body is reflected. Artificial lines. The ingenious contrivances for representing logarithmic signs and tangents so useful in navigation on a scale. Artillery was formerly synonymous with archery but now comprehends every description of ordnance, guns, mortars, firearms, and all their appurtenances. The term is also applied to the noble corps destined to that service, as also to the theory and practice of the science of projectiles. It was, moreover, given to all kinds of missile weapons, and the translators of the Bible made Jonathan give his artillery unto his lad. Artillery, Royal Marine, Formerly a select branch of the Royal Marines, specially instructed in gunnery and the care of artillery stores, assigned in due proportion to all ships of war, it is now separate from the other branch, to whose original title the denomination of light infantry has been added, and rests on its own official basis, its relation to ships of war, however, remaining the same as before, although while on shore the Royal Marine forces are regulated by an annual act of Parliament. See Royal Marine Artillery. Artist. A name formerly applied to those mariners who were also expert navigators. Artisan. A mechanic or operative workman. See Artificer. Arcs. A fort or castle for the defense of a place. End of section 6. Read by Sandra. Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 7 of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases, A S to A Z. Ascendant, the part of the elliptic above the horizon. Ascending node, C nodes. Ascending signs those in which the sun appears to ascend towards the north pole, or in which his motion in declination is towards the north. Ascension, the act of mounting or rising upwards, see right ascension. Ascensional difference, the equinoctial arc intercepted between the right and oblique ascensions, which see. Ascension oblique, see oblique ascension. Ascension right, See right ascension. Ascii, the inhabitants of the torrid zone, who, twice a year being under a vertical sun, have no shadow. As deaf as the mainmast, said of one who does not readily catch an order given, thus at sea the mainmast is synonymous with the doorpost on shore. Ashes, 
see windward. Ashler, blocks of stonemasonry fronting docks, piers, and other erections. This term is applied to common or freestone as they come of various lengths, breadths, and thicknesses from the quarry. Ashore, aground, on land. To go ashore, to disembark from a boat, opposed to aboard. Ash pit, a receptacle for ashes before the fire bars in a steamer, or under them in most fireplaces. Asiento, Spanish, a sitting contract or convention, such as that between Spain and other powers in relation to the supply of stores for South America. Ask, or asker, a name of the water newt. Askew, awry, crooked, oblique, aslant, formed or placed in an oblique line, as with dagger knees, etc., to sail aslant, turning to windward. Asleep, the sail filled with wind just enough for swelling or bellying out, as contrasted with its flapping. Aspect, the looming of the land from seaward. Asper, a minute Turkish coin in accounts of which three go to a para. Aspic, an ancient twelve-pounder piece of ordnance, about eleven feet long. Aspirant de marine, midshipman in the French Navy. Asportation, the carrying of a vessel or goods illegally. Assail, to attack, leap upon, board, etc. Assault, a hostile attack, the effort to storm a place and gain possession of a post by main force. Asagai, the spear used by the Kafirs in South Africa, it is frequently feather-bent to revolve in its flight. Asagwe, the knife-dagger used in the Levant. Assembly, the long roll beat of the drum by which soldiers or armed parties are ordered to repair to their stations. It is sometimes called the fall in. Asses Bridge, the well-known name of Proposition 5, B.I. of Euclid, the difficulty of which makes many give in. To a siege, to besiege, to invest or beset with an armed force. Assignable. Any finite geometrical ratio or magnitude that can be marked out or denoted. A silag, the name given in the Hebrides to a small seabird with a black bill, the stormy petrel. Assistance, aid or help, strongly enjoined to be given whenever a signal is made requiring it. Assistant surgeon, the designation given some years ago to those formerly called surgeon's mates and considered a boon by the corps. Assortment, the arrangement of goods, tools, etc. in a series. Assurance, see marine insurance, conveyance or deed, in which light Shakespeare makes Tranio say that his father will pass assurance. A surgent, a heraldic term for a man or beast rising out of the sea. Assurer, he who makes out the policy of assurance for a ship, he's not answerable for the neglect of the master or seaman. A starboard, the opposite to a port. A stay, said of the anchor when, in heaving in, the cable forms such an angle with the surface as to appear in a line with the stays of the ship. A long stay, a peak, is when the cable forms an acute angle with the water's surface or coincides with the main stay. Short stay when it coincides with the forestay. Astalabre, the same as astrolab. Asteria, see sea star. Asterism, synonymous with constellation, a group of stars. Astern, any distance behind a vessel in the after part of the ship, in the direction of the stern, and therefore the opposite of a head. To drop astern is to be left behind, when abaft a right angle to the keel at the mainmast, she drops astern. Asteroids, the name by which the minor planets between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars were proposed to be distinguished by Sir W. Herschel. They are very small bodies, which have all been discovered since the commencement of the present century, yet their present number is over eighty. Astragal, a moulding formerly round a cannon at a little distance from its breech, the cascabel, and another near the muzzle. It is a half round on a flat moulding. Astral, sidereal, relating to the stars. Astrolab, an armillary sphere. See astrolab 
a useful graduated brass ring with a movable index for taking the altitude of stars and planets. It derived its name from the armillary sphere of Hipparchus at Alexandria. Astrometry The numerical expression of the apparent magnitudes of the so-called fixed stars. Astronomical clock A capital bit of horology the pendulum of which is usually compensated to sidereal time for astronomical purposes. See sidereal time. Astronomical hours, those which are reckoned from noon or midnight of one natural day to noon or midnight of another. Astronomical observations. There have been occasional slight records of celestial phenomena from the remotest times, but the most useful ones are those collected and preserved by Ptolemy, since 1672, science has been enriched with a continued series of astronomical observations of accuracy and value never dreamed of by the ancients. Astronomical place of a star or planet, its longitude or place in the ecliptic reckoned from the first point of Aries, according to the natural order of the signs. Astronomical tables, tables for facilitating the calculation of the apparent places of the sun, moon, and planets, Astronomicals, the sexagesimal fractions. Astronomy, the splendid department of the mixed sciences which teaches the laws and phenomena of the universal system. It is practical when it treats of the magnitudes, periods, and distances of the heavenly bodies, and physical when it investigates the causes. In the first division, the more useful adaptation, nautical, is included, which see. Astroscopia skill in examining the nature and properties of stars with a telescope astrum or astron sirius or the dog star sometimes applied to a cluster of stars a swim a float borne on the waters asylum a sanctuary or refuge a name given to a benevolent institution at greenwich for eight hundred boys and two hundred girls orphans of seamen and marines the Royal Military Asylum is also an excellent establishment of a similar nature at Chelsea, besides numerous others. Asymmetry, a mathematical disproportion, the relation of two quantities which have no measure in common. Asymptotes, lines which continually approximate each other but can never meet. Atabal, a Moorish kettle drum. Atagan, see Yatagan. At anchor, the situation of a vessel riding in a road or port by her anchor. Attar, a perfume of commerce, well known as attar of roses, attar being the Arabic word for fragrance, corrupted into otto. Atonto, or all atonto, every mast an end and fully rigged. Atagar, the old English hand dart, named from the Saxon aton to fling and gar, a weapon. Atherine, a silvery fish used in the manufacture of artificial pearls. It is four or five inches long, inhabits various seas, but is taken in great numbers in the Mediterranean. It is also called Argentine. Athilida, the rule and sights of an astrolabe. Athwart, the transverse direction, anything extending or across the line of a ship's course. Athwart hawes a vessel, boat, or floating lumber accidentally drifted across the stem of a ship, the transverse position of the drift being understood. Athwart the forefoot, just before the stem, ships fire a shot in this direction to arrest a stranger and make her bring to. Athwart ships, in the direction of the beam, from side to side, in opposition to fore and aft. Athwart the tide, see, across the tide. Atlantic the sea which separates Europe and Africa from the Americas, so named from the elevated range called the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. Atlantides, the daughters of Atlas, the name of the Pleiades. Atlas, a large book of maps or charts, so called from the character of that name in ancient mythology, son of Uranus, and represented as bearing the world on his back, also the Indian Saturn of commerce. Atmosphere, the ambient air, or thin elastic fluid which surrounds the globe, and gradually diminishing in gravity rises to an unknown height, yet by gravitation partakes of all its motions. Atmospheric or single-action steam engine, 
a condensing machine in which the downward stroke of the piston is performed by the pressure of the atmosphere acting against a vacuum. Atmospherical tides, the motions generated by the joint influence of the sun and moon, and by the rotary and orbital course of the earth, as developed in trade winds, equinoctial gales, etc. Atolls, an Indian name for those singular coral formations known as lagoon islands, such as the Maldive Cluster, those in the Pacific and in other parts within the tropics, where the apparently insignificant reef-building zoophytes reside. A tree, to bring the ship to in a gale. A trip, the anchor is a trip or a way, when the purchase has just made it break ground or raised it clear. Sails are a trip when they are hoisted from the cap, sheeted home, and ready for trimming. Yards are a trip when swayed up, ready to have the stops cut for crossing. So an upper mast is said to be a trip when the fid is loosened, preparatory to lowering it. Attached. Belongs to, in military parlance, an officer or soldier is attached to any regiment or company with which he's ordered to do duty. Attack. A general assault or onset upon an enemy. Also the arrangement for investment or battle. See false attack. To attempt. To endeavour to carry a vessel or place by surprise. To venture at some risk, as in trying a new channel, etc. Attendant master. A dockyard official. See master attendant. Attention. A military word of command, calling the soldier from the quiescent position of at ease into readiness for any exercise or evolution. Also, the erect posture due to that word of command and which is assumed by a private soldier in the presence of an officer, the attending to signals. A terrage, the landfall or making the land, usually marked on French charts and plans to show the landing place. Attestation. In admiralty courts, the attestation of a deed signifies the testifying to the signing or execution of it. Attested. Legally certified. Proved by evidence. Atal. An old law term for the rigging or furniture of a ship. Attorney. See. See attorney. Attraction. The power of drawing, or the principle by which all bodies mutually tend towards each other, the great agent in nature's wonderful operations, attraction of mountains, the deviating influence exercised on the plumb line by the vicinity of high land, but exerting also a marvellous effect on all floating bodies, for every seaman knows that a ship stands inshore faster than she stands out, the distances being similar. Atween, or atwixt, betwixt or between, shortened into tween, that is, in the intermediate space, the word tween decks is usually applied to the lower deck of a frigate and orlop to that of a line of battle ship. Oberk or Hoberk, one who held land to be ready with a coat of mail and attend his lord when called upon to do so. Thus the old poet, quote, Oberk, Skitun, and Schild was many to broken in that field. End quote. Audit. The final passing of accounts. Auditors of the impressed. Officers who had the charge of the great accounts of the royal customs, naval and military expenses, etc. They are now superseded by the commissioners for auditing the public accounts. Ogs. An astronomical term synonymous with apsides. Oget. A tube filled with powder for firing a mine. Augmentation of the moon's diameter the increase of her apparent diameter occasioned by an increase of altitude, or that which is due to the difference between her distance from the observer and the centre of the earth. Oga, or Oger, a wimble, or instrument for boring holes for bolts, tree nails, and other purposes. Auk, or Auk, a seabird with short wings. The great Auk, or Gerfowl, Alca in Penis, was formerly common on all the northern coasts where they laid their eggs, ingeniously poised on the bare rocks. They were very good eating, and having been taken in great numbers by the Eskimo and by European sailors on whaling voyages, the species is now supposed to be exterminated. Olin, an arctic gull, Cataractes parasiticus, given to make other seabirds mute through fear and then eat their discharge, 
whence it is termed Dirty Olin by the northern boatman. Ombre, an old north country term for bread and cheese locker. On, contraction of Ulna, French cloth measure. At Rouen, it is equal to the English L. At Paris, 0 0.95. At Calais, 1.52 of that measure. Origa, a northern constellation and one of the old 48 asterisms. It is popularly known as the Wagoner. Alpha Origa, Capella. Aurora, the faint light which precedes sun rising, also the mythological mother of the winds and stars. Aurora Australis, or Borealis, the extraordinary and luminous meteoric phenomenon which, by its streaming effulgence, cheers the dreary nights of polar regions. It is singular that these beautiful appearances are nowhere mentioned by the ancients. They seem to be governed by electricity, but are most frequent in frosty weather and are proven to be many miles above the surface of the earth, from some of them being visible over 30 degrees of longitude and 20 degrees of latitude at the same instant. In color they vary from yellow to deep red. In form they are proteus-like, assuming that of streamers, columns, fans, or arches, with a quick flitting and sometimes whizzing noises. The aurora is not vivid above the 76th degree of north latitude and is seldom seen before the end of August. Cook was the first navigator who recorded the southern lights. Oster, the south wind of the ancients, gusts from which quarter are called Otan. Austral, relating to the south, austral signs, those on the south side of the equator, or the last six of the zodiac. Authority, the legal power or right of commanding. Automatic blow-off apparatus, see blow-off pipe. Autumnal equinox, the time when the sun crosses the equator under a southerly motion, and the days and nights are then everywhere equal in length, see Libra. Autumnal point, that part of the ecliptic whence the sun descends southward. Autumnal signs, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Auxiliaries. Confederates, an assisting body of allies, or, physically speaking, vessels using steam as an auxiliary to wind. Auxiliary screw, a vessel in which the screw is used as an auxiliary force. Such a vessel is usually fully masted for sailing purposes. Avania, the fine or imposition imposed on Christians residing under Turkish governors when they break the laws. Avanfos, in fortification, an advanced ditch without the counterscarp and stretching along the foot of the glacis. Avast, the order to stop, hold, cease or stay in any operation. Its derivation from the Italian basta is more plausible than have fast. Avast heaving, the cry to arrest the capstan when nippers are jammed or any other impediment occurs in heaving in the cable not unfrequently when a hand, foot, or finger is jammed. Stop! Avantail, the movable part of a helmet. Avenue, the inlet into a port. Average, whether general or particular, is a term of ambiguous construction, meaning the damage incurred for the safety of the ship and cargo, the contribution made by the owners in general, apportioned to their respective investments, to repair any particular loss or expense sustained, and a small duty paid to the master for his care of the whole. Goods thrown overboard for the purpose of lightening the ship are so thrown for the good of all, and the loss thus sustained must be made up by a general average or contribution from all the parties interested. See General Average. Average Adjuster a qualified person engaged in making statements to show the proper application of loss, damage, or expenses in consequence of the accidents of a sea adventure. Average agreement, a written document signed by the consignees of a cargo, binding themselves to pay a certain proportion of general average that may from accident arise against them. Average stater, see average adjuster. A vist, a West Country term for a fishing Aviso, an Italian advice boat. Aviso, Spanish, dispatch boat or tender. A waft or a weft. 
the displaying of a stopped flag, sea weft, a weight, ambush, cutting off vessels by means of boats hidden in coves which they must pass in their course, a ward, a judgment in maritime cases by arbitration, and the decision or sentence of a court-martial, a wash, reefs even with the surface, the anchor just rising to the water's edge in heaving up, away aloft, the order to the men in the rigging to start up, away off, at a distance, but in sight, away she goes, the order to step out with the tackle fall, the cry when a vessel starts on the ways launching, also when a ship having stowed her anchor fills and makes sail. Away there, the call for a boat's crew as, away there, bargemen. Away with it, the order to walk along briskly with a tackle fall, as catting the anchor, etc. Oblast, the arbalest or a crossbow. Old blaster, the designation of a crossbowman. A weather, the position of the helm when its tiller is moved to the windward side of the ship, in the direction from which the wind blows, the opposite of a lee. Away, the anchor being a trip or after breaking out of the ground. Awk, see, awk. Awkward squad, a division formed of those men who are backward in gaining dexterity. See, squad. All, a tool of a carpenter, sailmaker, and cobbler. Alm, a tierce of thirty-nine gallons, a Dutch liquid measure. Awning, a cover or canvas canopy, suspended by a crow foot, and spread over a ship, boat, or other vessel, to protect the decks and crew from the sun and weather. See Euphro. Also that part of the poop deck which is continued forward beyond the bulkhead of the cabin. Awning ropes. The ridge and side ropes for securing the awning. Axe. A large flat-edged tool for trimming and reducing timber. Also an Anglo-Saxon word for ask, which seamen still adhere to and it is difficult to say why a word should be thought improper which has descended from our earliest poets. It may have become obsolete, but without absolutely being vulgar or incorrect. Axiom. A self-evident truth or proposition that cannot be made plainer by demonstration. Axis. The imaginary line upon which a planet revolves, the extremities of which are termed the poles, therefore a line joining the north and south poles the real or imaginary line that passes through the centre of any cylindrical or spherical body on which it may revolve. Also, a right line proceeding from the vertex of a cone to the middle of its base. Also, an imaginary right line passing through the middle of a ship, perpendicularly to its base, and equally distant from its sides. An imaginary line passing through the centre of a gun's bore, parallel with its position, axis of a telescope. See collimation, line of. Axle trees. The two cross pieces of a gun carriage, fixed across and under the fore and hinder parts of the cheeks. The cylindrical iron which goes through the wheel of the chain pump and bears the weight of it. Aye, aye, sir. A prompt reply on receiving an order. Also the answer on comprehending an order. Aye, aye. The answer to a sentinel's hail from a boat which has commissioned officer on board below the rank of captain. The name of the ship in reply from the boat indicates the presence of a captain. The word flag indicates the presence of an admiral. Aylet, the sea swallow, a yaunt beyond, air, an open sea beach and also a bank of sand, sea air, the medieval term for oar. Eight, see eight. Azimuth, a word borrowed from the Arabic, the complement of the amplitude or an arc between the meridian of a place and any given vertical line. Azimuthal error, see meridian error. Azimuth circles, see vertical circles. Azimuth compass, a superior graduated compass for ascertaining the amount of magnetic variation by amplitude or azimuth when the sun is from 8 degrees to 15 degrees high, either after its rising or before its setting, see magnetic azimuth. It is fitted with vertical sight vanes for the purpose of observing objects elevated above the horizon. Azogue, Spanish, 
quicksilver. As always, Spanish ships fitted expressly for carrying quicksilver. A zombre, a Spanish wine measure, eight of which make an aroba. Azure, the deep blue colour of the sky when perfectly cloudless. End of section seven. Read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 8 of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. B.A. to B.A.N. Bard, a medieval transport. Berry Lane, the Manx or Gaelic term for high water. Bass, an old term for the skipper of a Dutch trader. Bab, the Arabic for mouth or gate, especially used by seamen for the entrance of the Red Sea. Bab al Mandeb. Babbing, an East Country method of catching crabs by enticing them to the surface of the water with baited lines and then taking them with a landing net. Babbling, the sound made by shallow rivers flowing over stony beds. Bak, a large bottomed French ferry boat. In local names, it denotes a ferry or place of boating. Bacalao, Spanish, a name given to Newfoundland and its adjacent islands, hence the epithet is also applied to the codfish salted there. Bacchi, two ancient warlike machines. The one resembled a battering ram, the other cast out fire. Back, to back an anchor. To carry a small anchor ahead of the one by which the ship rides. To partake of the strain and check the latter from coming home. To back a ship at anchor. For this purpose the mizzen topsail is generally used. A hawser should be kept ready to wind her, and if the wind falls she must behove a peak. To back and fill. To get to windward in very narrow channels by a series of smart alternate boards and backing with weather tides. To back a sail, to brace its yard so that the wind may blow directly on the front of the sail and thus retard the ship's course. A sailing vessel is backed by means of the sails, a steamer by reversing the paddles or screw propeller. To back a stern, to impel the water with the oars contrary to the usual mode, or towards the head of the boat so that she shall recede. To back the larboard or starboard oars to back with the right or left oars only, so as to round suddenly, to back out, see back a sail. The term is also familiarly used for retreating out of a difficulty. To back a rope or chain is to put on a preventer when it is thought likely to break from age or extra strain. To back water, to impel a boat astern, so as to recede in a direction opposite to the former course. Backing the worming, the act of passing small yarn in the holidays or crevices left between the worming and edges of the rope to prevent the admission of wet or to render all parts of equal diameter so that the surface may be smooth. Wind backing. The wind is said to back when it changes contrary to its usual circuit. In the northern hemisphere on the polar side of the trades, the wind usually changes from east by the south to west and so on to north. In the same latitudes in the southern hemisphere, the reverse usually takes place. When it backs, it is generally supposed to be a sign of a freshening breeze. Back, the outside or convex part of a compass timber, also a wharf. Back of a ship, the keel and kelson are figuratively thus termed. Back of the post, an additional timber bolted to the upper part of the stern post and forming its afterface. Backboard, a board across the stern sheets of a boat to support the back of passengers and also to form the box in which the coxswain sits. Back cutting, when the water level is such that the excavation of a canal or other channel does not furnish earth enough for its own banks, recourse is had to back cutting or the nearest earth behind the base of the banks. Back frame, a vertical wheel for turning the three whirlers of a small rope machine. Back her. 
the order in steam navigation directing the engineer to reverse the movement of the cranks and urge the vessel astern backing the timber behind the armor plates of a ship back a beyond said of an unknown distance back off all the order when the harpooner has thrown his harpoon into the whale also to back off a sudden danger back rope the rope pendant or small chain for staying the dolphin striker also a piece long enough to reach from the cat block to the stem and up to the forecastle to haul the cat block forward to hook the ring of the anchor similarly also for hooking the fish tackle see gob line backs the outermost boards of a sawn tree back staff a name formerly given to a peculiar sea quadrant because the back of the observer was turned towards the sun at the time of observing its zenith distance the inventor was captain davis the welsh navigator about fifteen hundred and ninety it consists of a graduated arc of thirty degrees united to a centre by two radii with a second arc of smaller radius but measuring six degrees on the side of it to the first arc a vane is attached for sight to the second one for shade and at the vertex the horizontal vane has a slit in it backstay plates used to support the backstays backstays long ropes extending from all mastheads above a lower mast to both sides of the chip or chain whales they are extended and set up with dead eyes and lanyards to the backstay plates their use is to second the shrouds in supporting the mast when strained by a weight of sail in a fresh wind they are usually distinguished into breast and after backstays the first being intended to sustain the mast when the ship sails upon a wind or in other terms when the wind acts upon a ship obliquely from forwards the second is to enable her to carry sail when the wind is abaft the beam a third or shifting backstay is temporary and used where great strain is demanded when chasing chased or carrying on a heavy pressure of canvas they are fitted either with lashing eyes or hook and thimble with selvagey strop so as to be instantly removed backstay stools detached small channels or chain whales fixed abaft the principal ones they are introduced in preference to extending the length of the channels baxters flat pieces of wood or cork strapped on the feet in order to walk over loose beach back strapped as a ship carried round to the back of gibraltar by a counter current and eddies of wind the strong currents detaining her there back sweep that which forms the hollow of the top timber of a frame back water the swell of the sea thrown back or rebounded by its contact with any solid body also the loss of power occasioned by it to paddles of steamboats etc the water in a mill race which cannot get away in consequence of the swelling of the river below also an artificial accumulation of water reserved for clearing channel beds and tideways also a creek or arm of the sea which runs parallel to the coast having only a narrow strip of land between it and the sea and communicating with the latter by barred entrances the west coast of india is remarkable for its backwaters which give a most useful smooth water communication from one place to another such as from cochin to kilon a distance of nearly seventy miles bacon to save this is an old shore saw adopted in nautical phraseology for expressing to escape but generally used in peus rueri as in gray's long story see foul haws bad berth a foul or rocky anchorage badder lock the fucus esculentus a kind of eatable seaweed on our northern shores also called persil baddock a name from the gaelic for the fry of the gados carbonarius or coal fish badge quarter badges false quarter galleries in imitation of frigate built ships also in naval architecture a carved ornament placed on the outside of small ships very near the stern containing either a window or the representation of one with marine decorations badge seamen's see good conduct badge to badger to tease or confound by frivolous orders badger bag 
the fictitious Neptune who visits the ship on her crossing the line. Bad name. This should be avoided by a ship, for once acquired for inefficiency or privateer habits. It requires time and reformation to get rid of it again. Give a dog a bad name most forcibly exemplified. Ships have endured it even under repeated changes of captains. One ship had her name changed, but she became worse. Bad relief. One who turns out sluggishly to relieve the watch on deck. See one bell. Bassy. The old orthography of the gun since called base. Baffling. It is said of the wind when it frequently shifts from one point to another. Bag. A commercial term of quantity, as a bread or biscuit bag, a sand bag, etc. An empty purse. To bag on a bowline. To be leewardly to drop from a course. Bag of the headrails, the lowest part of the headrails, or that part which forms the sweep of the rail. The bag, allowed for the men to keep their clothes in. The ditty bag included needles and needfuls, love tokens, jewels, etc. Bagala, a rude description of high-sterned vessel of various burdens from fifty to three hundred tons, employed at Muscat and on the shores of Oman the word signifying mule among the Arabs, and therefore indicative of carrying rather than sailing. Bag and baggage, the whole movable property. Baggage, the necessaries, utensils, and apparel of troops. Baggage guard, a small proportion of any body of troops on the march to whom the care of the whole baggage is assigned. Baggety, the fish otherwise called the lump, or sea owl, Cyclopterus lumpus. Bagonet the old term for bayonet, and not a vulgarism. Bagniol, a sort of barrack in Mediterranean seaports where the galley slaves and convicts are confined. Bagpipe, to bagpipe the mizzen is to lay it back by bringing the sheet to the mizzen shrouds. Bag reef, a fourth or lower reef of fore and aft sails, often used in the Royal Navy. Bag reef of topsails, first reef of five in American Navy. A short reef, usually taken in to prevent a large sail from bagging when on a wind. Bagrel, a minnow or baggy. Baguio, a rare but dreadfully violent wind among the Philippine Islands. Bahar, a commercial weight of a quarter of a ton in the Molucca Islands. Baidar, a swift open canoe of the Arctic tribes and Quiral Islands, used in pursuing otters and even whales, a slender frame from 18 to 25 feet long, covered with hides. They are impelled by six or twelve paddles. See kayak. Baiki, a northern name for the Laris marinus, or black-headed gull. Baiki, the ballium, or enclosed plot of ground in an ancient fort. Bail, a surety, the cargo of a captured or detained vessel is not allowed to be taken on bail before adjudication, without mutual consent. It is also a northern term for a beacon or signal. Bail bond, the obligation entered into by sureties, also when a person enters as proxy for the master of a vessel, or on obtaining letters of mark, he makes himself personally responsible. In prize matters, however, the bail bond is not a mere personal security given to the individual captors, but an assurance to abide by the adjudication of the court. Bailed, this phrase, I'll be bailed, is considered as an equivalent to I'll be bound, but it is probably an old enunciation for I'll be poisoned or I'll be tormented if what I utter is not true. Bailo, a levantine term for consul. Bales or bailers, the hoops which bear up the tilt of a boat. Bayocco, an Italian copper coin about equal to our halfpenny also a generic term for copper money or small coin. Berlin, a Gaelic term for a high-rolling billow. Bait, the natural or artificial charge of a hook to a lure fish. Baitland, an old word formerly used to signify a port where refreshments could be procured. Balena, the zoological name for the right whale. Balance one of the simple mechanical powers used in determining the weights and masses of different bodies, also one of the twelve signs of the zodiac called Libra, balance wheel of a chronometer, see chronometer. 
to balance, to contract a sail into a narrower compass. This is peculiar to the mizzen of a ship, and to the mainsail of those vessels wherein it is extended by a boom. The operation of balancing the mizzen is performed by lowering the yard or gaff a little, then rolling up a small portion of the sail at the peak or upper corner, and lashing it about one-fifth down towards the mast. A boom mainsail is balanced by rolling up a portion of the clue, or lower aftermost corner, and fastening it strongly to the boom. Nota bene, it is requisite in both cases to wrap a piece of old canvas round the sail under the lashing to prevent its being fretted by the latter. Balance fish, the hammer-headed shark, which c balance frames those frames or bends of timber of an equal capacity or area which are equally distant from the ship's centre of gravity balance of trade a computation of the value of all commodities which we import or export showing the difference in amount balance reef a reef band that crosses a sail from the outer head earring to the tack diagonally making it nearly triangular and is used to contract it in very blowing weather a balance reef band is generally placed in all gaff sails the band runs from the throat to the clue so that it may be reefed either way by lacing the foot or lower half or by lacing the gaff drooped to the band the latter is only done in the worst weather this is a point on which seamen may select but the old plan as first given affords more power a balance reef band is applicable to the severest weather balancing point a familiar term for centre of gravity see gravity balandra a spanish pleasure boat a lighter a species of schooner balanus the acorn shell a sessile syruped balcar see balcar balcony the projecting open galleries of old line-of-battle ships sterns now disused they were convenient and ornamental in hot climates but were afterwards enclosed within sash windows baldric a leathern girdle or sword belt also the zodiac bale a pack this word appears in the statute richard II, chapter three and is still in common use bale to bale to lade water out of a ship or vessel with buckets which were of old called bales cans or the like when the pumps are ineffective or choked baleen the scientific term for the whalebone of commerce derived from balena a whale it consists of a series of long horny plates growing from each side of the palate in place of teeth bale goods merchandise packed in large bundles not in cases or casks bale knot a porpoise or small whale which frequents the river st lawrence balestilla the cross staff of the early portuguese navigators balinger or balenca a kind of small sloop or barge small vessels of war formerly without forecastles the name was also given by some of the early voyagers to a large trading boat of the philippines and moluccas balistas a fish with mailed skin file fish Balisas, land and sea marks on Portuguese coasts. Balk, straight young trees after they are felled and squared, a beam or timber used for temporary purposes and under eight inches square. Box of timber of any square size as mahogany, intended for planks or, when very large, for booms or rafts. Balkar, a man placed on an eminence like the ancient Opis to watch the movements of shoals of fish. In our early statutes he is called Balkor. Ball, in a general sense, implies a spherical and round body, whether naturally so or formed into that figure by art. In a military view it comprehends all sorts of bullets for firearms, from the cannon to the pistol, also those pyrotechnic projectiles for guns or mortars, whether intended to destroy or only to give light, smoke or stench. Balahu a sharp-floored, fast-sailing schooner, with taut fore-and-aft sails and no topsails, common in Bermuda and the West Indies. The foremast of the Balahu rakes forward, the mainmast aft. Ball and socket, a clever adaptation to give astronomical or surveying instruments full play and motion every way by a brass ball fitted into a spherical cell and usually carried by an endless screw.
Balarag, to abuse or bully, thus warden of the French king, quote, You surely thought to Balarag us with your fine squadron off Cape Lagos. End quote. Ballast, a certain portion of stone, pig iron, gravel, water, or such like materials deposited in a ship's hold when she either has no cargo or too little to bring her sufficiently low in the water. It is used to counterbalance the effect of the wind upon the masts and give the ship a proper stability that she may be enabled to carry sail without danger of overturning. The art of ballasting consists in placing the centre of gravity so as neither to be too high nor too low, too far forward nor too far aft, and that the surface of the water may nearly rise to the extreme breadth amidst ships, and thus the ship will be enabled to carry a good sail, incline but little, and ply well to windward. A want of true knowledge in this department has led to putting too great a weight in ships' bottoms, which impedes their sailing and endangers their masts by excessive rolling, the consequence of bringing the centre of gravity too low. It should be trimmed with due regard to the capacity, gravity, and flooring, and to the nature of whatever it is to be deposited thereon. See Trim. Ballast, as a verb, signifies to steady, as a substantive, a comprehensive mind. A man is said to lose his ballast when his judgment fails him, or he becomes top-heavy from conceit. Ballastage, an old rite of the admiralty in all our royal rivers, of levying a rate for supplying ships with ballast. Ballast basket, usually made of osier, for the transport and measure of shingle ballast, supplied to the gunner for transport of loose ammunition. Ballast lighter, a large flat floored barge for heaving up and carrying ballast ballast mark the horizontal line described by the surface of the water on the body of a ship when she is immersed with her usual weight of ballast on board ballast master a person appointed to see the port regulations in respect to ballast carried out ballast ports square holes cut in the sides of merchantmen for taking in ballast but should be securely barred and caulked in before proceeding to sea. Ballast shifting, when by heavy rolling the ballast shifts in the hold. Ballast shingle, composed of coarse gravel. Ballast shooting, sea shoots. In England, and indeed in most frequented ports, the throwing of ballast overboard is strictly prohibited and subject to fine. Ballast shovel, a peculiar square and spoon-pointed iron shovel. Ballast trim, when a vessel has only ballast on board. Ballatoon, a sort of long, heavy luggage vessel of upwards of a hundred tons, employed on the river between Moscow and the Caspian Sea. Ball cartridge, for small arms. Ball clay, adhesive strong bottom, brought up by the flukes of the anchors in massy lumps. Ballista an ancient military engine, like an enormous crossbow, for throwing stones, darts, and javelins against the enemy with rapidity and violence. Also the name of the geometrical cross called Jacob's Staff. Ballister, a crossbowman. Ballistic pendulum, an instrument for determining the velocity of projectiles. The original pendulum was of very massive construction, the arc through which it receded when impinged on by the projectile taking into account their respective weights, afforded with considerable calculation a measure of the velocity of impact. Latterly, the electroballistic pendulum, which, by means of electric currents, is made to register with very great accuracy the time occupied by the projectile in passing over a measured space, has superseded it as being more accurate, less cumbrous, and less laborious in its accompanying calculations. Ballium a plot of ground in ancient fortifications, also called Bakey. Balok, Gaelic for the discharge of a river into a lake. Balon, a Siamese decorated state galley, imitating a sea monster with from seventy to a hundred oars of a side. To ball off. To twist rope yarns into balls with a running end in the heart for making spun yarn. Balloon fish. Tetraodon. A plectognathus fish, covered with spines, which has the power of inflating its body till it becomes almost globular. Ballo, deep water inside a shoal or bar. Ball stell, the geometrical instrument named Della Stella. 
bally a teutonic word for enclosure now prefixed to many seaports in ireland as bally castle bally haven bally shannon and bally water balsa or balza a south american tree very porous which grows to an immense height in a few years and is almost as light as cork hence the balsa wood is used for the surf boat called balsa see jangada balthaeus orionis the three bright stars constituting orion's belt balusters the ornamental pillars or pilasters of the balcony or galleries in the sterns of ships dividing the ward-room deck from the one above bamba a commercial shell of value on the gold coast of africa and below it bambo an east indian measure of five english pints bamboo bambusa arundinacea a magnificent articulated cane which holds a conspicuous rank in the tropics from its rapid growth and almost universal properties the succulent buds are eaten fresh and the young stems make excellent preserves the large stems are useful in agricultural and domestic implements also in building both houses and ships in making baskets cages hats and furniture besides sails paper and in various departments of the indian materia medica to bamboozle to decoy the enemy by hoisting false colours banana musa paradisiaca a valuable species of plantain the fruit of which is much used in tropical climates both fresh and made into bread gerardi named it adam's apple from a notion that it was the forbidden fruit of eden whilst others supposed it to be the grapes brought out of the promised land by the spies of moses the spikes of fruit often weigh forty pounds Banco, spanish seat for rowers band the musicians of a band are called idlers in large ships also a small body of armed men or retainers as the band of gentlemen pensioners also an iron hoop round a gun carriage mast etc also a slip of canvas stitched across a sail to strengthen the parts most liable to pressure reef bands rope bands or robins rubber bands which c bandage a fillet or swath of the utmost importance in surgery also formerly parceling to ropes bandoliers or bandoliers a wide leathern belt for the carriage of small cases of wood covered with leather each containing a charge for a fire lock in use before the modern cartouche boxes were introduced bandicoot a large species of fierce rat in india which infests the drains etc banded drum see grunter banded mail a kind of armour which consisted of alternate rows of leather or cotton and single chain mail banderold or banderol a small streamer or banner usually fixed on a pike from banderola spanish diminutive of bandera the flag or ensign band fish or ribbon fishes a popular name of the gymnetrus genus bandal an irish measure of two feet in length bung a mixture of opium hemp leaves and tobacco of an intoxicating quality chewed and smoked by the malays and other people in the east who being mostly prohibited the use of wine double upon mahomet by indulging in other intoxicating matter as if the manner of doing it cleared off the crime of drunkenness this horrid stuff gives the maddening excitement which makes a malay run amok which see to bang is colloquially used to express excelling or beating rivals see suffolk bang banj light fine rain bangles the hoops of a spar also the rings on the wrists and ankles of oriental people chiefly used by females banyan a sailor's coloured frock shirt banyan or banyan days those in which no flesh meat is issued to the masses it is obvious that they are a remnant of the meagre days of the roman catholics who deem it a mortal sin to eat flesh on certain days stockfish used to be served out till it was found to promote scurvy the term is derived from a religious sect in the east who believing in metempsychosis eat of no creature endued with life banyan tree ficus indica of india and polynesia 
The tendrils from high branches extend sixty to eighty feet, take root on reaching the ground, and form a cover over some acres. Religious rites from which women are excluded are there performed. Banjo, the brass frame in which the screw propeller of a steamer works and is hung for hoisting the screw on deck, this frame fits between slides fixed on the inner and outer stern posts, resting in large carriages firmly secured thereto. The banjo is essential to lifting the screw, also the rude instrument used in Negro concerts. Bank, the right or left boundary of a river in looking from its source towards a sea, and the immediate margin or border of a lake, also a thwart, banco, or bench for the rowers in a galley, also a rising ground in the sea, differing from a shoal, because not rocky, but composed of sand, mud, or gravel. Also, mural elevations, constructed of clay, stones, or any materials at hand to prevent inundations. To bank. Also an old word, meaning to sail along the margins or banks of river ports. Thus Shakespeare in King John makes Louis the Dauphin demand, quote, have I not heard these islanders shout out, Vive le roi, as I have banked their towns? Banca, a canoe of the Philippines consisting of a single piece. Banker, a vessel employed in the deep sea cod fishery on the great banks of Newfoundland. Also a man who works on the sides of a canal or an embankment, a navvy. Bank fires in steamers taking advantage of a breeze by allowing the fires to burn down low and then pulling them down to a side of the bridge of the fireplace and there covering them up with ashes taken from the ash pit at the same time nearly closing the dampers in the funnel and ash pit doors this with attention on the part of the engineers will maintain the water hot and a slight pressure of steam in the boilers when fuel is added and draught induced the fires are said to be drawn forward and steam is speedily generated. Bank harbour, that which is protected from the violence of the sea by banks of mud, gravel, sand, shingle, or silt. Bank hook, a large fish hook, laid baited in running water, attached by a line to the bank. Banking, a general term applied to fishing on the great bank of Newfoundland. Bank of oars, bunco, Spanish a seat or bench for rowers in the happily all but extinct galley. These are properly called the athwarts, but thwarts by seamen. The common galleys have twenty-five banks on each side, with one oar to each bank, and four men to each oar. The galleasses have thirty-two banks on a side, and six or seven rowers to each bank. See double-banked, when two men pull separate oars on the same thwart. Banksol, or banksol and in Calcutta spelled bank shawl. A shop, office, or other place for transacting business. Also a square enclosure at the pearl fishery. Also a beach storehouse wherein ships deposit their rigging and furniture while undergoing repair. Also where small commercial courts and arbitrations are held. Ban, a proclamation made in the army by beat of drum, sound of trumpet, etc., requiring the strict observance of discipline, either for the declaring of a new officer, the punishing an offender, or the like. Banag, a northern name for a white trout, a sea trout. Banag fluke, a name of the turbot, as distinguished from the halibut. Banner, a small square flag, edged with fringe. Bannerer, the bear of a banner. Banneret, a knight made on the field of battle. Banner all, a little banner or streamer. Bannock, a name given to a certain hard ship biscuit. Banquette, in fortification, a small terrace, property of earth, on the inside of the parapet, of such height that the defenders standing on it may conveniently fire over the top. Banstickle, a diminutive fish, called also the three-spined stickleback, Casterosteus aculeatus. End of section 8, read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 9 of the Sailor's Word Book A to C by William Henry Smythe This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 
a digest of sea terms and phrases. B-A-P to B-A-Z. Baptism, a ceremony practiced on passengers on their first passing the equinoctial line, a riotous and ludicrous custom which, from the violence of its ducking, shaving, and other practical jokes, is becoming annually less in vogue. It is esteemed a usurpation of privilege to baptize on crossing the tropics. Bar, of a port or harbor, an accumulated shoal or bank of sand, shingle, gravel, or other oligonous substances thrown up by the sea to the mouth of a river or harbor so as to endanger and sometimes totally prevent the navigation into it. Bars of rivers are some shifting and some permanent. The position of the bar of any river may commonly be guessed by attending to the form of the shores at the embouchure. The shore on which the deposition of sediment is going on will be flat, whilst the opposite one is steep. It is along the side of the latter that the deepest channel of the river lies, and in the line of this channel, but without the points that form the mouth of the river, will be the bar. If both the shores are of the same nature, which seldom happens, the bar will lie opposite the middle of the channel. Rivers in general have what may be deemed a bar in respect of the depth of the channel within, although it may not rise high enough to impede the navigation, for the increased deposition that takes place when the current slackens through the want of declivity and of shores to retain it must necessarily form a bank. Bars of small rivers may be deepened by means of stockades to confine the river current and prolong it beyond the natural points of the river's mouth. They operate to remove the place of deposition further out and into deeper water. Bars, however, act as breakwaters in most instances, and consequently secure smooth water within them. The deposit in all curvilinear or serpentine rivers will always be found at the point opposite to the curve into which the ebb strikes and rebounds, deepening the hollow and depositing on the tongue. Therefore, if it be deemed advisable to change the position of a bar, it may in some cases be aided by works projected on the last curve seaward. By such means, a parallel canal may be forced which will admit vessels under the cover of the bar. Bar, a boom formed of huge trees, or spars lashed together, moored transversely across a port to prevent entrance or egress. Bar, the short bits of bar iron, about half a pound each used as the medium of traffic on the Negro coast. Bar harbor, one which, from a bar at its entrance, cannot admit ships of great burden, or can only do so at high water. Capstan bars, large thick bars put into the holes of the drumhead of the capstan, by which it is turned round, they working as horizontal radial levers. Hatch bars, flat iron bars to lock over the hatches for security from theft, etc. Port bar, a piece of wood or iron variously fitted to secure a gun port when shut. Bar shallow, a term sometimes applied to a portion of a bar with less water on it than on other parts of the bar. Bar shot, two half balls joined together by a bar of iron for cutting and destroying spars and rigging. When whole balls are thus fitted, they are more properly double-headed shot. To bar, to secure the lower deck ports, as above. Barracuda, a tropical fish, Sphiroina barracuda, considered in the West Indies to be dangerously poisonous at times, nevertheless eaten and deemed the sea salmon. Barbican, in fortification and outer defense. Barbados tar, a mineral fluid bitumen resembling petroleum of nauseous taste and offensive smell. Barbalot, the barbel, also a puffin. Barb bolts, those which have their points jagged or barbed to make them hold securely, where those commonly in use cannot be clinched. The same as rag bolt, those of copper used for the false keel. Barbecue, a tropical custom of dressing a pig whole. Barbel, Barbus vulgaris, an English river fish of the carp family, distinguished by the four appendant beards whence its name is derived. It is between two and three feet in length and coarse, 
also barbel is a small piece of armour which protects part of the bassinet barber a rating on the ship's books for one who shaves the people for which he receives the pay of an ordinary seaman in meteorology barber is a singular vapour rising in streams from the sea surface owing probably to exhalations being condensed into a visible form on entering a cold atmosphere it is well known on the shores of nova scotia also the condensed breath in frosty weather on beard or moustaches in arctic travelling barbette a mode of mounting guns to fire over the parapet so as to have free range instead of through embrasures barca longa a large spanish undecked coasting vessel navigated with pole masts that is single masts without any topmast or upper part and high square sails called lug sails propelled with sweeps as well the name is also applied to spanish gunboats by our seamen barses short guns with a large bore formerly used in ships barchetta a small bark for transporting water provisions etc barcon a short mediterranean lighter barreca a small barrel spelled also barreca spanish barreca hence the nautical name breaker for a small cask or keg bear poles the condition of a ship having no sails set when out at sea and either scudding or lying to by stress of weather see under bare poles bare room an old phrase for bore down barge a boat of a long slight and spacious construction generally carvel built double banked for the use of admirals and captains of ships of war barge in boat attacks is next in strength to the launch it is likewise a vessel or boat of state furnished and equipped in the most sumptuous style and of this sort we may naturally suppose to have been the famous barge or galley of cleopatra which according to the beautiful description of shakespeare quote, like a burnished throne burnt on the water the poop was beaten gold purple her sails and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them the oars were silver which to the tune of flutes kept time and made the water which they beat to follow faster as amorous of their strokes End quote. the barges of the lord mayor civic companies etc and the coal barges of the thames are varieties also an early man-of-war of about one hundred tons also an east country vessel of peculiar construction also a flat-bottomed vessel of burden used on rivers for conveying goods from one place to another and loading and unloading ships it has various names as a ware barge a west country barge a sand barge a row barge a severn trough a light horseman etc they are usually fitted with a large sprit sail to a mast which working upon a hinge is easily struck for passing under bridges also the bread barge or tray or basket for containing biscuit at meals barges the crews of canal boats and barges barge mate the officer who steers when a high personage is to visit the ship bargemen the crew of the barge who are usually picked men also the large maggots with black heads that infest biscuit barget an old term for a small barge barilla an alkali procured by burning salsola cali and other seashore plants it forms a profitable article of mediterranean commerce see kelp bark the exterior covering of vegetable bodies many of which are useful in making paper cordage cloth dyes and medicines bark or bark from barca low latin a general name given to small ships square sterned without head rails it is however peculiarly appropriated by seamen to a three-masted vessel with only fore and aft sails on her mizzenmast bark rigged rigged as a bark with no square sails on the mizzenmast barkentine or barkentine a name applied on the great lakes of north america to a vessel square rigged on the foremast and fore and aft rigged on the main and mizzen masts they are not three-masted schooners as they have a regular brigantine's foremast 
they are long in proportion to their other dimensions to suit the navigation of the canals which connect some of these lakes barkers an old term for lower deck guns and pistols barky a sailor's term for the pet ship to which he belongs barking irons large duelling pistols barling an old term for the lamprey barling spars fit for any smaller masts or yards barnacle lepas anatifera a species of shellfish often found sticking by its pedicle to the bottom of ships doing no other injury than deadening the way a little Quote, barnacles termed soland geese in the islands of the orcades hubridas they were formerly supposed to produce the barnacle goose vide old cyclopedias the poet however was too good a naturalist to believe this but here as in many other places he seems to banter some of the papers which were published by the first establishers of the royal society the shell is compressed and multivalve the tentacula are long and pectinated like a feather whence arose the fable of their becoming geese they belong to the order of cirripeds barnard the manx or gaelic term for a limpet barometer a glass tube of thirty-six inches in length filled with the open end upwards with refined mercury thus boiled and suddenly inverted into a cistern which is furnished with a leathern bag on which the atmosphere acting by its varying weight presses the fluid metal up to corresponding heights in the tube easily read off by an external scale attached thereto by attentive observations on this simple profit practised seamen are enabled to foretell many approaching changes of weather or wind and thus by shortening sail in time save hull spars and lives this instrument also affords the means of accurately determining the heights or depressions of mountains and valleys this is the mercurial barometer another the aneroid barometer invented by monsignor vidi measures approximately but not with the permanence of the mercurial it is constructed to measure the weight of a column of air or pressure of the atmosphere by pressure on a very delicate metal box hermetically sealed it is more sensible to passing changes but not so reliable as the mercurial barometer twenty nine sixty is taken as the mean pressure in england as it rises or falls below this mark fine weather or strong winds may be looked for thirty sixty is very high and twenty nine not not very low the barometer is affected by the direction of the wind thus north northeast is the highest and south southwest the lowest therefore these matters govern the decision of men of science who are not led astray by the change of reading alone the seaman pilot notes the heavens the direction of the wind and the pressure due to that direction not forgetting sudden changes of temperature attention is due to the surface whether convex or concave bark the same as bark which see bar a peremptory exception to a proposition barra boats vessels of the western isles of scotland carrying ten or twelve men they are extremely sharp fore and aft having no floor but with sides rising straight from the keel so that a transverse section resembles the letter v they are swift and safe for in proportion as they heel to a breeze their bearings are increased while from their lightness they are as buoyant as norway skiffs barakan a strong undiapered camblet used for garments in the levant and in barbary anciently it formed the roman toga barak master the officer placed in charge of a barrack barracks originally mere log huts but of late extensive houses built for the accommodation and quartering of troops also the portion of the lower deck where the marines mess also little cabins made by spanish fishermen on the seashore called baracas whence our name barak smack a corruption of barrack smack a word applied to small scotch traders the masters were nicknamed barrack masters barratry any fraudulent act of the master or mariners committed to the prejudice of the ship's owners or underwriters whether by fraudulently losing the vessel deserting her selling her or committing any other embezzlement 
the diverting a ship from her right course with evil intent is baratry. Barred killifish, a small fish from two to four inches in length which frequents salt water creeks, floats, and the vicinity of wharves. Barrel, a cylindrical vessel for holding both liquid and dry goods, also a commercial measure of thirty one and a half gallons. Barrel of a capstan, the cylinder between the whelps and the pole rim constituting the main piece. Barrel of a pump, the wooden tube which forms the body of the engine. Barrel of small arms, the tube through which the bullets are discharged. In artillery, the term belongs to the construction of certain guns and signifies the inner tube as distinguished from the breech piece, trunnion piece, and hoops or outer coils the other essential parts of built-up guns, which see. Barrel of the wheel, the cylinder round which the tiller ropes are wound. Barrel builder, the old rating for a cooper. Barrel bulk, a measure of capacity for freight in a ship, equal to five cubic feet, so that eight barrel bulk are equal to one ton measurement. Barrel screw, a powerful machine consisting of two large puppets or male screws moved by levers in their heads upon a bank of plank with a female screw at each end. It is of great use in starting a launch. Barricade. A strong wooden rail supported by stanchions extending as a fence across the foremost part of the quarter deck on the top of which some of the seamen's hammocks are usually stowed in time of battle. In a vessel of war, the vacant spaces between the stanchions are commonly filled with rope mats, cork, or pieces of old cable, and the upper part, which contains a double rope netting above the sail, is stuffed with full hammocks to intercept small shot in the time of battle. Also, a temporary fortification or fence made with abatis, palisades, or any obstacles to bar the approach of an enemy by a given avenue. Barrier of Ice Ice stretched from the land ice to the sea or main ice, or across the channel so as to render it impassable. Barrier reefs. Coral reefs that either extend in straight lines in front of the shores or a continent or large island, or encircle smaller isles, in both cases being separated from the land by a channel of water. Barrier reefs in New South Wales, the Bermudas, Lacadives, Maldives, etc. Barriers. A martial exercise of men armed with short swords, within certain railings which separated them from the spectators, it has long been discontinued in England. Barrow, a hillock, a tumulus. Bars, the common river perch. Bartizan, the overhanging turrets on a battlement. Baruth, an Indian measure with a corresponding weight of three and a half pounds, avoir du poids. Base, the breech of a gun also the lowest part of the perimeter of a geometrical figure. When applied to a delta, it is that edge of it which is washed by the sea or recipient of the deltic branches, also the lowest part of a mountain or chain of mountains, also the level line on which any work stands as the foot of a pillar, also an old boat gun, a wall piece on the musket tune principle, carrying a five-ounce ball, base line, in strategy, the line adjoining the various points of a base of operations, in surveying the base on which the triangulation is founded. Base of operations. In strategy, one or a series of strategic points at which are established the magazines and means of supply necessary for an army in the field. Base ring. In guns of cast metal, the flat moulding round the breech at that part where the longitudinal surface ends and the vertical termination or cascable begins, the length of the gun is reckoned from the after edge of the base ring to the face of the muzzle, but in built-up guns, there being generally no base ring moulded and the breech assuming various forms, the length is measured from the after extreme of the breech, exclusive of any button or other adjunct. Bashaw a Turkish title of honour and command, more properly, Pacha. Basel, the angle to which the edge of shipwright's cutting tools is ground away. Basilicon, an ointment composed of wax, rosin, pitch, black rosin, and olive oil. Yellow basilicon of olive oil, yellow rosin, burgundy pitch, and turpentine. 
basilicus a name of regulus or the lion's heart alpha leonis a star of the first magnitude basilisk an old name for a long forty-eight pounder the gun next in size to the carthoon called basilisk from the snakes or dragons sculptured in the place of dolphins according to sir william monson its random range was three thousand paces also in still earlier times a gun throwing an iron ball of two hundred pounds weight basilard an old term for a poniard basin a wet dock provided with floodgates for restraining the water in which shipping may be kept afloat in all times of tide also all those sheltered spaces of water which are nearly surrounded with slopes from which waters are received these receptacles have a circular shape and narrow entrance geographically basins may be divided as upper lower lacustrine fluvial mediterranean etc basis c base basket in field works baskets or corbets are used to be filled with earth and placed by one another to cover the men from the enemy's shot basket fish a name for several species of your yale a kind of starfish the arms of which divide and subdivide many times and curl up and intertwine at the ends giving the whole animal something the appearance of a round basket basket hilt the guard continued up the hilt of a cutlass so as to protect the whole hand from injury basking shark so called from being often seen lying still in the sunshine a large cartilaginous fish the squalus maximus of linnaeus inhabiting the northern ocean it attains a length of thirty feet but is neither fierce nor voracious its liver yields from eight to twelve barrels of oil bass or bast a soft sedge or rush juncus loevis of which coarse kinds of rope and matting are made a gaelic term for the blade of an oar bass a species of perch percalabrax found on the coast and in estuaries commonly about eighteen inches long bassos a name in old charts for shoals whence bafon and bassofondo rocks awash or below water bast lime tree linden tilia europea bast is also made from the bark of various other trees macerated in water till the fibrous layers separate in the pacific isles it's very fine and strong from hibiscus to lacaeus basta a word in former use for enough from the italian bastard a term applied to all pieces of ordnance which are of unusual or irregular proportions the government bastard cannon had a seven-inch bore and sent a forty-pound shot also a fair-weather square sail in some mediterranean craft and occasionally used for an awning bastard mackerel or horse mackerel the carinx tracurus a dry coarse and unwholesome fish of the family scombridae very common in the mediterranean bastard pitch a mixture of colophony black pitch and tar they are boiled down together and put into barrels of pine wood forming when the ingredients are mixed in equal portions a substance of a very liquid consistence called in france bri gras if a thicker consistence is desired a greater proportion of colophony is used and it is cast in moulds it is then called bastard pitch to baste to beat in punition a mode of sewing in sail-making bastille a temporary wooden tower used formerly in naval and military warfare bastions projecting portions of a rampart so disposed that the bottom of the escarp of each part of the whole rampart may be defended from the parapet of some other part their form and dimensions are influenced by many considerations especially by the effect and range of firearms but it is essential to them to have two faces and two flanks the former having an average length according to present systems of one hundred and thirty yards the latter of forty yards baston or baton a club used of old by authority see batoon bastonado beating a criminal with sticks from bastoni a cudgel a punishment common among jews greeks and romans and still practised in the levant china and russia bat or sea-bat an anglo-saxon term for boat or vessel 
also a broad-bodied thoracic fish with a small head and distinguished by its large triangular dorsal and anal fins which exceed the length of the body it is the coetodon vespertilio of naturalists bat and forage a regulated allowance in money and forage to officers in the field batardates square stemmed row galleys batardo in fortification a dam of masonry crossing the ditch its top is constructed of such a form as to afford no passage along it batardels galleys less strong than the capitana and placed on each side of her bateau a flat-bottomed sharp-ended clumsy boat used on the rivers and lakes of canada some of them are large also a peculiar army pontoon baited a plump full-rowed fish is said to be baited batella a small plying boat bath sea washing place an order of knighthood instituted in thirteen thirty nine revived in seventeen twenty five and enlarged as a national reward of naval and military merit in january eighteen fifteen henry fourth gave this name because the forty-six esquires on whom he conferred this honour at his coronation had watched all the previous night and then bathed as typical of their pure virtue the order was supposed to belong to men who distinguished themselves by valour as regards the navy but is now deemed an inferior representation of court favour batilage an old term for boat hire batman a turkish weight of six oaks or about eighteen pounds english there is also a smaller batman in turkey of about four pounds ten ounces english in persia there are also two batmans the larger equal to twelve pounds english and the other is of about half that weight also a soldier assigned to a mounted officer as groom batoon baston or baton a staff truncheon or badge of military honour for field marshals a term in heraldry also batoons of st paul the fossil spines of echini found in malta and elsewhere batswain an anglo-saxon expression for boatswain bata extra allowance of pay granted to troops in india varying somewhat with the nature of the service they are employed upon and their distance from the capital of the presidency battalia the order of battle battalion a force of soldiers complete in staff and officers of such strength as will allow of its manoeuvres on the field of battle being intimately regulated by one superior officer the term is now proper to infantry only and represents from five hundred to one thousand men it is the ordinary unit made use of in estimating the infantry strength of an army batard an early cannon of small size batalo a latin rigged vessel of india battening the hatches securing the tarpaulins over them see battens of the hatches battens in general scantlings of wood from one inch to three inches broad long slips of fur used for setting fair the sheer lines of a ship or drawing the lines by in the moulding loft and setting off distances battens for hammocks see hammock battens battens of the hatches long narrow laths or straightened hoops of casks serving by the help of nailing to confine the edges of the tarpaulins and keep them close down to the sides of the hatchways in bad weather also thin strips of wood put upon rigging to keep it from chafing by those who dislike mats when large these are designated scotchmen battering guns properly guns whose weight and power fit them for demolishing by direct force the works of the enemy hence all heavy as distinguished from field or light guns come under the term see siege artillery and garrison guns battering ram see ram battering train the train of heavy ordnance necessary for a siege which since the copious introduction of vertical and other shell fire is more correctly rendered by the term siege train which see battery a place whereon cannon mortars etc are or may be mounted for action it generally has a parapet for the protection of the gunners and other defences and conveniences according to its importance and objects see also floating battery also a company of artillery in field artillery it includes men guns usually six in the british service 
horses, carriages, etc., complete for service. Battle. An engagement between two fleets, or even single ships, usually called a sea fight or engagement. The conflict between the forces of two contending armies. Battle lanterns. American. See fighting lanterns. Battlements. The vertical notches or openings made in the parapet walls of old castles and fortified buildings to serve for embrasures to the bowmen, arquebusiers, etc. of former days. Battle royale, a term derived from cockfighting but generally applied to a noisy, confused row. Battle the watch, to shift as well as we can, to contend with the difficulty, to depend on one's own exertions. Battling stone. A large stone with a smooth surface by the side of a stream on which washers beat their linen. Bats, a north country term for flat grounds adjoining islands and rivers, sometimes used for the islands themselves. Batward, an old term for a boat keeper. Bone, see boar. Bavier, the beaver of a helmet. Bavin, brushwood, bound up with only one withy. A faggot is tied with two. It is often spelled B-A-V-E-N, but Shakespeare has, quote, rash bavin wits, soon kindled and soon burned, end quote. This underwood is sometimes procurable by ships where none other can be got. Bavin in war applies to fascines. Baw bird. An old expression of larboard. Baudric, corrupted from baldric a girdle or sword belt. Baw, a species of worm, formerly used as a bait for fishing. Boggy, one of the names given to the great black and white gull, Laris marinus, in the Shetlands. Bocky, a northern term for the auk or razor bill. Baxios, Spanish, rocks or sand banks covered with water, scopuli. Bay, the forepart of a ship between decks before the bits, See sick bay, foremost messing places between decks in ships of war. Bay, an inlet of the sea formed by the curvature of the land between two capes or headlands, often used synonymously with gulf, though in strict accuracy the term should be applied only to those large recesses which are wider from cape to cape than they are deep. Exposed to sea winds, a bay is mostly insecure. A bay is distinguished from a bend as that a vessel may not be able to fetch out on either tack and is embayed. A bay has proportionably a wider entrance than either a gulf or haven. A creek has usually a small inlet and is always much less than a bay. Bay laurel, hence crowned with bays. Bayamos, violent blasts of wind blowing from the land on the south side of Cuba, and especially from the Bight of Bayamo, by which some of our cruisers have been damaged. They are accompanied by vivid lightning and generally terminate in rain. Bay Gulf, a branch of the sea of which the entrance is the widest part, as contradistinguished from the Strait Gulf. The Bay of Biscay is a well-known example of the semicircular gulf. Bay Ice, ice newly formed on the surface of the sea and having the colour of the water, it is then in the first stage of consolidation. The epithet is, however, also applied to ice a foot or two in thickness in bays. Bale, an old term for bucket. Bayonet, Spanish, bayoneta, a pike dagger to fit on the muzzle of a musket so as not to interfere with its firing. Bazaar, or bazaar, a market or marketplace, an oriental term. Bazaras, a large flat-bottomed pleasure boat of the Ganges moved with both sails and oars. End of section nine. Read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section ten of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sailor's Wordbook A to C by William Henry Smythe. B E. Beach. A littoral margin or line of coast along the seashore. 
composed of sand, gravel, shingle, broken shells, or a mixture of them all, any gently sloping part of the coast alternately dry and covered by the tide, the same as strand. To beach, sudden landing, to run a boat on the shore, to land a person with intent to desert him, an old buccaneer custom, to land a boat on a beach before a dangerous sea, this demands practical skill for which the Dover and Deal men are famed. Beachcombers, loiterers around a bay or harbour, beachcombing, loafing about a port to filch small things. Beach flea, a small crustacean, telitra, frequenting sandy shores. Beach grass, alga marina thrown up by the surf or tide. Beaching a vessel, see under voluntary stranding. Also the act of running a vessel up on the beach for various purposes where there is no other accommodation. Beach man, a person on the coast of Africa who acts as interpreter to shipmasters and assists them in conducting the trade. Beach master, a superior officer, captain, appointed to superintend disembarkation of an attacking force who holds plenary powers and generally leads the storming party. His acts, when in the heat of action, if he summarily shoot a coward, are unquestioned. Poor falconer, to wit. Beach men, a name applied to boatmen and those who land people through a heavy surf. Beach rangers, men hanging about seaports who have been turned out of vessels for bad conduct. Beach trampers, a name applied to the coast guard. Beacon, Anglo-Saxon, beacon. A post or stake erected over a shoal or sandbank as a warning to seamen to keep at a distance. Also a signal mark placed on the top of hills, eminences or buildings near the shore for the safe guidance of shipping. Beaconage. A payment levied for the maintenance of beacons. Beaft. Often used by East Country men for abaft. Beak or beak head. A piece of brass, like a beak, fixed at the head of the ancient galleys with which they pierced their enemies. Piseus is said to have first added the rostrum, or beakhead. Later it was a small platform at the fore part of the upper deck, but the term is now applied to that part without the ship, before the forecastle, or knee of the head, which is fastened to the stem and is supported by the main knee. Laterally, to meet steam propulsion. The whole of this is enlarged, strengthened, and armed with iron plates, and thus the armed stem revives the ancient strategy in sea fights. Shakespeare makes Ariel thus allude to the beak in the tempest, quote, I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. End quote. Beaker, a flat drinking tumbler or cup from the German Becher. See Bicker. Beakhead beam. For this important timber, see cat beam. Beakhead, bulkhead. The old termination aft of the space called beakhead, which enclosed the forepart of the ship. Beal. A word of Gaelic derivation for an opening or narrow pass between two hills. Beam. A long double stratum of murky clouds generally observed over the surface of the Mediterranean previous to a violent storm or an earthquake, the French call it trave. Beam, see a beam. Before the beam is an arc of the horizon, comprehended between a line that crosses the ship's length at right angles and some object at a distance before it, or between the line of the beam and that point of the compass which she stems. On the weather or lee beam is in a direction to windward or leeward at right angles with the keel. Beam arm synonymous with crowfoot, which see. Beam ends. A ship is said to be on her beam ends when she has heeled over so much on one side that her beams approach to a vertical position. Hence also a person lying down is metaphorically said to be on his beam ends. Beam fillings. Short lengths of wood cut to fit in between the beams to complete the cargo of a timber ship. Beam line. A line raised along the inside of the ship fore and aft, showing the upper sides of the beams at her side. Beam of the anchor, synonymous with anchor stock. Beams. Strong transverse pieces of timber stretching across the ship from one side to the other 
to support the decks and retain the sides at their proper distance with which they are firmly connected by means of strong knees and sometimes of standards they are sustained at each end by thick stringers on the ship's side called shelf pieces upon which they rest the main beam is next abaft the main mast which is stepped between two beams with transverse supports termed partners the foremost of these is generally termed the main beam or the after beam of the main hatchway the greatest beam of all is called the midship beam bean cod a small fishing vessel or pilot boat common on the sea coasts and in the rivers of spain and portugal extremely sharp forward having its stem bent inward above in a considerable curve it is commonly navigated with a large latine sail which extends the whole length of the deck and sometimes of an outrigger over the stern and is accordingly well fitted to ply to windward they frequently set as many as twenty different sails alow and aloft by every possible contrivance so as to puzzle seamen who are not familiar with the rig bare a large block of stone matted loaded with shot and fitted with ropes by which it is roused or pulled to and fro to grind the decks withal also a quermat filled with sand similarly used bear the constellations of ursa major and minor most important to seamen as instantly indicating by the pointers and pole star the true north at night much more correctly than any compass bearing to bear the direction of an object from the viewer it is used in the following different phrases the land's end bore east north east that is it was seen from the ship in a line with the east northeast point of the compass we bore down upon the enemy that is having the advantage of the wind or being to windward we approached the enemy by sailing large or from the wind when a ship that was to windward comes under another ship's stern and so gives her the wind she is said to bear under the lee often as a mark of respect she bears in with the land is said of a ship when she runs towards the shore we bore off the land that is we increased our distance from the land to bear down upon a ship is to approach her from the windward to bear ordnance to carry her guns well to bear sail stiff under canvas to bear up to put the helm up and keep a vessel off her course letting her recede from the wind and move to leeward this is synonymous with to bear away but is applied to the ship instead of the helm bear up one who has duly served for a commission but from want of interest bears up broken-hearted and accepts an inferior warrant or quits the profession seeking some less important vocation some middies have borne up and yet become bishops lord chancellors judges surgeons etc to bear up round is to put a ship right before the wind to bring a cannon to bear signifies that it now lies right with the mark to bear off from and in with the land signifies standing off or going towards the coast bear a bob or a fist jocular for lend a hand bear a hand hasten beard the silky filaments or byssus on which some testacea adhere to rocks of an oyster the gills beardy a northern name of the three-spined stickleback bearding the angular forepart of the rudder in juxtaposition with the stern post also the corresponding bevel of the stern post also the beveling of any piece of timber or plank to any required angle as the bearding of dead wood clamps etc bearding line in shipbuilding is a curved line made by bearding the dead wood to the shape of the ship's body bearers pieces of plank placed on the bolts which are driven through the standards or posts for the carpenter's stages to rest upon bearing an arc of the horizon intercepted between the nearest meridian and any distant object either discovered by the eye and referred to a point on the compass or resulting from finical proportion there is the true or astronomical bearing and the magnetic bearing it is also the situation of any distant object estimated with regard to the ship's position and in this sense the object must bear either ahead astern abreast on the bow or on the quarter if a ship sails with a side wind a distant object is said to bear to leeward or to windward on the lee quarter or bow or on the weather quarter or bow 
bearing back stays aft to throw the breast back stays out of the cross tree horns or outriggers and bear them aft if not done when suddenly bracing up the cross tree horn is frequently sprung or broken off bearing binnacle a small binnacle with a single compass usually placed before the other in line of battleships it is generally placed on the fife rail in the centre and foremost part of the poop bearings the widest part of a vessel below the plank shear the line of flotation which is formed by the water upon her sides when she sits upright with her provisions stores and ballast on board in proper trim bearings to bring to his used in conversation for to bring to reason to bring an unruly subject to his senses to know he's under control to reduce to order beat the verb means to excel surpass or overcome Quote, and then their ships could only follow for we had beat them all dead hollow End quote. beaten back returning into port from stress of foul weather beating or turning to windward the operation of making progress by alternate tacks at sea against the wind in a zigzag line or transverse courses beating however is generally understood to be turning to windward in a storm or fresh wind beating the booby the beating of the hands from side to side in cold weather to create artificial warmth beating wind that which requires the ship to make her way by tacks a baffling or contrary wind beatster one who beats or mends the yarmouth herring nets beat to arms the signal by drum to summon the men to their quarters beat to quarters the order for the drummer to summon every one to his respective station beaver a helmet in general but particularly that part which lets down to allow of the wearers drinking to be calm to intercept the current of the wind in its passage to a ship by means of any contiguous object as a high shore some other ship to windward etc at this time the sails remain in a sort of rest and consequently deprived of their power to govern the motion of the ship thus one sail becomes another becalmed implies that from the weather being calm and not a breath of wind blowing the sails hang loose against the mast beche de mer see tripang beck the anglo-saxon becca a small mountain brook or rivulet common to all northern dialects a gaelic or manx term for a thwart or bench in the boat becket a piece of rope placed so as to confine a spar or another rope anything used to keep loose ropes tackles or spars in a convenient place hence beckets are either large hooks or short pieces of rope with a knot at one end and an eye in the other or formed like a circular wreath for handles as with cutlass hilts boarding pikes tomahawks etc or they are wooden brackets and probably from a corruption and misapplication of this last term arose the word becket which seems often to be confounded with bracket also a grummet either of rope or iron fixed to the bottom of a block for making fast the standing end of the fall becket the tacks and sheets in the order to hang up the weather main and fore sheet and the lee main and fore tack to the small knot and eye becket on the foremost main and fore shrouds when the ship is close hauled to prevent them from hanging in the water a kind of large cleat seized on a vessel's fore or main rigging for the sheets and tacks to lie in when not required can't term for pockets hands out of beckets sir bed flat thick pieces of wood lodged under the quarters of casks containing any liquid and stowed in a ship's hold, hold in order to keep them bilge free being steadied upon the beds by means of wedges called coins the impression made by a ship's bottom on the mud on having been left by an ebb tide the bite made in the ground by the fluke of an anchor a kind of false deck or platform placed on those decks where the guns were too low for the ports bed of a gun carriage or stool bed the piece of wood between the cheeks or brackets which with the intervention of the coin supports the breech of the gun it is itself supported forward on the bed bolt and aft generally with the intervention of an elevating screw on the rear axle tree bed or barrel screws a powerful machine for lifting large bodies and placed against the gripe of a ship to be launched for starting her bed bolt 
a horizontal bolt passing through both brackets of a gun carriage near their centres, and on which the forward end of the stool bed rests, bedding a cask, placing dunnage round it, bedlummers, young Labrador seals which set up a dismal cry when they cannot escape their pursuers and go madly after each other in the sea, bed of a mortar, the solid frame on which a mortar is mounted for firing. For sea service it is generally made of wood, for land service of iron, except in the smaller natures. In mortar vessels as laterally fitted, the bed traverses on a central pivot over a large table or platform of wood, having under it massive india-rubber buffers to moderate the jar from the discharge, bed of a river, that part of the channel of a stream over which the water generally flows, as also that part of the basin of a sea or lake on which the water lies, bed of guns, a nautical phrase implying ordnance too heavy for a ship's scantling, or a fort overgunned bedundered, stupefied with noise. B. A ring or hoop of metal. Bees of the bowsprit. See B blocks. B blocks. Pieces of hard wood bolted to the outer end of the bowsprit to reeve the four topmast stays through. The bolt serving as a pin, commonly called bees. Beef. A figurative term for strength. More beef, more men on. Beef kid a mess utensil for carrying meat from the coppers. Beetle, a shipwright's heavy mallet for driving the wedges called reaming irons so as to open the seams in order to caulk. See reaming. Beetlehead, a large beetle weighing a thousand pounds, swayed up by a crab winch to a height and dropped by a pincer-shaped hook. It is used in pile driving. Before or abaft the beam, the bearing of any object which is before or abaft a right line to the keel at the midship section of a ship. Before the mast, the station of the working seamen is distinguishing them from the officers. Beggar bolts, a contemptuous term for the missiles which were thrown by the galley slaves at an approaching enemy. Behaviour, the action and qualities of a ship under different impulses. Seamen speak of the manner in which she behaves as if she acted by her own instinct. Bycat, see, bycat. Bailed, a sea term in the old law books apparently for moored. Being, see, bing. To belay, to fasten a rope when it has been sufficiently hauled upon by twining it several times round a cleat, bellying pin, or kevel, without hitching or seizing. This is chiefly applied to the running rigging, which needs to be so secured that it may be quickly let go in case of a squall or change of wind there being several other expressions used for securing large ropes as bitting making fast stoppering etc belay there stop that is enough belay that yarn we have had enough of it stand fast secure all when a hawser has been sufficiently hauled when the top sails or other sails have been hoisted taut up or belay the main tack etc belaying pins small wooden or iron cylinders fixed in racks in different parts of the ship for belaying running ropes too beleaguer to invest or closely surround an enemy's post in such manner as to prevent all relief or communication belfry an ornamental frame or shelter under which the ship's bell is suspended bell strike the bell the order to strike the clapper against the bell as many times as there are half hours of the watch elapsed Hence we say it is two bells, three bells, etc., meaning there are two or three half-hours past. The watch of four hours is eight bells. Bella Stella, a name used by old seamen for the cross-staff. Bellatrix, Gamma Orionis. Bellboy, a large can-boy on which is placed in wicker-work a bell which is sounded by the heaving and setting of the sea. Belligerent an epithet applied to any country which is in a state of warfare. Bellows, an old hand at the bellows, a colloquialism for a man up to his duty. A fresh hand at the bellows is said when a gale increases. Bell rope, a short rope spliced round a thimble in the eye of the bell crank with a double wall knot crowned at its end. Bells, see, watch. Bell top, a name applied to the top of a quarter gallery, when the upper stool is hollowed away or made like a rim. Bellware, a name of the Zostera Marina, 
which see. Belly, the swell of a sail, the inner or hollow part of compass timber. The outside is called the back. To belly a sail is to inflate it or fill it with the wind so as to give it a taut leech. Bellying canvas is generally applied to a vessel going free, as when the belly and foot reefs, which will not stand on a wind, are shaken out. Bellying to the breeze, the sails filling or being inflated by the wind. Bellying to leeward, when too much sail is injudiciously carried. Belly band, a strip of canvas halfway between the close reef and the foot of square sails to strengthen them, also applied to an army officer's sash. Belly guy, a tackle applied halfway up shears or long spars that require support in the middle, frequently applied to masts that have been crippled by injudiciously setting up the rigging too taut. Belly mat, see paunch mat. Belly stay, used half mast down when a mast requires support as belly guy above. Below, the opposite of on or pond deck generally used to distinguish the watch on deck and those off the watch. Belt, a metaphorical term in geography for long and proportionally narrow encircling strips of land, having any particular feature as a belt of sand, a belt of hills, etc. It is in use nearly synonymous with zone, also to beat with the colt or rope's end. Belting, a beating formerly given by a belt. Belts, the dusky streaks crossing the surface of the planet Jupiter and supposed to be openings in his atmosphere. Benches of boats. The seats in the after part whereon the passengers sit. Property stern sheets. The others are athwarts whereon the rowers sit. To bend. To fasten one rope to another or to an anchor. The term is also applied to any sudden or remarkable change in the direction of a river and is then synonymous with bite or loop. Bend a sail is to extend or make it fast to its proper yard or stay. See Granny's bend. And also, bend to your oars, throw them well forward. Bend. The chalk of the bowsprit. Bender. A contrivance to bend small crossbows, formerly used in the Navy. Also, look out for a bender, or strike out for a bend, applied to coiling the hempen cables. Bending ropes is to join them together with a bowline knot and then make their own ends fast upon themselves, not so secure as splicing, but sooner done and readiest when it is designed to take them asunder again. There are several bends, as carrick bend, hawser bend, sheet bend, bowline bend, etc. Bending the cable, the operation of clinching or tying the cable to the ring of its anchor. The term is still used for shackling chain cables to their anchors. Bend mold a mould made to form the futtocks in the square body, assisted by the rising square and floor hollow. Bend on the tack, in hoisting signals, that piece of rope called the distant line, which keeps the flags so far asunder they're not confused. Also, in setting free sails, the studding sail, tack, etc. Bend roll, a rest formerly used for a heavy musket. Bends, the thickest and strongest planks on the outward part of a ship's side, between the plank streaks on which men set their feet in climbing up. They are more properly called whales or whales. They are reckoned from the water and are distinguished by the titles of first, second, or third bend. They are the chief strength of a ship's sides and have the beams, knees, and foot hooks bolted to them. Bends are also the frames or ribs that form the ship's body from the keel to the top of the side, individualized by each particular station. That, at the broadest part of the ship, is denominated the midship bend, or dead flat. Beneeped. The situation of a vessel when she's aground at the height of spring tides. See, neeped. Bengal light. See, blue light. Benji. A low-crowned straw hat with a very broad brim. Bank. A North Country term for a low bank, or ledge of rock, Probably the origin of bunk or sleeping places in merchant vessels. See bunk. Ben. A small kind of salmon, the earliest in the Solway Firth. Bent. The trivial name of the Arundo Arenaria, or coarse unprofitable grass growing on the seashore. Bentic boom. That which stretches the foot of the foresail in many small square-rigged merchantmen, 
particularly used in whalers among the ice with a reefed foresail to see clearly ahead the tack and sheet are thus dispensed with a spar with tackle amidships brings the leeches taut on a wind it is principally worked by its bowline bentinks triangular courses so named after captain bentink by whom they were invented but which have since been superseded by storm stay sails they are still used by the americans as try sails bentink shrouds formerly used extending from the weather futtock staves to the opposite lee channels bent on a splice going to be married berg a word adopted from the german and applied to the features of land distinguished as steps banquettes shelves terraces and parallel roads see iceberg burgle a northern name for the ras berm in fortification a narrow space of level ground averaging about a foot and a half in width generally left between the foot of the exterior slope of the parapet and the top of the escarp in permanent fortification its principal purpose is to retain the earth of the parapet which when the latter is deformed by fire or by weather would otherwise fall into the ditch in field fortification it also serves to protect the escarp from the pressure of a too imminent parapet bermuda sails see moodian bermuda squall a sudden and strong wintry tempest experienced in the atlantic ocean near the bermudas it is preceded by heavy clouds thunder and lightning it belongs to the gulf stream and is felt throughout its course up to the banks of newfoundland bermudians three-masted schooners built at bermuda during the war of eighteen fourteen they went through the waves without rising to them and consequently were too ticklish for northern stations bernac the barnacle goose answer bernicla bursis a species of cannon formerly much used at sea berth the station in which a ship rides at anchor either alone or in a fleet as she lies in a good berth that is in good anchoring ground well sheltered from the wind and sea and at a proper distance from the shore and other vessels snug berth a place situation or establishment a sleeping berth to berth a vessel is to fix upon and put her into the place she is to occupy to berth a ship's company to allot to each man the space in which his hammock is to be hung giving the customary fourteen inches in width to give a berth to keep clear of as to give a point of land a wide berth is to keep at a due distance from it berth the room or apartment where any number of the officers or ship's company mess and reside in a ship of war there is commonly one of these between every two guns as the mess places of the crew berth and space in shipbuilding the distance from the moulding edge of one timber to the moulding edge of the next timber same as room and space or timber and space berth deck the tween decks berther he who assigns places for the respective hammocks to hang in berthing the rising or working up of the planks of a ship's sides as berthing up a bulkhead or bringing up in general berthing also denotes the planking outside above the shear strake and is called the berthing of the quarter deck of the poop or of the forecastle as the case may be berthing of the head see headboards burvy a haddock split and half dried berwick smack the old and well found packets of former days until superseded by steamers see barrack smack beset in ice surrounded with ice and no opening for advance or retreat so as to be obliged to remain immovable to besiege to endeavour to gain possession of a fortified place defended by an enemy by directing against it a connected series of offensive military operations Bessilorch, a northern name of the gobio fluviatilis or gudgeon best bower see bower anchors betelgeuse the lucida of orion alpha orionis and a standard greenwich star of the first magnitude bethel see floating bethel betty martin see martin between decks the space contained between any two whole decks of a ship betwixt wind and water about the line of load immersion of the ship's hull or that part of the vessel which is at the surface of the water bevel an instrument by which bevelling angles are taken also a sloped surface bevelling 
any alteration from a square in hewing timber as taken by the bevel beveling rule or beveling boards a standing beveling is that made without or outside a square and under beveling within and the angle is optionally acute or obtuse in shipbuilding it is the art of hewing a timber with a proper and regular curve according to a mould which is laid on one side of its surface beveling board a piece of board on which the bevelings or angles of the timbers are described beverage a west india drink made of cane sugar juice and water bupar the old name for bunton still used in navy office documents booter a northern name for the black whack or bittern byzant an early gold coin so called from having been first coined at byzantium End of section 10, read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 11 of A Sailor's Wordbook, A to C, by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. B. I. Bibs. Pieces of timber bolted to the hounds of a mast to support the trestle trees bible a hand axe also a squared piece of freestone to grind the deck with sand in cleaning it a small holy stone so called from seamen using them kneeling bible press a hand rolling board for cartridges rocket and port fire cases bicker or beaker a flat bowl or basin for containing liquors formerly made of wood but in later times of other substances thus butler quote, and into pikes and musketeers stamp beakers cups and porringers end quote. bid hook a small kind of boat hook beel brief the bottomry contract in denmark sweden and the north of germany beerling an old name for a small galley bifurcate a river is said to bifurcate or to form a fork when it divides into two distinct branches as at the heads of deltas and in fluvial basins bite a substantive made from the preterperfect tense of bend the space lying between two promontories or headlands being wider and smaller than a gulf but larger than a bay it is also used generally for any coast bend or indentation and is mostly held as a synonym of shallow bay bite the loop of a rope when it is folded in contradistinction to the end as her anchor hooked the bight of our cable that is caught any part of it between the ends the bight of his cable has swept our anchor that is the bight of the cable of another ship as she ranged about has entangled itself about the flukes of our anchor any part of the cord or curvature of a rope between the ends may be called a bight bigwigs a cant term for the higher officers Bellantella, a destructive mode of fishing in the Mediterranean by means of two vessels towing a large net stretched between them. Bellantes differendis, a writ directed to a corporation for the carrying of weights to such a haven, there to weigh the wool that persons by our ancient laws were licensed to transport. Bylander, a small merchant vessel with two masts particularly distinguished from other vessels with two masts by the form of her mainsail which is bent to the whole length of her yard hanging fore and aft and inclined to the horizon at an angle of about forty five degrees few vessels are now rigged in this manner and the name is rather indiscriminately used bilbo an old term for a flexible kind of cutlass from bilbao where the best spanish sword blades were made shakespeare humorously describes falstaff in the buck basket like a good bilbo coiled hilt to point bilbos long bars or bolts on which iron shackles slid with a padlock at the end used to confine the legs of prisoners in a manner similar to the punishment of the stocks the offender was condemned to irons more or less ponderous according to the nature of the offence of which he was guilty several of them are yet to be seen in the tower of london taken in the spanish armada shakespeare mentions hamlet thinking of a kind of fighting quote, that would not let me sleep methought i lay worse than the mutins in the bilbos bilcock 
the northern name for the water rail, bilge or bulge, the part of the floor in a ship on either side of the keel which approaches nearer to a horizontal than to a perpendicular direction and begins to round upwards. It is where the floors and second futtocks unite, and upon which the ship would rest if laid on the ground. Hence, when a ship receives a fracture in this part, she is said to be bilged or bulged. Bilge is also the largest circumference of a cask, or that which extends round by the bunghole. Bilge blocks. See sliding bilge blocks. Bilge codes. In launching a ship, same with sliding planks. Bilge fever. The illness occasioned by a foul hold. Bilge free. A cask so stowed as to rest entirely on its beds, keeping the lower part of the bilge at least the thickness of the hand clear of the bottom of the ship, or other place on which it is stowed. Bilge keels, used for vessels of very light draught and flattish bottoms, to make them hold a better wind, also to support them upright when grounded. The warrior and other ironclads are fitted with bilge keels. Bilge keelsons. These are fitted inside of the bilge to afford strength where iron, oars, and other heavy cargo are shipped. Otherwise, they are the same as sister keelsons. Bilge pieces, synonymous with bilge keels. Bilge planks, certain thick strengthenings on the inner and outer lines of the bilge to secure the shiftings as well as bilge keels. Bilge pump, a small pump used for carrying off the water which may lodge about the lee bilge, so as not to be under the action of the main pumps. In a steamer it is worked by a single link off one of the levers. Bilge trees, another name for bilge codes. Bilge water, the rain or sea water which occasionally enters a vessel and running down to her floor remains in the bilge of the ship till pumped out by reason of her flat bottom, which prevents it from going to the well of the pump. It is always, especially if the ship does not leak, of a dirty colour and disgusting penetrating smell. It seems to have been a sad nuisance in early voyages, and in the earliest sea ballad known, Temp Henry the Sixth, it is thus grumbled at, quote, A sack of straw were there right good, for some must like them in their hood. I had as leaf be in the wood, wot meat or drink, for when that we shall go to bed, the pump was nigh our bed's head. A man were as good to be dead as smell thereof ye stink. End quote. The mixture of tar water and the drainings of sugar cargo is about the worst perfume known. Bill, a weapon or implement of war, a pike or halbert of the English infantry. It was formerly carried by sentinels, whence Shakespeare humorously made Dogberry tell the sleepy watchman to have a care that their bills be not stolen. Also the point or tapered extremity of the fluke at the arm of an anchor. Also a point of land, of which a familiar instance may be cited in the Bill of Portland. Billat, a name on the coast of Yorkshire for the piltock or coalfish when it is a year old. Billboards, doubling under the four channels to the water line to protect the planking from the bill of the anchor. Billet, the allowance to landlords for quartering men in the royal service, the lodging money charged by consuls for the same. Billet head, a carved prow bending in and out, contrariwise to the fiddle head, scroll head, also a round piece of wood fixed in the bow or stern of a whale boat, about which the line is veered when the whale is struck, synonymous with bollard. Billet wood, small wood mostly used for dunnage in stowing ship's cargoes, also for fuel, usually sold by the fathom. It is three feet four inches long and seven and a half inches in compass. Bill fish, cigar fish. Bill hook, a species of hatchet used in wooding a ship, similar to that used by hedgers. Bill of exchange. A means of remitting money from one country to another. The receiver must present it for acceptance to the parties on whom it is drawn without loss of time. He may then claim the money after the date specified on the bill has elapsed. Bill of Freedom. A full pass for a neutral in time of war. Bill of Health. A certificate properly authenticated by the consul or other proper authority at any port that the ship comes from a place where no contagious disorder prevails, and that none of the crew, 
at the time of her departure, were infected with any such distemper. Such constitutes a clean bill of health, in contradistinction to a foul bill. Bill of Lading A memorandum by which the master of a ship acknowledges the receipt of the goods specified therein, and promises to deliver them in like good condition to the consignee, or his order. It differs from a charter party, in so much as it is given only for a single article or more, laden amongst the sundries of a ship's cargo. Bill of Sale A written document by which the property of a vessel or shares thereof are transferred to a purchaser. Bill of Sight or of View A warrant for a custom-house officer to examine goods which had been shipped for foreign parts but not sold there. Bill of Store a kind of license or custom-house permission for re-importing unsold goods from foreign ports duty-free within a specified limit of time. Billows, the surges of the sea or waves raised by the wind, a term more in use among poets than seamen. Bills, the ends of compass or knee-timber, billy-boy or boat, a humber or east-coast boat of river-barge build and a trysail a bluff-bowed north-country trader, or a large one-masted vessel of burden. Binary system. When two stars forming a double star are found to revolve about each other. Bind. A quantity of eels containing ten sticks of twenty-five each. Bindings. In shipbuilding, a general name for the beams, knees, clamps, waterways, transoms, and other connecting parts of a ship or vessel. Binding strakes, thick planks on the decks in midships between the hatchways, also the principal strakes of plank in a vessel, especially the shear strake and whales, which are bolted to the knees and shelf pieces. Bing. A heap, an old North Country word for the seashore, and sometimes spelled being. To binge, to rinse, or bull a cask. Binged, an old term for locker. Bink. See bank. Bin, a sort of large locker with a lid on the top for containing a vessel's stores, bread bin, sail bin, flour bin, etc. Binnacle, formerly biticle. It appears evidently to be derived from the French term habitacle, a small habitation, which is now used for the same purpose by the seamen of that nation. The binnacle is a wooden case or box which contains the compass and a light to illuminate the compass at night. There are usually three binnacles on the deck of a ship of war, two near the helm being designed for the man who steers, weather and lee, and the other amidships, ten or twelve feet before these, where the quartermaster who cons the ship stands when steering or going with a free wind. See con. Binnacle light, the lamp throwing light upon the compass card. Binocle a small binocular or two-eyed telescope. Björlin, perhaps the oldest of our terms for boat. See Birlin. Bird bolt, a species of arrow, short and thick, used to kill birds without piercing their skins. Bird's foot sea star. The palmipes membranaceus, one of the Asterinidae, with a flat, thin pentagonal body of a bright scarlet colour. Bird's nest. A round top at a masthead for a lookout station, a smaller crow's nest, chiefly used in whalers where a constant lookout is kept for whales. See edible bird's nest. Byremis. In Roman antiquity, a vessel with two rows of oars. Berlin. A sort of small vessel or galley boat of the Hebrides. It is fitted with four to eight long oars, but is seldom furnished with sails. Bert. A kind of turbot. Birthmarks. A ship must not be loaded above her birthmarks, for, says a maritime proverb, a master must know the capacity of his vessel, as well as a rider the strength of his horse. Biscuit, that is, biscottus, or French biscuit, bread intended for naval or military expeditions, is now simply flour well kneaded, with the least possible quantity of water, into flat cakes and slowly baked. Pliny calls it panis nauticus, and of the panis militaris he says that it was heavier by one-third than the grain from which it was made. Bishop, the name of the great northern diver, Columbus glacialis. Bismar, a name of the stickleback, Gasterosteus, 
Spinachia. Bit, a West Indian silver coin, varying from four pence to six pence. In America, it is twelve and a half cents, and in the Spanish settlements, is equal with the real, or one-eighth of a dollar. It was, in fact, Spanish money cut into bits, and known as cut money. Bite, is said of the anchor when it holds fast in the ground on reaching it. Also the hold which the short end of a lever has upon the thing to be lifted. Also to bite off the top of small arm cartridges. Bitter. Any turn of a cable about the bits is called a bitter. Hence a ship is brought up to a bitter when the cable is allowed to run out to that stop. Bitter bump. A north country name for the bittern. Bitter end. That part of the cable which is abaft the bits and therefore within board when the ship rides at anchor. They say, bend to the bitter end, when they would have that end bent to the anchor, and when a chain or rope is paid out to the bitter end, no more remains to be let go. The bitter end is the clinching end. Sometimes the end is bent to the anchor because it has never been used, and is more trustworthy. The first forty fathoms of a cable of a hundred and fifteen fathoms is generally worn out when the inner end is comparatively new. Bit heads. The upright pieces of oak timber let in and bolted to the beams of two decks at least, and to which the cross pieces are let on and bolted. See bits. Bit pins. Similar to bellaying pins, but larger. Used to prevent the cable from slipping off the cross piece of the bits. Also to confine the cable and messenger there in heaving in the cable. Bits. A frame composed of two strong pieces of straight oak timber fixed upright in the fore part of a ship and bolted securely to the beams whereon to fasten the cables as she rides at anchor in ships of war there are usually two pairs of cable bits and when they're both used at once the cable is said to be double bitted since the introduction of chain cables bits are coated with iron and vary in their shapes there are several other smaller bits as the topsail sheet bits pawl bits carrick bits windlass bits winch bits jeer bits riding bits gallows bits and forebrace bits bit stopper one rove through the knee of the bits which nips the cable on the bite it consists of four or five fathoms of rope tailed out nipper fashion at one end and clench knotted at the other the old bit stopper by its running loop on a standing end bound the cable down in a bite abaft the bits the tail twisted round the forepart helped to draw it still closer it is now disused, chain cables having superseded hemp. To bit the cable. To put it round the bits in order to fasten it or slacken it out gradually, which last is called veering away. Bivouac. The rest for the night in the open air by an armed party, instead of encamping. Bees. A piercing cold wind from the frozen summits of the Pyrenees. End of section 11. Read by Sandra. Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 12 of the Sailor's Word Book, H.C. by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. B.L. Blackamoor a thoroughly black negro blackbird catching the slave trade blackbirds a slang term on the coast of africa for a cargo of slaves black book of the admiralty an imaginary record of offences also a document of great authority in naval law as it contains the ancient admiralty statutes and ordinances blackfish a common name applied by sailors to many different species of cetaceans. The animal so called in the South Seas belongs to the genus Globiocephalus. It is from fifteen to twenty feet long and occurs in countless shoals. Black fisher, a water poacher, one who kills salmon in close time. Black fishing, the, the illegally taking of salmon under night by means of torches and spears with barbed prongs. Blackhead, the Pewit Gull, Laris ridibundus. Black Hole, a place of solitary confinement for soldiers and tried in some large ships. 
Black Indies, Newcastle, Sunderland and Shields. Blacking. For the ship's bends and yards, a good mixture is made of coal tar, vegetable tar and salt water, boiled together and laid on hot. Blacking down. The tarring and blacking of rigging, or the operation of blacking the ship's sides with tar or mineral blacking. Blackjack. The ensign of a pirate. Also, a capacious tin can for beer, which was formerly made of waxed leather. In 1630, Taylor wrote, quote, Nor of black jacks at gentle buttery bars, whose liquor oftentimes breeds household wars. End of quote. Blacklist, a record of misdemeanors impolitically kept by some officers for their private use, the very essence of private tyranny, now forbidden. Blacklock, a trout thought to be peculiar to Loch Melvin on the west of Ireland. Black ships, the name by which the English builders designate those constructed of teak in India. Black Southeaster, the well-known violent wind at the Cape of Good Hope, in which the vapory clouds called the Devil's Tablecloth appear on Table Mountain. Black Squall. This squall, although generally ascribed to the West Indies as well as the White Squall, may be principally ascribed to a peculiar heated state of the atmosphere near land, as Blackie, when interrogated about weather, generally observes, Massa, look to leeward. It may be easily understood that it is the condensed air repelled by a colder medium to leeward and driven back with condensed electricity in danger. So it is sudden to Johnny Newcombs, who lose sails, spars, and ships by capsizing. Black's the white of my eye. When Jack avers that no one can say this or that of him, it is an indignant expression of innocence of a charge. Black Strake the range of plank immediately above the whales in a ship's side. They are always covered with a mixture of tar and lamp black, which not only preserves them from the heat of the sun and the weather, but forms an agreeable variety with the painted or varnished parts above them. Vessels with no ports have frequently two such strakes, one above, the other below the whales, the latter being also called the diminishing strake. Black strap the dark country wines of the Mediterranean, also bad port, such as was served for the sick in former times. Black tang, the seaweed Fucus vesicolosus, or tangle. Black wall hitch, a sort of tackle hook guy, made by putting the bite of a rope over the back of the hook, and there jamming it by the standing part, a mode of hooking on the bare end of a rope where no length remains to make a cat's paw. Black Whale, the name by which the right whale of the South Seas, Balena Australis, is often known to whalemen. Blad, a term on our northern coasts for a squall with rain. Bladder fish, a term for the tetraodon, see balloon fish. Blade of an anchor, that part of the arm prepared to receive the palm. Blade or wash of an oar is the flat part of it which is plunged into the water in rowing. The force and effect in a great measure depends on the length of this part when adequate force is applied. When long oars are used, the boat is generally single-banked, so that the fulcrum is removed further from the rower, also the motive part of the screw propeller. Blay, or blee, the alburnum or sapwood of timber. Blake, yellow, north of England. Blank. Level line mark for cannon, as point blank, equal to 800 yards. It was also the term for the white mark in the centre of a butt at which the arrow was aimed. Blanket, the coat of fat or blubber under the skin of a whale. To blare, to bellow or roar vehemently. Blare, a mixture of hair and tar made into a kind of paste, used for tightening the seams of boats. Blarney, idle discourse obsequious flattery. Blashy, watery or dirty, applied to weather as a blashy day, a wet day, in parlance trifling or flimsy. Blast, a sudden and violent gust of wind. It is generally of short duration and succeeded by a fine breeze. To blast, to blow up with gunpowder. 
blast engine, a ventilating machine to draw off the foul air from the hold of a ship and induce a current of fresh air into it, blather, thin mud or puddle, also idle nonsense, blay, a name of the bleak, to blaze, to fire away as briskly as possible, to blaze away is to keep up a running discharge of firearms, also to spear salmon, also in the woods, to mark a tree by cutting away a portion of its outer surface, thus leaving a patch of white or internal surface exposed to call attention or mark a track. Blazers, applied to mortar or bomb vessels, from the great emission of flame to throw a thirteen-inch shell. Blazing stars, the popular name of comets. Bleak. The Leuciscus alburnus of naturalists and the freshwater sprat of Isaac Walton. The name of this fish is from the Anglo-Saxon blecan, owing to its shining whiteness, its lustrous scales having long been used in the manufacture of false pearls. Bleeding the monkey. The monkey is a tall pyramidal kid or bucket, which conveys the grog from the grog tub to the mess. Stealing from this in transitu is so termed. Bleed the boys, to let the water out. Blenny, a small acanthopterigeous fish. Blennius. Blatherhead, a blockhead. Blathering, talking idle nonsense, insolent prate. Blind, a name on the west coast of Scotland for the pug, or miller's thumb, cotus cataphractus. Blind, everything that covers besiegers from the enemy. See Orillon. Blindage, a temporary wooden shelter faced with earth, both in siege works and in fortified places against splinters of shells and the like. Blind bucklers, those fitted for the hawse holes, which have no aperture for the cable and therefore used at sea to prevent the water coming in. Blind harbour, one, the entrance of which is so shut in as not readily to be perceived. Blind rock, one lying just under the surface of the water so as not to be visible in calms. Blind shell, one which from accident or bad fuse has fallen without exploding, or one purposely filled with lead, as at the siege of Cadiz, also used at night, filled with fuse composition and enlarged fuse hole to indicate the range. Blind stakes, a sort of river weir. Blink of the ice, a bright appearance or looming, the iceberg reflected in the atmosphere above it, often assuming an arched form, so called by the Greenlanders, and by which reflection they always know when they are approaching ice long before they see it. In Greenland, blink means iceberg. Blurt, a gust of wind and rain. To bloat, to dry by smoke, a method latterly applied almost exclusively to cure herrings or bloaters, Bloated is also applied to any half-dried fish. Blocko, paper and hair used in paying a vessel's bottom. Block, in mechanics, termed a pulley. Blocks are flattish oval pieces of wood with sheaves in them for all the running ropes to run in. They are used for various purposes in a ship, either to increase the mechanical power of the ropes or to arrange the ends of them in certain places on the deck, that they may be readily found when wanted. They are consequently of various sizes and powers, and obtain various names according to their form or situation. Thus, a single block contains only one sheave or wheel. A double block has two sheaves. A treble or a threefold block, three, and so on. A long tackle or fiddle block has two sheaves, one below the other like a fiddle. Cistern or sister block for topsail lifts and reef tackles. Every block is composed of three and generally four parts. One, the shell or outside wooden part. Two, the sheave or wheel on which the rope runs. Three, the pin or axle on which the sheave turns. Four, the strop or part by which the block is made fast to any particular station and is usually made either of rope or of iron. Blocks are named and distinguished by the ropes which they carry and the uses they serve for, as bowlines, braces, clue lines, halyards, etc., etc. They are either made or mortised, which see. Block, the large piece of elm out of which the figure is carved at the head of the ship. Blockade, 
the investment of a town or fortress by sea and land shutting up all the avenues so that it can receive no relief to blockade a port is to prevent any communication therewith by sea and cut off supplies in order to compel a surrender when the provisions and ammunition are exhausted to raise a blockade is to discontinue it blockade is violated by egress as well as by ingress warning on the spot is sufficient notice of a blockade de facto declaration is useless without actual investment if a ship break a blockade though she escape the blockading force she is if taken in any part of her future voyage captured in delicto and subject to confiscation the absence of the blockading force removes liability and might in such cases overrules right block and block the situation of a tackle when the blocks are drawn close together so that the mechanical power becomes arrested until the tackle is again overhauled by drawing the blocks asunder synonymous with chock a block blockhouse a small work generally built of logs to protect adjacent ports blockhouses were primarily constructed in our american colonies because they could be immediately built from the heavy timber felled to clear away the spot and open the lines of fire the ends were simply crossed alternately and pinned two such structures with a space of six feet for clay formed on an elevated position a very formidable castmated work the slanting overhanging roof furnished excellent cover in lieu of loopholes for musketry block maker a manufacturer of blocks blocks the several transverse pieces or logs of timber piled in plain on which a ship is built or to place her on for repair they consist of solid pieces of oak laid on the groundways blocks fixed see fixed blocks bloodsuckers lazy fellows who by skulking throw their proportion of labour on the shoulders of their shipmates bloody flag a large red flag bloom a peculiar warm blast of wind a term used in iron foundries blower an old word for a stiff gale blout a northern term for the sudden breaking up of a storm blout has been misused for blurt blow applied to the breathing of whales and other cetaceans the expired air from the lungs being highly charged with moisture which condenses at the temperature of the atmosphere appears like a column of steam blow a gale of wind blow a very old english word for scold or revile still in use as when a man receives a good blowing up blow holes the nostrils of the cetaceans situated on the highest part of the head in the whalebone whales they form two longitudinal slits placed side by side in the porpoises grampuses etc they are united into a single crescentic opening blow home the wind does not cease or moderate till it comes past that place blowing continuously over the land and sea with equal velocity in a naval sense it does not blow home when a sea wind is interrupted by a mountainous range along shore blowing great guns and small arms heavy gales a hurricane blowing hard said of the wind when it is strong and steady blowing the grampus throwing water over a sleeper on watch blowing weather a nautical term for a continuance of strong gales see gale blown cod a split cod half dried by exposure to the wind blown is also frequently applied to bloated herrings when only partly cured also a codfish rises to the surface and is easily taken if blown by being hauled nearly up and the hook breaking it loses the power for some time of contracting the air bladder and thus dies head out of water blown itself out said of a falling gale of wind to blow off to clear up in the clouds blow off pipe in a steamer is a pipe at the foot of each boiler communicating with the sea and furnished with a cock to open it and shut it off blowing off is the act or operation of using the blow-off pipe to cleanse a marine steam engine of its brine deposit also to clear the boilers of water to lighten a ship if grounded blow out extravagant feasting regardless of consequences blow over it will said of a gale which is expected to pass away quickly blowpipe 
an engine of offence used by the araucanians and borneans and with the latter termed sumpitan the poisoned arrow sumpit will wound at the distance of a hundred and forty or more yards the arrow is forced through like boys pea-shooters by the forcible and sudden exertion of the lungs a wafer can be hit at thirty yards to a certainty and small birds are unerringly stunned at thirty yards by pellets of clay blow the gaff to reveal a secret to expose or inform against a person blow through valve a valve admitting steam into the condenser in order to clear it of air and water before starting the engine to blow up to abuse angrily blow valve a valve by which the first vacuum necessary for starting a steam engine is produced. Blubber, the layer of fat in whales between the skin and the flesh, which is flinched or peeled off and boiled for oil, varying from ten to twenty inches in thickness. See sea blubber. Blubber forks and choppers, the implements with which blubber is made off or cut for stowing away. Blubber guy, a large rope, stretched from the main to the foremast head of whalers to which the speck falls are attached for the operation of flensing blue till all's blue carried to the utmost a phrase borrowed from the idea of a vessel making out of port and getting into blue water to look blue to be surprised disappointed or taken aback with a countenance expressive of displeasure blue jackets the seamen as distinguished from the marines Blue light, a pyrotechnical preparation for signals by night, also called Bengal light. Blue lightism, affected sanctimoniousness. Blue moon, an indefinite period. Blue nose, a general term for a native of Nova Scotia. Blue peter, the signal for sailing when hoisted at the foretop mast head. This well-known flag has a blue ground with a white square in the center. Blue Pigeon, a nickname for the sounding lead. Blue Water, the open ocean. Bluff, an abrupt high land projecting almost perpendicularly into the sea and presenting a bold front, rather rounded than cliffy in outline as with the headland. Bluff Bowed, applied to a vessel that has broad and flat bows, that is, full and square formed, the opposite of lean. Bluff Headed, when a ship has but a small rake forward on, being built with her stem too straight up. Blunderbuss, a short firearm with a large bore and wide mouth to scatter a number of musket or pistol bullets or slugs. Blunk, a sudden squall or stormy weather. Blustrous, stormy, also said of a braggadocio. End of section 12, read by Sandra. Section 13 of the Sailor's Word Book by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. B O to B O N. Bo, abbreviation of boy, a familiar epithet for a comrade derived probably from the Negro. Bodnash. Buckhamshine coins of Barbary. Boanga, a Malay piratical vessel impelled by oars. Board, certain offices under the control of the executive government where the business of any particular department is carried on, as the Board of Admiralty, the Navy Board, Board of Ordnance, India Board, Board of Trade, etc. Also, timber sawn to a less thickness than plank all broad stuff of under one and a half inch in thickness see plank also the space comprehended between any two places when the ship changes her course by tacking or it is the line over which she runs between tack and tack when working to windward or sailing against the direction of the wind to make a good board to sail in a straight line when close hauled without deviating to leeward to make short boards is to tack frequently before the ship has run any great length of way to make a stern board is when by a current or any other accident the vessel comes head to wind the helm is shifted and she is fallen back on the opposite tack 
losing what she'd gained instead of having advanced beyond it. To make a stern board is frequently a very critical as well as seamanlike operation, as in very close channels. The vessel is allowed to run up into the wind until she has shot up to the weather danger. The helm is then shifted, and with all a back forward, she falls short off the opposite tack. Such is also achieved at anchor in club hauling, which see. To board a ship is to enter her in a hostile manner in order to take forcible possession of her, either from the attacking ship or by armed boats. The word board has various other applications among seamen. To go aboard signifies to go into the ship. To slip by the board is to slip down a ship's side. To board it up is to beat up, sometimes on one tack and sometimes on another. The weather board is the side of the ship which is to windward, by the board close to a ship's deck. Board and board, alongside as when two ships touch each other. Orders, sailors appointed to make an attack by boarding or to repel such attempt from the enemy. Four men selected from each gun were generally allotted as boarders, also to trim sails, tend pumps, repair rigging, etc. Board him. A colloquialism for I'll ask, demand, or accost him. Hence Shakespeare makes Polonius say of Hamlet, quote, I'll board him presently, end quote, to make acquaintance with, to fasten on. Board him in the smoke, to take a person by surprise, as by firing a broadside and boarding in the smoke. Boarding, an assault made by one vessel on another by entering her in battle with a detachment of armed men. Boarding book, a register which has for its object the recording all particulars relative to every ship boarded, a copy of which is transmitted to the admiral under whose orders the ship is employed. See guard book. Boarding nettings. A framework of stout rope netting placed where necessary to obstruct an enemy's borders. Boarding pike, a defensive lance against borders. Boardlings, flippant understrappers of the Admiralty and Navy boards. Board of Trade, a committee of the Privy Council appointed for the consideration of commercial matters. Boat, a small open vessel conducted on the water by rowing or sailing. The construction, machinery, and even the names of boats are very different, according to the various purposes for which they are calculated, and the services on which they are employed. Thus we have the longboat and the jolly boat, lifeboat and gunboat, but they will appear under their respective appellations. A bold boat, one that will endure a rough sea well. Man the boat, send the crew in to row and manage it. Boatable water navigable for boats and small river craft. Boat buoys, means added to increase the buoyancy of lifeboats, etc. Boat chocks, clamps of wood upon which a boat rests when stowed on a vessel's deck. Boat cloak, a mantle for the officer going on duty. When left in the boat, it is in the coxswain's charge. Boat davit, a curved piece of timber with a sheave at its outer end, which projects over the boat's stern, while the inner end is shipped into a cleat on each side of the bottom of the boat, for weighing anchors when needed. See Davit. Boat Fast. See Painter. Boat Gear. A general name for the rigging and furniture of a boat. Boat Hire. Expenses for the use of shore boats. Boat Hook. An iron hook with a straight prong at its hinder part, it is fixed upon a pole by the help of which a boat is either pulled to or pushed off from any place and is capable of holding on by anything. Botilla, a narrow sterned, flat bottomed boat of the Gulf of Manar. Boating, transporting men, munitions, or goods in boats. Boatkeeper, one of the boat's crew who remains in charge of her during the absence of the others. In small vessels, he's sometimes called the boatman. Boat nails. Those supplied for the carpenter's use are of various lengths, generally rose-headed, square at the points, and made both of copper and iron. See nails. Boat rope. A separate rope veered to the boat to be towed at the ship's stern. Boat's crew. The men appointed as the crew of any particular boat, as the barge's crew, cutter's crew, etc. Boat's gripes. 
lashings for the secure stowage of boats, see gripes. Boat skids, portable pieces of plank used to prevent chafing when a boat is hoisted or lowered, see skids. Boatswain, the officer who superintends the boat sails, ship's sails, rigging, canvas, colors, anchors, cables, and cordage, committed to his charge. He ought also to take care that the blocks and running ropes are regularly placed to answer the purposes for which they are intended, and that the sails are properly fitted to their yards and stays, and well furled or reefed when occasion requires. He pipes the hands to their several duties, seeing that they attend his call, and ought to be in every way a thorough seaman. Although termed boatsman, the boats are not in his charge. They, with the spars, etc., and stores for repair, belong to the carpenter. The boatsman is the officer of the first lieutenant. He gives no order, but reports defects, and carries out the will of his superior. Boatswain Bird Pathon Aetherius A tropical bird, so called from its sort of whistle. It is distinguished by two long feathers in the tail, called marling spike. Boatswain Captain an epithet given by certain popinjays in the service to such of their betters as fully understand the various duties of their station. Boatsman's mate is an assistant to the boatsman who had the peculiar command of the longboat. He summons the watch or crew by his whistle, and during his watch looks to the decks and has peculiar calls for grog, boat ship, pipe to breakfast, sweepers, etc. Boatsman's storeroom built expressly for boatsmen's stores on a platform or light deck. Boatsman's yeoman, see yeoman. Boat the anchor, place the anchor inboard in the boat. Boat the oars, put them in their proper places fore and aft on the thwarts ready for use. Bob, a knot of worms on a string used in fishing for eels. Also colloquially, it means a berth. Shift your bob to move about, to dodge, to fish. Bear a bob, make haste, be brisk. Bob, the ball or balance weight of a clock's pendulum, the weight attached to the plumb line. Bobbery, a disturbance, row or squabble, a term much used in the East Indies and China. Bobbing, a particular method of fishing for eels. Quote, his hook he baited with a dragon's tail, and sat upon a rock, and bobbed for whale. End quote. Bobbing about, heaving and setting without making any way. Bubble. The state of waves when dashed about without any regular set or direction, as in cross tides or currents. Bobstay collars. These are made with large rope, and an eye spliced in each end. They are secured around the bowsprit on the upper side, with a rose lashing. They are almost entirely superseded by iron bands. Bobstay holes, those cut through the fore part of the knee of the head between the cheeks for the admission of the bobstay. They are not much used now as chain bobstays are almost universal, which are secured to plates by shackles. Bobstay plates, iron plates by which the lower end of the bobstay is attached to the stem. Bobstays. Ropes or chains used to confine the bowsprit downward to the stem or cut water. They are fitted in various ways. Their use is to counteract the strain of the foremast stays which draw it upwards. The bowsprit is also fortified by shrouds from the bows on each side, which are all very necessary as the foremast and the upper spars on the mainmast are stayed and greatly supported by the bowsprit. Boca, Spanish boca, mouth is a term used both in the Levant and on the north coast of South America, or the Spanish Main, for a mouth or channel into any port or harbour, or the entrance into a sound which has a passage out by a contrary way, Boca Tigris, Canton River. Bodies The figure of a ship, abstractedly considered, is divided into different parts or figures, each of which has the appellation body, as forebody, midship body, square body, etc. Bodkin, a dirk or dagger, a word still in use, though Johnson says it is the oldest acceptation of it. It is the bodkin of Chaucer, and Shakespeare makes Hamlet ask who would bear the ills of life. Quote, 
when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. End quote. Body, the principal core of an army or the main strength of a fleet. Body of a place. In fortification, the space enclosed by the enceinte or line of bastions and curtains. Body hoops, those which secure the arras pieces of a made mast. Body plan, the draft of a proposed ship showing the breadth and timbers. It is a section supposed to cut the vessel through the broadest part. It is otherwise called the plan of projection. Body post, an additional stern post introduced at the fore part of an aperture cut in the dead wood in a ship fitted with a screw propeller. Bog, a marsh or a tract of land which from its form and impermeable bottom retains stagnant water. See Quagmire. Bog bluter, a northern name for the bittern, from its habit of thrusting its bill into marshy places. Bog trotter, any one who lives among marshy moors, but generally applied to the emeralders. To bog, to drop off from the wind, to edge away to leeward with the wind, not holding a good wind, and driving very much to leeward, used only to clumsy inferior craft. Bog, mouth of a river, hence disembog, bog forts, China. Bohemian, a conceited doddler in his duties. Shakespeare ridicules simple as a bohemian tartar, both of which terms were applied to gypsies. Boiler, of a steam engine made of wrought iron or copper plates, which, being partly filled with water and having fire applied to the outside, generates steam to supply the engine. Boilers, termed coppers, the ship's cooking utensils of iron or copper. Boiling, the whole boiling means the entire quantity or whole party applied to number or quantity, a contemptuous epithet. Bold bow, a broad bluff bow. Bouldering weather, cloudy and thundery. Bold shore, a steep coast where the water, deepening rapidly, admits the near approach of shipping without the danger of grounding. Bold to, applied to land, the same as steep to. Bowl, a small boat. Bolide, a name for aerolite, which see. Boline, see bowline, clavus in navi. Bolan, the Manx or Gaelic term for the fish old wife. Bollard, a thick piece of wood on the head of a whaleboat, round which the harpooner gives the line a turn in order to veer it steadily and check the animal's velocity. Also, a strong timber fixed vertically into the ground, part being left above it on which to fasten ropes. Also, a lighter sort of dolphin for attaching vessels to. Wharves have bollards to which vessels are secured when alongside. Bollard timbers, two pieces of oak usually called nightheads, which see. Bowling or bowling away, going with a free wind. Bolm, an old term for a waterman's pole or boom. Bolotto, a small boat of the Philippines and Moluccas. Bolsters. Small cushions or bags of tarred canvas used to preserve the stays from being chafed by the motion of the masts. When the ship pitches at sea, pieces of soft wood covered with canvas placed on the trestle trees for the eyes of the rigging to rest upon and prevent a sharp nip. Also, pieces of oak timber fade to the curvature of the bow under the hawse holes and down upon the upper cheek to prevent the cable from rubbing against the cheeks. Bolsters for sheets, tacks, etc., are small pieces of fir or oak, fade under the gunwale or other part, with the outer surface rounded to prevent chafing. Bolsters for the anchor lining. Solid pieces of oak bolted to the ship's side at the fore part of the four chains, on which the stanchions are fixed that receive the anchor lining. Bolt, a cylindrical pin of iron or copper, to unite the different parts of a vessel, varied in form according to the places where they are required. In shipbuilding, square ones are used in frame fastening. The heads of all bolts are round, saucer or collared. Bolt of the irons, which runs through three pairs of shackles. 
drift or drive bolts are used to drive out others bay bolts have jags or barbs on each side to keep them from flying out of their holes clench bolts are clenched with riveting hammers fend or fender bolts made with long and thick heads and struck into the outermost bends of the ship to save her sides from bruises forelock bolts have at the end a forelock of iron driven in to keep them from starting back set bolts are used for forcing the planks and bringing them close together ring bolts are used for the bringing to of the planks and those parts where to are fastened the breeches and tackle of the guns scarp bolts and keel bolts pointed not clinched used for the false keel or temporary purposes bringing two bolts fitted with an eye at one end and a nut and screw at the other for bringing to the ends at the stem etc to bolt to start off to run away bolt boat an old term for a boat which makes good weather in a rough sea bolting timbers those on each side of the stem continued up for the security of the bowsprit. See night heads. Bolt of canvas. The piece or roll of thirty-nine yards in which it is supplied, but which usually measure about forty yards in length. It is generally from twenty-two to thirty inches wide. Bolt rope. A rope sewed all around the edge of the sail to prevent the canvas from tearing. The bottom part of it is called the foot rope, the sides leech ropes, and if the sail be oblong or square, the upper part is called the head rope. The stay or weather rope of four and a half sails is termed the luff. Bolt rope needle, a strong needle for stitching the sail to the bolt ropes. Bolt sprit, see bow sprit. Bolt strake, certain strakes of plank which the beam fastenings pass through. Bolt toe, the cock of a gun lock. Bomb, formerly bomber from Bomba, the mortar of bomb vessels. Bomb or mortar vessels, small ships fortified for throwing bombs into a fortress, said to be the invention of M. Reynaud and to have been first used at the bombardment of Algiers in 1682. Until then, it had been judged impracticable to bombard a place from the sea. Bombalo, a delicate kind of sand eel taken in quantities at Bombay. Bombard, a piece of ordnance anciently in use before the introduction of more complete cannon with improved gunpowder, propelling iron balls. Its bore for the projection of stone shot sometimes exceeded twenty inches in diameter, but it was short, its chamber for containing the powder charge being about as long but much narrower both within and without. There were also very diminutive varieties of it. It has been vaguely called by some writers basilisk and by the Dutch donderbas, used to assail a town, fortress, or fleet by the projection of shells from mortars. It was also the name of a barrel or huge vessel for liquids. Hence, among other choice epithets, Prince Henry calls that ton of man Falstaff a huge bombard of sack, also a Mediterranean vessel with two masts, like the English catch. Bomb bed beams, the beams which support the bomb bed in bomb vessels. Bomb beds, see bed of a mortar. Bombo, weak cold punch. Bombshell, a large hollow ball of cast iron for throwing from mortars, distinguished by having ears or lugs by which to lift it with the shell hooks into the mortar, and having a hole to receive the fuse which communicates ignition to the charge contained in the shell. See fuse. Boom spar, a corruption of boom, a spar of a larger kind. Bumkin. See bumkin. Bona fide, in good faith, without subterfuge. Bona fides is a condition necessary to entitle to the privilege of preemption in our admiralty courts. Bonaventure, the old outer mizzen, long disused. Bonding, see warehousing system. Bonding pond, an enclosed space of water where the tide flows for keeping timber in. Bond man, 
a harsh method in some ships in keeping one man bound for the good behaviour of another on leave bond of bottomry and authority to borrow money by pledging the keel or bottom of the ship see bottomry to bone to seize take or apprehend a ship is said to carry a bone in her mouth and cut a feather when she makes the water foam before her bon grasse junk fenders for booming off obstacles from a ship's sides or bows see bow grace bonito the tenus palamis a fish of the scumber family commonly about two feet long with a sharp head small mouth full eyes and a regular semi-lunar tail boni vochil the hebridean name for the great northern diver columbus glacialis bonnet an additional part laced to the foot of the jibs or other fore and aft sails in small vessels in moderate weather to gather more wind they are commonly one-third of the depth of the sails they belong to thus we say lace on the bonnet or shake off the bonnet bonnets have lately been introduced to secure the foot of an upper topsail to a lower topsail yard the unbonneted sail is for storm service bonnet in fortification is a raised portion of the works at any salient angle having the same plan but ten or twelve feet more command than the work on which it is based it assists in protecting from enfilade and affords a plunging fire bonnet fluke a name of the well-known flatfish brill pearl or mouse dab the pleuronectes rhombus Bonxi, the shetland name for the squawgull cataractes vulgaris also a very general northern term for seabirds bony fish one of the names of the hard head which see end of section thirteen read by sandra section fourteen of the sailor's word book a to c this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. B O O to B O Y. Booby. A well known tropical seabird. Sula fusca, of the family Pelicanidae. It is fond of resting out of the water at night, even preferring an unstable perch on the yard of a ship. The name is derived from the way in which it allows itself to be caught immediately after settling. The direction in which they fly as evening comes on often shows where land may be found. Booby Hatch A smaller kind of companion, but readily removable. It is in use for merchantmen's half-decks, and lifts off in one piece. Book a commercial term for a peculiar packing of muslin, bast, and other stuffs, brought to book, made to account. Booking, a reprimand. Books, sea ships' books, official documents. Boom, a long spar, run out from different places in the ship to extend or boom out the foot of a particular sail, as jib boom, flying jib boom, studding sail booms, driver or spanker boom ringtail boom main boom square sail boom etc a ship is said to come booming forwards when she comes with all the sail she can make boom also denotes a cable stretched athwart the mouth of a river or harbour with yards topmasts or stout spars of wood lashed to it to prevent the entrance of an enemy to top one's boom is to start off to boom off to shove a boat or vessel away with spars boomage a duty levied to compound for harbour dues, anchorage and soundage. Boom boats, those stowed on the booms. Boom brace pendant, a rope attached to the extremity of a studding sail boom and leading down on deck. It is used to counteract the pressure of the sail upon the boom. Boom cover, the tarpaulin or painted cover over the spars. Booming, sound of distant guns. It is often but wrongly applied to the hissing or whistling of shot. Boom irons are metal rings fitted on the yard arms through which the studding sail booms traverse. There is one on each topsail yard arm, but on the lower yards a second, which opens to allow the boom to be triced up. 
it is one fourth from the yard arms and holds down the heel of the boom when it is rigged out boom jigger a tackle used in large ships for rigging out or running in the topmast studding sail booms boomkin see bumpkin boom mainsail see mainsail booms a space where the spare spars are stowed the launch being generally stowed between them Bupa, a tonga tabu canoe with a single outrigger Boothir, an old term denoting a small river vessel boot topping the old operation of scraping off the grass slime shells etc which adhere to the bottom near the surface of the water and daubing it over with a mixture of tallow sulphur and rasin as a temporary protection against worms this is chiefly performed where there is no dock or other commodious situation for breaming or careening or when the hurry of a voyage renders it inconvenient to have the whole bottom property trimmed and cleansed the term is now applied to sheathing a vessel with planking over felt booty that sort of prize which may be distributed at the capstan head or at once booze a carouse hence boozy elevated by liquor bora a very violent wind experienced in the upper part of the adriatic sea but which fortunately is of no great duration borachio spanish borracho drunk a skin for holding wine or water usually a goat's used in the levant a skinful literally gorged with wine borasca a storm with thunder and lightning board the sea coast an old term formerly meant the side edge or brim hence as applied to a ship to throw overboard is to cast anything over the side of the vessel bordels an old word for houses built along a strand in the old play called the lady's privilege it is said quote, these gentlemen know better to cut a caper than a cable or board a pink in the bordels than a pinnace End quote. border a term referring to the nature of the vegetation on the margin of a stream or lake or to artificial works constructed along the banks board you a saying of a man waiting to one who is drinking meaning that he claims the next turn bore a sudden and rapid flow of tide in certain inlets of the sea as the monstrous wave in the river hoogli called bahu by the natives which rolls in with the noise of distant thunder at flood tide it occurs from february to november at the new and full moon its cause has not been clearly defined although it probably arises from the currents during spring tides acting on a peculiar conformation of the banks and bed of the river it strikes invariably on the same part of the banks majestically rolling over to one side and passing on diagonally to the other with impetuous violence the bore also occurs in england near bristol and in america in several rivers but especially in the bay of fundy where at the river petticodiac the tide rises seventy-six feet it also occurs in borneo and several rivers in the east see Higer. also the interior cavity of a piece of ordnance generally cylindrical in shape except when a part of it is modified into a chamber boreas a classical name for the north wind still in use indeed a brackish proverb for extreme severity of weather says cold and chilly like boreas with an iceberg in each pocket bore down sailed down from to windward borheim a northern term for the flounder boring in arctic seas the operation of forcing the ship through loose ice under a heavy press of sail at least attempting the chance of advantage of cracks or openings in the pack born with a silver spoon in his mouth said of a person who by birth or connection has all the usual obstacles to advancement cleared away for him those who toil unceasingly for preferment and toil in vain are said to have been born with a wooden ladle again the silver spoon gentry are said to come on board through the cabin windows those less favoured over the bows or through the hawse holes born placed on the books for victuals and wages also supernumerary and for rank to borrow to approach closely either to land or wind 
to hug a shoal or coast in order to avoid adverse tide. Bort, the name given to a long fishing line in the Shetland Isles. Boss, a head of water or reservoir, also the apex of a shield. Botarga, the row of the mullet, pressed flat and dried. That of commerce, however, is from the tunny, a large fish of passage which is common in the Mediterranean. The best kind comes from Tunis. It must be chosen dry and reddish. The usual way of eating it is with olive oil and lemon juice. To botch, to make bungling work. Boats carl, an old term for the coxswain of a boat. Bothered, getting among adverse currents with shifting winds. Both sheets aft. The situation of a square-rigged ship that sails before the wind, or with the wind right astern. It is said also of a half-drunken sailor, rolling along with his hands in his pockets and elbows square. Boat, an old English term for boat, and assuredly the damaged boat into which Prospero is turned adrift by Shakespeare. Bottle-bump, the bittern, so-called on our east coast. Bottle-charts those on which the set of surface currents are exhibited, derived from papers found in bottles which have been thrown overboard for that purpose, and washed up on the beach or picked up by other ships. Bottle-nose or bottle-nosed whale, a name applied to several of the smaller cetaceans of the northern seas, more especially to the Hyperodon rostratus. Bottom a name for rich, low land formed by alluvial deposits, but in a general sense it denotes the lowest part of a thing, in contradistinction to the top or uppermost part. In navigation it is used to denote as well the channel of rivers and harbours as the body or hull of a ship. Thus, in the former sense we say, a gravelly bottom, clayey bottom, etc., and in the latter sense, a British bottom, a Dutch bottom, etc., by statute, certain commodities imported in foreign bottoms pay a duty called petty customs, over and above what they are liable to if imported in British bottoms. Bottom of a ship or boat is that part which is below the whales. Bottom clean, thoroughly clean, free from weeds, etc. Bottom plank, that which is placed between the garboard strake and lower back strake. Bottomry, or bottomry bond. The contract of bottomry is a negotiable instrument, which may be put in suit by the person to whom it is transferred. It is in use in all countries of maritime commerce and interests. A contract in the nature of a mortgage of a ship, when the owner of it borrows money to enable him to carry on the voyage, and pledge the keel or bottom of the ship as a security for the repayment. If the ship be lost, the lender also loses his whole money but if it return in safety, then he shall receive back his principal, and also the premium stipulated to be paid, however it may exceed the usual or legal rate of interest. The affair is, however, only regarded as valid upon the ground of necessity, and thus exacting more than the interest allowed by law is not deemed usury. Bottomry premium, a high rate of interest charged on the safety of the ship, the lender losing his whole money if she be lost. Bottom wind, a phenomenon that occurs on the lakes in the north of England, especially Derwent water, which is often agitated by swelling waves without any apparent cause. Bush, see bush. Bouge, or bouge, and chine, or bilge, and chime. The end of one cask stowed against the bilge of another to prepare a ship for the purpose of sinking it. Bouilly, termed by seamen, bully beef, disliked because all the substance is boiled away to enrich the cook's grease tub, and the meat is useless as food, rejected even by dogs. In one ship of war it produced mutiny, vide Adam's account of the bounty miseries. It is also the name given to highly cooked meat in hermetically sealed tin canisters. Boulderhead, a work against the encroachment of the sea made of wooden stakes. Boulders, stones worn and rounded by the attrition of the waves of the sea. The word on the authority of Hunter was considered a technical term in the fourteenth century, as appears in a warrant of John of Gaunt, 
for the repair of Pontefract Castle. Quote, de père appelé Bouldre à un heure de chastel, comme nous semblerait raisonnable pour la défense de même. End quote. Boule Ponge, a drink to which many of the deaths of Europeans in India were ascribed, but in Bernier's travels, in the train of Aurung Sebe in 1664, we are informed that Boulponge is a beverage made of arrack, sugar, lemon juice, and a little muscadine, probably a corruption of bowls of punch. See, punch. Bounce, the larger dogfish. Bouncer, a gun which kicks violently when fired. Bound, destined for a particular service, intended voyage to a place. Ice bound, totally surrounded with ice. Tide bound or beneaped, see neaped. Wind bound, prevented from sailing by contrary wind. Where are you bound to? That is, to what place are you going? Bound on a cruise, a corruption of the old word, bound, which is still in use on the northern coast, and means to make ready, to prepare. Bounty, a sum of money given by government, authorized by act of parliament or royal proclamation, to men who voluntarily enter into the army or navy, and the widow of such volunteer seamen killed or drowned in the service was entitled to a bounty equal to a year's pay. Bounty boats, those which fished under the encouragement of a bounty from government. Bounty list, a register of all persons who have received the bounty to which they are entitled after having passed three musters in the service. Born, see burn. Bourse, a place where merchants congregate, an exchange. Bows, see bows. Bout, a turn, trial, or round. An attack of illness, a convivial meeting. Bout ship, the brief order for a boat ship. Bow, the fore end of a ship or boat, being the rounding part of a vessel forward, beginning on both sides where the planks arch inwards and terminating where they close at the rabbit of the stem or prow, being larboard or starboard from that division. A bold bow is broad and round, a lean bow, narrow and thin, on the bow, an arc of the horizon, not exceeding forty-five degrees, comprehended between some distant object and that point of the compass, which is straight ahead. Four points on either bow is met by four points before the beam. Bow an astronomical instrument formerly used at sea consisting of only one large graduated arc of ninety degrees three veins and a shank or staff also the bow of yew a weapon of our early fleets bow she bows to the breeze where the sails belly out full and the ship inclines and goes ahead pitching or bowing over the blue waves bow by the situation of a ship when in stays she falls back off the wind again and gets into irons which demands practical seamanship for her extrication this was deemed a lubberly act in our fleets of old bow chasers two long chase guns placed forward in the bow ports to fire directly ahead and being of small bore for their length carry shot to a great distance bow deaton an old expression for eaten by weevils, bower anchors, those at the bows and in constant working use. They are called best and small, not from a difference of size, but as to the bow on which they are placed, starboard being the best bower, and port the small bower. The appropriated cables assume the respective names. See also spare anchor, sheet, stream, coasting, kedge, etc. Bow fast. A rope or chain for securing a vessel by the bow. See fast. Bouge, or bouge, an old term for bilge. Bouger, a name given in the Hebrides to the coulter neb, or puffin. Fratercula artica. Bowgrace, a kind of frame or fender of old junk, placed around the bows and sides of a ship to prevent her receiving injury from floating ice or timbers. See bon gas. Bowing, an injury done to yards by too much topping and letting their weights hang by the lifts. The state of a topsail yard when it arches in the centre from hoisting it too tautly. 
also of the mast when it bellies or is crippled by injudiciously setting up the rigging too taut. Bowing the sea, meeting a turbulent swell and coming to the wind. Bowline, a rope leading forward which is fastened to a space connected by bridles to cringles on the leech or perpendicular edge of the square sails. It is used to keep the weather edge of the sail tight forward and steady when the ship is close hauled to the wind, and which indeed, being hauled taut, enables the ship to come nearer to the wind. Hence the ship sails on a bowline, or stands on a taut bowline. To check or come up a bowline is to slacken it when the wind becomes large or free. To sharp or set taut a bowline is to pull it as taut as it can well bear. Bowline bend. The mode of bending warps or hawsers together by taking a bowline in the end of one rope and passing the end of the other through the bite and making a bowline upon it. Bowline bridle. The span attached to the cringles on the leech of a square sail to which the bowline is toggled or clinched. Bowline cringle. An eye worked into the leech rope of a sail, usually in that of a foresail two, a mainsail three, and the fore topsails three, but the main topsail four. By these the sails are found in the dark by feeling alone. Bowline haul. A hearty and simultaneous bows. See, one, two, three. In hauling the bowline it is customary for the leading man to veer and then haul, three times in succession, singing out, one, two, three. At the last, the weight of all the men is thrown in together. This is followed by Belay, oh! When the bowlines are reported, Bowlines hauled, sir, by the officer in command of the forepart of the ship, the hands or the watch return to their duties. Bowline knot, that by which the bowline bridles were fastened to the cringles. The bowline knot is made by an involution of the end and a bite upon the standing part of a rope. A further involution makes what is termed a bowline on a bite. It is very difficult to explain by words. Holding the rope some distance from the end by the left hand, the end held in the right is laid on the main part, and by a twist given screw fashion to the right, a loop or kink is formed enclosing this end which is then passed behind and back in the same direction with the former, and then jammed home. It is rapidly done, easily undone, and one of the most seamanlike acts, exhibiting grace as well as power. It can be made by a man with but one arm. Bowlines in shipbuilding, longitudinal curves representing the ship's forebody, cut in a vertical section. Bowling along, going with a free wind. Bow log timbers, a provincial name for hawswood. Bowman. In a single banked boat, he who rows the foremost oar and manages the boat hook, called by the French Brigadier de l'Embarcation. In double banked boats, there are always two bowmen, also an archer, differently pronounced. Bow oar, the foremost oar or oars in pulling a boat. Bow pieces, the ordnance in the bows, also in building. Bow rail, a rail round the bows. To bows, to pull upon any body with a tackle or a complication of pulleys in order to remove it, etc. Hauling upon a tack is called bowsing upon a tack, and when they would have the men pull all together, they cry, Bows away! Also used in setting up rigging, as bows away starboard, bows away port. It is, however, mostly a gun tackle term, bows up the jib, a colloquialism to denote the act of tippling. It is an old phrase and was probably derived from the Dutch boysen to booze. Bowsprit or bolt sprit, a large spar ranking with a lower mast projecting over the stem. Beyond it extends the jib boom, and beyond that again the flying jib boom. To these spars are secured the stays of the foremast and of the spars above it. On these stays are set the fore and fore topmast staysails, the jib and flying jib which have a most useful influence in counterbalancing the pressure of the after sails, thereby tending to force the ship ahead instead of merely turning her around. In former times, underneath these spars were set a sprit sail, sprit top sail, etc. Bow sprit running. In cutter-rigged vessels, see cutter. Bow sprit bits. 
are strong upright timbers secured to the beams below the deck. They have a crosspiece bolted to them. The inner end of the bowsprit steps between them and is thus prevented from slipping in. The crosspiece prevents it from canting up. Bowsprit cap. The crance or cap on the outer end of the bowsprit, through which the jib boom traverses. Bowsprit gear. The term denoting the ropes, blocks, etc., belonging to the bowsprit. Bowsprit heart. The heart or block of wood used to secure the lower end of the forestay, through which the inner end of the jib boom is inserted. It is seldom, if ever, used now, an iron band round the bowsprit with an eye on each side for the four stays being preferred. Bowsprit horses. The ridge ropes which extend from the bowsprit cap to the night heads. Bowsprit ladder. Skids over the bowsprit from the beak head in some ships to enable men to run out upon the bowsprit. Bowsprit netting. The netting placed just above a vessel's bowsprit for stowing away the fore topmast staysail. It is usually lashed between the ridge ropes. Bowsprit shrouds. Strong ropes or chains leading from nearly the outer end of the bowsprit to the luff of the bow, giving lateral support to that spar. Bow staves. Early supplied to our men of war. Bow timbers. Those which form the bow of the ship. Box. The space between the backboard and the stern post of a boat, where the coxswain sits. Boxes of the pumps. Each ordinary pump has an upper and lower box, the one a fixture in the lower part of its chamber, the other attached to the end of the spear or piston rod. In the centre of each box is a valve opening upwards. Box hauling is an evolution by which a ship is veered sharp round on her heel when the object is to avoid making a great sweep. The helm is put a lee, the head yards braced flat aback, the after yards squared, the driver taken in, and the head sheets hauled to windward. When she begins to gather sternway, the helm is shifted and sails trimmed. It is only resorted to in emergencies, as a seaman never likes to see his ship have sternway. With much wind and sea, this evolution could be dangerous. Boxing A square piece of dry, hard wood used in connecting the frame timbers. Also the projection formerly left at the hawse pieces in the wake of the hawse holes, where the planks do not run through, now disused. The stem is said to be boxed when it is joined to the fore end of the keel by a side scarf. See boxing of rudder. Boxing off is performed by hauling the head sheets to windward and laying the head yards flat aback to pay the ship's head out of the wind when the action of the helm alone is not sufficient for that purpose, as when she is got in irons. To box the compass. Not only to repeat the names of the thirty-two points in order and backwards, but also to be able to answer any and all questions respecting its divisions. Boyart, an old term for a hoy. Boyo, the zigzags or tortuous trenches in the approach of a besieger. Boyer, a sloop of Flemish construction with a raised work at each end. End of section 14. Read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 15 of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases B. R. To Bring Brab The sheaf of the young leaves of the palmyra palm and also of the coconut, but from which sinnet or plate for hats is made. Brab Tree The palmyra palm Brace The braces are ropes belonging to all the yards of a ship two to each yard, rove through blocks that are stropped to the yards or fastened to pendants, seized to the yard arms. Their use is either to square or traverse the yards horizontally, hence to brace the yard is to bring it to either side by means of the braces. In shipbuilding, braces are plates of iron, copper, or mixed metal, which are used to bind efficiently a weakness in a vessel, as also to receive the pintles by which the rudder is hung. 
brace aback, to brace the yards in so as to lay the sails aback, to brace about, to turn the yards round for the contrary tack or in consequence of a change of wind, to brace a box, a manoeuvre to ensure casting the right way by bracing the head yards flat aback, not square, to brace by, to brace the yards in contrary directions to each other on the different masts to effect the stopping of the vessel, see counter brace, to brace in, to lay the yard less oblique as for a free wind or nearly square, to brace round, synonymous with brace about, to brace sharp, to cause the yards to have the smallest possible angle with the keel for the ship to have headway, deemed generally to form an angle of twenty degrees with the keel. To brace two is to check or ease off the lee braces and round in the weather ones to assist in the manoeuvre of tacking or wearing, to brace up or brace sharp up, to lay the yards more obliquely fore and aft by easing off the weather braces and hauling in the lee ones, which enables a ship to lie as close to the wind as possible. Brace of shakes, a moment taken from the flapping of a sail. I will be with you before it shakes thrice. Brace pendants are lengths of rope, or now more generally chain, into which the yard-arm brace blocks are spliced. They are used in the merchant service to save rope, to give the blocks more freedom for slewing to their work, but chiefly because when the brace is let go, the falling chain will overhaul it, making it easier to haul in the other brace. Brace up and haul aft. The order usually given after being hove to, with fore or main topsail square or aback, and jib sheet flowing, that is, haul aft jib sheet, brace up the yards which had been squared, for the purpose of heaving to. Brack, the Manx or Gaelic term for mackerel. Brackets, short crooked timbers, resembling knees, fixed in the frame of a ship's head to support the gratings. They likewise serve to support and ornament the gallery. Also the two vertical side pieces of the carriage of any piece of ordnance, which support it by the trunnions, called also cheeks. Also triangular supports to miscellaneous things. Brackish, water not fresh, from the Icelandic, brig the sea. Brads, small nails. Bray, a declivity or precipice. Bragir, the name given in the western islands of Scotland to the broad leaves growing on the top of the alga marina or sea grass. Brails, ropes passing through leading blocks on the hoops of the mizzenmast and gaff, and fastened to the outermost leech of the sail in different places to truss it close up as occasion requires. All try sails and several of the stay sails also have brails. Brail up. The order to pull upon the brails and thereby spill and haul in the sail. The mizzen or spanker or driver, or any of the gaff sails as they may be termed, when brailed up are deemed furled, unless it blows hard when they are farther secured by gaskets. Break. The handle or lever by which a common ship pump is usually worked. It operates by means of two iron bolts, one thrust through the inner hole of it, which bolted through, forms the lever axis in the iron crutch of the pump, and serves as the fulcrum for the brake, supporting it between the cheeks. The other bolt connects the extremity of the brake to the pump spear, which draws up the spear box or piston, charged with the water in the tube, derived from brachium, an arm or lever also used to check the speed of machinery by frictional force, pressing on the circumference of the largest wheel acted on by leverage of the brake. To bran. To go on, to lie under a flow edge in foggy weather in a boat in Arctic seas, to watch the approach of whales. Branch. The diploma of those pilots who have passed at the Trinity House as competent to navigate vessels in particular places. The word branch is also metaphorically used for river divergence, but its application to affluence is improper. Any branch or ramification, as in estuaries, where they traverse river-like miles of territory in labyrinthine mazes. Branch pilot. One approved by the Trinity House and holding a branch for a particular navigation. Brand. 
the Anglo-Saxon for a burnished sword, a burned device or character, especially that of the broad arrow on government stores to deface or erase which is felony. Branded ticket, a discharge given to an infamous man on which his character is written, and the reason he is turned out of the service. In the army, deserters are branded with D, also B for bad character. In the navy, a corner of the ticket is cut off. Brandling, a supposed fry of the salmon species found on the north of England coasts, also an angler's dew worm. Brandy pony, a cant term for brandy and water in India. Branleg, the Manx or Gaelic term for a cove or creek on a shore between rocks. Branley or Branlin, a northern name for the samlet or par. Brand new, quite new, said of a sail which has never been bent. Brash, small fragments of crushed ice collected by wind or currents near the shore, or such that the ship can easily force through. Brass, impudent assurance. Brasserts, pieces between the elbow and the top of the shoulder, in ancient armour. Brasser, a defensive bit of armour for the arm. Brat, a northern name for turbot. Brave, this word was not only used to express courage by our early seamen, but was also applied to strength, as we had a brave wind. Brought, a kind of eel in the north. To bray, to beat and bruise in a mortar. Breach, formerly what is made by the breaking in of the sea, now applied also to the openings or gaps made in the works of fortified places battered by an enemy's cannon. Also an old term for a heavy surf or broken water on a sea coast, by some called brist. Breaching, the act of leaping out of the water applied to whales. Breach of the sea. Waves breaking over the hull of a vessel in bad weather, or when stranded. A clear breach implies the waves rolling clean over without breaking. Shakespeare in Twelfth Night uses the term for the breaking of the waves. Clean breach, when masts and every object on deck is swept away. Breachy, brackish, as applied to water, probably originating in the sea breaking in. Bread, the usual name given to biscuit. Bread barge the tray in which biscuit is handed round. Bread fruit, Artocarpus incisa. This most useful tree has a wide range of growth, but the seedless variety produced in Tahiti and some of the South Sea Islands is superior to others. It has an historical interest from its connection with the voyage of the Bounty in 1787. Bread room, the lowest and aftermost part of the orlop deck where the biscuit is kept, separated by a bulkhead from the rest, but any place parted off from below deck for containing the bread is so designated. Breadroom Jack. The purser's steward's help. Breadth. The measure of a vessel from side to side in any particular place athwart ships. See straight of breadth, height of breadth, top timber breadth, etc. Breadth of beam. Extreme breadth of a ship. Breadth extreme. See extreme breadth or beam. Breadth line. A curved line of the ship lengthwise, intersecting the timbers at their greatest extent from the middle line of the ship. Breadth moulded. See moulded breadth. Breadth riders. Timbers placed nearly in the broadest part of the ship and diagonally, so as to strengthen two or more timbers. To break. To deprive of commission, warrant, or rating by court-martial. Break. The sudden rise of a deck when not flush when the aft and sometimes the forepart of a vessel's deck is kept up to give more height below and at the drifts, break of the poop where it ends at the foremost part, breakage, the leaving of empty spaces in stowing the hold, in marine insurance the term alludes to damage occurring to goods, break beams, beams introduced at the break of a deck or any sudden termination of planking, break bulk, to open the hold, to begin unloading and disposing of the goods therein under legal provisions. Breakers. Small barrels for containing water or other liquids. They are also used in watering the ship as gang casks. See barrica. Also, those billows which break violently over reefs, rocks, or shallows, lying immediately at or under the surface of the sea. 
they are distinguished both by their appearance and sound as they cover that part of the sea with a perpetual foam and produce loud roaring very different from what the waves usually have over a deeper bottom also a name given to those rocks which occasion the waves to break over them breakers ahead the common password to warn the officer of broken water in the direction of the course see also ship breaker break ground beginning to weigh or to lift the anchor from the bottom on shore it means to begin the works for besieging a place or opening the trenches breaking breaking out stores or cargo in the hold the act of extricating casks or other objects from the hold stowage breaking liberty not returning at the appointed time breaking of a gale indications of a return of fine weather short gusts at intervals moaning or whistling of the wind through the rigging breaking plate distance the point within which iron-plated ships under concentrated fire may be damaged breaking the a c eight breaking up of the monsoon a nautical term for the violent storms that attend the shifting of periodical winds break off see broken off she breaks off from her course applied only when the wind will not allow of keeping the course applies only to close hauled or on a wind break off an order to quit one department of duty to clap on to another to break sheer when a ship at anchor is laid in a proper position to keep clear of her anchor but is forced by the wind or current out of that position she is said to break her sheer also for a vessel to break her sheer or her back means destroying the gradual sweep lengthways to break up to take a ship to pieces when she becomes old and unserviceable break water any erection or object so placed as to prevent the sea from rolling inwards where there is no mole or jetty the hull of an old ship may be sunk at the entrance of a small harbour to break off or diminish the force of the waves as they advance towards the vessels moored within every bar to a river or harbour intended to secure smooth water within acts as a breakwater bream a common fresh as well as salt-water fish abramis brahma little esteemed as food breaming cleaning a ship's bottom by burning off the grass ooze shells or seaweed which it is contracted by lying long in harbour it is performed by holding kindled firs faggots or reeds to the bottom which by melting the pitch that formerly covered it loosens whatever filth may have adhered to the planks the bottom is then covered anew with a composition of sulphur tallow etc which not only makes it smooth and slippery so as to divide the fluid more readily but also poisons and destroys those worms which eat through the planks in the course of a voyage this operation may be performed either by laying the ship aground after the tide has ebbed from her or by docking or careening to breast to run a beam of a cape or object to cut through a sea the surface of which is poetically termed breast to breast the sea to meet it by the bow on a wind to breast the surf to brave it and overcome it swimming to breast a bar to heave at the capstan to breast too the act of giving a shear to a boat breast back stays they extend from the head of an upper mast through an outrigger down to the channels before the standing backstays for supporting the upper spars from to windward when to leeward they are borne abaft the top rim see backstays breast beams those beams at the fore part of the quarter deck and the after part of the forecastle in those vessels which have a poop and a top gallant forecastle breast fast a large rope or chain used to confine a ship's broadside to a wharf or quay or to some other ship as the head fast confines her forward and the stern fast abaft breast gaskets an old term for bunt gaskets breast hooks thick pieces of timber incurvated into the form of knees and used to strengthen the fore part of a ship where they are placed at different heights directly across the stem internally so as to unite it with the bows on each side and form the principal security supporting the hawse pieces and strain of the cables the breast hooks are strongly connected to the stem and hawse pieces by tree nails and by bolts driven from without through all and forelocked or clinched upon rings inside breast rail 
the upper rail of the balcony formerly it was applied to a railing in front of the quarter deck and at the after part of the forecastle deck also fife rail breast rope the lashing or lanyard of the yard parrels see also horse also the bight of a mat worked band fastened between the shrouds for the safety of the lad's man in the chains when sounding so that he may hang over the water and let the lead swing clear breastwork a sort of balustrade of rails mouldings or stanchions which terminates the quarter-deck and poop at the four ends and also encloses the forecastles both before and behind see parapet now applicable to the poop rails only in fortification it signifies a parapet thrown up as high as the breasts of the men defending it breather a tropical squall breath of wind all but a dead calm breaching a strong rope passing through at the cascable of a gun used to secure it to the ship's side and prevent it recoiling too much in time of battle also to secure it when the ship labours it is fixed by reeving it through a thimble stropped upon the cascable or knob at the breech of the gun one end is rove and clinched and the other is passed through the ring bolt in the ship's side and seized back the breaching is of sufficient length to let the muzzle of the cannon come within the ship's side to be charged or to be housed and lashed clinch shackles have superseded the ring bolts so that guns may be instantly unshackled and shifted breaching bolt applies to the above breech loader a gun large or small charged at the breech the method is a very old one revived but with such scientific modifications as to have enormously increased the effectiveness of small arms with cannon its successful practical application to the larger natures has not yet been arrived at but with field guns it has added largely to accuracy of practice and facility of loading breach of a cannon the after end next the vent or touch hole it is the most massive part of a gun strictly speaking it is all the solid metal behind the bottom of the bore also the outside angle formed by the knee timber the inside of which is the throat breach sight the notch cut on the base ring of a gun breeze this word is widely understood as a pleasant zephyr but among seamen it is usually applied as synonymous with wind in general whether weak or strong breeze sea or land a shifting wind blowing from sea and land alternately at certain hours and sensibly only near the coasts they are occasioned by the action of the sun raising the temperature of the land so as to draw an aerial current from seaward by day which is returned as the earth cools at night breeze to kick up a breeze to excite disturbance and promote a quarrelsome row breezing up the gale freshening breeze o a toast given by the presiding person at a mess table derived from brise general brevet a rank in the army higher than the regimental commission held by an officer affording him a precedence in garrison and brigade duties something approaching this has been attempted afloat under the term staff brewing the appearance of a collection of black and tempestuous clouds rising gradually from a particular part of the hemisphere as the forerunner of a storm bricklayers clerk a contemptuous expression for lubberly pretenders to having seen better days but who were forced to betake themselves to sea life bridge a narrow gangway between two hatchways sometimes termed a bridge military bridges to afford a passage across a river for troops are constructed with boats pontoons casks trusses trestles etc bridge in steam vessels is the connection between the paddle boxes from which the officer in charge directs the motion of the vessel also the middle part of the fire bars in a marine boiler on either side of which the fires are banked also a narrow ridge of rock sand or shingle across the bottom of a channel so as to occasion a shoal over which the tide ripples that between mount edgecombe and st nicholas's isle at plymouth has occasioned much loss of life bridge islet a portion of land which becomes insular at high water as old woman's isle at bombay and among others the celebrated lindisfarne thus tidily sung by scott Quote, 
the tide did now his flood mark gain and girdled in the saint's domain for with the flow and ebb its style varies from continent to isle dry shod or sands twice every day the pilgrims to the shrine find way twice every day the waves efface of staves and sandaled feet the trace End quote. bridge trained an equipment for ensuring the passage of troops over a river pontooners see pontoon bridle see mooring bridle and bowline bridle bridle port a square port in the bows of a ship for taking in mooring bridles they are also used for guns removed from the port abaft and required to fire as near a line ahead as possible they are main deck chase ports bridles the upper part of the moorings laid in the queen's harbours to ride ships or vessels of war see moorings brig a two-masted square-rigged vessel without a square mainsail or a trysail mast abaft the mainmast this property constituted the snow but both classes are latterly blended and the terms therefore synonymous brigade a party or body of men detached for a special service a division of troops under the command of a general officer in artillery organization on land a brigade is a force usually composed of more than a battery in the field it commonly consists of two or three batteries on paper and for administrative purposes of eight brigade major a staff officer attached to a brigade and is the channel through which all orders are received from the general and communicated to the troops brigade orders those issued by the general officer commanding troops which are brigaded brigadier an officer commanding a brigade and somewhat the same as commodore for a squadron of ships brigandine a pliant scale-like coat of mail brigantine a square rigged vessel with two masts a term variously applied by the mariners of different european nations to a peculiar sort of vessel of their own marine amongst british seamen this vessel is distinguished by having her mainsail set nearly in the plane of her keel whereas the mainsails of larger ships are spread athwart the ship's length and made fast to a yard which hangs parallel to the deck but in a brig the foremost side of the mainsail is fastened at different heights to hoops which encircle the main mast and slide up and down it as the sail is hoisted or lowered it is extended by a gaff above and a boom below brigantine is a derivative from brig first applied to passage boats in the celtic meaning passage over the water see hermaphrodite or brig schooner brigants formerly natives of the northern parts of england brigdi a northern name for the basking shark squalus maximus bright lookout a vigilant one brig schooner see hermaphrodite and brigantine by which term she is at present classed in law square rigged on the foremast schooner on the mainmast brill the pleuronectes rhombus a common fish allied to but rather smaller than the turbot brim the margin or bank of a stream lake or river brimstone sea sulphur brine or pickle water replete with saline particles as brine pickle for salt meat the briny wave brine gauge sea salinometer brine pumps when inconvenient to blow off the brine which collects at the bottom of a steamer's boilers the brine pump is used for clearing away the deposit bring by the lee to incline so rapidly to leeward of the course when the ship sails large or nearly before the wind as in scudding before a gale that the lee side is unexpectedly brought to windward and by laying the sails all aback exposes her to the danger of oversetting see brooch too bring em near the day and night telescope bringers up the last men in a boarding or small arm party among soldiers it means the whole last rank of a battalion drawn up being the hindmost men of every file bring home the anchor is to weigh it it applies also when the flukes slip or will not hold a ship then brings home her anchor bring home the log when the pin slips out of the log ship and it slides through the water bringing in the detention of a vessel on the high seas and bringing her into port for adjudication bringing to the yard hoisting up a sail and bending it to its yard to bring to 
to bend as to bring to a sail to the yard, also to check the course of a ship by trimming the sails so that they shall counteract each other and keep her nearly stationary when she said to lie by or lie to or heave to. Bring to the order from one ship to another to put herself in that situation in order to her being boarded, spoken to, or examined. Firing a blank gun across the bows of a ship is the forcible signal to shorten sail and to bring to until further pleasure. Bring to is also used in applying a rope to the capstan, as bring to the messenger. Bring to an anchor. To let go the anchor in the intended port. All hands bring ship to an anchor. The order by which the people are summoned for that duty by the pipes of the boatswain and his mates. To bring up, to cast anchor. To bring up with a round turn. Suddenly arresting a running rope by taking a round turn round a bollard, bit head, or cleat. Instead of doing a thing effectually, though abruptly, it is used to bring one up to his senses by a severe rating. End of section 15. Read by Sandra. Section 16 of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases B-R-I-S to B-U-M Brisas, a north-east wind which blows on the coast of South America during the trades. Brismac a name among the Shetlanders for the excellent fish called tusk or torsk, the best of the cod kind, Brosmius vulgaris, Bristol fashion and ship shape, said when Bristol was in its palmy commercial days, unannoyed by Liverpool, and its shipping was all in proper good order. British built ship, such as has been built in Great Britain or Ireland, Guernsey, Jersey, the Isle of Man, or some of the colonies, plantations, islands, or territories in Asia, Africa, or America, which at the time of building the ship belonged to or were in possession of Her Majesty, or any ship whatsoever which has been taken and condemned as lawful prize. British seas, see Quatuor Maria. British ship may be foreign-built or rebuilt on a foreign keel which belonged to any of the people of Great Britain and Ireland, Guernsey, Jersey, or the Isle of Man, or any colony, island, or territory, in Asia, Africa, or America, or was registered before the 1st of May, 1786. British subject, settled in an enemy's country, may not trade in any contraband goods. Brittle star, the common name of a long-rayed starfish, Ophiacoma rosula. Broach a business, to begin it. To broach to, to fly up into the wind. It generally happens when a ship is carrying a press of canvas with the wind on the quarter, and a good deal of after-sail set. The masts are endangered by the course being so altered as to bring it more in opposition to, and thereby increasing the pressure of the wind. In extreme cases the sails are caught flat aback, when the masts would be likely to give way, or the ship might go down stern foremost. Broad Arrow the royal mark for government stores of every description. To obliterate, deface, or remove this mark is felony, or even to be in possession of any goods so marked without sufficient grounds. It is no doubt one of the Ditmarsh runes. Broad axe, formerly a warlike instrument, also for beheading, especially applied to the axe of carpenters for mast-making, and sometimes cutting away the masts, or cable. Broad cloth, square sails. Broad of water, an extensive lake with a channel communicating with the sea, or a wide opening of a river after passing a narrow entrance. Broad pennant, a swallow-tailed piece of bunton at the masthead of a man of war, the distinctive mark of a commodore. The term is frequently used for the officer himself. It tapers in contradistinction to a cornet, which has only the triangle cut out of it. Broad R, see broad arrow. Broads, freshwater lakes, in contradistinction to rivers or narrow waters. Broadside, the whole array or the simultaneous discharge of the artillery on one side of a ship of war above and below. It also implies the whole of that side of a ship above the water, which is situate between the bow and quarter, 
and is in a position nearly perpendicular to the horizon, also a name given to the old folio sheets whereon ballads and proclamations were printed of old. Broadsheet. Broadside on. The whole side of a vessel, the opposite of end on. Broadside weight of metal. The weight of iron which the guns of a ship can project when single-shotted from one side. See weight of metal. Broadsword. See cutlass. Brokerage. The same with brokerage, which see. Brockles. See strake nails. Brody. The fry of the rock tangle or heddle coddling, a fish caught on the heddle bank in the firth of forth. Brogging. A north country method of catching eels by means of small sticks called brogs. Brogs. Among seamen, coarse sandals made of green hide. But Shakespeare makes Arviragus put his clouted brogues from off his feet, for answering his steps too loud. This would rather refer to shoes strengthened with hobnails. Broke. Sentence of a court-martial, depriving an officer of his commission. Broken. An old army word used for reduced, as a broken lieutenant, etc. The word is also applied to troops in line when not dressed. The heart of a gale is said to be broken. Parole is broken. Also, leave, bulk, etc. Which, see. Broken backed. The state of a ship so loosened in her frame, either by age, weakness, or some great strain from grounding amidships, as to droop at each end, causing the lines of her shear to be interrupted and termed hogged. It may result from fault of construction in the midship portions, having more buoyancy, and the extreme ends too much weight, as anchors, boats, guns, etc., to sustain. Broken off, fallen off in azimuth from the course, also men taken from one duty to be put on another. Broken squall, when the clouds separate in divisions, passing ahead and astern of a ship, and affecting her but little, if at all. Broken water, the contention of currents in a narrow channel, also the waves breaking on and near shallows, occasionally the result of vast shoals of fish as porpoise, skipjacks, etc., which worry untutored seamen. Broker, originally a broken tradesman from the Anglo-Saxon brook, a misfortune, but in later times a person who usually transacts the business of negotiating between the merchants and shipowners respecting cargoes and clearances. He also effects insurances with the underwriters, and while on the one hand he is looked to as to the regularity of the contract, on the other he is expected to make a candid disclosure of all the circumstances which may affect the risk. Brocket, a small brook. The sea lark is so called at the Farne Islands. Broke up, said of a gale of wind passing away, or a ship which has gone to pieces on a reef, etc. Brond. An old spelling of brand, a sword. Brongi, a name given to the cormorant in the Shetland Islands. Brood, oysters of about two years old, which are dredged up at sea for placing on the oyster beds. Brood hen, star, the cluster of the Pleiades. Brook or brooklet, streams of fresh water or salt water, less than a rivulet, creeping through narrow and shallow passages. The clouds brook up when they draw together and threaten rain. Broom, a besom at the masthead, signifies that the ship is to be sold, derived probably from the old practice of displaying boughs at shops and taverns, also a sort of spartium of which ropes are made. Brooming, see, breaming. Brother officers, those of the same ship or regiment. Broth of a boy, an excellent though roistering fellow. Brought by the lee, see bring by the lee. Brought to, a chase made to stop and heave to. Also the cable is brought to when fastened to the messenger by nippers. The messenger is brought to the capstan or the cable to the windlass. Brought to his bearings, reduced to obedience. Brought to the gangway, punished. Brow, an inclined plane of planks on one or both sides of a ship, to communicate internally a stage gangway for the accommodation of the shipwrights in conveying plank, timber, and weighty articles on board, also the face of a rising ground, an old term for a gang-board. Brown Bess, 
a nickname for the old government regulation bronzed musket, although till recently it was brightly burnished. Brown Bill, the old weapon of the English infantry, hence perhaps the expression Brown Bess for a musket. Brown George, a hard and coarse biscuit. Brownie, the polar bear so called by the whalers. It is also a northern term for goblin. Brown Janet, a cant phrase for a knapsack. Brown paper warrant, see warrant. Browse, a light kind of dunnage. Bruise water, a ship with very bluff bows, built more for carrying than sailing. Bruising water, pitching heavily to a head sea and making but little headway. Brunswin, an early name for a seal. Brush, a move, a skirmish. Brideport, an old word signifying cable. The best hemp grew at Bridgeport at Dorsetshire, and there was a statute that the cables and hawsers for the Royal Navy were to be made thereabouts. Bub, a liquor or drink. Bub and grub, meaning inversely meat and drink. Bubble, another term for spirit level, used for astronomical instruments. Bubbler, a fish found in the waters of the Ohio, thus named from the bubbling noise it makes. Buccaneer a name given to certain piratical rovers of various European nations who formerly infested the coasts of Spanish America. They were originally inoffensive settlers in Hispaniola, but were inhumanly driven from their habitations by the jealous policy of the Spaniards, whence originated their implacable hatred to that nation. Also a large muscatoon, about eight feet in length, so called from having been used by those marauders. Bucentaur a large and splendid galley of the Doge of Venice, in which he received the great lords and persons of quality who went there, accompanied by the ambassadors and councillors of state, and all the senators seated on benches by him. The same vessel served also in the magnificent ceremony on Ascension Day, when the Doge threw a ring into the sea to espouse it, and to denote his dominion over the Gulf of Venice. Buck and Boilers the heavy breaking billows among rocks on the coast of Bacan. Bucht, a Shetland term for lines of fifty-five fathoms. To buck, to wash a sail. Buckall, an earthen wine cup used in the seaports of Portugal, Spain, and Italy, from Bocal, Italian. Bucker, a name for the Grampus in the Hebrides. It is also applied on some of our northern coasts to the porpoise. Bucket a small globe of hoops covered with canvas used as a recall for the boats of whalers. Bucket rope, that which is tied to a bucket for drawing water up from alongside. Buckets are made either of canvas, of leather, or of wood. The latter are used principally for washing the decks and therefore answer the purposes of pails. Bucket valve. In a steamer's engine is a flat metal plate filling up the passage between the air pump and the condenser and acted upon by both in admitting or repressing the passage of water. Buckhorn, whitings, haddocks, thornbacks, gurnet, and other fish, cleaned, gently salted, and dried in the sun. Bucky, a northern name for the whelk. Bucky Ingram, a name for the hermit crab. Bucky Prince, a northern designation for a periwinkle. Buckle, a mast buckles when it suffers by compression so that the fibre takes a sinuous form and the grain is upset. Also in polar regions, the bending or arching of the ice upwards, preceding a nip. Bucklers. Two blocks of wood fitted together to stop the hawse holes, leaving only sufficient space between them for the cable to pass, and thereby preventing the ship taking in much water in a heavy head sea. They are either riding or blind bucklers, which see. Bukra a term for white men used by the blacks in the West Indies, southern states of America, and the African coast. Buckwheel, a bow-net for fish. Bood, an old name for the biscuit weevil. Budge barrel, a small cask with copper and wooden hoops, and one head formed by a leather hose or bag, drawing close by a string, for carrying powder in safety from sparks. In heraldry, the common bucket is called a water bouge, or budget, budgero, a cabined passage boat of the Ganges and Hooghly, buffet a billow, 
to work against wind and tide. Bug, an old term for a vessel more remarkable in size than efficiency. Thus when Drake fell upon Cadiz, his sailors regarded the huge galleys opposed to them as mere great bugs. Bugalillo, a large trading boat of the Gulf of Persia, the buglo of our seamen. Bugazines, an old commercial term for calicoes. Build, a vessel's form or construction. To build a chapel. To turn a ship suddenly by negligent steerage. Builder's certificate. A necessary document in admiralty courts containing a true account of a ship's denomination, tonnage, trim, where built, and for whom. Building. The work of constructing ships as distinguished from naval architecture, which may rather be considered as the art or theory of delineating ships on a plane. The pieces by which this complicated machine is framed are joined together in various places by scarfing, rabbiting, tenanting, and scoring. Built. A prefix to denote the construction of a vessel, as carvel or clinker built, bluff built, frigate built, sharp built, etc., English, French, or American built, etc. Built block. Synonymous with made block, which, see, the lower masts of large ships are built or made. Built-up guns. Recently invented guns of great strength, especially adapted to meet the requirements of rifled artillery and of the attack of iron plating. They are usually composed of an inner core or barrel, which may be of coiled and welded iron, but is now generally preferred of tough steel, with a breech piece, trunnion piece, and various outer strengthening hoops or coils of wrought iron, shrunk or otherwise forced on, having their parts put together at such predetermined relative tensions as to support one another under the shock of explosion, and thereby avoiding the faults of solid cast or forged guns, whereof the inner parts are liable to be destroyed before the outer can take their share of the strain. The first practical example of the method was afforded by the Armstrong gun. The building up which obtained in ancient days before the casting of solid guns having been apparently resorted to as an easy means of producing large masses of metal, without realizing the principle of the mutual support of the various parts. Buran, a Gaelic word signifying the sea coming in with a noise as of the roar of a bull. To bulge, to bilge a ship. Bulge, see bilge, that part of the ship she bears upon when on the ground. Bulge ways otherwise bilge ways, which see. Bulk. In bulk, things stowed without cases or packages. See bulkhead and laden in bulk. Bulker. A person employed to measure goods and ascertain the amount of freight with which they are chargeable. The bulkhead. A fore is the partition between the forecastle and gratings in the head, and in which are the chased ports. Bulkheads. Partitions built up in several parts of the ship to form and separate the various cabins from each other. Some are particularly strong, as those in the hold, which are mostly built with rabbited or ciphered plank. Others are light and removable at pleasure. Indeed, the word is applied to any division made with boards to separate one portion of the tween decks from another. Bulk of a ship implies the whole cargo when stowed in the hold. Bull, an old male whale also a small keg, also the weak grog made by pouring water into a spirit cask nearly empty. Bull dance. At sea it is performed by men only, when without women it is sometimes called a stag dance. Bulldog or muzzled bulldog, the great gun which stands housed in the officer's wardroom cabin, general term for main deck guns. Bulletin, any official account of a public transaction. Bullet mould an implement for casting bullets. Bullets, leaden balls with which all kinds of firearms are loaded. Bullhead or bull jub, a name of the fish called Miller's Thumb, Cotus Gobio. Bullock blocks, blocks secured under the topmast trussel trees, which receive the top sail ties through them in order to increase the mechanical power used in hoisting them up. Bullock slings, used to hoist in live bullocks. Bullseye, a sort of block without a sheave, for a rope to reeve through. It is grooved for stropping, also the central mark of a target, also a hemispherical piece of ground glass of great thickness, 
inserted into small openings in the decks, port lids, and scuttle hatches for the admission of light below. Bullseye Kringle, a piece of wood in the form of a ring which answers the purpose of an iron thimble. It is seldom used by English seamen, and then only for the fore and main bowline bridles. Bull trout, the salmon trout of the tweed, a large species of trout taken in the waters of Northumberland. To bully rag, to reproach contemptuously and in a hectoring manner, to bluster, to abuse, and to insult noisily. Shakespeare makes mine host of the garter dub Falstaff a bully rook. Bullock, the planking or woodwork round a vessel above her deck, and fastened externally to the stanchions and timber heads. In this form it is a synonym of berthing, also the old name for a bastion. Bulwark netting, an ornamental frame of netting answering the purpose of a bulwark. Bombard, a cask or large vessel for liquids. See Bombard. Trincolo in the tempest, thinks an impending storm cloud, looks like a foul bombard. Bumboat. A boat employed to carry provisions, vegetables, and small merchandise for sale to ships, either in port or lying at a distance from the shore, thus serving to communicate with the adjacent town. The name is corrupted from Bombard, the vessels in which beer was formerly carried to soldiers on duty. Bumpkin, bumpkin or boomkin, a short boom or beam of timber projecting from each bow of a ship where it is fade down upon the false rail. Its use is to extend the clue or lower corner of the foresail to windward, for which purpose there is a large block fixed on its outer end, through which the tack is passed, and when hauled tight down is said to be aboard. The name is also applied to the pieces on each quarter for the main brace blocks. Bumpkin, a small outrigger over the stern of a boat, usually serving to extend the mizzen. Bummery, a word synonymous with bottomry in maritime law. It is also a name given to a class of speculating salesmen of fish, not recognized as regular tradesmen. To bump. To bump a boat is to pull astern of her in another, and insultingly or inimically give her the stem, a practice in rivers and narrow channels. Bump ashore, running stem on to a beach or bank. A ship bumps by the action of the waves, lifting and dropping her on the bottom when she's aground. Bumpers. Logs of wood placed over a ship's side to keep off ice. End of section 16. Read by Sandra. Section 17 of the Sailor's Word Book. A to C by William Henry Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases B-U-N to B-Y Bunt In India, an embankment, whence Bunda Head and Bunda Boat. Bundle up, the call to the men below to hurry up on deck. Bundling things into a boat, loading it in a slovenly way. To bungle to perform a duty in a slovenly manner. Bongo, or bonga, a sort of boat used in the southern states of America, made of the bonga tree hollowed out. Bung starter, a stave shaped like a bat, which applied at either side of the bung, causes it to start out. Also a sobriquet for the captain of the hold. Also a name given to the master's assistant serving his apprenticeship for hold duties. Bung up and bilge free. A cast so placed that its bung stave is uppermost and it rests entirely on its beds. Bunk. A sleeping place in the fore peak of merchantmen, standing bed places fixed on the sides between decks. Bunker. For stowing coal in steamers. Cellular spaces on each side which deliver the coal to the engine room. Wing bunkers below the decks, cutting off the angular side spaces of the hold and hatched over, are usually filled with sand, holy stones, brooms, junk blocks, and etc., saving stowage. Bunt of a sail, the middle part of it, formed designedly into a bag or cavity, that the sail may gather more wind. It is used mostly in topsails because courses are generally cut square, 
or with but small allowance for bunt or compass. The bunt holds much leeward wind, that is, it hangs much to leeward. In handled or furled sails, the bunt is the middle gathering which is tossed up on the centre of the yard. To bunt a sail is to haul up the middle part of it in furling and secure it by the bunt gasket. Bunters, the men on the yard who gather in the bunt when furling sails. Bunt fair, before the wind. Bunt gasket, see, gasket. Bunting, a name on our southern shores for the shrimp. Bunting or buntin, a thin woolen stuff of which the ship's colours, flags and signals are usually made. Bunt jigger. A small gun-tackle purchase of two single blocks, one fitted with two tails, used in large vessels for bowsing up the bunt of a sail when furling, a peculiar combination of two points fitted to a spar to which it is hooked. Bunt-line cloth. The lining sewed up the fore part of the sail in the direction of the bunt-line to prevent the rope from chafing the sail. Bunt-line cringle and I worked into the bolt-rope of a sail to receive a bunt-line. This is only in top-gallant sails, and is seldom used now. In the merchant service all bunt-lines are generally passed through an eyelet hole in the sail, and clinched round its own part. Bunt-lines, ropes attached to the foot-ropes of top-sails and courses, which, passing over and before the canvas, turn it up forward, and thus disarm the force of the wind. At one-third from each clue, Eyelet holes are worked in the canvas, and by grummets passed through, a toggle is secured on both bites. To this buntline toggle, the buntline attaches by an eye or loop. When the sails are loosed to dry, the bowlines, unbent from the bridles, are attached to these toggles and haul out the sails by the foot ropes, like tablecloths. The buntline is roved through a block at the masthead passes through the bunt-line span attached to the tie-blocks on the yard to retain them in the bunt, or amidships, down before all, and looped to the toggles aforesaid. By aid of the clue-lines, reef-tackles, and bunt-lines, a topsail is taken in or quieted if the sheets carry away, but more especially by the bunt-lines, as the wind has no hold then to belly the canvas. Bunt-line spans. Short pieces of rope with a thimble in one end, the other whipped, the bunt-lines are roved through these thimbles. They are attached to the tie-blocks to keep the sail in the bunt when hauled up. Bunt-line toggles. See bunt-lines and toggle. Bunt slab-lines. Reeve through a block on the slings of the yard or under the top, and pass abaft the sail, making fast to its foot. Their object is to lift the foot of a course so as to see underneath it, or to prevent it from chafing. Something of the same kind is used for topsails to keep them from rubbing on the stays when flapping in a calm. Boy, a sort of closed cask or block of wood, fastened by a rope to the anchor to show its situation after being cast, that the ship may not come so near it as to entangle her cable about its stock or flukes. To boy a cable is to make fast a spar, cask, or the like, to the bite of the cable, in order to prevent its galling or rubbing on the bottom. When a boy floats on the water, it is said to watch. When a vessel slips her cable, she attaches a boy to it in order afterwards to recover it. Thus the blockading squadrons off Brest and in Basque roads frequently slipped by signal, and each, in beautiful order, returned and picked up their cables. To stream the boy is to let it fall from the ship's side into the water, which is always done before the anchor is let go, that it may not be fouled by the boy rope as it sinks to the bottom. Boys of various kinds are also placed upon rocks or sandbanks to direct mariners where to avoid danger. Buoyancy, capacity for floating lightly, center of buoyancy in naval architecture, the mean center of that part of the vessel which is immersed in the water, see center of cavity. Buoyant, the property of floating lightly on the water. Boy rope, the rope which attaches the boy to the anchor which should always be of sufficient strength to lift the anchor, should the cable part. It should also be little more in length than equal to the depth of the water at high water, where the anchor lies. To bend the boy rope, pass the running eye over one fluke, take a hitch over the other arm and seize, or take a clove hitch over the crown on each arm or fluke, stopping the end to its own part, or to the shank. 
boy rope knot used where the end is lashed to the shank a knot made by unlaying the strands of a cable laid rope and also the small strand of each large strand and after single and double walling them as for a stopper knot worm the divisions and round the rope burbot a freshwater fish mulva lota in esteem with fishermen burden is the quantity of contents or number of tons weight of goods or munitions which a ship will carry when loaded to a proper sea trim and this is ascertained by certain fixed rules of measurement the precise burden or burthen is about twice the tonnage but then a vessel would be deemed deeply laden berg the anglo-saxon burr a word connected with fortification in german as in almost all the teutonic languages of europe in arabic the same term with the alteration of letter burg signifies primarily a bastion and by extension any fortified place on a rising ground this meaning has been retained by all northern nations who have borrowed the word and we with the rest name our towns once fortified burgs or boroughs burgall a fish of the american coasts from six to twelve inches long it is also called the blue perch the chalk set and the nibbler the last from its habit of nibbling off the bait thrown for other fishes burgi a swallow-tailed or tapered broad pennant in the merchant service it generally has the ship's name on it burgomaster in the arctic sea a large species of gull larus glaucus burgonet a steel headpiece or kind of helmet shakespeare makes cleopatra alluding to antony exclaim quote, the demi atlas of this earth the arm and burgonet of men End quote in the second part of henry the sixth clifford threatens warwick quote, and from thy burgonet i'll rend thy bear and tread it under foot with all contempt borgu a seafaring dish made of boiled oatmeal seasoned with salt butter and sugar see loblolly and skilly burley the butt end of a lance burley twine a strong and coarse twine or small string burn or bourne the anglo-saxon term for a small stream or brook originating from springs and winding through meadows thus differing from a beck shakespeare makes edgar say in king lear come o'er the bourne bessie to me the word also signifies a boundary to burnettize to impregnate canvas timber or cordage with sir william burnett's fluid a solution of chloride of zinc burn the water a phrase denoting the act of killing salmon in the night with a lister and light a torch in the boat burn trout a northern term for a small species of river trout burr the iris or hazy circle which appears round the moon before rain also a manx or gaelic term for the wind blowing across on the tide also the sound made by the Newcastle men in pronouncing the letter R. Burl, a long grade shot, consisting of bits of iron, bullets, nails, and other matters, got together in haste for a sudden emergency. Burrock, a small weir over a river, where wheels are laid for taking fish. Burr pump, a name of the bilge pump. Burser, see purser. Burst the explosion of a shell or any gun burthen see burden burton a small tackle rove in a particular manner it is formed by two blocks or pulleys with a hook block in the bite of the running part it is generally used to set up or tighten the shrouds whence it is frequently termed a top burton tackle but it is equally useful to move or draw along any weighty body in the hold or on the deck as anchors bales of goods large casks etc see spanish burton the burton purchase also runner purchase which see bush or bush a circular shouldered piece of metal usually of brass let into the lignum vitae sheaves of such blocks as have iron pins thereby preventing the sheave from wearing without adding much to its weight the operation of placing it in the wood is called bushing or coking though the last name is usually given to smaller bushes of a square shape brass bushes are also extensively applied in the marine steam engine work also in artillery the plug 
generally of copper on account of the superior resistance of that metal to the flame of exploded gunpowder having a diameter of about an inch and an equal length to the intended length of the vent screwed into the metal of the gun at the place of the vent which is then drilled in it guns may be rebushed when the vent has worn too large by the substitution of a new bush bush the forests in the west indies australia etc bushed cased with harder metal as that inserted into the holes of some rudder braces or sheaves in general to prevent their wearing bushed block see coke busking piratical cruising also used generally for beating to windward along a coast or cruising off and on bus a small strong-built dutch vessel with two masts used in the herring and mackerel fisheries being generally of fifty to seventy tons burden bust head sea head busy as the devil in a gale of wind fidgety restlessness or double diligence in a bad cause the imp being supposed to be mischievous in hard gales but a northern name for a flounder or place also a conical basket for catching fish butcher's bill a nickname for the official return of killed and wounded which follows an action butus carly the early name for the sea officers in the british navy see equipment but the joining of two timbers or planks endways also the opening between the ends of two planks when worked also the extremities of the planks themselves when they are united or abut against each other the word likewise is used to denote the largest end of all timber planks under water as they rise are joined one end to another in large ships butt ends are most carefully bolted for if any one of them should spring or give way the leak would be very dangerous and difficult to stop to start or spring a butt is to loosen the end of a plank by the ship's weakness or labouring but heads are the same with butt ends but is also a mark for shooting at and the hind part of a musket or pistol also a wine measure of one hundred and twenty six gallons but and but a term denoting that the butt ends of two planks come together but do not overlay each other see hook and butt and hook scarf butt end the shoulder part of a firelock butter box a name given to the brig traders of lumpy form from london bristol and other english ports a cant term for a dutchman butterbump a name of the bittern in the north butterfingered having a careless habit of allowing things to drop through the fingers buttle an eastern county name for the bittern buttock the breadth of the ship astern from the tuck upwards it is terminated by the counter above by the bilge below by the stern post in the middle and by the quarter on the side that part abaft the after body which is bounded by the fashion pieces and by the wing transom and the upper or second water line a ship is said to have a broad or narrow buttock according to her transom convexity under the stern buttock lines in ship building the longitudinal curves at the rounding part of the after body in a vertical section button the knob of metal which terminates the breech end of most guns and which affords a convenient bearing for the application of hand spikes breechings etc to make buttons a common time-honoured but strange expression for sudden apprehension or misgiving buttress in fortification see counterforts butt shaft or butt bolt an arrow without a barb used for shooting at a butt but slinging a bowsprit see slings booksish a gratuity in oriental trading buzzing sometimes used for booming which see by on or close to the wind full and by not to lift or shiver the sails wrap full by and large to the wind and off it within six points by cat a northern term for a male salmon of a certain age because of the beak which then grows on its under jaw bilis an old spelling for bill which see bernie early english for body armour berth the old expression for tonnage see burden or burthen bysa an ancient gun for discharging stones at the enemy bysus 
the silken filaments of any of the bivalved mollusks which adhere to rocks, as the pinna, mytilus, etc. The silken byssus of the great pinna, or wing shell, is woven into dresses. In the chamagigas it will sustain one thousand pounds. Also the woolly substance found in damp parts of a ship. By the board, over the ship's side, when a mast is carried away near the deck, it is said to go by the board, by the head, when a ship is deeper forward than abaft, by the lee, the situation of a vessel going free when she has fallen off so much as to bring the wind round her stern and to take her sails aback on the other side, by the stern, when the ship draws more water abaft than forward, see by the head, by the wind, is when a ship sails as nearly to the direction of the wind as possible, see full and by, in general terms within six points, or the axis of the ship is sixty-seven and a half degrees from the direction of the wind, by wash, the outlet of water from a dam or discharged channel. End of section 17, read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 18 of A Sailor's Workbook by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. C. A. to C. A. N. CAG. C. CAG. CABAN. A flat bottomed passage boat of the Loire. Cabbage. Those principally useful to the seamen are the esculent cabbage tree, Areca olerichia, which attains to a great height in the West Indies. The sheaths of the leaves are very close and form the green top of the trunk a foot and a half in length. This is cut off and its white heart eaten. Also the crambe maritima, sea kale or marine cabbage growing in the west of England. Cabin a room or compartment partitioned off in a ship where the officers and passengers reside. In a man-of-war, the principal cabin in which the captain or admiral lives is the upper after part of the vessel. Cabin boy, a boy whose duty is to attend and serve the officers and passengers in the cabin. Cabin lecture, see jobation. Cabin mate, a companion when two occupy a cabin furnished with two bed places. Cable, a thick, strong rope or chain which serves to keep a ship at anchor. The rope is cable-laid, ten inches in circumference and upwards, those below this size being hawsers, commonly of hemp or coir, which latter is still used by the Calcutta pilot brigs on account of its lightness and elasticity. But cables have recently and all but exclusively been superseded by iron chain. A shot of cable, two cables spliced together. To coil a cable, to lay it in fakes and tiers one over the other, to lay a cable, see laying, to pay cheap the cable, to hand it out a pace, to throw it over, to pay out more cable, to let more out of the ship, to serve or plate the cable, to bind it about with ropes, canvas, etc., to keep it from galling in the hawse pipe, see rounding, keckling, etc., to splice a cable, to make two pieces fast together by working the several yarns of the rope into each other. With chain, it is done by means of shackles. To veer more cable, to let more out. Cable bends. Two small ropes for lashing the end of a hempen cable to its own part in order to secure the clinch by which it is fastened to the anchor ring. Cable bitted. So bitted as to enable the cable to be nipped or rendered with ease. Cable bits, see bits. Cable boys, peculiar casks employed to buoy up rope cables in a rocky anchorage to prevent their rubbing against the rocks, but they are also attached to the end of a cable when it is slipped with the object of finding it again. Cable enough, the call when cable enough is veered to permit of the anchor being brought to the cat head. Cable hanger, a term applied to any person catching oysters in the river Medway, not free of the fishery, and who is liable to such penalty as the mayor and citizens of Rochester shall impose upon him. Cable-laid rope, 
is a rope of which each strand is a hawser-laid rope. Hawser-laid ropes are simple three-strand ropes and range up to the same size as cablets, as from three-quarter to nine inches. See rope. Cable sheet. Sheet cable. The spare bower cable belonging to a ship. Sheet is deemed standby and is also applied to its anchor. Cable's length. A measure of about one hundred fathoms, by which the distances of ships in a fleet are frequently estimated. This term is frequently misunderstood. In all marine charts, a cable is deemed 607.56 feet, or one-tenth of a sea mile. In rope-making, the cable varies from 100 to 115 fathoms. Cablet, 120 fathoms. Hawser laid, 130 fathoms, as determined by the Admiralty in 1830. Cable stage. A place constructed in the hold or cable tier for coiling cables and hawsers on. Cable stream. Stream cable. A hawser or rope, something smaller than the bower, used to move or hold the ship temporarily during a calm in a river or haven, sheltered from the wind and sea, etc. Cable tier. The place in a hold or between decks where the cables are coiled away. Cabobbled. Confused or puzzled. Kebabs or kebab. The Turkish name for small fillets of meat broiled on wooden spits, the use of the term has been extended eastward, and in India signifies a hot spiced dish of fish, flesh, or fowl. Cabons, see caburns. Caboose or cambus. The cook room or kitchen of merchantmen on deck, a diminutive substitute for the galley of a man of war. It is generally furnished with cast iron apparatus for cooking. Cabotage. Italian. Sailing from cape to cape along a coast, or the details of coast pilotage. Caburns. Spun rope yarn lines for worming a cable, seizing winding tacks, and the like. Cacao. Spanish. The plant Theobroma, from which what is commonly termed cocoa, is derived. Cackle, or keckle. To apply a particular kind of service to the cable, see keckling. Cache, a hidden reservoir of provision to secure it from bears in Arctic travel, also a deposit of dispatches, etc. Cade, a small barrel of about five hundred herrings or one thousand sprats. Cadence, the uniform time and space for marching, more indispensable to large bodies of troops than to parties of small armed men yet an important part even of their drill, the regularity requisite in pulling. Cadet, a volunteer who, serving at his own charge to learn experience, waits for preferment, a designation recently introduced for young gentlemen formerly rated volunteers of the first class, properly the younger son in French. To cage, to carry, cager a carrier, cage may be a corruption as being carryable. Caesar's penny, the tip given by a recruiting sergeant. Cafila, see Cafila. Cage, an iron cage formed of hoops on the top of a pole and filled with combustibles to blaze for two hours. It is lighted one hour before high water and marks an intricate channel navigable for the period it burns, much used formerly by fishermen. Cage rock, an old term for a ship's upper works. Kike or cake, a small levantine vessel, also a graceful skiff seen in perfection at Constantinople, where it almost monopolizes the boat traffic. It is fast, but crank, being so narrow that the oars or skulls have their looms enlarged into ball-shaped masses to counterbalance their outboard length. It has borne for ages the wave-line now brought out in England as the highest result of marine architecture. It may have from one to ten or twelve rowers. Kerban, a name in the Hebrides for the basking shark. Cairn, piles of stones used as marks in surveying. Caisson, or Caisson, an adopted term for a sort of float sunk to a required depth by letting water into it, when it is hauled under the ship's bottom, receives her steadily, and on pumping out the water, floats her. These were long used in Holland, afterwards at Venice and in Russia, where they were known as camels, which, see, 
Quezon is also a vessel fitted with valves, to act instead of gates for a dry dock, used also in pontoons, which see cake ice, ice formed in the early part of the season, calabash, cucurbita, a gourd abundant within the tropics, furnishing drinking and washing utensils. At Tahiti and the Sandwich Islands they attain a diameter of two feet. There is also a calabash tree, the fruit not exceeding the size of oranges. Calabas, an early kind of light musket with a wheel lock. Bourne mentions it in 1578. Calaloo, a dish of fish and vegetables. Calamus, see Rattan. Calanca, a creek or cove on Italian and Spanish coasts. Calavansis, Faciolus vulgaris, Arico, French, small beans sometimes used for soup instead of peas. To calculate, this word, though disrated from respectability by American misuse, signified to foretell or prophecy. It is thus used by Shakespeare in the first act of Julius Caesar to calculate the ship's position, either from astronomical observations or rate of the log. Calendar. A distribution of time. See Almanac. Calendar time, on which officers' bills are drawn. Calf. A word generally applied to the young of marine mammals as the whale. Calf in the Arctic regions, a mass of flow ice breaking from under a flow, which when disengaged rises with violence to the surface of the water. It differs from a tongue, which is the same body kept fixed beneath the main flow. The iceberg is formed by the repeated freezing of thawed snow running down over the slopes until at length the wave from beneath and weight above causes it to break off and fall into the sea, or as termed in Greenland, to calve. Thus berg is freshwater ice, the work of years. The flow is salt water frozen suddenly each winter and dissolving in the summer. Calf or calva a Norwegian name, also used in the Hebrides, for islets lying off islands, and bearing a similar relation to them in size that a calf does to a cow, as the calf at mull and the calf of man. Calfat, the old word for caulking. Calfete, French, probably from kale, wedge, and fer, to make. To wedge up an opening with any soft material as oakum. Calfatier, Spanish. Caliber or caliber. The diameter of the bore of a gun, cannon, shot, or bullet. A ship's caliber means the known weight her armament represents. Calipash, the upper shell of a turtle. Calipi, the undershell of a turtle. Caliber, a handgun or arquebus, probably the old name of the matchlock or carabine, precursors of the modern firelock or Enfield rifle. See Calabas. Call. A peculiar silver pipe or whistle used by the boatswain and his mates to attract attention and summon the sailors to their meals or duties by various strains, each of them appropriated to some particular purpose such as hoisting, heaving, lowering, veering away, belaying, letting go a tackle fall, sweeping, etc. This piping is as attentively observed by sailors as the bugle or beat of drum is obeyed by soldiers. The coxswains of the boats of French ships of war are supplied with calls to in bow or, or of all, oars, etc. Calipers, bow-legged compasses used to measure the girth of timber, the external diameter of masts, shot, and other circular or cylindrical substances. Also, an instrument with a siding leg, used for measuring the packages constituting a ship's cargo, which is paid for by its cubicle contents. Call the watch. This is done every four hours, except at the dog watches, to relieve those on deck also by pipe. All the watch, or all the starboard, or the port, first, second, third, or fourth watches. Calm. There being no wind stirring, it is designated flat dead or stark, under each of which the surface of the sea is unruffled. Calm latitudes, that tropical tract of ocean which lies between the northeast and southeast trade winds, its situation varies several degrees, depending upon the season of the year. 
the term is also applied to a part of the sea on the polar side of the trades between them and the westerly winds calvert salmon salmon prepared in a peculiar manner in early times calves tongue a sort of moulding usually made at the caps and bases of round pillars to taper or hence the round part to the square camber the part of a dockyard where cambering is performed and timber kept also a small dock in the royal yards for the convenience of loading and discharging timber also anything that curves upwards to camber to curve ship planks camber keeled keel slightly arched upwards in the middle of the length but not actually hogged cambus a form of caboose which see camels all large ships are built at st petersburg in a dockyard off the granite quay where the water is shallow therefore a number of camels or caissons are kept at kronstadt for the purpose of carrying them down the river camels are hollow cases of wood constructed in two halves so as to embrace the keel and lay hold of the hull of a ship on both sides they are first filled with water and sunk in order to be fixed on the water is then pumped out when the vessel gradually rises and the process is continued until the ship is enabled to pass over the shoal similar camels were used at rotterdam about sixteen ninety came to brought to anchor camphor see chamfer camisado a sudden surprise or assault of the enemy kamuk a very early term for crooked timber camp the whole extent of ground on which an army pitches its tents and lodges see decamp to camp or camp out in american travel to rest for the night without a standing roof whether under a light tent, a screen of boughs, or any makeshift that the neighbourhood may afford. Campaign, a series of connected operations by an army in the field, unbroken by its retiring into quarters. Campaigner, a veteran soldier. Camp equipage, see equipage. Camper, see camp. Campison, see gambison. Camp fight, see acre. Can, a tin vessel used by sailors to drink out of canage or canache an inner port as at granada in the west indies canal boat a barge generally towed by horses but furnished with a large square sail for occasional use can bodies the old term for anchor boys now can boys can boys are in the form of a cone and therefore would countenance the term cone boys they are floated over sands and other obstructions in navigation as marks to be avoided they are made very large to be seen at a distance where there are several they are distinguished by their colour as black red white or chequered etc cancel ticket one rendered useless by some subsequent arrangement or clerk's error in either case the word cancelled is to be written across in large characters and due record made the corner cut off cancels good character yet they are a certificate for time cancer the crab the fourth sign of the zodiac which the sun enters about the twenty first of june and commences the summer solstice candle bark a cylindrical tin box for candles cane the rattan calamus rudentum is extensively used in the east for rigging rope and cables the latter have remained for years at the bottom of the sea uninjured by torredo or any destructive crustacea the cables too resist any but the sharpest axes when used to connect logs as booms to stop the navigation of rivers canvas the old word for hemp and canvas but many races even the chinese make sails entirely of cane the americans frequently use cotton and term that cloth duck in the islands of the south pacific it is made from the bark of various trees grasses etc can hooks they are used to sling a cask by the chimes or ends of its staves and are formed by reeving the two ends of a piece of rope or chain through the eyes of two flat hooks and there making them fast the tackle is then hooked to the middle of the bite canister shot see case shot Canikin a small drinking vessel cannon the well-known piece of artillery mounted in battery on board or on shore and made either of brass or iron 
the principal parts are first the breech together with the cascable and its button called by seamen the pomelion the breeches of solid metal from the bottom of the concave cylinder or chamber to the cascable second the trunnions which project on either side and serve to support the cannon hold it almost in equilibrio third the bore or calibre is the interior of the cylinder wherein the powder and shot are lodged when the cannon is loaded the entrance of the bore is called the mouth or muzzle it may be generally described as gradually tapering with the various modifications of first and second reinforce and swell to the muzzle or forward end c gun cannonade the opening and continuance of the fire of artillery on any object attacked battering with cannon shot cannon parer an ancient piece of ordnance used in ships of war for throwing stone shot cannon petronel a piece of ordnance with a six-inch bore which carried a twenty-four pound ball cannon rifled introduced by captain blakely sir w armstrong and others cannon royal a sixty-pounder of eight and a half inches bore see cartoon cannon serpentine an old name for a gun of seven inches bore. Canoe, a peculiar boat used by several uncivilized nations, formed of the trunk of a tree, hollowed out, and sometimes of several pieces of bark joined together, and again of hide. They are of various sizes according to the uses for which they are designed, or the countries to which they belong. Some carry sail, but they are commonly rowed with paddles, somewhat resembling a corn shovel and instead of rowing with it horizontally as with an oar they manage it perpendicularly in greenland and hudson bay the eskimo limits of america skin boats are chiefly in use under the name of kayak umiak baidar etc canopus the lucida of argo navis and a greenwich star also a city of classical importance visited by the heroes of the trojan war the reputed burial-place of the pilot of Menelaus, etc. But as some ancient places have been so fortunate as to renew their classical importance in modern times, so this, under the modern name of Abu Kair, has received a new stamp of fate by its overlooking, like Salamis, the scene of a naval battle which also led to a decision of the fate of nations. In this bay Nelson, at one blow, destroyed the fleet of the enemy and cut off the veteran army of France from the shores of Egypt. The Canopian mouth of the Nile was the most westerly of all the branches of that celebrated river. Canopy, a light awning over the stern sheets of a boat. To cant, to turn anything about, or so that it does not stand square, to diverge from a central right line. Cant the boat or ship that is, for careening her. Cant, a cut made in a whale between the neck and the fins, to which the cant purchase is made fast, for turning the animal round in the operation of flensing. Cantara, a watering place. Cant blocks, the large purchase blocks used by whalers to cant the whales round under the process of flensing. Cant body, an imaginary figure of that part of a ship's body which forms the shape forward and aft, and whose planes make obtuse angles with the midship line of the ship. Canteen, a small tin vessel for men on service to carry liquids, also a small chest containing utensils for an officer's messing, also a kind of sutling house in garrisons. Cantera, a Spanish fishing boat. Cant Falls, see Spike Tackle. Cant hook, a lever with a hook at one end for heavy articles. Cantic coins, short three-edged pieces of wood to steady casks from laboring against each other. Canting ballast is when by a sudden gust or stress of weather a ship is thrown so far over that the ballast settles to leeward and prevents the ship from righting. Canting lever, see console bracket. Cant line synonymous with girt line, as to cant the top over the lower mast head. Cantonments, troops detached and quartered in different towns and villages near each other. Cant purchase, this is formed by a block suspended from the mainmast head, and another block made fast to the cant cut in the whale. 
See cant blocks, cant ribbons, those ribbons that do not lie in a horizontal or level direction. Cant rope, see four cant. Cant spar, a handmast pole fit for making small masts or yards, booms, etc. Cant timbers, they derive their name from being canted or raised obliquely from the keel. The upper ends of those on the bow are inclined to the stem, as those in the after part inclined to the stern post above. In a word, cant timbers are those which do not stand square with the middle line of the ship. They may be deemed radial bow or stern timbers. Canvas from cannabis, hemp. A cloth made from hemp and used for the sails of ships. It is purchased in boats and numbered from one to eight, rarely to nine and ten. Number one, being the coarsest and strongest, is used for the lower sails as foresail and mainsail in large ships. When a vessel is in motion by means of her sails, she is said to be under canvas. Canvasback duck, an American wild duck, Fuligula valisneria, which takes this name from the color of the back feathers, much esteemed as a delicacy. Canvas climber, a word used by Marston for a sailor who goes aloft, hence Marina tells Leonin, quote, and clasping to a mast, endured a sea that almost burst the deck, and from the ladder tackle washed off a canvas climber. End, quote. End of section 18. Read by Sandra, Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 19 of the Sailor's Word Book by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. C. A. P. to C. A. R. Cap. A strong, thick block of wood having two large holes through it, the one square, the other round used to confine two masts together when one is erected at the head of the other in order to lengthen it. The principal caps of a ship are those of the lower masts, which are fitted with a strong eye-bolt on each side, wherein to hook the block by which the topmast is drawn up through the cap. In the same manner as the topmast slides up through the cap of the lower mast, the top gallant mast slides up through the cap of the top masts. When made of iron, the cap used to be called a krantz. To cap a masthead is placing tarpaulin guards against weather. The term is applied to any covering such as lead put over iron bolts to prevent corrosion by sea water, canvas covers over the ends of rigging, etc., etc. Also, pieces of oak laid on the upper blocks on which a vessel is built to receive the keel. They are split out for the addition of the false keel, and therefore should be of the most free-grained timber. Also the coating which guards the top of a quill tube. Also the percussion priming for firearms. Cap a pied, armed from head to foot. To cap. To puzzle or beat in argument. To salute by touching the head covering as Shakespeare makes Iago's friends act to Othello. It is now more an academic than a sea term. Cap a bar. An old term for misappropriating government stores. See Marriott's novels. Capacize, a corrupt form of capsize. Capacity, burden, tonnage, fitness for the service, rating. Cape, a projecting point of land jutting out from the coastline, the extremity of a promontory of which last it is the secondary rank. It differs from a headland since a cape may be low. The Cape of Good Hope is always familiarly known as the Cape. Cape was also used for a rum line. To Cape to keep a course. How does she cape? How does she lie her course? Cape flyaway, a cloud bank on the horizon, mistaken for land, which disappears as the ship advances. Sea fog. Cape hen, see mollymock. Capella, the lucida of origa, and a nautical star. Cape merchant, capo, an old name for supercargo in early voyages as also the head merchant in a factory. Cape Pigeon, or Cape Petrel, a seabird which follows a ship in her passage round the Cape. 
the Procularia capensis. See Pintadas. Caper, a light armed vessel of the seventeenth century used by the Dutch for privateering. Caper corner way, diagonally. Cap full of wind, a light flaw which suddenly careens a vessel and passes off. Capital of a work. In fortification, an imaginary line bisecting its most prominent salient angle. Capitana, formerly the principal galley in a Mediterranean fleet, the admiral's ship. Capitulation, the conditions on which a subdued force surrenders, agreed upon between the contending parties. Caplin, or Caplin, a fish of the family, Clupede, very similar to a smelt, frequently imported from Newfoundland dried. It is the general bait for codfish there. Captain, the way in which some address the commanders of merchant vessels. Capon, a jeering name for the red herring. Caponnière, in fortification, a passage across the bottom of the ditch, covered at the least by a parapet on each side, and very generally also with a bomb-proof roof, when it may be furnished with many guns, which are of great importance in the defence of a fortress, as the besieger can hardly silence them till he has constructed batteries on the brink of the ditch. Capote, a good storm coat with a hood, much worn in the Levant, and made of a special manufacture. Capanus, the worm which adheres to and gnaws the bottom of a ship, to prevent which all ships should be sheathed with copper. Capped, a ship making against a race or very strong currents. Capricornus, the tenth sign of the zodiac which the sun enters about the twenty first of December and opens the winter solstice. Cap scuttle, a framing composed of combings and head ledges raised above the deck with a top which shuts closely over into a rabbit. Cap shore, a supporting spar between the cap and the trestle tree. To capsize, to upset or overturn anything. Cap square, the clamp of iron which shuts over the trunnions of a gun to secure them to the carriage, having a curve to receive one third part of the trunnion, the other two being sunk in the carriage, it is closed by four locks. Capstan, cabiston, capstern, capstone, etc. A mechanical arrangement for lifting great weights, there is a variety of capsterns, but they agree in having a horizontal circular head which has square holes round its edge, and in these long bars are shipped, and are said to be swifted when their outer ends are traced together. Beneath is a perpendicular barrel, round which is wrapped the rope or chain used to lift the anchor or other great weight, even to the heaving a ship off a shoal. Now in most ships where a capstern is used to lift the anchor, the chain cable is itself brought to the capstern. The purchase or lifting power is gained by the great sweep of the bars. A perpendicular iron spindle passes through the whole capstern and is stepped into a socket on the deck below the one on which it stands. In some cases capsterns are double in height, so that bars may be worked on two decks, giving more room for the men. Capstan, to come up the capstan, in one sense is to lift the poles and walk back, or turn the capstan the contrary way, thereby slackening or letting out some of the rope on which they have been heaving. A sudden order would be obeyed by surging or letting go any rope on which they were heaving, synonymous to come up the purchase. Capstan, to heave at the capstan, to urge it round by pushing against the bars as already described, to man the capstan, to place the sailors at it in readiness to heave, to pawl the capstan, to drop all the pawls into their sockets, to prevent the capstan from recoiling during any pause of heaving, to rig the capstan, to fix the bars in their respective holes, thrust in the pins to confine them, and reeve the swifter through the ends. Surge the capstan is the order to slacken the rope which is wound round the barrel while heaving, to prevent it from riding or fouling. This term specially applies to surging the messenger when it rides, or when the two lashing eyes foul on the whelps or the barrel. Capstan bar pins. Pins inserted through their ends to prevent their unshipping. Capstan barring. 
an obsolete sea punishment in which the offender was sentenced to carry a capstan bar during a watch. Capstan bars. Long pieces of wood of the best ash or hickory, one end of which is thrust into the square holes in the drumhead like the spokes of a wheel. They are used to heave the capstan round by the men setting their hands and chests against them and walking round. They are also held in their places in the drumhead holes by little iron bolts called capstan or safety pins to prevent their flying out when the surging overcomes the force of the men. Many men have been killed by this action, and more by the omission to pin and swift. Capstan room, see room. Capstan step, see the step of the capstan. The men march round to the tune of a fiddle or fife, and the phrase of excitement is, Step out, lads, make your feet tell. Captain swifter. A rope passed horizontally through notches in the outer ends of the bars and drawn very tight. The intent is to steady the men as they walk round when the ship rolls, and to give room for a greater number to assist by manning the swifters, both within and without. Captain. This title is said to be derived from the Eastern Military Magistrate, Catapan, meaning over everything, but the term Capitano was in use among the Italians nearly two hundred years before Basilius II appointed his Catapan of Apulia and Calabria, Anno Domini, 984. Hence the corruption of the Apulian province into Capitanata. Among the Anglo-Saxons the captain was Ship Hlefford, or Ship's Lord. The captain, strictly speaking, is the officer commanding a line of battle ship or a frigate carrying twenty or more cannon. The captain in the Royal Navy is answerable for any bad conduct in the military government, navigation, and equipment of his ship, also for any neglect of duty in his inferior officers, whose several charges he is appointed to regulate. It is also a title, though incorrectly, given to the masters of all vessels, whatever, they having no commissions. It is also applied in the navy itself to the chief sailor of particular gangs of men, in rank, captain of the forecastle, admiral's coxswain, captain's coxswain, captain of the hold, captain of main top, captain of foretop, etc. Captain, a name given to the crooner, crowner, or grey gurnard, trigula gurnardus. Captain of a merchant ship is a certificated officer in the mercantile marine, entrusted with the entire charge of a ship, both as regards life and property. He is in no way invested with special powers to meet his peculiar circumstances, but has chiefly to depend upon moral influence for maintaining order amongst his passengers and crew during the many weeks or even months that he is cut off from appeal to the laws of his country, only resorting to force on extreme occasions. Great tact and judgment is required to fulfil this duty properly. Captain of a ship of war is the commanding officer as well as the post-captain, a title now disused, as those whose proper title is commander. Captain of the fleet is a temporary admiralty appointment. He is entitled to be considered as a flag officer and to a share in the prize money accordingly. He carries out all orders issued by the commander-in-chief but his special duty is to keep up the discipline of the fleet in which he is supreme. He is the adjutant-general of the force, hoisting the flag and wearing the uniform of rear admiral. Captain of the Head Not a recognized rating, but an ordinary man appointed to attend to the swabs and to keep the ship's head clean. Captain of the Hold The last of the captains in rank as a first-class petty officer. Captain of the Port the captain of the port is probably better explained by referring to that situation at Gibraltar. He belongs to the Board of Health. He controls the entries and departures, the berthing at the anchorage, and general marine duties, but possesses no naval authority. Hence the port captain is quite another officer. See Port Captain. Captain General, the highest army rank. Captain's Clerk one whose duty is strictly to keep all books and official papers necessary for passing the captain's accounts at the Admiralty. Captain's Cloak The Jocko's name, given to the last sweeping clause, the 36th Article of War, quote, All other crimes not capital, 
and for which no punishment is hereby directed to be inflicted, shall be punished according to the laws and customs in such cases used at sea. End quote. Captain's Gig. See Gig. Captain's Storeroom. A place of reserve on the platform deck for the captain's wines and sea stores. Captive. A prisoner of war. Captures. The conquerors of and sharers in the proceeds of a prize. Captors are not at liberty to release prisoners belonging to the ships of the enemy. The last survivor is in law the only captor. Capture. A prize taken by a ship of war at sea is the taking forcible possession of vessels or goods belonging to one nation by those of a hostile nation. Vessels are looked on as prizes if they fight under any other standard than that of the state from which they have their commission. If they have no charity party, manifest, or bill of lading, or if loaded with effects belonging to the king's enemies, or even contraband goods, whether the capture be lawful or unlawful, the insurer is rendered liable to the loss. Car. A North Country word, denoting any swampy land surrounded by enclosures and occasionally under water. Carabineer, one who uses the carabine. Carrack, carrack or carrack. A large ship of burden, the same with those called galleons. Hippos, the Tyrian, is said to have first devised carracks and honorary vessels of prodigious bulk for traffic or offence. Caracora, a proa of Borneo, Ternate, and the Eastern Isles, also called Caracol by early voyagers. Caramusal, a Turkish merchant ship with a pink stern. Caravel or Caravela, a Portuguese despatch boat, Latin rigged, formerly in use. It had square sails only on the foremast, though dignified as a caravella. Caravelao, a light pink sterned vessel of the Azores. Carbas, see Carbats. Carbin, a name in our northern isles for the basking shark. Carbin, or carabin, a firearm of less length and weight than a musket, originally carrying a smaller ball, though latterly for the convenience of the supply of ammunition, throwing the same bullet as the musket, though with a smaller charge. It has been proper to mounted troops since A.D. 1556, and has been preferred to the musket as a weapon for the tops of ships as well as boats. Carcass, an iron shell for incendiary purposes filled with a very fiercely flaming composition of saltpetre, sulphur, rosin, turpentine, antimony, and tallow. It has three vents for the flame, and sometimes is equipped with pistol barrels, so fitted in its interior as to discharge their bullets at various times. Carcass of a ship. The ribs, with keel, stem, and stern post, after the planks are stripped off. Carcatus, from Caricato, Italian, a law term for a freighted ship. Card. The dial or face of the magnetic compass card. Quote, Reason the card, but passion is the gale, end quote, by Pope, probably derived from cardinal. Cardinal points, the general name by which the north, east, south, and west rums of the horizon are distinguished. Cardinal points of the ecliptic, the equinoctial and solstitial points, namely the commencement of Aries and Libra, and of Cancer and Capricornus. Cardinal signs, the zodiacal signs which the sun enters at the equinoxes and solstices. Cardinal winds, those from due north, east, south, and west points of the compass. To careen, a ship is said to careen when she inclines to one side, or lies over when sailing on a wind, off her keel or carina. Careening, the operation of heaving the ship down on one side by arranging the ballast, or the application of a strong purchase to her masts, which require to be expressly supported for the occasion to prevent their springing. By these means, one side of the bottom, elevated above the surface of the water, may be cleansed or repaired. See breaming. But this operation is now nearly superseded by sheathing ships with copper, whereby they keep a clean bottom for several years. Careening Beach a part of the strand prepared for the purpose of a ship's being grounded on a list or careen to repair defects. Carfindo, one of the carpenter's crew. Cargo, 
the merchandise a ship is freighted with. Cargo book. The master of every coasting vessel is required to keep a cargo book, stating the name of the ship, of the master, of the port to which she belongs, and that to which she is bound, with a roll of all goods, shippers, and consignees. In all other merchant ships the cargo book is a clean copy of all cargo entered in the gangway book and shows the mark, number, quality, and, if measurement, goods, the dimensions of such packages of a ship's cargo. Caricatore, places where the traders of Sicily take in their goods, from caricare, to load. Carina, an old term from the Latin for the keel or a ship's bottom. The North Country term keel means an entire vessel. Quote, so many keels touched the strand. End quote. See keel. Karl, or male hemp. See fimble, or female hemp. Karl crab, the male of the black clawed crab, Cancer pagurus, also of the parton, or common crab. Carline knees, timbers going athwart the ship from the sides to the hatchway, serving to sustain the deck on both sides. Carlines, or carlings. Pieces of timber about five inches square lying fore and aft along from one beam to another. On and athwart these the ledges rest, whereon the planks of the deck and other portions of carpentry are made fast. The carlines have their end led into the beams called culver tailwise, or scored in pigeon fashion. There are other carlines of a subordinate character. Carlino, or Caroline a small silver coin of Naples, value four pence English. Ten carlini make a ducat in commerce. Carn tangle, a long and large fucus, thrown on our northern beaches after a gale of wind in the offing. Carus, a sort of gallery in ancient ships which turned on a pivot. It was hoisted to a given height by tackles and thus brought to project over or into the vessel of an adversary, furnishing a bridge for boarding. Carp, a well-known freshwater fish of the Cyprinidae family, considered to have been introduced into England in the time of Henry VIII, but in Dame Berner's book on angling, published in 1486, it is described as the daintiest fish in England. Carpenter, ship carpenter. A shipbuilder, an officer appointed to examine and keep in order the hull of a ship and all her appurtenances, Likewise, the stores committed to him by indenture from the storekeeper of the dockyard. The absence of other tradesmen, whilst a ship is at sea, and the numerous emergencies in which ships are placed requiring invention, render a good ship's carpenter one of the most valuable artisans on board. Carpenter's crew consists of a portion of the crew provided for ship carpentry and ship building. In ships of war there are two carpenter's mates and one caulker one blacksmith and a carpenter's crew, according to the size of the ship. Carpenter's storeroom, an apartment built below on the platform deck for keeping the carpenter's stores and spare tools in. Carpenter's yeoman, see yeoman. Carpet knight, a man who obtains knighthood on a pretense for services in which he never participated. Carpet men, those officers who, without services or merit, obtain rapid promotion through political or other interest, and are yet declared highly meritorious and distinguished. Car, see Car. Carrack, Caraca, Carrack, or Carrick, a name given by the Spaniards and Portuguese to the vessels they sent to Brazil and the East Indies, large, round-built, and fitted for fight as well as burden. Their capacity lay in their depth, which was extraordinary. English vessels of size and value were sometimes also so called. Carrara, the great northern diver, Columbus glacialis. Cari, a manx or Gaelic term for the scud or small clouds that drive with the wind. Carriage of a gun, the frame on which it is mounted for firing, constructed either exclusively for this purpose or also for travelling in the field. Carriages for its transport only are not included under this term. The first kind only is in general use afloat, where it usually consists of two thick planks called brackets or cheeks, 
laid on edge to support the trunnions and resting besides other transverse connections on two axle trees which are borne on low solid wooden wheels called trucks or sometimes to diminish the recoil on flat blocks called chocks the hind axle tree takes with the intervention of various elevating arrangements the preponderance of the breech the second kind is adapted for field and siege work the shallow brackets are raised in front on high wheels but unite behind into a solid beam called the trail which tapers downwards and rests on the ground when in action but for travel is connected to a two-wheeled carriage called a limber which see gun carriages are chiefly made of elm for shipboard as less given to splinter from shot and of oak on shore wrought iron however is being applied for the carriages of the large guns recently introduced and even cast iron is economically used in some fortresses little liable to sudden counter battery carrick an old gaelic term for castle or fortress as well as for a rock in the sea carrick bend a kind of knot formed on a bite by putting the end of a rope over its standing part and then passing it carrick bits the bits which support the ends are spindles of the windlass whence they are also called windlass bits carried taken applied to the capture of forts and ships carronade a short gun capable of carrying a large ball and useful in close engagements at sea it takes its name from the large iron foundry on the banks of the carron near falkirk in scotland where this sort of ordnance was first made or the principle applied to an improved construction shorter and lighter than the common cannon and having a chamber for the powder like a mortar they are generally of large calibre and carried on the upper works as the poop and forecastle carronade slide composed of two wide box of elm on which the carronade carriage slides as the slide is bolted to the ship's side and is a radius from that bolt or pivot carronades were once the only guns which could be truly concentrated on a given object to carry to subdue a vessel by boarding her to move anything along the decks see lash and carry as relating to hammocks also to obtain possession of a fort or place by force also the direction or movement of the clouds also a gun is said to carry its shot so many yards also a ship carries her canvas and her cargo to carry away to break as that ship has carried away her fore topmast that is has broken it off it is customary to say we carried away this or that when knocked shot or blown away it is also used when a rope has been parted by violence carrying on duty the operations of the officer in charge of the deck or watch carrying on the war making suitable arrangements for carrying on the lark or amusement to carry on to spread all sail also beyond discretion or at all hazards in galley slang to joke a person even to anger also riotous frolicking carry the keg see keg carte blanche in the service sense of the term implies an authority to act at discretion cartel a ship commissioned in time of war to exchange the prisoners of any two hostile powers or to carry a proposal from one to the other for this reason she has only one gun for the purpose of firing signals as the officer who commands her is particularly ordered to carry no cargo ammunition or implements of war cartel also signifies an agreement between two hostile powers for a mutual exchange of prisoners in late wars ships of war fully armed but under cartel carried commissions for settling peace as flags of truce cartel ships by trading in any way are liable to confiscation cartoon the ancient cannon royal carrying a sixty-six pound ball with a point-blank range of one hundred and eighty-five paces and an extreme one of about two thousand it was twelve feet long and of eight and a half inches diameter of bore cartouche box the accoutrement which contains the musket cartridges now generally called a pouch carto see cart piece cart piece an early battering cannon mounted on a peculiar cart cartridge the case in which the exact charge of powder for firearms is made up of paper for small arms of flannel for great guns or of sheet metal for breech-loading muskets 
for small arms generally the cartridge contains the bullet as well as the powder and in the case of most breech loaders the percussion priming also in the case of some very light pieces the shot is included and then named a round of fixed ammunition and for breech loading guns some sort of lubricator is generally enclosed in the forward end of the cartridge cartridge box a cylindrical wooden box with a lid sliding upon a handle of small rope just containing one cartridge and used for its safe conveyance from the magazine to the gun borne to and fro by powder monkeys boys of old the term is loosely applied to the ammunition pouch caruo see carvel carved work the ornaments of a ship which are wrought by the carver carvel a light latin rigged vessel of small burden formerly used by the spaniards and portuguese also a coarse sea blubber on which turtles are said to feed carvel built a vessel or boat the planks of which are all flush and smooth the edges laid close to each other and caulked to make them water tight in contradistinction to clinker built where they overlap each other carry see mother carries chicken procularia pelagica End of section 19. Read by Sandra. Section 20 of the Sailor's Word Book by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. C. A. S. to C. B cascable that generally convex part of a gun which terminates the breech end of it the term includes the usual button which is connected to it by the neck of the cascable cascade a fall of water from a considerable height rather by successive stages than in a single mass as with a cataract casco a rubbish lighter of the philippine islands case the outside planking of the ship Casebook, a register or journal in which the surgeon records the cases of all the sick and wounded who are placed under medical treatment. Casemate, in fortification, a chamber having a vaulted roof capable of resisting vertical fire, and affording embrasures or loopholes to contribute to the defense of the place. Without these, it would be merely a bomb proof. Kazan, often considered as synonymous with barracks but more correctly small lodgments erected between the ramparts and houses of a fortified town to ease the inhabitants by quartering soldiers there who are also in better condition for duty than if living in various parts case shot common also called canister shot adapted for close quarters if the enemy be uncovered it consists of a number of small iron balls varying in weight and number packed in a cylindrical tin case fitting the bore of the gun from which it is to be fired burl language and other irregular substitutes may be included under the term spherical case shot are officially called shrapnel shell which see cashiered sentenced by a court-martial to be dismissed the service by such sentence an officer is rendered ever after incapable of serving the sovereign in any position naval or military casing the lining veneering or planking over a ship's timbers especially for the cabin beams the sheathing of her also a bulkhead round a mast to prevent the interference of cargo or shifting materials casing cover in the marine steam engine is a steam-tight opening for the slide-valve rod to pass through cask a barrel for fluid or solid provisions see stowage caskets properly gaskets small ropes made of sinnet and fastened to grummets or little rings upon the yards their use is to make the sail fast to the yard when it is to be furled cassava or cassara a species of the genus yatropha yanifa well known to seamen as the cassava bread of the West Indies. Tapioca is produced from the Yathropha manihot. Caution is necessary in the use of these roots, as the juice is poisonous. The root used as chew sticks to cleanse the teeth and gums by the negroes produces a copious flow of frothy saliva. Cast. 
a coast term meaning four, as applied to haddocks, herrings, etc., also the appearance of the sky when day begins to break, a cast of pots, etc., a cast when a ship's yards are braced, a cast preparatory to weighing, also condemned, cast by survey, etc., to cast, to fall off, so as to bring the direction of the wind on one side of the ship, which before was right ahead. This term is particularly applied to a ship riding head to wind when her anchor first loosens from the ground. To pay a vessel's head off or turn it is getting under way on the tack she is to sail upon, and it is casting to starboard or port according to the intention. To cast anchor, to drop or let go the anchor for riding by, synonymous with to anchor. To cast a traverse to calculate and lay off the courses and distances run over upon a chart, to cast off, to let go at once, to loosen from, cast, a short boat passage, cast away, shipwrecked, castaways, people belonging to vessels stranded by stress of weather, men who have hidden themselves or are purposely left behind when their vessel quits port, casting accounts, seasickness, Cast knees, those hanging knees which compass or arch over the angle of a man of war's ports, rider, etc. Castle, a place strong by art or nature, or by both, a sort of little citadel, sea, forecastle, aft castle, etc. Castle rites, particular artificers employed in the erection of the early ship's castles. Castoffs, landsmen's clothes. Cast of the lead, the act of heaving the lead into the sea to ascertain what depth of water there is. See also heave the lead and sounding. The result is a cast. Get a cast of the lead. Castor, Alpha Gemini, a well-known nautical star in the zodiac which has proved to be a double star. Castor and Pollux, fiery balls which appear at the mastheads, yard arms, or sticking to the rigging of vessels in a gale at sea. Si compassant and corposant, castramitation, the art of planning camps and selecting an appropriate position in which the main requirement is that the troops of all arms should be so planted in camp as immediately to cover their proper positions in the line of battle. Cast the wrong way, see wrong way. Casualties, in a military sense, comprehends all men who die, are wounded, desert, or are discharged as unfit for service. Cat, a ship formed on the Norwegian model, and usually employed in the coal and timber trade. These vessels are generally built remarkably strong, and may carry six hundred tons, or in the language of their own mariners, from twenty to thirty keels of coals. A cat is distinguished by a narrow stern, projecting quarters, a deep waist, and no ornamental figure on the prow. Catalan, a small Spanish fishing boat. Catamaran a sort of raft used in the East Indies, Brazils, and elsewhere. Those of the island of Ceylon, like those of Madras and other parts of that coast, are formed of three logs. The timber preferred for their construction is the dup wood, or cherne maram, the pine varnish tree. Their length is from twenty to twenty-five feet, and breadth two and a half to three and a half feet, secured together by means of three spreaders and cross-lashings through small holes, the centre log is much the largest, with the curved surface at the fore end, which tends and finishes upwards to a point. The side logs are very similar in form and fitted to the centre log. These floats are navigated with great skill by one or two men in a kneeling position. They think nothing of passing through the surf which lashes the beach at Madras and other parts of these coasts, when even the boats of the country could not live upon the waves. They are also propelled out to the shipping at anchor when boats of the best construction and form would be swamped. In the monsoons, when a sail can be got on them, a small outrigger is placed at the end of two poles as a balance, with a bamboo mast and yard, and a mat or cotton cloth sail, all three parts of which are connected, and when the tack and sheet of the sail are let go, it all falls fore and aft alongside, and being light is easily managed. In carrying a press of sail, they are trimmed by the balance lever, by going out on the poles so as to keep the log on the surface of the water and not impede its velocity, which in a strong wind is very great. 
Catanadromi, migratory fishes which have their stated times of going from fresh water to salt and returning as the salmon, etc. Catapult, a military engine used by the ancients for throwing stones, spears, etc. Cataract, the sudden fall of a large body of water from a higher to a lower level, and rather in a single sheet than by successive leaps, as in a cascade. Catascopia, small vessels anciently used for reconnoitring and carrying dispatches. Cat beam, this, called also the beakhead beam, is the broadest beam in the ship, and is generally made of two beams, tabled and bolted together. Cat block, a two- or threefold block, with an iron strop and large hook to it, which is employed to cat or draw the anchor up to the cat head, which is also fitted with three great sheaves to correspond. Catch, a term used among fishermen to denote a quantity of fish taken at one time. Catch a crab. In rowing, when an oar gets so far beneath the surface of the water that the rower cannot recover it in time to prevent his being knocked backwards. Catch a turn there. Belay quickly. Catch fake. An unseemly doubling in a badly coiled rope. Caterer. A purveyor and provider of provisions, now used for the person who takes charge of and regulates the economy of a mess. See Akater. Catfall. The rope rove for the cat purchase, by which the anchor is raised to the cat head or catted. Catfish. A name of the sea wolf. Anaricus lupus. Cat gut. A term applied to the sea laces or fucus filum. See sea cat gut. Cat harpings or cat harpin legs. Ropes under the tops at the lower end of the futtock shrouds, serving to brace in the shrouds tighter and affording room to brace the yards more obliquely when the ship is close hauled. They keep the shrouds taut for the better ease and safety of the mast. Cat head. The cat head passes through the bow bulwark obliquely forward on a radial line from the foremast. Rests on the timbers even with the waterway, passes through the deck, and is secured to the side timbers. It is selected from curved timber. Its upper head is on a level with the upper rail. It is furnished with three great sheaves, and externally strengthened by a cat-head knee. It not only is used to lift the anchor from the surface of the water, but as it looks forward, the cat-block is frequently lashed to the cable to aid by its powerful purchase when the capstan fails to make an impression. The cat fall rove through the sheaves, and the cat block furnish the cat purchase. The cat head thus serves to suspend the anchor clear of the bow, when it is necessary to let it go. The knee by which it is supported is generally ornamented with carving, termed also a cat head bracket. Cat holes, places or spaces made in the quarter for carrying out fasts or springs for steadying or heaving astern. Cat hook. A strong hook, which is a continuation of the iron strop of the cat block, used to hook the ring of the anchor when it is to be drawn up or catted. Cat lap, a common phrase for tea or weak drink. Cat and nine tails, an instrument of punishment used on board ships in the navy. It is commonly of nine pieces of line or cord, about half a yard long, fixed upon a piece of thick rope for a handle and having three knots on each at small intervals nearest one end, with this the seamen who transgress are flogged upon the bare back. Catraya. The Catraya of Lisbon and Oporto, or pilot surf boats, are about fifty six feet long by fifteen feet beam, impelled by sixteen oars. Cat rig, a rake which in smooth water surpasses every other, but being utterly unsuited for sea or heavy weather, is only applicable to pleasure boats, who can choose their weather. It allows one sail only, an enormous fore and aft mainsail, spread by a gaff at the head and a boom at the foot, hoisted on a stout mast which is stepped close to the stem. Cat rope, a line for hauling the cat hook about, also cat back rope, which hauls the block to the ring of the anchor in order to hook it. Cat's paw, a light air, perceived at a distance in a calm by the impressions made on the surface of the sea, which it sweeps very gently, and then passes away, being equally partial and transitory. Old superstitious seamen are seen to scratch the back stays with their nails and whistle, to invoke even these cat's paws, the general forerunner of the steadier breeze. 
Cat's paw is also a name given to a particular twisting hitch made in the bite of a rope so as to induce two small bites in order to hook a tackle on them both. Also, good-looking seamen employed to entice volunteers. Cat's skin. A light partial current of air, as with the cat's paw. Cat's tail. The inner part of the cat head that fades down upon the cat beam. Cat stopper, or cat head stopper. A piece of rope or chain rove through the ring of an anchor to secure it for sea, or singled before letting it go. Cat tackle. A strong tackle used to draw the anchor perpendicularly up to the cat head, which latter is sometimes called cat. Catan. See Catan. Cat the anchor. When the cat is hooked and cable enough, veered and stoppered, the anchor hangs below the cat head, swings beneath it. It is then hauled close up to the cat head by the purchase called the cat fall. The cat stopper is then passed and the cat block unhooked. Catting. The act of heaving the anchor by the cat tackle. Also, seasickness. Catty. A Chinese commercial weight of eighteen ounces English. Tea is packed in one or two or more catty boxes, hence most likely our word tea caddy. Caudal fin. The vertical median fin terminating the tail of fishes. Caudricariae. A kind of lighter used by the Romans on the Tiber. Call. The membrane encompassing the head of some infants when born, and from early antiquity esteemed an omen of good fortune, and a preservative against drowning. It was sought by the Roman lawyers with as much avidity as by modern voyagers. Also, a northern name for a dam dyke. Also, an oriental license. See call. To caulk. See caulking. To lie down on deck and sleep with clothes on. Caulker. He who caulks and pays the seams. This word is mistaken by many for caulker, which see. Caulker's seat, a box slung to a ship's side whereon a caulker can sit and use his irons. It contains his tools and oakum. Caulking of a ship, forcing a quantity of oakum or old ropes untwisted and drawn asunder into the seams of the planks or into the intervals where the planks are joined together in the ship's decks or sides or rends in the planks in order to prevent the entrance of water after the oakum is driven in very hard hot melted pitch or rosin is poured into the groove to keep the water from rotting it among the ancients the first who made use of pitch in caulking were the inhabitants of phaeacia afterwards called Corfu. Wax and rosin appear to have been commonly used before that period, and the Poles still substitute an unctuous clay for the same purpose for the vessels on their navigable rivers. Caulking butt, the opening between ends or joints of the planks when worked for caulking. Caulking irons, the peculiar chisels used for the purpose of caulking. They are the caulking iron, the making iron, the reaming iron, and the raising iron. Caulking mallet, the wooden beetle or instrument with which the caulking irons are driven. Cory, worm eaten. Cavalier, in fortification a work raised considerably higher than its neighbours, but generally of a similar plan. Its object is to afford a plunging fire, especially into the near approaches of a besieger, and to shelter adjacent faces from enfilade. Its most frequent position in fortresses is at the salient of the ravelin, or within the bastion, and in siege works in the advanced trenches, for the purpose of enabling the musketry of the attack to drive the defenders out of the covered way. Cavallo, by some Carvalas, an oceanic fish well known as the bonito, or horse mackerel. Cavalot, a gun carrying a ball of one pound. Cavalry that body of soldiers which serves and fights on horseback. Caver. See caver. Caviar. A preparation of the roe of sturgeons and other fish salted. It forms a lucrative branch of commerce in Italy and Russia. Cavil. A large cleat for belaying the fore and main tacks, sheets and braces, too. See cavils. Cavity. In naval architecture signifies the displacement formed in the water by the immersed bottom and sides of the vessel. Caw, or cough, 
an East Country eel box, or a floating perforated cage in which lobsters are kept. Cocker, an old term signifying a glass of strong spirits taken in the morning. K or Cayos, little insulated sandy spots and rocks. The Spaniards in the West Indies called the Bahamas Los Cayos, which we wrote Lucayos, see Key. Casemat, see Casemate. Casans, see Caserns. C. B. The Unxials of Companion of the Most Honorable Order of the Bath. This grade was recently distributed so profusely that an undecorated veteran testily remarked that if government went on thus there would soon be more c b s than a b s in the navy end of section twenty read by sandra section twenty one of the sailor's word book by w h smythe this librivox recording is in the public domain a glossary of sea terms and phrases. C E to C H A. Cease firing, the order to leave off. Sealing, the lining or planks on the inside of a ship's frame. These are placed on the flat of the floor and carried up to the hold beams. The term is a synonym of foot whaling, which see. Cells, see. Sills. Celotes or celetes. Light rowboats, formerly used in piracy and also for conveying advice. Cement, Roman, for docks, piers, and etc. See Botsolana. Centime, see Frank. Sentinel, see Sentinel. Central eclipse, see Eclipse. Center, usually center. The division of a fleet between the van and the rear of the line of battle, and between the weather and lee divisions in the order of sailing. Center of cavity, of displacement, of immersion, and of buoyancy are synonymous terms in naval architecture for the mean center of that part of a vessel which is immersed in the water. Center of gravity, or balancing point, see gravity. Center of motion, see motion, center of centurion a military officer who commanded one hundred men in the roman armies teola a very old term for a large ship seradine a large fresh-water mussel circuri ancient ships of burden fitted with both sails and oars certificate a voucher or written testimony to the truth of any statement an attestation of servitude signed by the captain is given with all discharges of men in the navy to certify, to bear official testimony. Cessation of arms, a discontinuation or suspension of hostilities. Satine, an ancient large float, says Hesychius, in bulk like a whale, derived from Cetus, which applied both to whale and ship. C.G., Coast Guard, which see. Chad, a fish like a small bream, abundant on the southwest coasts of England to chafe, to rub or fret the surface of a cable, mast, or yard, by the motion of a ship or otherwise, against anything that is too hard for it. Chafing gear is the stuff put upon the rigging and spars to prevent their being chafed. Chaffer, a name for a whale or grampus of the northern seas. Chafing cheeks, a name given by old sailors to the sheaves instead of blocks on the yards in light-raked vessels. Chafing gear, mats, sinnet, spun yarn strands battens scotchmen and the like chain when mountains hills lakes and islands are linked together or follow each other in succession so that their whole length greatly exceeds their breadth they form what is termed a chain a measuring chain is divided into links etc made of stout wire because line is apt to shrink on wet ground and give way the chain measure is sixty six feet chainage of ship an old right of the admiral. Chain bolt. A large bolt to secure the chains of the dead eyes through the tow link, for the purpose of securing the masts by the shrouds. Also, the bolts which fasten the channel plates to the ship's side. Chain cable compressor. A curved arm of iron which revolves on a bolt through an eye at one end. At the other is a larger eye in which a tackle is hooked. 
It is used to bind the cable against the pipe through which it is passing and check it from running out too quickly. Chain Cable Controller A contrivance for the prevention of one part of the chain riding on another while heaving in. Chain cables are not new. Caesar found them on the shores of the British Channel. In 1818 I saw upwards of eighty sail of vessels with them at Desenzano on the Lago di Garda. They have all but superseded hemp cables in recent times. They are divided into parts fifteen fathoms in length, which are connected by shackles, any one of which may be slipped in emergency. At each seven and a half fathoms a swivel used to be inserted, but in many cases they are now dispensed with. Chain Cable Shackles Used for coupling the parts of a chain cable at various lengths, so that they may be disconnected when circumstance demands it. Chain Hook an iron rod with a handling eye at one end and a hook at the other for hauling the chain cables about. Chain pipe, an aperture through which a chain cable passes from the chain well to the deck above. Chain plates, plates of iron with their lower ends bolted to the ship's sides under the channels, and to these plates the dead eyes are fastened. Other plates lap over and secure them below. Formerly, and still in great ships, the dead eyes were linked to chain pieces, and from their being occasionally made in one plate, they have obtained this appellation. Chain Pump This is composed of two long metal tubes let down through the decks, somewhat apart from each other, but joined at their lower ends, which are pierced with holes for the admission of water. Above the upper part of the tubes is a sprocket wheel worked by crank handles, over this wheel, and passing through both tubes, is an endless chain, furnished at certain distances with bucket valves or pistons, turning round a friction roller. The whole, when set in motion by means of the crank handles, passing down one tube and up the other, raises the water very rapidly. Chains, properly chain whales or channels, broad and thick planks, projecting horizontally from the ship's outside to which they're fade and bolted abreast of and somewhat behind the masts. They are formed to protect the chain plate and give the lower rigging greater outrig or spread, free from the top sides of the ship, thus affording greater security and support to the masts, as well as to prevent the shrouds from damaging the gunwale or being hurt by rubbing against it. Of course they are respectively designated fore, main, and mizzen. They are now discontinued in many ships, the eyes being secured to the timber heads and frequently within the gunwale to the stringers or lower shelf pieces above the waterway in the chains applies to the leadsman who stands on the channels between two shrouds to heave the hand lead chain shot two balls connected either by a bar or chain for cutting and destroying the spars and rigging of an enemy's ship chain slings chains attached to the sling hoop and mast head by which a lower yard is hung used for boat or any other slings demanded. Chain stopper. There are various kinds of stoppers for chain cables, mostly acting by clamping or compression. Chain top. A chain to sling the lower yards in time of battle, to prevent them from falling down when the ropes by which they are hung are shot away. Chain well or locker. A receptacle below deck for containing the chain cable, which is passed thither through the deck pipe. Chaland, a large flat-bottomed boat of the Loire. Chalders, synonymous with gudgeons of the rudder. Chaldric, an Orkney name for the sea pipe, Hematopus australicus. Chaldron, a measure of coals consisting of thirty-six bushels, a cubic yard, nineteen CWTS, hundred weights, nineteen pounds. Chalink, a kind of masula boat to chalk, to cut, to walk one's chalks, to run off, also an ordeal for drunkenness, to see whether the suspected person can move along the line. Walking a deck seam is to the same purpose, as the man is to proceed without overstepping it on either side. Chalks, marks, better by chalks. Wagers were sometimes determined by he who could reach furthest or highest, and there make a chalk mark. Long chalks great odds. Challenge. The demand of a sentinel to anyone who approaches his post. Also the defiance to fight. Chamade. To challenge attention. 
a signal made by beat of drum when a conference is desired by the enemy on having matter to propose. It is also termed beating a parley. Chamber or chamber piece A charge piece in an old ordnance like a patarero to put into the breech of a gun prepared for it. See murderer. Used by the Chinese as in gengals, which see chamber of a mine the seat or receptacle prepared for the powder charge usually at the end of the gallery and out of the direct line of it and if possible tamped or buried with tight packing of earth etc to increase the force of explosion chamber of a piece of ordnance the end of the bore modified to receive the charge of powder in mortars howitzers and shell guns they are of smaller diameter than the bore for the charges being comparatively small more effect is thus expected the gomer chamber which c is generally adopted in our service in rifled guns the powder chamber is not rifled it and the bullet chamber differ in other minute respects from the rest of the bore patareros for festive occasions are sometimes called chambers as the small mortars formerly used for firing salutes in the parks termed also pint pots from their shape and handles chambers clear spaces between the riders in those vessels which have floor and foothook riders chamfer the cutting or taking off a sharp edge or angle from a plank or timber it is also called camphering champion the great champion of england who at the coronation of the sovereign throws down his gauntlet and defies all comers held at the coronations of george fourth william fourth and victoria by a naval officer, a midi in 1821. In Chancery, when a ship gets into irons, see irons. Chancy, dangerous. Chandler, ship, dealer in general stores for ships. Change, in warranty, is the voluntary substitution of a different voyage for a merchant ship than the one originally specified or agreed upon, an act which discharges the insurers see deviation changey for changey a rude barter among men of war's men as bread for vegetables or any swap channel in hydrography the fairway or deepest part of a river harbour or strait which is most convenient for the track of shipping also an arm of the sea or water communication running between an island or islands and the main or continent as the british channel in an extended sense it implies any passage which separates lands and leads from one ocean into another without distinction as to shape channel bolts the long bolts which pass through all the planks and connect the channel to the side channel gropers the home station ships cruising in the channel usually small vessels to watch the coast in former times and to arrest smugglers channel groping the carrying despatches and cruising from port to port in soundings channel plates see chain plates channel whales strakes worked between the gun deck and the upper deck ports of large ships also the outside plank which receives the bolts of the chain plates the whale plank extends fore and aft to support the channels chanticleer a name in the frith of forth for the dragonet or gaudi Calionimus lira the early or vigilant cock from which several english vessels of war have derived their names chap a general term for a man of any age after boyhood but is not generally meant as a compliment chape the top locket of a sword scabbard chapling a ship the act of turning her round in a light breeze when she's close hauled without bracing the head yards so that she will lie the same way that she did before this is commonly occasioned by the negligence of the steersman or by a sudden change of the wind chaplain the priest appointed to perform divine service on board ships in the royal navy chapman a small merchant or trader a ship's supercargo char a fine species of trout taken in our northern lakes characters certain marks invented for shortening the expression of mathematical calculations as plus minus times divided by equals etc charge the proportional quantity of powder and ball wherewith a gun is loaded for execution 
The rules for loading large ordnance are that the piece be first cleaned or scoured inside, that the proper quantity of powder be next driven in and rammed down, care, however, being taken that the powder in ramming be not bruised, because that weakens its effect, that a little quantity of paper, lint, or the like be rammed over it, and then the ball be intruded. If the ball be red-hot, a tompion or trencher of green wood is to be driven in before it. Also in martial law, an indictment or specification of the crime of which a prisoner stands accused. Also in evolutions, the brisk advance of a body to attack an enemy, with bayonets fixed at the charge, or firmly held at the hip. Also the command on duty, every man's office, a ship of charge, is one so deeply immersed as to steer badly. To charge a piece is to put in the proper quantity of ammunition. Charger, the horse ridden by an officer in action, a term loosely applied to any war horse. Charity sloops, certain ten-gun brigs built toward the end of Napoleon's war, something smaller than the eighteen-gun brigs. These were rated sloops, and scandal whispers, quote, in order that so many commanders might charitably be employed, end quote. Charles Wayne, the seven conspicuous stars in Ursa Major, of which two are called the pointers, from showing a line to the pole star. Chart or sea chart, a hydrographical map, or a projection of some part of the Earth's superficies in Plano, for the use of navigators, further distinguished as plane charts, mercator's charts, globular charts, and the bottle or current chart, to aid in the investigation of surface currents all which see. A selenographic chart represents the moon, especially as seen by the aid of photography and Mr. Delarue's arrangement. Charter. To charter a vessel is to take her to freight under a charter party, the charter or written instrument by which she is hired to carry freight. Chartered ship. One let to hire, to one or more, or to a company. A general ship is where persons unconnected load goods. Charterer, the person hiring or chartering a ship, or the government or a company by their agents. Charter party, the deed or written contract between the owners and the merchants for the hire of a ship and safe delivery of the cargo, thus differing from a bill of lading, which relates only to a portion of the cargo. It is the same in civil law with an indenture at the common law. It ought to contain the name and burden of the vessel, the names of the master and freighters, the place and time of lading and unlading, and stipulations as to demurrage. The charter party is dissolved by a complete embargo, though not by the temporary stopping of a port. It is thus colloquially termed a pair of indentures. To chase. To pursue a ship, which is also called giving chase. A stern chase is when the chaser follows the chased astern, directly upon the same point of the compass. To lie with a ship's forefoot in a chase is to sail and meet with her by the nearest distance, and so to cross her in her way as to come across her forefoot. A ship is said to have a good chase when she is so built forward or astern that she can carry many guns to shoot forwards or backwards, according to which she is said to have a good forward or good stern chase. Chasing to windward is often named chasing in the wind's eye chase the vessel pursued by some other that pursuing being the chaser this word is also applied to a receptacle for deer and game between a forest and a park in size and stored with a larger stock of timber than the latter chase bow cannon situated in the forepart of the ship to fire upon any object ahead of her chasing ahead or varying on either bow chase of a gun that part of the conical external surface extending from the moulding in front of the trunnions to that which marks the commencement of the muzzle, that is, in old pattern guns, from the OG of the second reinforce to the neck or muzzle astragal. Chase guns. Such guns as are removed to the chase ports ahead or astern, if not pivot guns. Chase ports. The gun ports at the bows and through the stern of a warship. Chaser the ship which is pursuing another. Chase sight, where the sight is usually placed. Chase stern, the cannon which are placed in the after part of a ship pointing astern. Chasse-marie, 
the coasting vessels of the French shores of the Channel, generally lugger-rigged, either with two or three masts and sometimes a topsail, the hull being bluffer when used for burden only, are thus distinguished from luggers. They seldom venture offshore, but coast it. Chatham. See Chest of Chatham. Chats. Lice. Also, lazy fellows. Chatta, or chatty, an Indian term for an earthen vessel sometimes used for cooking. Chaw. See quid. End of section 21. Read by Sandra. Nova Scotia, 2023. Section 22 of The Sailor's Wordbook by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. C. H. E. to C. I. Cheating the Devil. Softenings of very profane phrases, the mere euphemisms of hard swearing, as Odd rot it, odd's blood, dash it, dang you, see you blowed first, deuce take it, by gosh, bedarned, and the like profane preludes such as boatswains and their mates are wont to use. Cheat the glass, see flogging the glass. Chebacco boat, a description of fishing vessel employed in the Newfoundland fisheries. It is probably named from Chebucto Bay. Check. See bow line. To slack off a little upon it and belay it again, usually done when the wind is by, or as long as she can lay her course without the aid of the bow line. To check is to slacken or ease off a brace, which is found to be too stiffly extended, or when the wind is drawing aft. It is also used in a contrary sense when applied to the cable running out, and then implies to stop her the cable. Check her. Stop her way. Checkers, a game much used by seamen, especially in the tops, where usually a checkerboard will be found carved. Checking lines. These are rove-through thimbles at the eyes of the topmast and top gallant rigging, one end bent to the lift and brace, the other into the top. They are used to haul them in to the masthead instead of sending men aloft. Cheek. Insolent language. Own cheek. One's self. Cheeky. Flippant. Cheek blocks, usually fitted to the fore topmast head for the purpose of leading the jib stay, halyards, etc. Cheeks. A general term among mechanics for those pieces of timber in any machine which are double and perfectly corresponding to each other. The projections at the throat end of a gaff which embrace the mast are termed jaws, also the sides of a gun carriage, see brackets, also the sides of a block, also an old sobriquet for marine, derived from a rough pun on his uniform in olden days. Cheeks or cheek knees, pieces of compass timber on the ship's bows for the security of the beak head or knee of the head, whence the term head knee. Two pieces of timber fitted on each side of a mast, from beneath the hounds and its uppermost end. Also the circular pieces on the aft side of the carrick bits. Cheeks of an embrasure. The interior faces or sides of an embrasure. Cheeks of the mast. The faces or projecting parts on each side of the masts, formed to sustain the trestle trees upon which the frame of the top, together with the top mast, immediately rest. See hounds and bibs. To cheer, to salute a ship en passant, by the people all coming on deck and huzzahing three times, it also implies to encourage or animate. See also hearty and man-ship. Cheering, the result of an animated excitement in action which often incites to valour, also practised on ships parting at sea, on joining an admiral, etc., in piratical vessels to frighten their prey with a semblance of valour. Cheerly, quickly, with a hearty will. Cheerly, boys, cheerly, when the rope comes in slowly or hoisting a sail with a few hands. Cheese, a circle of wads covered with painted canvas. Chelling, an early name of the codfish. Check, or check, an office in dockyards, 
check for muster pay provision desertion discharged or dead under d d d or d s q d clerk of the check an officer in the royal dockyards who goes on board to muster the ship's company of whom he keeps a register thereby to check false musters the penalty of which is cashiering checkered sides those painted so as to show all the ports more particularly applicable to two or more rows cherry mary in the east a bribe in making a contract or bargain cherry a species of smelt or spurling taken in the frith of tea chesel from the anglo-saxon word chosel still used for a bank or shingle as that remarkable one connecting the isle of portland with the mainland called the chesel beach chest tree a piece of oak fastened with iron bolts on each top side of the ship used for boarding the main tack to or hauling home the clues of the main sail for which purpose there is a hole in the upper part through which the tack passes that extends the clue of the sail to windward where a chain has been substituted of late for rope iron plates with thimble eyes are used for chest trees chest of chatham an ancient institution restored and established by an order in council of queen elizabeth in fifteen ninety supported by a contribution from each seaman and apprentice according to the amount of his wages for the wounded and hurt seamen of the royal navy under the name of smart money chest rope the same with the guest or gift rope and is added to the boat rope when the boat is towed astern of the ship to keep her from shearing that is from swinging to and fro see guess warp chevaux de frise an adopted term for pickets pointed with iron and standing through beams to stop an enemy this defence is also called a turnpike or pike turn chevender an old name for the chevin or chub chevels see kevels chevin an old name for the chub chevron the distinguishing mark on the sleeves of sergeants and corporals coats the insignia of a non-commissioned officer also a mark recently instituted as a testimony of good conduct in a private further now worn by seamen getting good service pay chewing of oakum or pitch when a ship suffers leakage from inefficient caulking see seam chez vous a kind of all souls night in bengal when meats and fruits are placed in every corner of a native's house hence chevaux for a ship gala chico spanish for small boca chica small mouth of a river chief see commander-in-chief a common abbreviation chief mate or chief officer the next to a commander in a merchantman and who in the absence of the latter acts as his deputy Shiga, shago chigger or jigger a very minute insect of tropical countries which pierces the thick skin of the foot and breeds there producing great pain it is neatly extricated with its sack entire by clever negroes chilled shot shot of very rapidly cooled cast iron that is cast in iron moulds and thus found to acquire a hardness which renders them of nearly equal efficiency with steel shot for penetrating iron plates yet produced at about one quarter the price they invariably break up on passing through the plates and their fragments are very destructive on crowded decks though in the attack of iron war vessels where the demolishment of guns carriages machinery turrets etc is required the palm must still be awarded to steel shot and shell timber anglo-saxon the prominent part or end of the staves where they project beyond the head of a cask chime see chine to chime in to join a mess meal or treat to chime in to a chorus or song chinkle a small bite in a line chine the backbone of a cliff from the backbones of animals a name given in the isle of wight as black gang chine and along the coasts of hampshire also that part of the waterway which is left the thickest so as to project above the deck plank and is notched or gouged hollow in front to let the water run free chine and chine casks stowed end to end chined timber or plank slightly hollowed out shingle gravel 
see shingle. Chinguarito, a hot and dangerous sort of white corn brandy made in Spanish America. To chins, to stop small seams by working in oakum with a knife or chisel, a temporary expedient to cock slightly those openings that will not bear the force required for caulking. Chinsing iron, a caulker's tool for chinsing seams with. To chip, to trim a gun when first taken from the mold or castings. Chips, the familiar sobriquet of the carpenter on board ship. The fragments of timber and the planings of plank are included among chips. Chip of the old block, a son like his father. Chirurgion, French the old name for surgeon. Chisel, a well-known edged tool for cutting away iron, wood, etc. Chit, a note, formerly the note for slops given by the officer of a division to be presented to the purser. Chiols, the Saxon ships, so called. Chivy, a knife. Schlet, an old Manx term for a rock in the sea. Chock, a sort of wedge used to rest or confine any weighty body and prevent it from fetching way when the ship is in motion. Also pieces fitted to supply a deficiency or defect after the manner of filling. Also blocks of timber laterally substituted beneath the beams for knees and wedged by iron keys. See boat chocks. Chalk of the bowsprit. See bend. Chocks of the rudder. Large, accurately adapted pieces of timber kept in readiness to choke the rudder by filling up the excavation on the side of the rudder hole in case of any accident. It is also choked or chalked when a ship is likely to get strong sternway, when tiller ropes break, etc. To chalk is to put a wedge under anything to prevent its rolling. See chuck. Chalk a block, or chalk and block, is the same with block a block and two blocks which c when the lower block of a tackle is run close up to the upper one so that you can hoist no higher the blocks being together chalk aft chalk full chalk home chalk up etc denote as far aft full home up etc as possible or that which fits closely to one another chalk channels those filled in with wood between the chain plates, according to a plan introduced by Captain Couch, R.N. Chocolate Gale, a brisk northwest wind of the West Indies and Spanish Main. Chog set, C. Burgall. Choke, the nip of a rocket. Choked, when a running rope sticks in a block, either by slipping between the cheeks and the sh shiver, or any other accident so that it cannot run. Choke full entirely full, top full. Choke the luff, to place suddenly the fall of a tackle close to the block across the jaw of the next turn of the rope in the block, so as to prevent the leading part from rendering, familiarly said of having a meal to assuage hunger, to be silenced. Chokey, an East Indian guardhouse and prison. Chomery, see chasse-marie, for which this is the men's term. Top a permit, or license of departure for merchant ships in the China trade, a Chinese word signifying quality, also an imperial chop or mandate, a proclamation. Chop or chap, the entrance of a channel as the chops of the English channel. To chop about is applied to the wind when it varies and changes suddenly and at short intervals of time. Chopping sea, a synonym of cockling sea, which sea. Chopped done suddenly in exigence as chopped to an anchor. Cord, in geometry, is a line which joins the extremities of any arc of a circle. Chow chow, eatables, a word borrowed from the Chinese. It is supposed to be derived from chu chu, the tender parts of cabbage tree, bamboo, etc., preserved. Chowder, the principal food in the Newfoundland bankers, or stationary fishing vessels. It consists of a stew of fresh codfish, rashers of salt pork or bacon, biscuit, and lots of pepper. Also, a buccaneer's savory dish and a favorite dish in North America. See Codfisher's Crew. Chowder is a fish seller in the western counties. Chowder-headed, stupid, or batter-brained. Christian, a gold Danish coin, value in England from sixteen shillings to sixteen shillings fourpence. Christian's Gales, 
the tremendous storms in 1795-6, to which desolated the fleet proceeding to attack the French West India Islands under Admiral Christian. Crockel, a tangle or thoroughput, which, see, Crodane, the Manx and Gaelic term for Gurnet. Chronometer, a valuable timepiece fitted with a compensation balance, adjusted for the accurate measurement of time in all climates, and used by navigators for the determination of the longitude. Chronometer rate, the number of seconds or parts of seconds which it loses or gains per diem. See rating. Cruin, a Gaelic term for masts. Cruin spree, the bowsprit. Chub, the Luchiscus cephalus, a freshwater fish. Chuck, a seashell, nickname for a boatsman. Old chucks, also an old word signifying large chips of wood. Chuckle-headed, clownishly stupid, lubberly. Chullers, a northern name for the gills of a fish. Chunam, lime, made of burned shells, and much used in India for the naval storehouses, that made at Madras is of peculiarly fine quality and easily takes a polish like white marble. Chunk, a coarse slice of meat or bread, more properly junk, also the negro term for lumps of firewood. Chuntuk, a powerful dignitary among the Chinese, see Chuntuk. Church, the part of the ship arranged on Sunday for divine service. Church warden, a name given on the coast of Sussex to the shag or cormorant. Why, deponent, saith not. Shoot, a fall of water or rapid. The word is much used in North America, wherever the nomenclature of the country retains traces of the early French settlers. See, shoot. Sills, horizontal pieces of timber to ports or scuttles, mostly spelled sills, which see generally pronounced by sailors, cell, as the port cell. Single, from sirsangle, a horse's belt, a belt worn by seamen. saint a kind of fishing net having five entrances. The saint -Port. these are five highly privileged stations, the once great emporiums of British commerce and maritime greatness. They are Dover, Hastings, Sandwich, Romney and Hythe, which, lying opposite to France, were considered of the utmost importance. To these were afterwards added Winchelsea, Rye, and Seaford. These places were honoured with peculiar immunities and privileges, on condition of their providing a certain number of ships at their own charge for forty days. Being exempted from the jurisdiction of the Admiralty Court, the Lord Warden of the saint port is authorised to make rules for the government of pilots within his jurisdiction and in many other general acts exceptions are provided to save the franchises of the saint port unimpeached it is a singular fact that it has never been legally determined whether the downs and adjacent roadsteads are included in the limits of the saint port all derelicts found without the limits by saint port vessels are droits of admiralty this organization was nearly broken up in the late state reforms, but the Lord Warden still possesses some power and jurisdiction. Ciphering, a term in carpentry, see ciphered. Circle, a plain figure bounded by a line called the circumference, everywhere equally distant from a point within it called the center. Circle of perpetual apparition, a circle of the heavens parallel to the equator, and at a distance from the pole of any place equal to the latitude. Within this circle the stars never set. Circles. Great, lesser, azimuth, vertical. Which, see. Circles of longitude. These are great circles passing through the poles of the ecliptic, and so cutting it at right angles. Circulars. Certain official letters which are sent to several persons and convey the same information circumnavigation the term for making a voyage round the world circumpolar a region which includes that portion of the starry sphere which remains constantly above the horizon of any place circumvallation lines of circumvallation entrenchments thrown up by a besieging army outside itself and round the besieged place but fronting towards the country to prevent interference from outside 
this continuous method has gone out of favor though some covering works of concentrated strength are still considered essential cirripedia a group of marine animals allied to the crustacea they are free and natatory when young but in the adult state attached to rocks or some floating substance they are protected by a multivalve shell and have long ciliated curled tentacles whence their name curl footed the barnacles lepas and the acorn shells balanus are familiar examples cirrocumulus this the sunder cloud or system of small roundish clouds in the upper regions of the atmosphere commonly moves in a different current of air from that which is blowing at the earth's surface it forms the mackerel sky alluded to in the following distich Quote, a mackerel sky and mare's tails make lofty ships carry low sails End quote. cirrostratus is the stratus of the upper regions of the atmosphere heavier looking than the cirrus but not so heavy as the stratus cirrus the elegant modification of elevated clouds usually termed mare's tails see the distich given at cirrocumulus otherwise the curl cloud cisco a fish of the herring kind of which thousands of barrels are taken annually and salted in lake ontario cistern a reservoir for water placed in different parts of a ship where a constant supply may be required also furnished with a leaden pipe which goes through the ship's side whereby it is occasionally filled with sea water and which is thence pumped up to wash the decks etc citadel a fortified work of superior strength and dominating everything else generally separated therefrom by an open space of glacis or esplanade often useful against domestic as well as foreign enemies civil branch that department executed by civilians as contradistinguished from the army or navy branch civilians the surgeon chaplain purser or paymaster assistant surgeons secretary and ship clerks on board men of war civil lord the lay or junior member of the admiralty board civil war that between subjects of the same realm or between factions of the same state end of section twenty two read by sandra Section twenty three of the Sailor's Word Book by W. H. Smythe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A digest of sea terms and phrases. C. L. Claimants. Persons appealing to the jurisdiction of the Admiralty Court. They are denominated colourable or fair according to the informality or justice of their claims. Clake, a name for the barnacle goose, answer bernicla, also for the lepus anatifera, a cirriped often found attached to vessels or timber by a long fleshy peduncle, sometimes four or five feet in length. Clam, a well known bivalve shellfish, as happy as a clam at high water a figurative expression for otio's comfort clamber to climb to ascend quickly clamping applying a crosshead or stirrup piece in a socket clamp nails such nails as are used to fasten clamps they are short and stout with large heads clamps pieces of timber applied to a master yard to prevent the wood from bursting also thick planks lying fore and aft under the beams of the first orlop or second deck the same as the rising timbers are to the deck they are securely fayed to all the timbers to which they are fastened by nails through the clamp and penetrating two-thirds of the thickness of the timbers also substantial strakes worked inside on which the ends of the beams rest also smooth crooked plates of iron forelocked upon the trunnions of cannon these, however, are more properly termed cap squares. See carriage. Also, any plate of iron made to open and shut so as to confine a spar. A one-cheeked block, the spar to which it is fastened being the other cheek. To clamp is to unite two bodies by surfaces or circular plates. Clamped is when a piece of board is fitted with the grain to the end of another piece of board across the grain. Clams 
strong pieces used by shipwrights for drawing bolts, etc., also a kind of forceps used for bringing up specimens of the bottom in sounding, a drag, see clam, clang, the rattling or clashing of arms, clapboard, German, clapboard, an East Country commercial plank which ought to be upwards of thirteen feet in length. Cask staves are also clapboards. Clapboard in the colonies is the covering the side of a house with narrow boards, lapping fashion, in contradistinction to shingling or tiling or clench built. Clap match, a sort of seal distinct from the fur seal. Clap on, the order to lay hold of any rope in order to haul upon it also to clap on the stoppers before the bits that is fasten the stoppers or clap on the catfall that is lay hold of the catfall to clap a stopper over all to stop a thing effectually to clap on the stopper before the bits next to the manger or hawse hole to order silence to clap in irons to order an offender into the bilbos to clap on canvas to make more sail clapper a name for the valve of a pump box, also a plank or footbridge across a running stream, also the clapper of a bell, clapsel, the lockage of a flood gate, clarity, in North Country whalers used for wet or slippery, clashy, showery weather, clasp hook, an iron clasp in two parts, moving upon the same pivot and overlapping one another used for bending chain sheets to the clues of sails jib halyards etc see spar hook class order or rank especially relating to dockyard men classification of ships a register made of vessels according to the report rendered in by special surveyors see navy and lloyd's register to claw or claw off to beat or turn to windward from a lee shore so as to be at sufficient distance from it to avoid shipwreck it is generally used when getting to windward is difficult claymore anciently a two-handed sword of the highlanders but latterly applied to their basket-hilted sword cleaching net a hand net with a hoop and bar used by fishermen on the banks of the severn clean free from danger as clean coast clean harbour in general parlance means quite entirely so shakespeare represents ajon roaming clean through the bounds of asia also applied to a ship's hull with a fine run fore and aft clean entrance clean run to clean a ship's bottom see breaming and hog clean bill see bill of health when all are in health clean done quite in a seamanlike manner purpose well effected adroitly tricked see weathered clean fish on the northern coasts a salmon perfectly in season clean full keeping the sail full bellying off the wind clean off the reel when the ship by her rapidity pulls the line off the log reel without its being assisted also upright conduct also any performance without stop or hindrance off-hand clean ship a whale ship unfortunate in her trip having no fish or oil clear is variously applied to weather sea coasts cordage navigation etc as opposed to foggy to dangerous to entangled it is usually opposed to foul in all these senses to clear has several significations particularly to escape from to unload to empty to prepare etc as to clear for action to prepare for action to clear away for this or that is to get obstructions out of the way to clear the decks to remove lumber put things in their places and coil down the ropes also to take the things off a table after a meal to clear goods to pay the custom-house duties and dues to clear the land to escape from the land to clear a lighter or the hold to empty either clearance the document from the customs by which a vessel and her cargo by entering all particulars at the custom house and paying the dues is permitted to clear out or sail clear for going about every man to his station and every rope an end clearing lighters all vessels pertaining to public departments should be cleared with the utmost dispatch clear the pendant see up and clear the pendant clear water 
a term in polar seas implying no ice to obstruct navigation well off the land having sea room to cleat a gun to nail large cleats under the trucks of the lower deckers in bad weather to ensure they're not fetching away cleats or cleats pieces of wood of different shapes used to fasten ropes upon some have one and some two arms they are called belaying cleat deck cleat and a thumb cleat also small wedges of wood fastened on the yards to keep ropes or the earring of the sail from slipping off the yard mostly made of elm or oak cleavage the splitting of any body having its structure or line of cleavage as fir cleaves longitudinally slates horizontally stones roughly smoothly conchoidal or stratified etc clefts wood sawn lengthways into pieces less in thickness than in breadth see plank to clench to secure the end of a bolt by burring the point with a hammer also a mode of securing the end of one rope to another see clinch clenched bolts those fastened by means of a ring or an iron plate with a riveting hammer at the end where they protrude through the wood to prevent their drawing clench nails they are much used in boat building being such as can be driven without splitting the boards and drawn without breaking see rove and clench clep a north country name for a small grapnel clerk any naval officer doing the duty of a clerk clet a northern or erse word to express a rock broken from a cliff as the holm in orkney and shetland clue a precipice a cliff also a ravine or cleft clue of a hammock or cot see clue clicks small pieces of iron falling into a notched wheel attached to the winches in cutters etc and thereby serving the office of pawls see ratchet or ratchet pawl in machinery it more peculiarly belongs to inferior clockwork hence click cliff from the anglo-saxon cliff a precipitous termination of the land whatever be the soil see crag climate formerly meant a zone of the earth parallel to the equator in which the days are of a certain length at the summer solstice the term has now passed to the physical branch of geography and means the general character of the weather clinch a particular method of fastening large ropes by a half hitch with the end stopped back to its own part by seizings it is chiefly to fasten the hawsers suddenly to the rings of the kedges or small anchors and the breechings of guns to the ring bolts in the ship's side those parts of a rope or cable which are clinched thus the outer end is bent by the clinch to the ring of the anchor the inner or tier clinch in the good old times was clinched to the mainmast passing under the tier beams where it was unlawfully as regards the custom of the navy clinched thus the cable runs out to the clinch means there's no more to veer to clinch is to batter or rivet a bolt's end upon a ring or piece of plate iron or to turn back the point of a nail that it may hold fast see clinch to clinch a business to finish it to settle it beyond further dispute as the recruit taking the shilling clinch built clinker or overlapping edges clincher an incontrovertible and smart reply but sometimes the confirmation of a story by a lie or by some still more improbable yarn synonymous with capping clincher or clinker built made of clinker work by the planks lapping one over the other the contrary of carvel work iron ships after this fashion are distinguished as being lap jointed clinker nails those which are of malleable metal as copper wrought iron etc which clinch by turning back the points in rough built fir boats where roofs and clinking are thus avoided clinker work the disposition of the planks in the side of any boat or vessel when the lower edge of every plank overlaps the next below it this is sometimes written as pronounced clinker work clip hook a hook employed for some of the ends of the running rigging clipper a fast sailor formerly chiefly applied to the sharp-built raking schooners of america and latterly to australian passenger ships larger vessels now built after their model are termed clipper built sharp and fast low in the water rakish clive an old spelling of cliff clock calm 
when not a breath of wind ruffles the water. Clock stars, a name for the nautical stars, which, from their positions, having been very exactly ascertained, are used for determining time. Clodhopper, a clownish, lubberly landsman. Cloakie Doo, a west of Scotland name for the horse mackerel. Close aboard, near or alongside, too close to be safe. The boat is close aboard, a caution to the officer in command to receive his visitor. The land is close aboard, danger inferred. Close butt, where caulking is not used, the butts or joints of the planks are sometimes rabbited and fade close, whence they are thus denominated. Close contract, one not advertised. Closed port, one interdicted. Close fist, one who drives a hard bargain in petty traffic. Close harbour, that is, one gained by labour from the element, formed by encircling a portion of water with walls and keys, except at the entrance, or by excavating the land adjacent to the sea or river, and then letting in the water. Close hauled, the general arrangement or trim of a ship's sails when she endeavours to progress in the nearest direction possible contrary to the wind. In this manner of sailing, the keel of square-rigged vessels commonly makes an angle of six points with the line of the wind but cutters, luggers, and other fore-and-aft rigged vessels will sail even nearer. This point of sailing is synonymous with on a taut bow-line and on a wind. Close pack. The ice flows so jammed together that boring is impossible and present efforts useless. See pack ice. Close ports. Those which lie up rivers, a term in contradistinction to out ports. Close quarters or close fights. Certain strong bulkheads or barriers of wood, formerly stretching across a merchant ship in several places. They were used for retreat and shelter when a ship was boarded by an adversary, and were therefore fitted with loopholes. Powder chests were also fixed upon the deck, containing missiles which might be fired from the close quarters upon the borders. The old slave ships were thus fitted in case of the negroes rising, and flat-headed nails were cast along the deck to prevent their walking with naked feet. In the navy, yard-arm and yard-arm, sides touching. Close reefed, the last reefs of the top sails, or other sails set, being taken in. Close sight, the notch in the base ring of a cannon, to place the eye in a line with the top sight. To close the wind, to haul to it, close upon a tack or bow-line, or close by a wind, is when the wind is on either bow, and the tacks or bow-lines are hauled forwards that they may take the wind to make the best of their way, close to the wind, when her head is just so near the wind as to fill the sails without shaking them, to close with the land, to approach near to it. Cloche, from the Danish, Kloss, a sobriquet for East Country seamen. Clothed. A mast is said to be clothed when the sail is so long as to reach the deck gratings, also well clothed with canvas, sails well cut, well set, and plenty of them. Clothes lines, a complete system of parallel lines hoisted between the main and mizzen masts twice a week to dry the washed clothes of the seamen. Clothing, the rigging of the bowsprit, clothing the bowsprit is rigging it, also the purser's slops for the men. Cloth in the wind. Too near to the wind and sails shivering. Also groggy. Cloths in a sail are the breadths of canvas in its whole width. When a ship has broad sails, they say she spreads much cloth. Clotting. A West Country method of catching eels with worsted thread. Cloud. A collection of vapours suspended in the atmosphere. Also under a cloud of canvas. Cloch a word derived from the verb to cleave, and signifying a narrow valley between two hills, see cloch, also in commerce an allowance on the turn of the beam in weighing. Clout, from the Teutonic klotzen, a blow, also a gore of blood. Clout nails, French clouté, to stud with nails as ships' bottoms and piles were before the introduction of sheet copper. Clouts, Thin plates of iron, nailed on that part of the axle-tree of a gun-carriage that comes through the nave, and through which the linch-pin goes. Clove-hitch, a knot or noose by which one rope is fastened to another, see hitch. 
two half hitches round a spar or rope. Clove hook, synonymous with clasp hook. Cloves, planks made by cleaving, certain weights for wool, butter, etc. Also long spike nails derived from clou, French. Clo, a kind of sluice in which the aperture is regulated by a board sliding in a frame and groove. To cloy, to drive an iron spike by main force into the vent or touch hole of a gun, which renders it unserviceable till the spike be either worked out or a new vent drilled. See nailing and spiking. Clubbed, a fashion which obtained in the time of pigtails of doubling them up while at sea. Clubbing, drifting down a current with an anchor out. Clubbing a fleet, manoeuvring so as to place the first division on the windward side. Clubbock, the spotted blenny or gunnel, gonellus vulgaris. To club hall, a method of tacking a ship by letting go the lee anchor as soon as the wind is out of the sails, which brings her head to wind, and as soon as she pays off, the cable is cut and the sails trimmed. This is never had recourse to but in perilous situations, and when it is expected that the ship would otherwise miss stays. The most gallant example was performed by Captain Hayes in HMS Magnificent, 74, in Basque Roads, in 1814, when, with lower yards and topmasts struck, he escaped between two reefs from the enemy at Oleron. He bore the name of Magnificent Hayes to the day of his death for the style in which he executed it. Club Law The Rule of Violence and Strength Clue of a square sail, either of the lower corners reaching down to where the tacks and sheets are made fast to it, and is that part which comes goring out from the square of the sail. Clue garnets, a sort of tackle rove through a garnet block, attached to the clues of the main and foresails, to haul up and truss them to the yard, which is termed cluing up those sails, as for goose wings or for furling, see block. Clue lines, are for the same purpose as clue garnets, only that the latter term is solely appropriated to the courses, while the word clue line is applied to those ropes on all the other square sails. They come down from the quarters of the yards to the clues, or lower corners of the sails, and by which the sails are hauled or clued up for furling. Clue of a hammock, the combination of small lines by which it is suspended, being formed of nittles, grommets, and lanyards, they are termed double or single clues, according as there are one or two at each end. Latterly iron grommets or rings were introduced, but did not afford the required spread, and in some cases triangular irons or span shackles were substituted, called Spanish clues, formed by fixing the nittles at equal distances upon a piece of rope instead of a grommet, which having an eye spliced and a lanyard placed at each end, extends the hammock in the same way as a double clue. From clue to earring, a phrase implying from the bottom to the top, or synonymous with from top to toe, or literally the diagonal of a square sail. Also every portion, as in shifting dress, removing every article. Also cleaning a ship from clue to earring, every crevice, a clue up, a case of despair, in readiness for death. Clue rope. In large sails, the eye or loop at the clues is made of a rope larger than the bolt rope into which it is spliced. Clue up, the order to clue up, the square sails. Clump, a circular plantation of trees. Clump blocks, those that are made thicker or stronger than ordinary blocks, see block, tack and sheet. Cluster, see group. Clutch, the oyster spawning, adhering to stones, oyster shells, etc. Clutch. Forked stanchions of iron or wood, the same as crutch, clutch, or clamp block. See snatch block. Clattery, weather inclining to stormy. End of section 23, read by Sandra. Section 24 of The Sailor's Word Book, A to C, by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A digest of sea terms and phrases. C O to C O M M. Coach or couch. A sort of chamber or apartment in a large ship of war, just before the great cabin. 
the floor of it is formed by the aftmost part of the quarter-deck and the roof of it by the poop it is generally the habitation of the flag captain coach horses the crew of the state barge usually fifteen selected men to support the captain in any daring exploits coach whip the pendant code in shipbuilding the fade piece called bilge keel coke a small perforated triangular bit of brass inserted into the middle of the shiver now called sheave of a block to keep it from splitting and galling by the pin whereon it turns called also bush cock or cog and dowel coking uniting pieces of spar by means of tabular projections formed by cutting away the solid of one piece into a hollow so as to make a projection in the other fit in correctly the butts preventing the pieces from drawing asunder cokes or dowels are fitted into the beams and knees of vessels to prevent their slipping coal fish the gadus carbonarius called garrick in its first year cuth or cuth in its second saith in its third lithe in its fourth and colmy in its fifth when it is full grown coaling taking in a supply of coals for a cruise or voyage coals to be hauled over the coals is to be brought to strict account coal sacks an early name of some dark patches of sky in the milky way merely void of stars visible to the naked eye the largest patch is near the southern cross and called the black magellanic cloud coal say the coal fish coal tar tar extracted from bituminous coal coal trimmer one employed in a steamer to stow and trim the fuel this duty and that of the stoker are generally combined combing carlings those timbers that enclose the mortar beds of bomb vessels and which are called carlings because they're shifted occasionally short beams where a hatchway is cut combings of the hatches or gratings certain raised work rather higher than the decks about the edges of the hatch openings of a ship to prevent the water on deck from running down loopholes were made in the combings for firing muskets from below in order to clear the deck of an enemy when a ship is boarded there is a rabbit in their inside upper edge to receive the hatches or gratings coast the seashore and the adjoining country in fact the sea front of the land sea shore coast blockade a body of men formerly under the jurisdiction of the customs termed preventive service offering a disposable force in emergency but which has been turned over to the control of the admiralty and now become the coast guard over which a commodore as controller general presides see fencibles coaster see coasting coasting or to coast along the act of making a progress along the sea coast of any country for which purpose it is necessary to observe the time and direction of the tide to know the raining winds the roads and havens the different depths of water and the qualities of the ground as these vessels are not fitted for distant sea voyages they are termed coasters coasting pilot a pilot who has become sufficiently acquainted with the nature of any particular coast to conduct a ship or fleet from one part of it to another but only within his limits he may be superseded by the first branch pilot he meets after passing his bounds coasting trade the commerce of one port of the united kingdom with another port thereof a trade confined by law to british ships and vessels coast waiter custom house superintendents of the landing and shipping of goods coastways coast warning synonymous with storm signal formerly fire beacons were used to give warning of the approach of an enemy coat a piece of tarred canvas nailed round above the partners or that part where the mast or bowsprit enters the deck its use is to prevent the water from running down between decks there is sometimes a coat for the rudder nailed round the hole where the rudder traverses in the ship's counter it also implies the stuff with which the ship's sides or masts are varnished to defend them from the sun and weather as turpentine pitch varnish or paint in this sense we say give her a coat of tar or paint by neglecting the scraper this may become a crust of coatings coat of mail the cheton shell coat tacks the peculiar nails with which the mast coats are fastened 
cob, a young herring, also a seagull, also a sort of short breakwater, so called in our early statutes. Such was that which forms the harbour of Lyme Regis, originally composed of piles and timber, lined with heaps of rock, but now constructed of stone compacted with cement. Cob, a Gibraltar term for a Spanish dollar. Cobbing, an old punishment sometimes inflicted at sea for breach of certain regulations, chiefly for those quitting their station during the night. The offender was struck a certain number of times on the breach with a flat piece of wood called the cobbing board. Also, when watch was cried, all persons were expected to take off their hats on pain of being cobbed. To cobble, to mend or repair hastily. Also the coggle or cog, which see. Cobble or coggle stones, pebbly shingle, ballast stones, rounded by attrition, boulders, etc. Cobbler, an armorer's rasp. Cobbo, the small fish known as the miller's thumb. Cobble, a low flat floored boat with a square stern used in the cod and turbot fishery, twenty feet long and five feet broad, of about one ton burden, rowed with three pairs of oars and furnished with a lug sail. It is admirably constructed for encountering a heavy swell. Its stability is secured by the rudder extending four or five feet under her bottom. It belonged originally to the stormy coast of Yorkshire. There is also a small boat under the same name, used by salmon fishers. Caboose, see caboose. Cock, that curved arm affixed to the lock of small arms, which, when released by the touch of the trigger, flies forward and discharges the piece by percussion, whether of flint and steel, fulminating priming, needles abutting on the latter, etc. Cockade, first worn by Saint Louis on his unfortunate crusade cock a hoop in full confidence and high spirits cock a name on our northern shores for the puffin otherwise called tom noddy fratricula arctica cockbill the situation of the anchor when suspended from the cathead ready for letting go also said of a cable when it hangs right up and down to put the yards a cockbill is to top them up by one lift to an angle with the deck the symbol of mourning. Cockboat. A very small boat used on rivers or near the shore. Formerly the cock was the general name of a yawl. It is derived from coggle or cog, which see. Cockets or coquet. An official custom house warrant, descriptive of certain goods which the searcher is to allow to pass and be shipped. Also a galley term for counterfeit ship papers. Cocket bread. Hard sea biscuit. Cock paddle, a name of the paddle or lump fish, Cyclopterus lumpus. Cockle, a common bivalve mollusk, Cardium edule, often used as food. Cockling sea, tumbling waves dashing against each other with a short and quick motion. Cockpit, the place where the wounded men are attended to, situated near the after hatchway and under the lower gun deck. The midshipmen alone inhabited the cockpit in former times, but in later days commission and warrant officers, civilians, etc., have their cabins there. Four cockpit, a place leading to the magazine passage and the boatswain's gunners and carpenter's storerooms in large ships, and during wartime the boatswain and carpenter generally had their cabins in the fore cockpit instead of being under the forecastle. Cockpitarian a midshipman or master's mate, so called from messing in the cockpit of a line of battleship. Coxetus, an old law term for a boatman or coxswain. Coxswain or coxswain, the person who steers a boat after the officer in command he has charge of the crew and all things belonging to it. He must be ready with his crew to man the boat on all occasions. Cocoa or chocolate nuts, commonly so termed. See cacao. It is the breakfast food of the navy. Coconut tree. The palma cocos yields toddy, the nut, a valuable oil, and milky juice. The stem, bark, branches, etc. also serve numerous purposes. See palmetto. Cod. The center of a deep bay. The bay of a trawl or seine. Also the gatus morhua, one of the most important of oceanic fishes. 
the cod is always found on the submerged hills known as banks as the dogger bank and banks of newfoundland see ling cod bait the large sea worm or lug dug from the wet sands the squid or cuttle herrings caplin any meat or even a false fish of bright tin or pewter see jig coddy muddy a gull in its first year's plumage code of signals series of flags etc for communicating at sea cod fisher's crew the crew of a banker or fishing vessel which anchors in sixty or seventy fathoms on the great bank of newfoundland and remains fishing until full or driven off by stress of weather season from june until october sea fisheries codger an easy-going man of regularity also a knowing and eccentric hanger-on one who will not move faster than he pleases cod line an eighteen-thread line cod sounds the swim bladders of the codfish cured and packed for the market the palates also of the fish are included as tongues and sounds coal horn a brass mortar named after the dutch engineer who invented it it is the smallest piece of ordnance in the service having a bore of four and a half inches diameter a length of one foot and a weight of three quarters hundredweight they throw their twelve pounder shells with much precision to moderate distances and being fixed to wooden beds are very handy for ships gangways launches etc afloat and for advanced trenches the attack of stockades etc ashore coffer or coffre a depth sunk in the bottom of a dry ditch to baffle besiegers when they attempt to cross it coffer dam a coffer dam consists of two rows of piles each row boarded strongly inside and being filled with clay within well rammed thereby resists outward pressure and is impenetrable by the surrounding water see caisson cog an anglo-saxon word for a cock-boat or light yaw being thus mentioned in morte arturi quote, then he covers his cog and caches one anchor end quote. but cogo as enumerated in an ordinance of parliament in the time of richard II, seems to have been a vessel of burden used to carry troops cog ware goods carried in a cog coggle or cog a small fishing boat upon the coasts of yorkshire and in the rivers ouse and humber hence the cogman who after shipwreck or losses by sea wandered about to defraud people by begging and stealing until they were restrained by proper laws cogs the same with cokes or dowels which see cogs of a wheel applies to all wheel machinery now used at sea or on shore thus windlass cogs capstan cogs etc cogging the nose making comfortable over hot negus or grog coin see coin coil a certain quantity of rope laid up in ring fashion the manner in which all ropes are disposed of on board ship for convenience of stowage they are laid up round one fake over another or by concentric turns termed flemish coil forming but one tier and laying flat on the deck the end being in the middle of it as a snake or worm coils itself coiling a sort of serpentine winding of a cable or other rope that it may occupy a small space in the ship each of the windings of this sort is called a fake and one range of fakes upon the same line is called a tier there are generally from five to seven fakes in a tier and three or four tiers in the whole length of the cable the smaller ropes employed about the sails are coiled upon cleats at sea to prevent their being entangled choir cordage made from the fibrous husks of the coconut though cables made of it are disagreeable to handle and coil away they have the advantage of floating in water so that vessels ride easily by them they are still used by the calcutta pilot brigs true choir is from the borassus gomotus the long fibrous black cloth-like covering of the stem it is from this that the black cables in the east are made the coconut fibre being of a reddish hue it is used for strong brushes being cylindrical and smooth with a natural gloss cokers the old name for coconut trees co-latitude the abbreviation for complement of latitude or what it is short of ninety degrees cold chisel a stout chisel made of steel used for cutting iron when it is cold 
cold eel, the Gymnotus electricus. Coal, from the German coal. Coalwort, or sea kale, a plant in its wild state peculiar to the sea coast. Coal goose, a name for the cormorant. Phallocrocorax carbo. Collar, an eye in the end or bite of a shroud or stay to go over the masthead, the upper part of a stay, also a rope formed into a wreath with a heart or dead eye seized in the bite to which the stay is confined at the lower part, also the neck of a bolt. Collar beam, the beam upon which the stanchions of the beak head, bulkhead, stand. Collector of customs, an officer who takes the general superintendence of the customs at any port. Colliers, vessels employed exclusively to carry coals from the northern ports of England. This trade has immemorially been an excellent nursery for seamen, but Shakespeare in Twelfth Night makes Sir Toby exclaim, Hang him, foul collier! The evil genius has lately introduced steam screw vessels into this invaluable school. Collimation, line of the optical axis of a telescope or an imaginary line passing through the center of the tube. Collision. The case of one ship running foul of another, the injuries arising from which, where no blame is imputable to the master of either, is generally borne by the owners of both in equal parts. See Elision. Collision clause. See running down clause. Collop. A cut from a joint of meat. Scotch collops. Call me, a fifth year or full grown coal fish, sometimes called comb. Colmo, an old word for the sea mew derived from the Anglo Saxon. Colonel, commander of a regiment, either of horse or foot. Colonati, the Spanish pillared dollar. Colorable, ship's papers so drawn up as to be available for more purposes than one. In Admiralty law, a probable plea. Colour chests, chests appropriated to the reception of flags for making signals. Colours, the flags or banners which distinguish the ships of different nations, also the regimental flags of the army, hauling down colours in token of submission, and the use of signals are mentioned by Plutarch in Themistocles. Colour sergeant, the senior sergeant of a company of infantry. He acts as a kind of sergeant major and generally as pay sergeant also to the company. From amongst these trustworthy men, the sergeants for attendance on the colours in the field were originally detailed. Colt, a short piece of rope with a large knot at one end, kept in the pocket for starting skulkers. Columbiad, a name given in the United States to a peculiar pattern of gun in their service, principally adapted to the firing of heavy shells. Its external form does not appear to have been the result of much science, and it is now generally superseded by the Dahlgren pattern. Column, a body of troops in deep files and narrow front, so disposed as to move in regular succession. Colours, great circles passing through the equinoctial and solstitial points and the poles of the earth. Comb a small piece of timber under the lower part of the beakhead for the foretack to be hauled to in some vessels instead of a bumpkin. It has the same use in bringing the foretack on board that the chest tree has to the main tack, also the notched scale of a wire micrometer, also that projecting piece on the top of the cock of a gunlock which affords the thumb a convenient hold for drawing it back. Combatants, men or bodies of troops engaged in battle with each other. Com, si, cum, and cum. Combers, heavy surges breaking on a beach. Grass, combers, men who volunteer from the plough tail and often prove valuable seamen. Combing the cat, the boatswain or other operator running his fingers through the cat and nine tails to separate them. Combings, si, combings. Combing sea, a rolling and crested wave. Combustion burning, etc., see spontaneous combustion. Come no near. The order to the helmsman to steer the ship on the course indicated and not closer to the wind while going full and by. Come on board, sir, an officer reporting himself to his superior on returning from duty or leave. Come, too, to bring the ship close to the wind. 
Come to an anchor. Let go the anchor. Come up with a rope or tackle is to slack it off. Comes up with the helm. A close-hauled ship comes up to her course as the wind changes in her favour. To come up with or overhaul a vessel chased. Come up the capstan is to turn it to the contrary way to that which it was heaving, so as to take the strain off, or slacken or let out some of the cablet or rope which is about it. Come up the tackle fall is to let go. To come up in shipbuilding is to cast loose the forelocks or lashings of a set, in order to take in closer to the plank. Coming home. Set of the anchor when it has been dropped on bad holding ground, or is dislodged from its bed by the violence of the wind and sea, and is dragged along by the vessel, or is tripped by insufficient length of cable, coming round on her heel, turning in the same spot, coming the old soldier, petty manoeuvring, coming up glass, see double image micrometer. Committee, a certain comitas gentium, or judgment of tribunals, having competent jurisdiction in any one state, are regarded in the courts of all other civilized powers as conclusive, especially binding in all prize matters, however manifestly unjust may be the decision. See judgment. Command. The words of command are the terms used by officers in exercise or upon service. All commands belong to the senior officer. Also in fortification the height of the top of the parapet of a work above the level of the country, or above that of another work. Generally one position is said to be commanded by another when it can be seen into from the latter. Commandant, the officer in command of a squadron, ship, garrison, fort, or regiment. Commander, an officer in the Royal Navy, commanding a ship of war of under twenty guns, a sloop of war, armed ship, or bomb vessel. He was entitled master and commander, and ranked with the major of the army, now simply termed commander and ranking with lieutenant colonel, but junior of that rank. The act of the commander is binding upon the interests of all under him, and he is alone responsible for costs and damages. He may act erroneously and abandon what might have turned out good prize to himself and crew. Commander is also the name of a large wooden mallet used especially in the sail and rigging lofts, as anything of metal would injure the ropes or canvas. Commander-in-Chief the senior officer in any port or station appointed to hold command over all other vessels within the limits assigned to him. Thus the commodore on the coast of Africa is de facto commander-in-chief, free from the interference of any other authority afloat. Command of mind, men, steady officers who command coolly. Comiatus, or provisions, going to the enemy's ports, subject only to pre-emption, a right of purchase upon reasonable terms, but previously liable to confiscation, Robinson. Comiatus in admiralty law is a general term, signifying drink as well as eatables. Commerce was not much practiced by the Romans. The principal objects of their water carriage were the supply of corn, still termed anona, and the tribute and spoils of conquered countries. Commercial Code of Signals, as Marriott's and others. Commissariat, the Department of Supplies to the Army. Commissary, the principal officer in charge of the commissariat. Commission, the authority by which an officer officiates in his post, also an allowance paid to agents or factors for transacting the business of others. Commissioned officers, those appointed by commissions. Such are admirals, down to lieutenants in the Royal Navy and in the Army, all from the general to the ensign, inclusive. Commissioners, Lords of the Admiralty. In general, the Crown appoints five or seven commissioners for executing the office of Lord High Admiral, etc., for this important and high office has seldom been entrusted to any single person. The Admiralty jurisdiction extends to all offences mentioned in the Articles of War or New Naval Code, as regards places beyond the powers of the law courts or outside the bounds of a county but all criminal acts committed within the limits of a county, or within a line drawn from one headland to the next, are especially liable to be tried by the common law courts. The High Court of Admiralty, Civil Court, takes cognizance of salvage, prize derelict, collision, etc., at sea, beyond the county limits, even as relates to ships of war if in fault. Commissioners of Customs 
the board of management of the customs department of the public revenue commissioners of the navy certain officers formerly appointed to superintend the affairs of the navy under the direction of the lords commissioners of the admiralty their duty was more immediately concerned in the building docking and repairing of ships in the dockyards they had also the appointment of some of the officers as surgeons masters etc and the transport victualling and medical departments were controlled by that board it was abolished in eighteen thirty one to commit oneself to break through regulations to incur responsibility without regard to results commodore a senior officer in command of a detached squadron a captain finding five or six ships assembled was formally permitted to hoist his pennant and command as commodore and a necessity arising for holding a court-martial he ordered the said court to assemble again where an admiral dies in command the senior captain hoists a first-class broad pennant and appoints a captain secretary and flag lieutenant fulfils the duties of a rear admiral and wears the uniform commodores of the second class have no captain or pennant lieutenant a commodore rates with brigadier generals according to dates of commission being of full colonel's rank he is next in command to a rear admiral but cannot hoist his broad pennant in the presence of an admiral or superior captain without permission the broad pennant is a swallow-tailed tapered burgee the second-class commodore is to hoist his broad pennant white at the fore it is a title given by courtesy to the senior captain where three or more ships of war are cruising in company it was also imported into the east india company's vessels the senior being so termed inter se it moreover denotes the convoy ship which carries a light in her top the epithet is corrupted from the spanish commendador communication corresponding by letter hail or signal see line of communication and boyo to commute to lighten the sentence of a court-martial on a recommendation of the court to the commander-in-chief end of section twenty four read by sandra section twenty five of the sailor's word book a to c by w h smythe this librivox recording is in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org a digest of sea terms and phrases c o m p to c o n companion the framing and sash lights upon the quarter-deck or round-house through which light passes to the cabins and decks below and a sort of wooden hood placed over the entrance or staircase of the master's cabin in small ships flush-decked vessels are generally fitted with movable companions to keep the rain or water from descending which are unshipped when the capstan is required companion ladder denotes the ladder by which the officers ascend to and descend from the quarter-deck companion way the staircase porch or berthing of the ladder way to the cabin company the whole crew of any ship including her officers men and boys in the army a small body of foot or subdivision of a regiment commanded by a captain comparative rank c rank comparison watch the job watch for taking an observation compared before and after with the chronometer compartment bulkheads some of the iron ships have adopted the admirable chinese plan of dividing the hold athwart ship by strong water-tight bulkheads into compartments so that a leak in any one of them does not communicate with the others thus strengthening a vessel besides adding to its security compartment bulkheads were first directed to be fitted under the superintendence of commander belcher in her majesty's ships erebus and terror at chatham for arctic service in eighteen thirty five h m s terror commander back was saved entirely owing to this fitment the after section being full of water all the passage home and lately the mail pack at samphire was similarly saved compassant a corruption of corpo santo a ball of electric light observed flickering about the masts yard-arms and rigging during heavy rain thunder and lightning compass an instrument employed by navigators to guide the ship's course at sea it consists of a circular box containing a fly or paper card 
which represents the horizon and is suspended by two concentric rings called gimbals the fly is divided into thirty-two equal parts by lines drawn from the centre to the circumference called points or rums the interval between the points is subdivided into three hundred and sixty degrees consequently the distance or angle comprehended between any two rums is equal to eleven degrees and fifteen minutes the four cardinal points lie opposite to each other the north and south points form top and bottom leaving the east on the right hand and the west on the left the names of all the inferior points are compounded of these according to their situation this card is attached to a magnetic needle which carrying the card round with it points north excepting for the local annual variation and the deviation caused by the iron in the ship the angle which the course makes with that meridian is shown by the lubber's point a dark line inside the box see adjustment of the compass to compass to curve also to obtain one's object compassing see compass timbers compassionate allowances Grants are made on the Compassionate Fund to the legitimate children of deceased officers on its being shown to the Admiralty that they deserve them. Compass Saw A narrow saw which, inserted in a hole bored by a centre bit, follows out required curves. Compass Timbers, such as are curved, crooked, or arched, for shipbuilding. Compensation if a detained vessel is lost by the negligence and misconduct of the prize-master, compensation must be rendered, and the actual captors are responsible, the principal being answerable in law for the agent's acts. Compensator of the compass. See Magnetic Compensator. To complain. The creaking of masts or timbers when overpressed, without any apparent external defect one man threatening to complain of another is saying that he will report misconduct to the officer in charge of the quarter-deck compliment the proper number of men employed in any ship either for navigation or battle in navigation the complement of the course is what it wants of eight points of latitude what it is short of ninety degrees see co-latitude complement of longitude see supplement of longitude complete book a book which contains the names and particulars of every person born for wages on board as age place of birth rating times of entry and discharge etc to compliment to render naval or military honour where due compo the monthly portion of wages paid to the ship's company composition nails those which are made of mixed metal and which being largely used for nailing on copper sheathing are erroneously called copper nails compound a term used in India for a lawn garden or enclosed ground round a house. Comprador, Spanish, a Chinese contractor in shipping concerns or in purchasing present supplies. Compress, a pad of soft linen used by the surgeon for the dressing of a wound. Compression of the poles, the amount of flattening at the polar regions of a planet by which the polar diameter is less than the equatorial. Compressor a mechanism generally adopted afloat for facilitating the working of the large guns recently introduced the gun carriage is thus compressed to its slide or platform during the recoil and set free again by the turn of a handle for running up it is of various forms one of the simpler kind used to be always applied to carronade slides compressor stopper a contrivance for holding the chain cable by compression compromise the mutual agreement of a party or parties at difference to refer to arbitration or make an end of the matter controller of the customs the officer who controls and has a check on the collectors of customs see controller controller of the navy formerly the chief commissioner of the navy board at which he presided comrade a barrack term for a fellow soldier serving in the same company concealment or suppressio veri consists in the suppression of any fact or circumstance as to the state of the ship the nature of her employ and the time of sailing or expected arrival material to the risk of insurance and is fatal to the insured but it is held immaterial to disclose the secret destination of privateers the usages of trade or matters equally open to both parties concentrated fire the bringing the whole or several guns to bear on a single point 
punch a large univalve used as a horn by pilots fishermen etc in fogs a strombus triton or sometimes a murex conchs a name for the wreckers of the bahama reefs in allusion to the shells on those shores though plunder is their object the conchs are very serviceable to humanity and evince both courage and address in saving the lives of the wrecked concluding line a small rope hitched to the middle of the steps of the stern ladders also a small line leading through the centre of the steps of a jacob's ladder condemnation a captured ship declared by sentence of the admiralty court to be lawful prize but the transfer of a prize vessel carried into a neutral port and sold without a condemnation or the authority of any judicial proceedings is null and void condemned unserviceable as bad provisions old stores etc condenser the chamber of a marine engine where the steam after having performed its duty is instantly reduced to water sailing ships frequently carry condensers for the purpose of making fresh from salt water condor a watcher of fishes the same as balker hewer and opus see statute one james chapter twenty three relating to his employment which was to give notice to the fishermen from an eminence which way the herring shoals were going conditions the terms of surrender conduct list a roll to accompany the tickets of all persons sent to a hospital for medical treatment it details their names numbers on the ship's books the date of their being sent and the nature of their ailment conduct money a sum advanced to defray the travelling expenses of volunteers and of soldiers and sailors to their quarters and ships see safe conduct conductor a thick metal wire generally of copper extending from above the main truck downwards into the water or in the form of a chain with long links its use is to defend the ship from the effects of lightning by conveying the electric fluid into the sea cone a solid figure having a circle for its base and produced by the entire revolution of a right-angled triangle about its perpendicular side which is termed the axis of the cone cone boy see can boys coney fish a name of the burbot configuration the relative positions of celestial bodies as for instance those of jupiter's satellites with respect to the primary at any one time confinement inflicted restraint and arrest confirmed rank when an officer is placed in a vacancy by acting order he only holds temporary rank until confirmed therein by the admiralty an acting order given by competent authority is not disturbed by any casual superior conflict an indecisive action confluence those streams which join and flow together the confluence is the point of junction of an affluent river with its recipient conger a large species of sea eel furnishing a somewhat vile viand but eatable when strongly curried not at all despised by the people of cornwall in fishy pie congreve rocket a very powerful form of rocket invented by the late sir william congreve r a and intended to do the work of artillery without the inconvenience of its weight with its present form however the rocket is so uncertain that it is in little favour save for exceptional occasions conical tops of mountains not unfrequently indicate their nature the truncated sugar-loaf form is generally assumed by volcanoes though the same is occasionally met with in other mountains conic sections the curved lines and plane figures which are produced by the intersection of a plane with a cone congee gruel made of rice conjugate axis the secondary diameter of an ellipse perpendicular to the transverse axis conjunction in nautical astronomy is when two bodies have the same longitude or right ascension con con or kun as pronounced by seamen this word is derived from the anglo-saxon con conan to know or be skilful the pilot of old was skilful and later the master was selected to con the ship in action that is direct the helmsman the quartermaster during ordinary watches cons the ship 
and stands beside the wheel at the con unless close hauled when his station is at the weather side where he can see the weather leeches of the sails connecting rod in the marine engine the part which connects the side levers and the crank together conings reckonings to conquer to overcome decidedly conscription not only furnishes conscripts for the french army but also levies a number of men who are compelled to serve afloat consecration of colours a rite practised in the army but not in the navy to consign to send a consignment of goods to an agent or factor for sale or disposal consignee the party to whose care a ship or a consignment of goods is entrusted consignment goods assigned from beyond sea or elsewhere to a factor console bracket a light piece of ornament at the fore part of the quarter gallery otherwise called a canting lever consort any vessel keeping company with another in consort ships sailing together in partnership consort ship the practice of two or more ships agreeing to join in adventure under which a strict division of all prizes must be made see ton for ton construction in naval architecture is to give the ship such a form as may be most suitable for the service for which she is designed in navigation it is the method of ascertaining a ship's course by trigonometrical diagrams see inspection constructive total loss when the repair of damage sustained by the perils of the sea would cost more than the ship would be worth after being repaired consul an officer established by a commission from the crown in all foreign countries of any considerable trade to facilitate business and represent the merchants of his nation they take rank with captains but are to wait on them if a boat be sent commanders wait on consuls but vice-consuls wait on commanders in etiquette ministers and chargés d'affaires retire in case of hostilities but consuls are permitted to remain to watch the interests of their countrymen when commerce began to flourish in modern europe occasion soon arose for the institution of a kind of court merchant to determine commercial affairs in a summary way their authority depends very much on their commission and on the words of the treaty on which it is founded the consuls are to take care of the affairs of the trade and of the rights interests and privileges of their countrymen in foreign ports not being public ministers they are liable to the lex loci both civil and criminal and their exemption from certain taxes depends upon treaty and custom contact brought in contact with as touching the sides of a ship in astronomy bringing a reflected body as the sun in contact with the moon or with a star see lunar distances sextant etc contents a document which the master of a merchantman must deliver to the custom-house searcher before he can clear outwards it describes the vessel's destination cargo and all necessary particulars continent in geography a large extent of land which is not entirely surrounded by water or separated from other lands by the sea as europe asia and africa it is also used in contradistinction to island though america seems insulated contingent the quota of armed men or pecuniary subsidy which one state gives to another also certain allowances made to commanding officers to defray necessary expenses continued lines in field works means a succession of fronts without any interruption save the necessary passages differing thus from interrupted lines continuous servicemen those seamen who having entered for a period on being paid off are permitted to have leave and return to the flagship at the port for general service cont line the space between the bilges of two casks stowed side by side contour the sweep of a ship's shape contraband the ship is involved in the legal fate of the cargo the master should therefore be careful not to take any goods on board without all custom-house duties being paid up and see that they be not prohibited by parliament or public proclamation contraband is simply defined merchandise forbidden by the law of nations to be supplied to an enemy but it affords fat dodges to the admiralty court sharks 
contraband of war, arms, ammunition, and all stores which may aid hostilities, masts, ship timber, going to an enemy's port, hemp, provisions, and even money under stipulations, pitch and tar, sailcloth. They must, however, be taken in delicto, in the actual prosecution of a voyage to the enemy's port. Contract of Affreightment the agreement for the letting to freight the whole or any part of a vessel for one or more voyages the charter party contract ticket a printed form of agreement with every passenger in a passenger ship prescribed by the legislature contrary the wind when opposed to a vessel's course Quote, cruel was the stately ship that bore her love from mary and cruel was the fair wind that wouldn't blow contrary End quote. Contravallation, lines of, continuous lines of entrenchment round the besieged fortress, and fronting towards it, to guard against any sorties from the place. See circumvallation. Contribution, money paid in order to save a place from being plundered by a hostile force. See ransom. Also, a sum raised among merchants where goods have been thrown overboard in stress of weather towards the loss of the owners thereof controller differs from comptroller which applies chiefly to the duties of an account but the controller of the navy controls naval matters in shipbuilding fitting etc there is also the controller of victualling and the controller general of the coast guard contumacy the not appearing to the three calls of the admiralty court after the allegation has been presented to the judge with a schedule of expenses to be taxed and an oath of their necessity convalescent those men who are recovering health but not sufficiently recovered to perform their duties are reported by the surgeon convalescent convalescents are amused by picking oakum convenient port a general law term in cases of capture within a certain latitude of discretion a place where a vessel can lie in safety and holding ready communication with the tribunals which have to decide the question of capture convention an agreement made between hostile troops for the evacuation of a post or the suspension of hostilities convergent in geography a stream which comes into another stream but whose course is unknown is simply a convergent conversion reducing a vessel by a deck thereby converting a line of battleship into a frigate or a crank three-decker into a good two-decker or a serviceable vessel into a hulk resembling a prison or dungeon internally and externally as much as possible conversion of stores adapting the sails ropes or timbers from one purpose to another with the least possible waste convexity the curved limb of the moon an outward curve convict ship a vessel appropriated to the convicts of a dockyard, also one hired to carry out convicts to their destination. Convoy. A fleet of merchant ships, similarly bound, protected by an armed force. Also the ship or ships appointed to conduct and defend them on their passage. Also a guard of troops to escort a supply of stores to a detached force. Convoy instructions. The printed regulations supplied by the senior officer to each ship of the convoy convoy list a return of the merchantmen placed under the protection of men of war for safe conduct to their destination end of section twenty five read by sandra nova scotia twenty twenty three Section 26 of The Sailor's Word Book A to C by W. H. Smythe. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Digest of Sea Terms and Phrases. C O O to C P. Cook. A man of each mess who is caterer for the day and answerable too wherefore he is allowed the surplus grog termed plush which see the cook par excellence in the navy was a man of importance responsible for the proper cooking of the food yet not overboiling the meat to extract the fat his perquisite 
the coppers were closely inspected daily by the captain and if they soiled a cambric handkerchief the cook's allowance was stopped now the ship's cook is a first-class petty officer and cannot be punished as heretofore in a merchantman the cook is ex officio the hero of the foresheet as the steward is of the main one cooking a day's work to save the officer in charge reckoning too is cooked as in a certain antarctic discovery of land which james ross afterwards sailed over cook-room or cook-house the galley or caboose containing the cooking apparatus and where victuals are dressed coolie 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 or chulia a person who carries a load a porter or day labourer in india and china comb the anglo-saxon comb a low place enclosed with hills a valley see cum cummings or comings the rim of the hatchways see comings cum of a wave the calm or crest the white summit when it breaks cuntre a manx and erse term for the neap tide coop or fish coop a hollow vessel made with twigs with which fish are taken in the humber see hen coop cooper a rating for a first-class petty officer who repairs casks etc coot a waterfowl common on lakes and rivers fulica atra the toes are long and not webbed but bordered by a scalloped membrane the name is sometimes used for the guillemot uria troile and often applied to a stupid person cuth see cuth cop or copt the top of a conical hill cope an old english word for cape copec see copec copernican system the pythagorean system of the universe revived by copernicus in the sixteenth century and now confirmed in which the sun occupies the central space and the planets with their attendant satellites revolve about him copil an old term for a variety of the cobble coping in shipbuilding turning the ends of iron lodging knees so that they may hook into the beams to copper to cover the ship's bottom with prepared copper copper bolts see copper fastened coppered or copper bottomed sheathed with thin sheets of copper which prevents the torido eating into the planks or shell and weed accumulating on the surface whereby a ship is retarded in her sailing copper fastened the bolts and other metal work in the bottom of ships made of copper instead of iron so that the vessel may afterwards be coppered without danger of its corroding the heads of the bolts by galvanic action as ensues when copper and iron are in contact with sea water copper nails these are chiefly used in boat building and for plank nails in the vicinity of the binnacle as iron affects the compass needle they are not to be confounded with composition nails which are cast see roof or rove and clinch coppers the ship's boilers for cooking the name is generally used even where the apparatus may be made of iron coquillage shellfish in general it applies to anchorages where oysters abound or where fish are plentiful and shellfish for bait easily obtainable it is specially a term belonging to french and spanish fishermen corab a sort of boat otherwise called coracle coracle an ancient british truckle or boat constructed of wicker work and still in use among welsh fishermen and on the irish lakes it is covered by skins oilcloth etc which are removed when out of use it is of an oval form contains one man who on reaching the shore shoulders his coracle deposits it in safety and covers it with dried rushes or heather the arctic bidar is of similar construction it is probably of the like primitive fabric with the kimba sutiles of herodotus cora cora see cora cora coral a name applied to the hard calcareous support or skeleton of many species of marine zoophytes the coral producing animals abound chiefly in tropical seas sometimes forming by the aggregated growth of countless generations reefs barriers and islands of vast extent the red coral corallium rubrum of the mediterranean is highly prized for ornamental purposes coralan 
a small open boat for the Mediterranean coral fishery. Coral Bend, Sea Sand and Coral Bank or Islet. Corbet, French, Basket. Miner's Basket, small gabion used temporarily for shelter to riflemen and placed on the parapet either to fire through or for protection from a force placed on a higher level. Corbillard, French, a large boat of transport. Cord, small rope, that of an inch or less in circumference. Cord or turd of wood, as firewood. A statute stack is eight feet long, four feet broad, and four feet high. Cordage, a general term for the running rigging of a ship, as also for rope of any size which is kept in reserve, and for all stuff to make ropes. Cable-laid cordage. Ropes, the three strands of which are composed of three other strands, as are cables and cablets. See rope. Cordilla, the coarse German hemp, otherwise called torse. Cordly, a name for the tunny fish. Cordon. In fortification, the horizontal moulding of masonry along the top of the true escarp. Also, sometimes used for lines of circumvallation or blockade, or any connected chain of troops or even sentries. Also the riband of an order of knighthood or honour, and hence used by the French as signifying a member thereof, as cordon bleu, knight of the order of the Holy Ghost, etc. Cordovan, leather made from sealskin. The term is derived from the superior leather prepared at Cordova in Spain. Corduroy, applied to roads formed in new settlements of trees laid roughly on sleepers, transverse to the direction of the road as suddenly for artillery. Corkir or Cudbear, the Lecanora tartaria, a lichen producing a purple dye growing on the stones of the Western Isles and in Norway. Cormorant, a well-known seabird, Phala crocorax carbo, of the family Pelicanidae. To corn, a remainder of the Anglo-Saxon, kegirnd, salted, to preserve meat for a time by salting it slightly. Corned, slightly intoxicated, in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales mention is made of corny ale. Corned powder powder granulated from the mill cakes and sifted. Cornet, a commissioned officer who carries the colours belonging to a cavalry troop, equivalent to an ensign in the infantry, the junior subaltern rank in the horse. Cornish ring, the astragal of the muzzle or neck of a gun. It is the next ring from the mouth backwards, now disused. Corn salad, a species of valerianella, the top leaves are used for salad, a good antiscorbutic with vinegar. Corns of powder, the small grains that gunpowder consists of, the powder reduced for fireworks, quill tubes, etc., sometimes by alcohol. Coromontins, a peculiar race of negroes brought from the interior of Africa and sold, but so ferocious as to be greatly dreaded in the West Indies. Corona in timber consists of rows of microscopic cylinders situated between the wood and the pith it is that part from which all the branches take their rise and from it all the wood threads grow corona astronomically means the luminous ring or glory which surrounds the sun or moon during an eclipse or the intervention of a thin cloud they are generally faintly coloured at their edges frequently when there is a halo encircling the moon there is a small corona more immediately round it. Coronae, as well as halos, have been observed to prognosticate rain, hail, or snow, being the result of snow or dense vapours nearer the earth, through which the object becomes hazy. Coroner, an important officer, seamen should understand that his duties embrace all acts within a line drawn from one headland to another, or within the body of the county. His duty is to investigate, on the part of the Crown, all accidents, deaths, wrecks, etc., and his warrant is not to be condemned or avoided. Coraus, the ancient weapon invented by Duilius for boarding, an attempt was made in 1798 to reintroduce it in French privateers. Coronel, the old word for colonel, colonel. 
Carfoon, an out-of-the-way name for a herring. Corporal, ships. In a ship of war, was under the master-at-arms, employed to teach the sailors the use of small arms, to attend at the gangways when entering ports, and see that no spirituous liquors were brought on board without leave, also to extinguish the fire and candles at eight o'clock in winter and nine o'clock in summer, when the evening gun was fired, and to see that there were no lights below, but such as were under the charge of the proper sentinels. In the Marines, or Army in general, the corporal is a non-commissioned officer next below the sergeant in the scale of authority. The ship's corporal, of the present day, is the superior of the first-class working petty officers, and solely attends to police matters under the master-at-arms or superintendent-in-chief. Corporal Oath so called because the witness when he swears lays his right hand on the holy evangelists or new testament corposant corpo santo italian si compassant corps any body of troops acting under one commander corpse jack's term for the party of marines embarked the corps corrections reductions of observation of the sun moon or stars corridor see covert way corine powder corn powder a fine kind of gunpowder corsair a name commonly given to the piratical cruisers of barbary who frequently plundered the merchant ships indiscriminately corselet the old name for a piece of armour used to cover the body of a fighting man cortege the official staff civil or military coruscations atmospheric flashes of light as in auroras corvettes flush-decked ships equipped with one tier of guns fine vessels for warm climates from admitting a free circulation of air the bermuda-built corvettes were deemed superior vessels swift weatherly lie too well and carry sail in a stiff breeze the cedar of which they are chiefly built is very buoyant but also brittle Corvorant, an old mode of spelling cormorant cosier a lubber a botcher a tailoring fellow coser spanish to sew cosmical rising and setting of the heavenly bodies their rising and setting with the sun cosmographer formerly applied to too clever by half now one who describes the world or universe in all its parts cos a measure of distance in india varying in different districts from one mile and a half to two miles coastal relating to the coast costella an old english word for going by the coast costera a law archaism for the sea coast costs and damage demurrage is generally given against a captor for unjustifiable detention where English merchants provoke expense by using false papers, the court decrees the captors their expenses on restitution. See expenses. Cot. A wooden bed frame, suspended from the beams of a ship for the officers between decks. It is enclosed in canvas, sewed in the form of a chest about six feet long, one foot deep, and two or three feet wide, in which the mattress is laid. Cot. An old term for a little boat cotton gun see gun cotton cottonina the thick sailcloth of the levant kubais an ornamented japanese barge of forty oars kud an old term used for con or kun kulterneb a name of the puffin for turcula arctica council of war the assemblage of officers for concerting measures of moment too often deemed the symbol of irresolution in the commander-in-chief counter a term which enters into the composition of diverse words of our language and generally implies opposition as counter brace counter current etc counter of a ship refers to her after seat on the water the counter above extends from the gun deck line or lower ribbon moulding of the cabin windows to the water line or seat of water the lower counter is arched below that line and constitutes the hollow run it is formed on the transom buttocks. Counter approaches. Works effected outside the place by the garrison during a siege to enfilade, command, or otherwise check 
the approaches of the besieger. Counterbalance weight in the marine engine. See lever. Also in many marine barometers, where it slides and is fixed by adjusting screws, so as to produce an even balanced swing, free from jerk, to counter brace, is bracing the head yards one way and the after yards another. The counter brace is the lee brace of the fore topsail yard, but is only distinguished by this name at the time of the ship's going about, called tacking, when the sail begins to shiver in the wind. This brace is hauled in to flatten the sail against the lee side of the topmast and increase the effect of the wind in forcing her round. Counter-bracing becomes necessary to render the vessel stationary when sounding, lowering a boat, or speaking a stranger. It is now an obsolete term, and the manoeuvre is called heaving to. Counter-current. The portion of water diverted from the main stream of a current by the particular formation of the coast or other obstruction, and which therefore runs in a contrary direction. There is also a current formed under the lee counter of a ship when going through the water, which retains floating objects there and is fatal to a man by sucking him under. Counterforts Masonry adjuncts, advantageous to all retaining walls, but especially to those which, like the escarps of fortresses, are liable to be battered. They are attached at regular intervals to the hinder face of the wall, and perpendicular to it, having various proportions but generally the same height as the wall. They hold it from being thrust forward from behind, and even when it is battered away, retain the earth at the back at such a steep slope that the formation of a practicable breach remains very difficult. When arches are turned between the counterforts, the strength of the whole structure is much increased. It is then called a counter-arched revêtement. Counter-guard in fortification, a smaller rampart raised in front of a larger one, principally with the intention of delaying for a period the besiegers' attack. Other means, however, are generally preferred in modern times, except when a rapid fall in the ground renders it difficult to cover the main escarp by ordinary resources. Counterline, a word often used for contravallation. Countermarch, to change the direction of a march to its exact opposite. In some military movements, this involves the changing of front and wings. Countermines. Military defensive mines. They may be arranged on a system for the protection of the whole of a front of fortification by the discovering and blowing up not only the subterranean approaches of the besieger, but also his more important lodgments above. Countermold. The converse of mold, which see. Counter rails. The balustrade work or ornamental moulding across a square stern where the counter terminates. Counter scarp. In fortification, the outer side of the ditch next the country. It is usually of less height and less strongly revetted than the escarp, the side which forms the face of the rampart. Counter sea. The disturbed state of the sea after a gale, when the wind having changed, the sea still runs in its old direction. Countersign, a particular word or number which is exchanged between sentinels and entrusted to those on duty. See parole. Countersunk, those holes which are made for the heads of bolts or nails to be sunk in, so as to be even with the general surface. Counter timbers, short right aft timbers for the purpose of strengthening the counter and forming the stern. Counter trenches. See counter approaches. Country, a term synonymous with station, the place whither a ship happens to be ordered. Coup de grâce, the finishing shot which brings an enemy to surrender, or the wound which deprives an adversary of life or resistance. Coup de main, a sudden and vigorous attack. Coup d'oeil the skill of distinguishing at first sight the weakness of an enemy's position as nelson did at the nile to couple to bend two hawsers together coupling links of a cable coupling shackles couro a small yawl of the garonne also a narrow strait or channel course the direction taken by anything in motion shown by the point of the compass towards which they run as water in a river, tides and currents, 
but of the wind as similarly indicated by the compass point from which it blows horse is also the ship's way in common parlance it is the point of the compass upon which the ship sails the direction in which she proceeds or is intended to go when the wind is foul she cannot lie her course if free she steers her course courses a name by which the sails hanging from the lower yards of a ship are usually distinguished videlicet the mainsail foresail and mizzen the staysails upon the lower masts are sometimes also comprehended in this denomination as are the main staysails of all brigs and schooners a ship is under her courses when she has no sail set but the foresail mainsail and mizzen trysails are courses which see sometimes termed bentings corset the paper on which the knight's course is set for the officer in charge of the watch court-martial a tribunal held under an act of parliament of the year seventeen forty nine and not like the mutiny act requiring yearly re-enactment it has lately sixth of august eighteen sixty one been changed to the naval discipline act at present a court may be composed of five but must not exceed nine members no officer shall sit who is under twenty-one years of age no flag officer can be tried unless the president also be a flag officer and the others flag or captains no captain shall be tried unless the president be of higher rank and the others captains and commanders no court for the trial of any officer or person below the rank of captain shall be legal unless the president is a captain or of higher rank nor unless in addition there be two other officers of the rank of commander or of higher rank any witness summoned civil naval or military by the judge advocate refusing to attend or give evidence to be punished as for same in civil courts the admiralty can issue commissions to officers to hold courts martial on foreign stations without which they cannot be convened a commander-in-chief on a foreign station holding such a commission may under his hand authorize an officer in command of a detached portion to hold courts martial formerly all officers composing the court attendants witnesses etc were compelled to appear in their full dress uniforms but by recent orders the undress uniform with cocked hat and sword is to be worn coutel a military implement which served both for a knife and a dagger couter a piece of armour which covered the elbow cove an inlet in a coast sometimes extensive as the cove of cork in naval architecture the arched moulding sunk in at the foot or lower part of the taffrail my cove a familiar friendly term cover security from attack or interruption as under cover of the ship's guns under cover of the parapet in the field exercise and drill of troops one body is said to cover another exactly in rear of it covers for sails when furled to protect them from the weather when loosing and airing them is precluded are made of strong canvas painted covered way in fortification a space running along the outside of the ditch for the convenient passage of troops and guns covered from the country by a palisading and the parapet of the glacis it is of importance to an active defence as besides enabling a powerful musketry fire to be poured on the near approaches of the besieger it affords to the garrison a secure base from which to sally in force at any hour of the day or night covering board see plank shear covering party a force detached to protect a party sent on a special duty covert way see covered way cow applied by whalers to the female whale to cow to depress with fear cowardice and desertion of duty in fight are criminal by law even in the crew of a merchant ship such poltroonery is very rare cowed to float slowly a scotch term as the boat cowds brayly away cow hitch a slippery or lubberly hitch cow horn the seaman's appellation of the cohorn cowie a name among scotch fishermen for the porpoise cowl the cover of a funnel cowrie small shells cyprea moneta used for money or barter in africa and the east indies coxswain or coxswain see coxswain cox's traverse up one hatchway and down another to elude duty see tom cox 
c p mark for men sent by civil power end of section 26 read by sandra section 27 of the sailor's word book a to c by w h smythe this librivox recording is in the public domain a digest of sea terms and phrases c r crab a wooden pillar the lower end of which being let down through a ship's decks rests upon a socket like the capstan and having in its upper end three or four holes at different heights long oars are thrust through them each acting like two levers it is employed to wind in the cable or any other weighty matter also a portable wooden or cast-iron machine fitted with wheels and pinions similar to those of a winch of use in loading and discharging timber vessels etc the crab with three claws is used to launch ships and to heave them into the dock or off the quay to catch a crab to pull in an oar too light or too deep in the water to miss time in rowing this derisive phrase for a false stroke may have been derived from the italian chiapar and greño to express the same action crabbing to it carrying an overpress of sail in a fresh gale by which a ship crabs or drifts sideways to leeward crabler see crabla crab boat resembles a large jolly boat crab capstan see crab crab windlass a light windlass for barges crab yaws see yaw crack in a crack immediately cracker so named from the noise it makes in exploding it is applied to a small pistol also to a little hard cabin biscuit so called from its noise in breaking cracknel a small bark also biscuits crack officer one of the best class to crack on to carry all sail crack order high regularity crack ship one uncommonly smart in her evolutions and discipline perhaps from the old english word for a fine boy crack is generally used for first-rate or excellent cradle a frame consisting of bilgeways poppets etc on the principle of the wedge placed under the bottom of a ship and resting on the ways on which it slips thus launching her steadily into the water at which time it supports her weight while she slides down the greased ways the cradle being the support of the ship she carries it with her into the water when becoming buoyant the frame separates from the hull floats on the surface and is again collected for similar purposes cradles standing bedsteads made up for wounded seamen that they may be more comfortable than is possible in a hammock boats chocks are sometimes called cradles craft from the anglo-saxon word craft a trading vessel it is now a general name for lighters hoys barges etc employed to load or land any goods or stores small craft the small vessels of war attendant on a fleet such as cutters schooners gunboats etc generally commanded by lieutenants craft is also a term in sea phraseology for every kind of vessel especially for a favourite ship also all manner of nets lines hooks etc used in fishing crag a precipitous cliff whose strata if vertical or nearly so subdivide into points cragger a small river lighter mentioned in our early statutes cragsman one who climbs cliffs overhanging the sea to procure sea fowls or their eggs craigfluk the smear dab or rock flounder craik or craik a ship a diminutive corrupted from carrack crail see creel Crail capon, a haddock dried without being split. Crakers, choice soldiers from the time of Henry the Eighth, perhaps managers of the crakies and therefore early artillery. Crakies, an old term for great guns. Cramp, a machine to facilitate the screwing of two pieces of timber together. Cramper, a yarn or twine worn round the leg as a remedy against cramp. Crampets. The cramp rings of a sword scabbard, ferule to a staff. Crampings, a nautical phrase to express the fetters and bolts for offenders. Crampoon, see creeper. Cranage, 
the money paid for the use of a wharf crane, also the permission to use a crane at any wharf or pier. Krentz, a sort of iron cap on the outer end of the bowsprit, through which the jib boom traverses. The name is not unfrequently applied to any boom iron. Crane, a machine for raising and lowering great weights by which timber and stores are hoisted upon wharfs, etc., also a kind of catapult for casting stones in ancient warfare, also pieces of iron or timber at a vessel's sides used to stow boats or spars upon, also as many fresh or green unsalted herrings as would fill a barrel. Crane barge, a low, flat, floored lump, fitted for the purpose of carrying a crane in aid of marine works. Crane lines, those which formerly went from the spritsail top mast to the middle of the forestay, serving to steady the former. Also small lines for keeping the lee backstays from chafing against the yards. Krang, the carcass of a whale after being flinched or the blubber stripped off. Crank or crank-sided, a vessel by her construction or her stowage, inclined to lean over a great deal, or from insufficient ballast or cargo incapable of carrying sail without danger of overturning. The opposite term is stiff, or the quality of standing well up to her canvas. Cranky expresses a foolish capriciousness. Ships built too deep in proportion to their breadth are notoriously crank. Crank by the ground is a ship whose floor is so narrow that she cannot be brought on the ground without danger. Crank hatches are raised combings on a steamer's deck to form coverings for the cranks of the engines below. Crank pin in steam machinery, it goes through both arms of the crank at their extremities. To this pin, the connecting rod is attached. Cranks of a marine engine, eccentric as in a turning lathe, the bend or knee pinned on the shafts by which they are moved round with the circular motion, also iron handles for working pumps, windlasses, etc., also erect iron forks on the quarter-deck for the capstan bars or other things to be stowed thereon, also the axis and handle of a grindstone, also an old term for the sudden or frequent involutions of the planets in their orbits. Crank shaft in a steamer, see intermediate shaft. Crapo or General Crapo, Jack's name for a Frenchman, one whom he thinks would be a better sailor if he would but talk English instead of French. Crayer or Crayer, a slow, unwieldy trading vessel of olden times, Thus Shakespeare in Cymbeline with hydrographic parlance, quote, Whoever yet could sound thy bottom, find the ooze to show what coast thy sluggish crayer might easiest harbour in. End quote. Crater of a mine, synonymous with funnel, which see. Crevaise, an Anglo Norman word for crayfish. Craven, an old term synonymous with recreant, which see. Crawl, a sort of pen, formed by a barrier of stakes and hurdles on the sea coast, to contain fish or turtle. On the coast of Africa, a pen for slaves, a waiting shipment. Crawling off, working off a lee shore by slow degrees. Crayfish, a lobster-like crustacean, Asticus fluviatilis, found in fresh water. Crazy, said of a ship in a bad state. Creek. The straining noise made by timbers, cabin bulkheads, and spars in rolling. Crear, a kind of Scottish lighter, see Crear. Creek, a narrow inlet of the sea shoaling suddenly. Also the channels connecting the several branches of a river and lake islands, and one lake or lagoon with another. It differs from a cove in being proportionately deeper and narrower. In law, it is part of a haven where anything is landed from the sea. Creel or crew for fishing, see creel. Kringle, see kringle. Creeper, a small grapnel, iron instrument with four claws, for dragging for articles dropped overboard in harbour. When anything falls, a dish or other white object thrown immediately after it will greatly guide the creeping. Crease, see cris. Cremaille, more commonly called indented, which see with regard to lines or parapets. Crenel, a loophole in a fortress. Kring, see, Krang. Creole, 
this term applies in the west indies and spanish america etc to a person of european and unmixed origin but colonial born crepusculum see twilight crespi a northern term for a small whale or a grampus crescent a beacon light set on a watch tower crescent a small crease or dagger crest the highest part of a mountain or range of mountains and the summit of a sea wave crew comprehends every officer and man on board ship born as complement on the books there are in ships of war several particular crews or gangs as the gunners carpenters sailmakers blacksmiths armourers and cooper's crews crib a small berth in a packet crick a small jack screw crimps detested agents who trepan seamen by treating advancing money etc by which the dupes become indebted and when well plied with liquor are induced to sign articles and are shipped off only discovering their mistake on finding themselves at sea robbed of all they possessed kringle a short piece of rope worked grommet fashion into the bolt rope of a sail and containing a metal ring or thimble the use of the kringle is generally to hold the end of some rope which is fastened thereto for the purpose of drawing up the sail to its yard or extending the skirts or leech by means of bowline bridles to stand upon a side wind the word seems to be derived from the old english crinkled or circularly formed kringles should be made of the strands of new bolt rope those for the reef and reef tackle pendant are struck through holes made in the tablings crinkle the kringle or loop in the leech of a sail to cripple to disable an enemy's ship by wounding his masts yards and steerage gear thereby placing him hors de combat crisscross the mark of a man who cannot write his name croaker a tropical fish which makes a cris cris noise croquet a term applied to plank when it curves much in short lengths crotchet a hagbutt or hand cannon anciently in use crock anglo-saxon crocka an earthen mess vessel and the usual vegetables were called crock herbs in the fairy queen spencer cites the utensil quote, therefore the vulgar did about him flock like foolish flies about an honey crock crocodiles a designation for those who served in egypt under lord keith crotic the mode of pronouncing crossjack which see Cronag, in the Manx and Erse, signifies a rock that can be seen before low water. Crooked catch, an iron implement bent in the form of the letter S. Crooks, crooked timbers, short arms or branches of trees. Crooner, the grey gurnard, Trigula gurnardus, so called on account of the creaking noise it makes after being taken. Crossbars round bars of iron bent at each end used as levers to turn the shank of an anchor crossbar shot the famed crossbar shot or properly bar shot used by the americans when folded it presented a bar or complete shot and could thus be placed in the gun but as it left the muzzle it expanded to a cross with four quarters of a shot at its radial points it was used to destroy the rigging as well as do execution amongst men cross bit the same as cross piece which see cross board board with holes alternately on the edges of planks to separate the fastenings so as to avoid splitting the timbers or beams cross bow an ancient weapon of our fleet when also in use on shore cross chocks large pieces of timber fade across the deadwood amidships to make good the deficiency of the heels of the lower futtocks crossfish a northern name for the asterius or starfish so called from the norwegian korsfisk also the uraster rubens cross grained not straight grained as in good wood hence the perverse and vexatious disposition of the ne'er-do-wells as cotton's juno that cross-grained peevish scolding queen quote, unquote. cross head in a steamer's engine is on the top of the piston rod athwart the cylinder and there is another fitted to the air pump both having side rods see cylinder crosshead crossing a ship's wake 
when a ship sails over the transient track which another has just passed that is passes close astern of her crossing the cables in the hatchway a method by which the operation of coiling is facilitated it alludes to hempen cables which are now seldom used cross in the hawse is when a ship moored with two anchors from the bows has swung the wrong way once whereby the two cables lie across each other to cross a vessel's hawse is to sail across the line of her course a little ahead of her cross jack yard pronounced project yard the lower yard on the mizzen mast to the arms of which the clues of the mizzen topsail are extended the term is applied to any fore and aft vessels setting a square sail flying below the lower cross trees it is now very common in merchant ships to set a sail called a project upon this yard cross poles see cross spales cross piece the transverse timber of the bits also a rail of timber extending over the windlass of some merchant ships from the night heads to the belfry it is furnished with wooden pins to fasten the running rigging to as occasion requires cross pieces short pieces laid across the keel of a line of battleship and scarfed to the lower ends of the first futtocks as strengtheners cross sea a sea not caused by the wind then blowing during a heavy gale which changes quickly a cyclone for instance each change of wind produces a direction of the sea which lasts for some hours after the wind which caused it has changed so that in part of the sea which has experienced all the changes of one of these gales the sea runs up in pyramids sending the tops of the waves perpendicularly into the air which are then spread by the prevailing wind the effect is awfully grand and dangerous for it generally renders the ship ungovernable until it abates cross summer a beam of timber cross spales or spalls temporary beams nailed across a vessel to keep the sides together and support the ship in frame until the deck knees are fastened cross staff see fore staff cross swell this is similar to a cross sea except that it undulates without breaking violently cross tail in a steam engine is of the same form as the cylinder cross head it has iron straps catching the pins in the ends of the side levers cross tide the varying directions of the flow amongst shoals that are under water see current cross timbers see cross piece cross trees certain timbers supported by the cheeks and trestle trees at the upper ends of the lower and top masts athwart which they are laid to sustain the frame of the tops on the one and to extend the top gallant shrouds on the other crotched yard the old orthography for crotchet yard which see crotches see crutch crow or crowbar an iron lever furnished with a sharp point at one end and two claws on a slight bevel bend at the other to prise or remove weighty bodies like pieces of timber to draw spike nails etc also to direct and manage the great guns crowdy meal and milk mixed in a cold state but sometimes a mere composition of oatmeal and boiled water eaten with treacle or butter and sugar as condiment to crowd sail to carry an extraordinary press of canvas on a ship as in pursuit of or flight from an enemy etc crowfoot a number of small lines spreading out from an ouvru or long block used to suspend the awnings by or to keep the topsails from striking violently and fretting against the top rims see euphro also a kind of stand attached to the end of mess tables and hooked to a beam above crowfoot or beam arm is also a crooked timber extended from the side of a beam to the ship's side in the wake of the hatchway supplying the place of a beam crow's foot is the name of the four-pointed irons thrown in front of a position to hamper the advance of cavalry and other assailants for in whatsoever way they fall one point is upwards the phrase of crow's feet is also jocularly applied to the wrinkles spreading from the outer corner of the eyes a joke used both by chaucer and spencer crown a common denomination in most parts of europe for a silver coin varying in local value from two shillings sixpence sterling to eight shillings see also prerogative crown of an anchor the place where the arms are joined to the shank and unite at the throat 
crown of a gale, its extreme violence. In fortification to crown is to effect a lodgment on the top of, thus the besieger crowns the covered way when he occupies with his trenches the crest of the glassy. Crown or double crown, a knot, is to pass the strands of a rope over and under each other above the knot by way of finish. See knot. Crowning. The finishing part of some knots on the end of a rope to prevent the ends of the strands becoming loose. They are more particularly useful in all kinds of stoppers. See wall knot and crown. Crown work. In fortification, the largest definite form of outwork, having for its head two contiguous bastioned fronts, and for its sides two long straight faces flanked by the artillery fire of the place or a detached work according to the circumstances of the ground requiring such advanced occupation crow purse the egg capsule of a skate crow shell a fresh water mussel crow's nest a small shelter for the lookout man sometimes made with a cask at the top gallant masthead of whalers whence fish are espied also for the ice master to note the lanes or open spaces in the ice croy an enclosure on the sea beach in the north for catching fish when the tide flows the fishes swim over the wattles but are left by the ebbing of the water crew see creel crew herring the shad clupea alosa crewer see crayer crews or crews a voyage in quest of an enemy expected to sail through any particular tract of the sea at a certain season the seeker traversing the cruising latitude under easy sail backward and forward the parts of seas frequented by whales are called the cruising grounds of whalers cruisers small men of war made use of in the channel and elsewhere to secure our merchant ships from the enemy's small frigates and privateers they were generally such as sailed well and were well manned creves enclosed spaces in a dam or weir for taking salmon crummy fleshy or corpulent crupper the train tackle ring bolt in a gun carriage cruzado see cruzado crutch or crotch a support fixed upon the taffrail for the main boom of a sloop brig cutter etc and a chock for the driver boom of a ship when their respective sails are furled also crooked timber inside the afterpeak of a vessel for securing the heels of the cant or half timbers they are fayed and bolted on the foot whaling also stanchions of wood or iron whose upper parts are forked to receive masts yards and other spars and which are fixed along the sides and gangways crutches are used instead of rowlocks and also on the sides of large boats to support the oars and spars cruzado a portuguese coin of four hundred and eighty race value two shillings seven and a quarter pence sterling in portugal in england two shillings to two shillings tuppence end of section twenty seven read by sandra nova scotia twenty twenty three section twenty eight of the sailor's word book a to c by w h smythe this librivox recording is in the public domain a digest of sea terms and phrases c u to c y cupbridge heads the old bulkheads of the forecastle and half decks wherein were placed the murderers or guns for clearing the decks in emergency cube a solid body enclosed by six square sides or faces a cubical foot is twelve inches square every way of any solid substance. Cubhouse or caboose, see caboose. Cubiculati, Roman ships furnished with cabins. Cuckold's knot or neck, a knot by which a rope is secured to a spar, the two parts of the rope crossing each other and seized together. Cudbear, see corker, a violet dye, arkill a test cudberduce the cuthbert duck a bird of the farne isles off northumberland cuddick cuddy or cuddle all derived from cuttlefish varieties of sepia used for baits 
cuddy or cudden one of the many names for the coalfish a staple article of the coast of scotland the gaddis carbonarius is taken nearly all the year round by fishing from the rocks and by means of landing nets if this fish be not delicate it is at least nutritious and as it contains much oil it furnishes light as well as food cutting a northern name for the char cuddy a sort of cabin or cook-room generally in the forepart but sometimes near the stern of lighters and barges of burden in the oceanic traders it is a cabin abaft under the roundhouse or poop deck for the commander and his passengers also the little cabin of a boat cuddy legs a name in the north for large herrings cuirass armour or covering for the breast anciently made of hide cuirassiers horse soldiers who wear the cuirass a piece of defensive armour covering the body from the neck to the waist Cuis, armour to protect the thighs. Collagium, an archaic law term for the laying up of a ship in the dock to be repaired. Culch, see oyster bed. Colloc, a species of bivalve mollusk on our northern shores, the Telina rhomboides. Culmination, is nautical astronomy in the transit or passage of any celestial body over the meridian of a place. Colring, an old corruption of culverin cultellus see cutel culver a saxon word for pigeon whence culver cliff reculvers etc from being resorted to by those birds latin columba b and v are often interchanged culverin an ancient cannon of about five and a half inches bore and from nine to twelve feet long carrying a ball of eighteen pounds with the first graze at a hundred and eighty paces formerly a favourite sea-gun its random range being twenty five hundred paces the name is derived from a snake colubar or a dragon being sculptured upon it thus forming handles culver tail the fastenings of a ship's carlings into the beams culver tailed fastened by dovetailing a way of letting one timber into another so that they cannot slip asunder. Coward, the archaic term for a coward. Cumulocirro stratus, a horizontal sheet of cloud with cirrus above and cumulus beneath. It is better known as the nimbus or rain cloud. Cumulostratus, this is the twain cloud, so called because the stratus blends with the cumulus. It is most frequent during a changeable state of the barometer. Cumulus, a cloud indicative of fair weather when it is small it is sometimes seen in dense heaps whence it obtained the name of stacken cloud it is then a forerunner of change to cund to give notice which way a shoal of fish is gone cunet see cuvette cun or con see con cunning a northern name for the lamprey cup a solid piece of cast iron let into the step of the capstan, and in which the iron spindle at the heel of the capstan works, also colloquially used for cum as cup, let me alone, cupola ship, Captain Coles, the cupola being discontinued, now called turret ship, which see, cur, an east country term for the bullhead, to cure, to salt meat or fish. Curfish, a small kind of dogfish. Curriet, a breastplate made of leather. Curl, the bending over or disruption of the ice, causing it to pile. Also the curl of the surf on the shore. Curl cloud, the same as cirrus, which see. Curlew, a well-known coast bird with a long curved bill, the Numenius arquatus. Curragh, a skiff formerly used on the Scottish coasts. Curacura, a peculiarly fast boat among the Malay Islands. Current, a certain progressive flowing of the sea in one direction, by which all bodies floating therein are compelled, more or less, to submit to the stream. The setting of the current is that point of the compass towards which the waters run, and the drift of the current is the rate it runs at in an hour. 
currents are general and particular the former depending on causes in constant action the latter on occasional circumstances see direction current sailing the method of determining the true motion of a ship when besides being acted upon by the wind she is drifting by the effect of a current a due allowance must therefore be made by the navigator courier a small musketoon with a swivel mounting cursor the moving wire in a reading microscope curtain in fortification that part of the rampart which is between the flanks of two opposite bastions which are thereby connected curtal or curtald an ancient piece of ordnance used in our early fleets apparently a short one curtate distance an astronomical term denoting the distance of a body from the sun or earth projected upon the ecliptic curtle axe the old term for cutlass or cutlass curved fire a name coming into use with the increasing application of the fire of heavy and elongated shells to long-range bombardment and cannonade it is intermediate between horizontal and vertical fire possessing much of the accuracy and direct force of the former as well as of the searching properties of the latter curve of the coast when the shore alternately recedes and projects gradually so as to trend towards a curve shape cusiform a long open whaleboat of japan cushies armor for the thighs the same as cuisse tusk a fine table-fish taken in cod schools see tusk or torsk cusps the extremities of a crescent moon or inferior planet cussels the green bone or viviparous blenny custom the toll paid by merchants to the crown for goods exported or imported otherwise called duty custom of the country a small present to certain authorities in the less frequented ports being equally gift and bribe custom house an office established on the frontiers of a state or in some chief city or port for the receipt of customs and duties imposed by authority of the sovereign and regulated by writs or books of rates custom house agent he who transacts the relative business of passing goods as to the entries required for the ship's clearance custom house officers a term comprehending all the officials employed in enforcing the customs cut a narrow boat channel a canal to cut to renounce acquaintance with any one to cut and run to cut the cable for an escape also to move off quickly to quit occupation to be gone to cut and thrust to give point with a sword after striking a slash to cut a stick to make off clandestinely cut your stick be off or go away cute sharp crafty apparently from acute but some insist that it is the anglo-saxon word cuth rather meaning certain known or familiar cuth a name given in orkney and shetland to the coalfish before it is fully grown perhaps the same as piltok which see cutlass or cutlass a sabre which was lightly curved but recently applied to the small-handled swords supplied to the navy the cutlash of jack by shakespeare called a curtle axe thus rosalind preparing to disguise herself as a man is made to say quote, a gallant curtle axe upon my thigh end quote. cut line the space between the bilges of two casks stowed end to end cut off a term used to denote a vessel's being seized by stratagem by the natives and the crew being murdered also to intercept a retreat cut of the jib a phrase for the aspect of a vessel or person to cut out to attack and carry a vessel by a boat force one of the most dashing and desperate services practised by nelson and cochrane of which latter that of cutting out the esmeralda at Calao stands unequalled cutter a small single-masted sharp-built broad vessel commonly navigated in the english channel furnished with a straight running bowsprit occasionally run in horizontally on the deck except for which and the largeness of the sails they are rigged much like sloops either clincher or carvel built no jib stay 
the jib hoisting and hanging by the halyards alone she carries a fore and aft mainsail gaff topsail stay foresail and jib the name is derived from their fast sailing the cutter as h m s dwarf has been made to set every sail even royal studding sails skyscrapers moonrakers stargazers water and below water sails that could be set by any vessel on one mast one of the largest which has answered effectually was the viper of four hundred and sixty tons and twenty-eight guns this vessel was very useful during the american war particularly by getting into gibraltar at a critical period of the siege cutter brig a vessel with square sails a fore and aft mainsail and a jigger mast with a smaller one see ketch cutters of a ship are broader for their length deeper and shorter in proportion than the barge or pinnace are fitter for sailing and commonly employed in carrying light stores passengers etc to and from the ships some are clench built they generally row ten oars others of similar build only four which last are termed jolly boats the cutters for ships of the line are carvel built of twenty-five feet and fit for anchor work cutter stay fashion the turning in of a dead eye with the end of the shroud down to cut the cable a manoeuvre sometimes necessary for making a ship cast the right way or when the anchor cannot be weighed cutty a name on our northern coasts for the black guillemot oria grilla cutting the adjusting of a cask or spar or turning it round cutting a feather it is common when a ship has too broad a bow to say she will not cut a feather meaning that she will not pass through the water so swift as to make less foam or froth cutting down taking a deck off a ship as ships of the line are converted into frigates the royal sovereign into a turret ship etc cutting down is also a dangerous midshipman's trick and sometimes practised by the men it consists in cutting the lanyard of a cot or hammock in which a person is then asleep and letting him fall lumpus either by the head or the feet cutting down line an elliptical curve line used by shipwrights in the delineation of ships it determines the depth of all the floor timbers and likewise the height of the deadwood fore and aft it is limited in the middle of the ship by the thickness of the floor timbers and abaft by the breadth of the keelson and must be carried up so high upon the stern as to leave sufficient substance for the breaches of the rising timbers cutting his painter making off suddenly or clandestinely or departed this life cutting in making the special directions for taking the blubber off a whale which is flinched by taking off circularly ribbons of the skin with blubber attached the animal being made to turn in the water as the purchases at the mastheads heave it upwards cutting out a night meal or forage in the officer's pantry cutting out or in in polar phraseology is performed by sawing canals in a flow of ice to enable a ship to regain open water cutting rigging this includes the act of measuring it cuttlefish a common marine animal of the genus sepia and class cephalopoda it has ten tentacles or arms ranged round the mouth two being of much greater length than the others when in danger it ejects a black inky substance darkening the water for some distance round the oval internal calcareous shell cuttlebone often found lying on the beach was formerly much used in pharmacy cuts flat-bottomed horse ferry boats of a former day Cutty gun, a northern term for a short pipe. Cut water, the foremost part of a vessel's prow, or the sharp part of the knee of a ship's head below the beak. It cuts or divides the water before reaching the bow, which would retard its progress. It is fade to the forepart of the main stem. See knee of the head. Cuvette, also called cunette, a deeper trench cut along the middle of a dry moat a ditch within a ditch generally carried down till there be water to fill it cum or comb a british word signifying an inlet valley or low place where the hilly sides round together in a concave form the sides of a glen being on the contrary convex cycle a term generally applied to an interval of time in which the same phenomena recur 
cycle of eclipses, a period of about 6586 days, which is the time of a revolution of the moon's node. After the lapse of this period, the eclipses recur in the same order as before, with few exceptions. This cycle was known to the ancients under the name of Saros. Cycloid, a geometrical curve of the higher kind. Cyclone, see Typhoon. Cylinder, the body of a pump, any tubular part of an engine. Charged cylinder of a gun is the part which receives the powder and ball, the remaining portion being styled the vacant cylinder. Especially in marine steam engines, the cylindrical metal tube with a diameter proportionate to the power of the engine, of which it may be termed the chief part, since it contains the active steam. Also a cartridge box for the service of artillery. See cartridge box. Cylinder cover. In the steam engine is a metal lid with a hole in the center for the piston rod to work through. Cylinder crosshead. An adaptation on the top of the piston rod stretching out athwart the cylinder from the ends of which the side rods hang. Cylinder escape valves. Small conical valves at each end of the cylinder for the purpose of letting off any water that may collect above or below the piston. Cylinder powder. That made upon the improved method of charring the wood to be used as charcoal in iron cylinders. All British government gunpowder is now made thus. Ciphering. A term in carpentry. See ciphered. End of section 28. End of the Sailor's Word Book, A to C. By W. H. Smythe. Read by Sandra.